and strong will in the upcoming Pokemon battles. Last year at the XL in London, a beloved favorite from France left his mark in the world of Pokemon Go. This win means a lot for me for uh, representing France into international because uh, until now there is zero French player qualified for world. on the VG stage. This is it! The battle is over! And Paul Chua becomes your 2023 European International Champion! Being able to finally get past second. to the European International Championship. Trainers from across the globe are coming together, catching up, trading their prize cards, leveling up Pokemon, and diving into exhilarating side events. But let's not forget the main attraction, the fierce and thrilling battles. The finest competitors from across the globe are here, each aspiring to edge their name in history as a Pokemon International Champion. The stage is set, excitement fills the air, and history is unfolding right before our eyes. Since 2017, the international championships have served as a global arena where the world's best competitors converge, showcasing the ultimate in Pokemon match play. This weekend, we're all part of that same story. Get ready to see amazing skills and strong will in the upcoming Pokemon battles. Last year at the XL in London, a beloved favorite from France left his mark in the world of Pokemon Go. This win means a lot for me for uh, representing France into international because uh, until now there is zero French player qualified for world. The last bird on a low health stuff is for the 3-0 sweep. Over on the VG stage. This is it. The battle is over and Paul Chua becomes your 2023 European International Champion. Being able to finally get past second place feels pretty good. Last season, Talibobo believers etched their name in history as the inaugural winners of Unite at EUIC, proudly claiming the EU EOS Cup title. In the end, we just pulled through and we were all so happy. It means the world to us. This season, the EOS Cup is welcoming competitors from all regions. Hailing from the USA, Alex Shemansky made an impact in Pokemon TCG, triumphing over Todd Reklev and winning the EUIC Champion Trophy. I never really doubted my strategy this weekend, just expected things to happen that happened and it worked out for me. Who emerges victorious in this clash of trainers is a thrilling uncertainty as each competes with determination and skill, aiming to rise up and seize the title of international champion. Stomping tantrum in response doesn't need much, takes down the flutter. As it does get caught with the freeze drive, risk 2-0. Oh, wow, oh, that is straight away. Does he get to win in time? Yes, he does, because it's huge. Can they get somebody's points in? That guy is good. event of the 2024 season underway. I'm Zoe, and let me just say on behalf of the entire casting team, we are honored to be the ones here welcoming you all to watch and compete in the Pokemon titles this weekend. Lifting the trophy at the end of a long fought tournament weekend is an unforgettable moment that's made all the sweeter by the prize money earned for your efforts. 
That's right. Trainers will be competing for their share of the staggering prize pool, exceeding $500,000. Additionally, top performers will earn enough championship points to secure an invitation to our prestigious Road to Worlds campaign in Honolulu, Hawaii later this year. We have more than 4,000 trainers competing this weekend, and we're about to kick things off to see who will make it to Saturday Night Rumble for Pokemon Unite and to Championship Sunday for the Pokemon Trading Card Game, VG, and Pokemon Go. This is Pokemon Unite's first live event of the season and their very first open bracket event. That means we'll have the best online teams joining together with the top open bracket performers to see who will reign supreme. The weekend is set to be a showcase of non-stop excitement with the Pokemon trading card game and video game, each offering its own epic storylines and dynamic battles. Amidst these, Pokemon Go stands as a vibrant part of the event, contributing its unique flair and engaging gameplay into the mix. Calling all competing trainers, you are about to embark on your journey towards international championship glory. It's time to head over to the play tables. If everyone else, stay tuned with us here as we transition to our expert casters. We'll get us ready with the pre-game pre shows, shows and set the excitement, the excitement for the weekend, for the weekend tournament, tournament ahead. And, and here's, here's a teaser, a teaser for, you. for you. Tune in to the end of Championship Sunday for our closing ceremonies to learn more new information about Worlds 2024 and what to expect. You are not going to want to miss it. Now be sure to catch all the action this weekend at pokemon.com forward slash play. Use the hashtag PokemonEUIC to join the conversation online. And most importantly, follow this very channel if you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. We already know this event is going to be one for the history books. So let's kick off the first day of the 2024 Pokemon European International Championships. Casters, <laughs> over to you. Here we are at EUIC, the AOS Cup for the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. So many teams invited, the best from every region that we have been covering, and someone is going to punch their ticket to Worlds today and win the lion's share of a $100,000 prize pool. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. I am Jake, a.k.a. Spragles, your resident content cowboy here. Yeehaw, and I'm joined by the one, the only Dupe Snacks. Hello, Dupe Snacks. I'll tell you what, you framed this thing up perfect. I am so excited yes. to be here. Yes. We got to talk to some of the teams that are here live. They are excited. You can feel the energy throughout all these Pokemon Unite teams. Lan, it's just different, brother. It's yeah. just different. It's so different here live. It's so different on land. And, of course, the biggest news of the day, this is the mini worlds happening right now. We have teams, again, from six different regions, including a seventh Japan making their way here, APAC East as well. I mean, so many amazing teams. And, again, one team will be qualified for Worlds already at the end of this two-day series. It's going to be amazing. Make sure you watch all of the games here. And, of course, you can check out our sister stream over on Unite Battle Hub. They're going to be watching the open bracket. The open bracket has so many good teams yes. from NA, EU, LATAM, Brazil. You said APAC as well. I mean, let's take a look at what this format is going to be for this weekend to see again who's going to be our first team qualified for Worlds. The Pokemon Unite AOS Cup at the 2024 European International Championships will be showcasing exhilarating team matches all weekend long from London, United Kingdom. Teams have traveled far and wide to compete in this mid-season showdown for a piece of the $100,000 prize pool and the ultimate prize of a World's 2024 invite in Honolulu. This tournament is a two-day action-packed event. On day one, trainers will form teams of five players each and compete in an open bracket to determine the top teams who will advance to the group stage. Once there, they will be joined by the strongest competitors from online competition until the best eight teams remain. On day two, those teams will battle through a double elimination bracket to determine your AOS Cup champion. Which team will display ultimate teamwork, take the AOS Cup, and represent their region at Worlds 2024 in Honolulu? Last year, after an epic back-and-forth brawl, Tally Bobo Believers reigned victorious in 2023. So stay tuned this weekend and see all the action live. 
And as you heard that very smart guy tell you, here we are at EUIC. That guy sounded so good. It, it, it's amazing. I, I'm familiar with the voice, but it's one of those things you hear it and you just can't quite place who, is who it is. Who um, is that? Who, are, who is that doesn't really matter. Who is here in the open bracket certainly does. Let's take a look at the teams that have showed up to battle it out here live in person in London. Yeah, we've got so many amazing teams here. I mean, every single one of these you could imagine in our grand finals. Taking a look, Outer Banks from EU, Exile from NA, Whopper Unite, Phantom Forces, Nemesis Dupe Snacks. I mean, Nemesis, but Shin and Rude, that's that APAC team you're uh -huh. talking about. They're looking to poach this world spot from the Western countries and bring it back to the East. But then you have like Yala Bingo, Nouns on this dark horse revenge arc that they've got to try to get their feet, out, uh, feet under them. And then you have like, why? IT, Luminosity, I mean, these are all insane squads that are just scrapping the best of one to make it to our group stage. Yeah, there are so many teams that you would be scared to run into. You've got the world champions on there. You have Nouns Esports, the EU super team. Yala Bingo just won last month here in yep. EU. I mean, so many incredible teams in our open bracket. They are going to be playing an insane Swiss round best of one series to see who makes it to our group stage and honestly again that's over on unite battle hub it, i would have both streams up i would have both streams up and i would not leave wherever you are right. do not go anywhere no matter what's going on in your life both streams up on your computer or laptop have it open on your phone smart now admittedly have our volume just a scotch higher yes i i, I didn't want to say it but i thought it was obvious that you do need to have us just a little higher and just it's not because we're not yelling because we as will be say, yelling. just a squiz just a squiz higher for us here but they're scrapping out in this open bracket to make it to this group stage that you see on your screen right now these are the teams that have already qualified from winning the AS cup qualifiers in february alter ego antic esports group a unite holic the japanese team invited against rework respawn in group b copy chance the other japanese team invited against four free barn burner matchup Insane. and then legacy fusion i mean all these matchups are great i don't know why i tried to oversell <laughs> group c when they're all sell. they're all crazy good matches and our first match of the day is going to be four free and copy chance or as they're known sometimes as k's taking a look right here we've got luminosity versus alter ego this is when alter ego brought out the champion and ended up winning here in the grand finals reset of the play-ins securing their spot against the world champs who are in the open bracket today. Absolutely, now we're taking a look at the uh, OCE squad here. A little bit of a rebrand coming in as Antic for this event, picking up a little bit of a sponsorship action there for them. But this team has been here for two weeks, Spraggle scrimming and getting ready for this. They do not want to let this opportunity pass them by. Yeah, I mean, here we go. This is uh, K's versus Unite Holic right here. The two teams that you're going to be seeing today. Two absolute powerhouses from the Japan region. And I'm so excited that they are here making this again just like a mini world. You are seeing almost every single region compete today. Yeah, Rework Respawn, no strangers to the limelight here as we're gonna watch them punch their ticket to this event. The representation that we have from LATAM North cannot be understated. This team is ready to go. It's high on Zoinx's power ranking, if I remember correctly. I think they're doing great on Zoinx's power ranking, which I know means a lot to them, obviously. Here we are taking a look at KS once again. Uh, obviously, just such a dominant team winning ACL. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they look like when you compare them to these regions. Already a big land tournament win for this team, which is experience they're going to be able to carry over directly into EUIC. But now we have four free taking care of Yala Bingo. Yala Bingo who won in March before free dominant performance in February Spraggles. It was uh, a no doubter to be honest. Without question coming from the losers bracket somehow losing to Yala Bingo earlier in the tournament and then heading to the grand finals and just sweeping them the whole way through a bracket reset. Take a look here. FA Brazil versus Legacy, one of my absolute favorite teams to watch. They've got Mazo, and whatever team Mazo's on is a team to watch, I have to say. I can't wait to see them here in our group stage. An exciting player, but also an exciting team, and they are here to game without a doubt. Now, we got to wrap this thing up a little bit here. Latin America South also bringing their own representation, Fusion. Yeah, I mean, what a win right there. Just standing on the goal zone. They, they get to actually punch their ticket to this event, and they just all get to huddle around that enemy sure. goal zone, just kind of letting everyone know this is the kind of game they play. They're putting points in the main.
<laughs> putting points in the main, and then circle of friendship. Circle of friendship. Something that we have, and that's uh, a circle of trust, a circle of friendship. Um, but as we're talking about circle of friendships, let's talk about some players to watch. The circle of players to watch. Oh, I was hoping it was going to be a circle. Here we go. Uh, I picked Mazo on Legacy. I was just talking about him. Oh, what a hero. I can't wait to see him play in this tournament. Who was your pick, Dupes, next? I went with Metallic. Nemesis is an open bracket team, but Metallic is replacing Relentless. Nemesis won in March have taken Relentless, put them on the bench, said Metallic, this 16-year-old kid who just aged up, able to play in this event, let's give them a chance. That's why they're my player to watch. If you win a March Cup, if you win the March Cup and you bench somebody for somebody, Metallic better show out. I have to let everyone at home know that is what Metallic looks like. This is Correct. not just a stand-in photo. It's a, true. It, when, when he's around, it's almost like a, a ghost or an apparition sort of moving through the room. It's unsettling, but extremely good for Pokemon Unite. As it turns out, because well, it's it's a fear factor. Literally, like yes. it's like are we are we battling a ghost? Yeah, Who it's is very Metallic? Joe Rogan, very he? fear factor, very scary dealing with Less this Less bug eating. More, more uh, bug eating. More bug eating. <laughs> more bug eating. Here we go. <laughs> Top Pokemon by win rate uh, through more than 100 <laughs> games played in UCS. An unsurprising crustal at number two, but what might be a little surprising, Mr. Mime at numero uno. Yeah, Mr. Mime being number one on this list here, obviously you can see the amount of games played on it. It's relatively low compared to some of our other huge choices. Leafeon, Inteleon, Crustle, all top picks. Having a win rate like that, I would say, makes them a more powerful choice. They're in more games, played by more players, and they're winning a ton. But if you're great on Mime or you're great on Dodrio, another one on our list right here, played by very few players, you are controlling matches in ways that are difficult for your opponents to figure out. You know, we saw last month Yala Bingo, uh, Potato on Dodrio, just putting an absolute show on. Again, if you're good on a couple of these I guess I would call them oddball Pokemon, Dodrio, Mr. Mime. It's really tough for the enemies to deal with, and you can see that reflected in those win rates. Yeah, Mr. Mime often slots into the defender role despite actually having the supporter background, if you will. But if you think of Mr. Mime in comparison to the defender Crustle, they do a lot of stuff similar, building walls, blocking uh, foes out, keeping foes in so you can get those knockouts. Now, as we talked about a little earlier, there is another stream going on with all of our open bracket games that we can cover over on Unite Battle Hub. Make sure you check that out. Have that stream up right alongside ours and have the volume just a smidge lower, just a little bit. Not by much. It doesn't have to be. Much. I would put. It, I'd cut it in half. <laughs> a minimum. Yeah. And of course, we have socials that people, not like our personal socials, but like they made it very to, clear that they, we are not they, sharing they, we can't our plug personal. ourselves as much. Do as not we would do like it. To. Do not do it. They said. Well, follow Unite Esports on Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, YouTube, Pokemon Unite. That's pretty straightforward. And then uh, Instagram as well. Yeah, and you're probably here on twitch.tv slash Pokemon Unite. Thank you for being here. It matters so much that we have so many of you supporting the Unite scene. I cannot wait to share these games with you, to be a part of it with you. Again, that first match that we're going to be seeing, K's, a.k.a. Kabichans versus For Free. We were talking before the broadcast, and we said, please, 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 we want to cast that game, and we really want that to be our first match. And we just got very lucky because we were just talking we to each other. Well, let's take a look at Caster Predictions' most picked Pokemon. I feel like that's not how the question was phrased when we answered it, but, but it's okay. We're taking a look here. A lot of popular picks, kind of, but there's a through-line Espeon uh, between you and Chef, of course, uh, and Zoinks as well. And then Blastoise between me and you, mm -hmm. a little Blastoise connection there. But Crustle, again, you can kind of see that there's certain Pokemon that are repeated because of just their raw strength. Yeah, I mean, obviously Buzzwool uh, being picked here by Chef. Uh, Buzzwool is amazing. I don't know how much of it we're going to see played. It's going to be because picked it, to be banned. Yeah, they're going to ban that thing like crazy. Espeon is one of those sneaky Pokemon. It's insanely good right now, and it's really hard to get banned out in the draft. There are so many powerful Pokemon that you want to get rid of. Crustle's up here. Buzzwool's up here. You can still see some teams, you know, even having those targeted bans. If you know the enemy team plays a very mean, mean look Umbreon, and you want to get rid of that, well, they will pull that away. And that's why a Pokemon like Espeon kind of skates through a little bit. Blastoise does it uh, as well. Right, yeah. Blastoise scraps incredibly well early, despite being a stage two evolution to get to Blastoise. Wartortle does very well early. So does Squirtle. Again, similar to like Garchomp, those earlier levels, a lot of Pokemon that have to get to that final evolution struggle early, but those two Pokemon specifically don't have that problem.
One of the most interesting things about a lot of the picks that we've seen in a lot of like our predictions is that we cover a ton of NA and a ton of EU. But again, we have teams from all over the world here. So we're going to see different metas, different play styles collide in a lot of these games. And look, I mean, NA and EU, we might love Espeon right now, but that might be very different coming from some of these Japanese teams who have a different strategy for this game. I've heard a lot of talk about how there's a, a, a lot of top path presence from Japan, which is a little different from NA and EU, where you see a lot of bottom path priority. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams play this. And again, at sort of our mini worlds here at the AOS Cup, how they will stack up into each other. And Doob Stacks, the big stage. The stage is getting ready to be set again between Kabi Chans and Four Free. And you can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really thought we were going to be seeing the stage. Gonna, I thought we had another one. There we go. We're, back. we're slightly longer than we did. It, I'm, I'm just glad I didn't take my headset off because I was trying to. I was going to fix my hair. Do you want to talk about stuff we were talking about before the broadcast? I said, Spraggles, how's my hair look with the headphones on? And you said, good snacks. You're good to go. And I, I know I've got a, a like a uh, alfalfa dangly pod thing kicking up right now. Hey, no problem. Here we, back, here we are back on this main <laughs> stage right here, brother, for uh, these two teams. <laughs> Getting ready to go. Now, obviously, we are waiting for them to all load into their game and get set. They have been on that stage for a little bit here while this show has been starting. And the question is, I mean, are they are they in the right mindset for this right now? Are they getting iced out a little bit of these, as these players are getting ready? It's going to be really interesting to see what they want to bring here. This match, to me, means so much. This is a top EU team versus the, a top or the top team in Japan. Some people think maybe the best team in the world right now. This match says a lot. It really does. And my focus right now for Kabi Chance is going to be Tomato. The games that I've watched this team play, they have been a standout player, essentially an all-star in a sea of all-stars. I mean, this team, when they are on, they are on. And again, being able to perform at the level that Kabi Chance has so far, it's not nothing. Yeah, it's, it's not nothing. It's not nothing. And again, it's the reason that they are looked at as one of the best teams in the world. We can see, you know, for free getting ready on stage here. There was a lot of talk about Nouns at the start of the season being the super team, but it might turn out to be for free. Zervis, Gotlu, Sereyu, Shelvin, Zante, all players you know if you've been following Unite Esports, all huge names in EU, and they have just been crushing it. First in February, second place, only to Yalo Bingo, the only other team yep. that they're just re really running into in those grand finals there in March. I, 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 first off, I love this matchup. It's phenomenal. It's a great way to kick off the day for us. But let's talk about For Free for a moment. Defending their home turf here, win the AS Cup qualifiers fall just a little short in March. And it just says the strength of these regions in year three. Every year up to this point in NAEU, it's almost felt like there's been a powerhouse team. So it was like them on top and then who's scrapping, you know, for second place. Not the case anymore. There's so much balance across all these regions. Uh, right across the way, Kabichans, big time winners. And then all of a sudden in the most recent uh, Asian event, they didn't even hit top four. Yeah. That just shows the strength of the region. And nobody's going to sit here and tell me that Kabi Chans is not a solid squad when you can look at the prime examples across the board. Uh, Alter Ego from NA mm -hmm. didn't win March. And you almost only, I think you only had, of all these teams, only one repeat winner between February and March. Yeah, I think you're right. Only one winner uh, between those two months. Now, obviously, the AOS Cup play-ins being kind of that first huge tournament of the season is a big reason for that. You know, a lot of these teams still figuring out their strategies. And the question is, are all the teams qualified the best we have? Because we have so many amazing teams in that open bracket. They are going to have multiple teams from that open bracket fight their way through to this group stage. So while we are seeing the best of the best right now that qualified in February, who knows what it's looking like here at the AOS Cup. It's uh, it's uh, literally just shaking up the Yahtzee jar and seeing how many sixes you can roll. And it doesn't really matter what you produce out of that cup because you are going to have to re-roll against some of these players, some of these teams, because nothing is going to be easy today. You want to talk about, oh, you get the express lane into the group stage. 
just waiting for you after the first buzzsaw is another barn burner right behind it because this open qualifier bracket has some really good teams. You can see our players getting ready. You know why, Doob Snacks? We're heading into our draft of our first game of our AOS Cup. Kabi Chans, your purple team. For free, your orange team. First band going over to Kabi Chans. They are picking Hoopa. They do not want to deal with that on the side of for free right here as they're considering the band, and it looks like it's going to be Blaziken. This, this just so shows a level of research between these two teams. Blaziken, not typically a band that you would see pop up first in your selection. Maybe second, right? Target something a little bit uh, wider. We've got Leafy on Zorark play. This is, th these teams have done some research. And guess what? We've got Buzzwell available for one of these squads if they want it. A Pokemon that you and I think is pretty darn strong. Pretty darn strong. As we see the first pick, head on over to Kabichans. They grab Blastoise instead. We're going to see what For Free wants to bring out. They instantly lock in that Buzzwell. Zervis on the Eldegoss. Not surprised if you've been watching the Unite Championship Series for a while. I feel like Zervis is one of the best Eldegoss in the game. Oh, that's without a doubt. And the fact that they just keep getting this Pokemon uh, ad nauseum only helps them get better. We've got a Blissey lock in and might be a Mew. Mew specifically feels incredibly underwhelming in some players' hands, and in other players' hands, it's like, how is this Pokemon allowed to be on the map? Here we go. On the side of For Free, they're getting Crustle, they're getting Espeon. What I'm really looking at right here, obviously tons of power picks on the side of Kabichans. Uh, I feel like we're seeing the clash of these two metas right now. Mm -hmm. The Dragonite coming out here that is played a lot by some of our Eastern teams, right? Uh, a lot of our Western teams, we don't see a ton of Dragonite. And then we're getting our final pick right here to see what they want to bring out probably into that central area. Hovering, yes, and picking Urshifu, most likely going to be that wicked blow Urshifu. A lot of potential secure on the side of for free across the way they also have two pretty good secure tools mm -hmm. between you and dragonite if it's going that hyper beam build and you said this is a matchup of styles it certainly is we're getting it out of the gates buzzle is something that isn't even allowed to hit the map in na or eu first picked here not a care in the world for copy chan yeah it's gonna be really interesting you know i was talking to a lot of the players and i was asking them why we were not seeing as much buzzwool in Japan. Are they, you know, are they not playing that strategy enough? And they were saying they actually counter it really hard. They're playing really well into it. And we're gonna see what that looks like here in game number one, because I can tell you, I am terrified seeing a buzzwool in the top path on the other side. Yeah, and they've got great, great ways. They've got the buzzwool engagement. They've got Sereyu that can step in and close the door with this Urshifu. And uh, I mean, this here we go, dude. <laughs> Aeos Cup, come on, let's get after it. This Japanese squad versus this EU squad defending their home turf. One with an invite, one that earned their ticket in the Aeos Cup. And they're about to scrap it off and kick this day off. That's right. Our first match of the day is almost underway. You can see our players locking in. You can see the focus. You can also, of course, see the nerves, the pressure up on the big stage, the first teams to do it. And here we are, 10 minutes on the clock. Game number one, let's go. And I immediately saw some hands go up here because that Mew is stuck in base. So let's just take a look and see what the pathing looks like between these two teams as hopefully we get that rectified in short order because that Mew ain't moving. Yeah, Tomato heading down to the bottom path. And this is a player that you've talked about, Dupes, next. Like a really uh, a big player to watch on this team. And it's always awesome when you have these huge, you know, support players, huge defender players that are so important to the game. Yep. You absolutely love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it seemed like this has been the season of impactful defenders. Whereas seasons prior, highlight, defend, highlight real defenders, I don't want to say they were in a rare breed, but a lot of teams weren't completely built around their performance. This day and age, your team has to be. Yeah. Because there is a lot of high octane firepower coming behind the defenders, and the defenders need to be able to secure uh, the, the, not secure, excuse me, but step up and absorb the damage on behalf of the rest of the squad, and great positioning, great scouting for the rest of the team. Yeah, it's huge. The position, just like you're talking about, positioning is the biggest factor here. They have to make sure that they are 
frontlining so that their team has enough vision, so that they are soaking up enough damage, but also not getting too far, not diving too much, not, not getting too deep so that they can't peel some of the enemies away from some of their squishy Pokemon. It is without question one of the most impactful roles inside of Pokemon Unite right now. I feel like more in season one, you know, year one, we were talking a lot about that center area pick. We were talking a lot about the other carry that you might see on the team. And now I do feel like it's a lot of superstar supports a lot of superstar defenders that are sort of, you know, commanding their teams and show and really setting up those huge wins for them. Yeah, you, when you and I were talking, uh, kind of in our minds, setting up for this event, what we expect, uh, one of the things I said, and you kind of like echoed that with uh, Defender, I was like, I think the support players in this tournament are going to be difference makers. You can't really eliminate a really good Pokemon from a support player's pool. So if they can play the top four or five, you're in good shape here. And it looks like we are getting ready to get back. We are restarting the lobby. That's yeah. what we were just told by production. But to finish the point, support players are going to have access to almost anything they want, right? Even though Hoopa's banned, there's still quality supports going down the line. And that means that your support player, because they're getting some of the best Pokemon in the game, they need to be able to leverage that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's nice being a support player, even though we're seeing Kabichon's there, you know, banning out that Hoopa right away. They're making sure that they're not running into something, you know, as a support that they don't want to. Different picks and bans than we've been seeing from NA and EU. As I mentioned before, it really felt like if you're looking at the draft on the side of for free, like you just got every single thing you wanted. But I don't think Cobby Jones was too worried about it. I think they were pretty happy with how that draft went. And that's one of the most exciting things about seeing these teams clash here at the AOS Cup. Well, that's, you said, you know, for free got everything they wanted. I think Copy Chance did too, right? Absolutely. That's something that cuts both ways. Um, and when you're playing with your pocket picks, with your most uh, reliable Pokemon that you have in your arsenal, it's a great way to kick off the day, right? Give yourself some solid foot, foot, footing to really get uh, moving in the right direction as a collective. And both of these teams got exactly that. So then it, it steps up to, okay, who's ready to play on uh, this land stage? We know Copy Chance has been able to win on land. And we've, we've seen a lot of these players here being able to do that, one of which uh, specifically is uh, Saryu. We've seen them in uh, all over the UCS in these last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, especially on that Talonflame. I have so much love for someone who wants to bring Talonflame out in these tournaments. I'm a huge fan of the bird. Uh, never losing a game with Talonflame with a 4-0 win-loss. That's almost as good, actually, as my record, which is 100-0. Mine is 102 and O, oh, believe it or not, me on Town Play. Oh, man. Believe it or not. I obviously believe it. Of course you do. Yeah. Of course you do. Soraya. Yeah. Great, great uh, player that they added to the squad right next to Zante and, of course, Chelvin as well. You know, we saw a lot of Gatlu. We saw a lot of Zervis last year. But the three players I just mentioned uh, may be playing second fiddle to those high-octane nouns, Talibobo teams from last year. But holy smokes, have they made their mark on this one. You can see Gatlu and Zervis up on that stage right now getting ready for this match. You know, everyone just making sure that they can load back into this game. And then we have a good one here for game number one. And, you know, Gotlu is uh, very jovial, very smiley. There he is. Okay, there he is. I was going to say, you know, you can see how focused he is, you know, in this moment right here. Yeah, there's a, a thing about being focused but also relaxed, right? So we saw Gotlu able to crack a smile there. We actually saw Zervis doing a little dance as they're waiting for this thing to get uh, sorted out. There's two types of individuals that can handle this situation. One is you start crumbling under the building pressure because it's like you're not doing anything, you're sitting on stage, you don't really have control over when this thing actually starts. And then the other side of the coin is like, I'm here to have fun. This is a great situation. I get to kick off my day on stage in front of the, you know, under the bright lights in front of everybody uh, and just embracing the moment. And um, it feels like both these teams are doing just that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where you need to be as a player, you know? You have to know that everything that you've worked for, all the, all the practice, all the reps that you've put in, they are ready to go when it's game time. You just need to be free and loose and ready to play. Yeah, it's something uh, that we talked about at Worlds. We're just rebuilding this lobby again. The, it's gonna look the same, but now the structural integrity under that building that we're building here, a little bit stronger. The bones are good, the rest don't matter. That's what I've always said. That is something that someone has said. 
Now, that's why Spragles and I specifically drink a lot of milk to fight off osteoporosis because strong bones, nothing else matters. That's right. When we're not on camera, I'm not just trying to take a we sip of coffee. Milk. We are chugging, chugging milk. milk. So much milk. So much milk. There is six, seven gallons of milk down here. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can, maybe eight. I could tell you someone from production called it disgusting. <laughs> Not me, though. Not I. No. I mean, no. Do, you know, do you know how much milk I go through per broadcast? <laughs> yeah. You're, it's a, it's a you're, crazy you're about a six-galloner, my man. <laughs> There's about an inch of just standing milk by the, by the end of the broadcast. I can tell you. That, it, that we're just in. It's not pretty around here. But, yeah, there is there is a whole lot of milk. As we have our players getting ready here, they are loading on in. We can see the same uh, draft as what they're going to be playing here inside this game. Uh, just want to get a quick update from our open bracket. Nemesis beat Outer Banks. Outer Banks, a team that finished top uh, four in March from EU. And Nemesis won March. So it looks like Metallic might be stepping in and finding some good footing for that squad. Also, GT lose game one in a best of one. To me, that means they lost their match. They would. They did. They lost their match. They lost game number one. So it's going to be really interesting to see which NA teams are able to move through this uh, you know, open bracket here. Obviously, losing a game does not mean you're not making no. it forward, but you want to have the best record you can right. to make it out of those Swiss rounds. Yeah, Swiss rounds specifically, you know, you're paired up with teams with similar records as you, and you want to end ideally 5-0 because there's five rounds. But there's going to be some three and twos that make this top eight. It's just a matter of how strong their opponent's win percentage is, which means you actually want to be picking up those losses, theoretically, if you are going to lose, later on in the Swiss rounds. You know, something that we're seeing on our end, I can see uh, the draft screen here still. I know that you guys are seeing that stage up there. Uh, I can see that the Blastoise here from Kata on the side of Kabichan's got the Muscle Band, Rapid Fire Scarf, and that Focus Band. So sometimes players will use this if they're playing the Surf Hydro, excuse me, the uh, Rapid Spin Hydro Pump build. You also can, of course, see this with Surf Hydro Pump just for an insane amount of pushes and stuns onto the enemy team. Going to be using their basic attacks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. However, on the backside is the Buzzwool. So if you're looking to spin to win, there is one Pokemon uniquely that can deal with that, and that is a Buzzy Boy. Yeah, Buzzwool, just a, such an amazing Pokemon there in this top path as we are loading into our game right here. We're making sure that all of our players are good to go as they are heading on in here to game number one. Match one in Group C. All right, we've got the Mew moving to a path here, so I think we're in good shape. Chelvin moving down in the bottom path with this Crustle, a Pokemon that they've used a lot and have won a lot with. Here we can see the Squirtle and the Chansey up in that top path, just trying to do a lot of work here into this Buzzwool. Buzzwool looking to get aggressive here and possibly pick up an early KO. Focus Band going down there on that Squirtle. We'll see if Zervis can take any of that. No, they cannot as they're peeling back right here. Yeah, not able to get a stack, and that's a little bit what you're talking about. These Eastern teams tend to limit stacking out of Buzzle, which keeps it from snowballing too quickly. However, that was a good little back and forth. This tomato is desperately trying to get to a berry, and the K opener of the AOS Cup going to four free. That's right. Zante picking up a nice KO right there. We can see them heading back on the side of Kabi Yanshan's getting their experience here. Sereyu making their way to this top path. We see the uh, central area Pokemon on the side of Kabi Yanshan's in that bottom path. It looks like they're moving towards Espeon, possibly, as we have our bird spawning here in the center. We're going to see what these teams want to do about it. Shelvin. Feels like they're all alone right here, but here comes that Dragonite. Yeah, we'll quickly be able to get Evolve is Chelvin into that Crustle, and that's enough to just stop the push immediately. That Dragon Air saying, okay, maybe not. Although I'm the Danger Noodle, I'm not willing to scrap with uh, that Citadel that's sitting on the other side. Here we go. We still have the Dragon Air hanging out here in this bottom path over in the top path. They're pushing onto this goal zone, picking up a KO on the Squirtle, putting the points in, not able to grab that one. Obviously, they would love to get another stack right there, picking them up, slamming them down, and they are able to now score. Buzz will getting stacked up here, and it's obviously something that Kabichons does not want. This is uh, the epitome of you going to learn today. That Buzz will was level six already, and I'll tell you what, it might not have been fully stacked up, but it is certainly ahead of the game right now as Tomato is desperately re reeling around. They need to hit level five. They need to become a tree spray. Yeah, and here we go. We have Zervis coming in the center here. Here's Sereyu. 
looking to see if they can get a big secure here with that Wicked Blow. The Dragonair moving in, taking a big chunk of damage there from Zante on that side beam. As they're moving forward, they grab the War Turtle and it goes down another KO and they're chasing now onto the Dragonair, looking to see if they can pick up another eject buttons are being used. They're chasing it down. Another big KO for for free. For free is humming right now. And unsurprising in a region where Buzzle is king. Buzzle dominating early in this one. Yeah, Buzzle doing very well here in game number one so far. Seven to 73. Everything is going very well for for free currently. I mean, look at this. Tomato finally hitting that Trevenant. They are an impact player, but not when you're just a little phantom. Them evolving is huge. Now Gatlu gets to be an absolute menace on this war total here and bully, bully, bully. And we do not yet have a Dragonite on the side of Kabichans. That's going to be a big problem because they can't contest this bottom objective as well without it. Of course, they do have the Mew that can always be able to pick up some type of secure on something as they move in. Huge X scissor into the Unite move from the Espeon. And another spacing created. Now for Free gets to pivot on the objective. Chelvin is literally just hanging out, and them existing with Zervis in their pocket is enough to get this basement Reggie, this Reggie Rock, for free, for for free. For free, for 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 free, as they are moving on to this goal zone right here. The X's are pushing this Trevin and back. Nice big solar beam trying to get them away from this goal. Caught in guard, and they're actually just going to pull back from this fight here. Top path, Dragonite goes down. Big secure on the Reggie Alecki from the Buzzwell. That's walking towards a tier two right now, as we see the absolute disrespect from Sereyu just taking the center area. Huge Unite move into the Wicked Blow. They're looking to take a KO right now. They might push this into the tier two. Now they're looking for the Blissey. Blissey is low, Blissey is down. Look at this. Tomato's trying to take care of this. Reggie Alecki, but the pressure's getting too big. Reggie Alecki's helping them out, throwing some Lecky bolts around. But here comes the buzz wall. Unite smashing KO trick of two for Sarayu. As this Reggie Alecki's on the doorstep, it's about to hit. Nice rock tomb to try and gape them bubbled out. But they're going to keep pushing forward. We're going to rapid spin. We're hydro pumping all over the place. That damage is not enough. Buzzle's going back into the action. Buzzle's getting a KO. Reggie Alecki hits, and that goal zone's gone. 7 to 2, 48. Four free is making a statement here in game number one. Their first statement is do not let us trap Buzzle. Are you out of your minds? Kabichan's way behind right here. They are running into that EU play style that 4 Free has, and 4 Free dominating so far. There's still a lot of time on the clock. A lot of time on the clock, good secure tools in Kabichan's. They need to just keep their footing here. They need to find opportunities. And, you know, as the confidence is building on 4 Free, that's the potential of them to make mistakes. Keep moving as a team, keep existing as a team, keep making plays as a team, find yourself a way to win. I'll tell you, a big playmaker in this match so far, Sereyu, just picking up some absolutely a dis disgusting KOs on the enemy team right there. Moving around, and every time, you know, a Rock Tomb and X Scissor is placed, it sets up a perfect wicked blow there for Soreo. They've been taking advantage of it in a big way. You can see Buzzwell just gaining some experience in that central area, making their way down to this objective, and here we go. Oh, we have the light screen up. They try to get on top of Soreo. So, excuse me, the Hyper Beam doesn't hit anybody. Chelvin, half HP, they're looking for an opportunity. Go straight to the Rock Tomb, ready to the SPI tonight. Kicking everybody up, we're picking up shields. Buzzwell Unite pops at the same time. Players down for Kabi Chans, and they're looking for more. They're jumping on top of this Blissey. It's punched up, uppercut, and they're crashing this goal zone. We're trying to get some space in the mute, but they're on the full retreat. Sarayu gets a KO streak of two. More points are raining in, and 4 free is being absolutely relentless as they are just. Yeah, just scoring as much as they can in that bottom path. 7 to 303. Easy objective secure right now. Kabichan's on the back foot, just really trying to find anything they can on the map right now, looking for any piece of experience. They know they need it. This is a Ray Quaza or nothing game right now for them already, it feels like. They're moving towards this top objective. They would love to get some points on the board, take something away from for free. Amazing heads up play by Gotlu here. Knows they're alone. Typically, we in the years past, we've seen Gotlu engage there because they think they're built different. They are built different. This puzzle is built different, but playing a little bit safer right now when you're up by 290 six points or whatever is exactly where you want to be. We can see Blastoise here. It is that spin pump build, and they're actually putting a lot of damage on Sereo, having to unite right here to take down the Dragonite, continuing to push forward with that Pollen Puff on them. Throat Chop, they're looking for a KO, and they get one. They get one. Well, if you're going to use your Unite move there, you better find a KO to follow up. And Sereo, you understood that that was the order that was on the menu for them. 
Solar Beam doesn't hit their mark, but look at this. Gatlu and company are living in this opposing central, looking to pick off some targets where they can. Gatlu just hiding right there. I think they knew, look, I can't walk around. They kind of know where I am, but if they come in here, try to face check me, I'm going to get them. Here we have the nice big wood hammers. They're pushing forward. They need this KO, and they get it not fast enough on that Eldegoss Unite move, and a pretty late Eldegoss Unite. Yeah, they're not going to have that back by two minutes. This needs to be a dedicated farm situation for Zervis, but that's not really some equity that you can give up. Gatlu is low on HP. They pick up a Pollen pop the Hydro Typhoon, kicks them up. That's a late Hydro Typhoon, that is a KO. And now that's tons of experience into the hands of Kabi Challenge. They're finding a way to do it. Now they're finally getting some points in, bringing a little bit of balance to the score sheet. And now, real opportunities lay ahead. Yeah, Kabi Challenge with some amazing plays right there. They're saying, do not count us out. Do not make a mistake because we will punish you for it. And they did. You can see right here, Zervis now having to take this opportunity to find any wild Pokemon that they can so they can charge their Unite move. We should have her Shifu's back, no problem here. 20 seconds now until the first Rayquaza of the Aos Cup. And all of a sudden, this match is a lot closer after that amazing team fight from Kabi Chans. Yeah, finding an opportunity to push and getting their own level 14 on the map, and that's the Dragonite. Now it's going to come down to these secure tools. A decent team fight here and an opportunity to secure. Both teams have that in spades, and now Rayquaza. And here we go. We have Kabi Chans moving in. And, oh, here we go. We actually have Rashifu moving right now, and they're pe they're peeling back. No one's starting with the Unite move yet. Blastoise just trying to zone everyone out from this fight a little bit. The Rock Tomb moving in, possibly looking for a big X Scissor, but getting caught with the Wood Hammer right there. Here comes Buzzwall. Buzzwall picks up Blitz Unite right into the middle there to cut off Gatlu's push. But now Chelvin finds himself on the backside. They rubble roused as well. They've got the huge shield. Hydro Pump coming through off the rapid spin. We're pinching up the tree. They're horn leeching everyone back. They're getting back into the middle. Hydro Typho kicks him up. The Trevor Unite is popped. Eldegoss takes the disguise and gets crash land on Chelvin. They pick them up, and on the backside is this Urshifu finds a KO. The Mew is down. But they're flipping on top of Ray. Ray is getting hit. The split is everywhere. And now finally going to the middle, we have the Espionite Knight picks up two in tandem with Sarayu. Now they're looking for a pivot. Take this guy's the Dragonite. And they're gonna crash land down, but they're gone. More players down. It's just Kata standing. This Blastoise is gonna have to try and make a play, but Sarayu is so low. They're spinning and pumping on top of them, but they're going for the back half scores. Four, three is. This score lead is getting bigger. This is not quite getting taken. is still at low health right now. Sarayu in so much trouble. Needs the base. Needs to make sure they don't get hit by anything, and they do, luckily, here. But we now see Ray, all of the HP coming back. We see 4 free deciding not to continue pushing that huge play with Mew going down. Ray Quaza doesn't look like it's going to get secured. Here's they pick up another KO. What a scary moment there for Four Free as that Blastoise almost picked up the Urshifu KO. Instead, they decide to pull away from Rayquaza. Dragonite on it right now, trying to make something happen while Four Free is dashing to score here in this bottom path. Dragonite still looking for that secure here in the center. Are they able to get it with the Hyper Beam? They are not pushed out of that Ray Pit, and they are gone. And that's what Buzzwool does. A quick little, little uppercut setting that Dragonite out of the pit, keeping them from being able to secure Secure, and then it becomes easy business for four free. That's a game one win, and that's a big one for the squad. Four free looking incredible here outside of that one huge counter push by Kabi Chans. That was amazing, I have to say. Uh, four free just looked like they played the exact game they wanted to play. They invited Kabi Chans here to EU, and they were, you know, they showed them how they play Pokemon. Yeah, and that's a through a buzzwall, and that buzzwall looks solid. Yes, it didn't stack as early, and that's kind of the question that we had. How does uh, these Asian teams limit Buzzwool's strength, and it's by preventing it from stacking? Well, it doesn't really matter how many stacks you get in when you're two levels higher than everybody else. And when Gatlu hit six, everybody else was three, four. And then after that, it just kind of becomes curtains. In the early stages of the game, four freeze, four free. Yeah, great stuff here from 4Free, obviously making a statement there in game number one. I would be shocked if they let this Buzzwool through again, but you're looking at so many huge picks on the side of 4Free. I like a lot of what we had as well on Kabichans, but 4Free, again, it felt like from what we've watched, they just got their exact choice of what they wanted to bring into this game. That was very scary for Kabi Chans. Yeah, just looking at these raw damage numbers, Zervis and Chelvin were pacing kind of higher than their counterparts on the other side, and almost, uh, you know, Chelvin eclipsing the Dragonite on the other side. Here we go. We're going to look at some of the big moments here in this game. This was that fight at that Tier 2 goal zone. You can see Gatlu coming through that Flux zone, looking to make something happen, pushing them off the goal. Buzz will just picking them up, slamming them down, creating so much space for Reggie Alecki to walk in and create a massive score lead early. 
Yeah, there was an opportunity uh, here in a few moments for, for Free to kind of got a little nervous, started using Unite moves at weird times. Um, but I'm glad they were able to couple it back together at the end. This is just a great secure as they're moving forward and able to pressure this goal zone with no real resistance out of Kabi Chans. Yeah, there wasn't much Kabi Chans could do here. Of course, Kabi Chans had a very big moment later in this match when they start picking them off. This was a huge fight. Hydra Typhoon catches all five there on the team. Eldegoss has to take to the skies to keep some of these Pokemon healthy. As the fight continues, we have some massive Unite moves. We have the Eject Unite move from Espeon here, which was really beautiful, grabbing multiple members of Kabi Chans. Yeah, and then making the Dragonite take this, guys, and as soon as it touched back to the ground, it was knocked out. And really, they four players down, but Kata able to stay in there, cause enough pressure, cause enough problems that it really threw the whole thing into a tumble because we weren't sure if 4 free was actually going to win. We had that, you know, suspect Sarayu reset to try and make sure that they could get back in time, and it just fortunately worked out, and Kata decided to back off. Yeah, they had to pull back from this fight. I mean, there were so many great moments in that final fight for both of these teams. Again, that Hydro Typhoon catching all five members of For Free, that could have been a devastating moment for them. Luckily, they were able to farm up some of those wild Pokemon, get the uh, inner, uh, get the Unite move charged up on Eldegoss, which was extremely important. We also had a moment where you could see Eldegoss was going to crash down. Mew kind of knew where they were about to crash and was going to actually pick off that Espeon on the side of 4 Free with a big solar beam, but very smart from 4 Free. They actually pulled away from it. They didn't get to heal as many players as they wanted, but they actually saved themselves from a devastating Mew solar beam. Just incredible heads up play by both of these teams. Yeah, I, I like the the tandem of Zervis and Shelvin right now. They're playing very well together. They played a lot together in UCS season one, as we know, um, qualifying for Worlds together. Um, and you can see that a little bit of understanding what the play is. I'm not even sure the heels for Zervis were trying to pick up uh, the Espeon Zante at all. I think he was focused directly on Chelvin, saying, Absolutely. if I can keep Chelvin standing, we've got another Rock Tomb, and you are just putting them in the blender for Gatlu and uh, Sereyu to just close the door on this Kabi Johns team. Yeah, without question. I think there was definitely a thought that was, if there's any way I can heal all of my team well, that would sure, be yeah. that would be excellent but yes of course crustal was the priority right there keeping this insanely tanky and important defender you know healthy in this fight was massive because if that goes down you you lose all of those setup opportunities between rock tomb and x scissor something i want to highlight that didn't quite pay off um in the fight but was a very good engagement tool you mentioned it that hydro typhoon picked up five players and guess what those players landed in. A forest curse. That Trevi Unite popped by Tomato right under the Blastoise engagement is about as clean as you can ask out of those two players in that moment. Unfortunately, the Mew was kind of caught immediately after that, and they didn't get to use that amazing play to their advantage. Now we can see our teams loading on in here. We are starting with our bands. Blaziken right away, obviously, for free, not wanting to deal with this Blaziken here. They are picking their first band. Hoopa right on the other side. Zoroark once again. And now we're going to see what uh, the final ban is here for Kabichans. Our Same. teams here are switched around, just so if you're watching at home, Kabichans is uh, on the orange side for this one. For free is on your purple side. And first pick, I, I mean, I can't see why you wouldn't bring the Buzzy Boy back. Yeah, I, of course. I mean, the bands remain the exact same. So if I'm for free, I'm like, oh, you guys don't care about this Buzzwool? Well, we certainly do. Grab it first because you can you can choose counters to Buzzwool, but none of them are as solid as just removing it from the game, period. Now, something really interesting. I think this Eldegoss is an amazing counter pick there from Kabi Chans. I mean, that's a really, really strong way to deny Zervis one of their best Pokemon. Also, Hoopa is not there, so we're gonna see what they wanna play without two of their best Pokemon. Well, Zervis is used to playing things like Clefable and Blissey, so I don't think they're just down, not out. However, you did remove the top two Pokemon, but as I mentioned, when you're a support player, the pool is deep enough that you're not losing that much by choosing something else, right? You have your preferences, but at that point, you take a Blissey here, a one sick Bliss assistance on Gatlu, you're telling me you're not happy with that? Come on. 
I want to see what Sereu wants to bring into this match right here. Zervis on this Blissey. It looks like that's what they're going to be locking in. Sereu possibly thinking about bringing out the <laughs> Absol. Let's go. We're going to have to be shredding, too. The HP pools between Kata and Tomato on the side of Combi Chance is nothing to scoff at, which means that these engagements are going to have to be very well communicated for 4 free. Yeah, this is a really interesting draft here on the side of 4Free. I'll, I'll say it feels like they got everything they wanted up until we see this Eldegoss picked out away from them. They still get the Crustle. They still have the Espeon. So many power Pokemon. Zervis, however, on a different look here, running the Blissey and then Absol. Absol can do some amazing work, but when you look at the targets on the side of Kabichans, there isn't that much that you want to dive in on and, and look for some big KOs. You know, you're, it's tough to dive in on on this Trevenant, right. stuff to dive in on this Blastoise. So even with Mew, with such a get out of jail free card with its Unite move, I, I really think that this Absol is gonna need to make some big plays because it could be pretty tough for it out there. I would have loved that last pick to be Glaceon Spraggles, I'm not gonna lie to you. Just an Ice School Spear Glaceon. Just make sure that when Gatlu goes in, they have an opportunity to close the door with the Bliss Assistance, and then you can shred down those high HP pools with that Ice School Spear. However, or free collecting to go different direction. Something I love to see is how there are so many different play styles in Unite. You can see people with the Switch in front of them. Some people play Switch handheld for this tournament. You can see players on mobile. I get asked all the time, what is the best platform to play Pokemon Unite on? And I say the same thing every time. Uh, first, I hit them with the Yeehaw. It's just something that I don't know if you I'll noticed that I do that. I'll I hit him with a yeehaw, and then I say, literally, there are world champion level players playing on every platform, which is amazing. Yes, very much so. We're here, game two, for free, up one. Copy chance back against the wall in the group stage. Time to get after it. Yeah, it's time to make something happen here. For free, your purple team. Kabi Chans, your orange team, as we head here to game number two. For free, looking to close this thing out early. We are up here in this top path just seeing how they want to play it. We can see possibly a little sneaky stacking happening here on the side of Zervis. Yeah, a little bit of a, a rope-a-dope situation. Take the focus on to Zervis as they're grabbing all the berries. And really, what's that doing? It's letting Gatlu get their level four very easily, and I don't think they particularly care if Zervis gets knocked out here. Look at the attention that they leashed all the way around. Now Zervis is going to make it out. No, I don't think uh, Gatlu took that wild Pokemon, but it doesn't seem to matter. Yeah, I mean, you could see Zervis right there. Uh, they were resigned to the fact that it wasn't going to go well for them. They were fine with that. But here we go. Ooh. The Dragoner's making a huge Skull Bash into the Water Gun right there. Gotlu having to take both of these berries, but somehow makes it out of a really tough engagement for them. Still a little time on the clock before we have the bird spawning for both these teams. Absol heading to the bottom path here on the side of For Free. Yeah, it looks like 4-free, probably because 4-free has been dominating this bottom path. So you send uh, you send Sarayu down with the Absol to try and really see if you can turn the tides there. Actually, Alex to pivot right back upstairs, seeing that there's a 3-v-2. And we're going to go for an engagement here, right into the back line, repositioning Gatlu. They're going for the KO. Here comes Sarayu for the smoke. And Kata going to be able to just walk away. Yeah, Kata able to walk away here. I mean, obviously, Squirtle could just do so much right there. Jumping in, trying to make a huge KO happen, but not able to pick it up on that drag. Air, almost getting it. I have to assume we did not have a critical hit from Absol right there or it would have went down. No, I agree completely. Uh, cur courtesy, or excuse me, kudos to Sarehu for backing up in that moment as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we can see they're heading towards this central area right here, getting ready for this eight minute fight. We've got Mew here, so we have a massive solar beam or electro ball opportunities. They're pushing in, throwing some damage towards for free. And we can see Kabichon's doing much better at the start of this game. Yeah, maybe the nerves have finally left their body. They're gaming a little bit, and they're finding their mark, and they're finding their targets. They actually showed up collectively as a better team there than 4-Free did to contest those uh, Altarian Swablu, and because of that, they got all. Yeah, really great stuff from Kabichan so far. You can see that this is a completely different look from game number one, and I wonder if some of these Pokemon that they stole away from them, taking away the Eldegoss, taking away the Hoopa so that they can't get that, and then forcing them onto the Absol has really just proved to be, you know, a bit of a, a, a huge counter to 4-3. Oh, nice engagement picking up two there. Go a little uh, Egg Palm action, or excuse me, yes, Egg Palm action to displace. So Zervis is doing well, giving up opportunities to Sereu, but they're not landing these knockouts, Brady. Yeah, I mean, that was just such 
such a clutch moment for that Blastoise to evolve right there, being invulnerable the moment they are evolving, because it looked like they were able to pick up a huge KO. Because we have both these teams running down to this bottom path right here, and we have a huge chase down for this Absol. Well, they're looking to get it. We have the Unite move from you coming in with the huge Surf. Nice Surf, and now Copy Chance is looking to pivot back on top of this objective. It is quickly taken by this Dragonite, and now Four Freeze finding themselves on their own goal pad, saying, what can we do now? Rock Tomb is not going to space anybody out with the Eldegoss, but it doesn't really matter because they can choose the pop right at the top. X scissor on the tree into the wall. They're looking for the follow-up. Trapped in the rock tomb, but they actually eject back through another going to score. This goal zone is going to be closed out with a differential of 12. And look at this. Kabi Chans is humming. Yeah, completely different from game number one. Kabi Chans in control. I'm not sure if it's the Absol. I'm not sure if it's not having the Eldegoss, but something about this is very, very different for the side of for free. And everything looks about the same from Kabi Chans. Nice Gat loop poach on the blast toys. Half HP, but now we're spinning to win here right on top of the pad. We're going back. Nice. Absol Unite. That's everybody with low HP. They need to close the door. The tree is going to be gone. Looking look for another opportunity. They're collapsing on the goal zone. Nice little dragon dance to get the space. Two players down, and we're looking to fight. Gatlu keeps yeeting that turtle shell like Super Mario out here. And now they're pivoting on top of the Reggie Alecki. Blissey's securing that. Reggie Alecki flying in the face of Kabi Chans. What can they do? Beautiful stuff here from 4 Free. I mean, we had an attempt at a steal there with that Hyper Beam. Once again, catching just about everybody with that Hydro Yo. Typhoon as Blastoise is moving on in here. Gatlu trying to make something happen, but cannot. Those Unite moves are, are just beautiful on the from Kata. Kata is crushing it right now. And now Zante and Zervis trying to have to try and hold this down, but fruitless endeavor as they peel back. So are you going to get a 40 banger in downstairs? As look at Kabi Chan's five player movement through the map now. And that's just going to cause static and problems. And now they're taking everything and for free central. Yeah, it's going to be really tough for four free right here with Kabi Chan's having this lead. You can see how aggressive they are right now. Sereyu walking into multiple members of Kabi Chan's right here. 15 seconds until our objective spawns here in the bottom path. Tomato moving forward right here to see if they can make something happen. Missing with their horn leech, but still a ton of damage being put out as Mew just continues to be relentless right here. Coaching into Electro Ball. Nice big absolute Unite looking to take down Mew and they do the big one-shot combo. Looking for the next opportunity. Eldegoss is low, but Zoreyu actually bubbled out. Chelvin needs to get into his back line to try and facilitate some knockouts. Zante's looking for an opportunity. There's the Rubble Rouse right into the Espeon Unite. Tree is low. They collapse on Tomato. Tomato's gone. Now this Registeel looks like it's going to be four freeze as the rest of Kabi Chans is forced to just pivot away. This Blastoise, though, pulling down to see what's going on. Yeah, Kabi Chans actually ready to defend right here. I'm not sure if four free is aware of it, but here they come with the Mew Unite move pushing forward right here. Blastoise putting in some serious work with that rapid spin and hydro, and excuse me, and hydro pump. So they're just able to push them off of this goal zone. They were ready for it, and they didn't really take any damage from it. Very well played by Kabi Chans, right? Giving up just the Absol for, for free is at least a best case scenario in that moment. But that was a great defense, a little bit of a trap to lull them in and able to get a quality KO, not bad for business. Now this is something, ooh, big Unite move here onto the Absol. We could be looking for a fight as Dragonite is all alone in the top path, just able to secure that by themselves. Crustle looking for something, X scissoring outside of this engagement right here as Espeon is trying to pull back four members of Kabi Chuns in this central area. They pick up a KO, they pick up the Reggie Alecki, everything is going great for Copy Chance here as they are kind of pushing towards this tier two. Yeah, now they're sitting on the doorstep. Zervis is going to have to jump top to try and give some support here. Tomato sent flying out of there, but this Reggie Alecki is looking to hit. We are spinning on top right. Ooh, nice Trevor Unite into the buzz. Will Unite Hydro Typhoon kicks up more. Kata's relentless with those. Now we have the Absolute Unite back the other way trying to pick up some KOs, but the Reggie Alecki is going to hit Spraggles, and we've got a complete script flip from game one. It's, it, it's absolutely everything that went right for four free is going right for Kabi Chans right now, almost in a in exactly similar situation. But for free, down by a lot here. They have two tier one goal zones up. We're gonna have to see what they want to do. They also used a few Unite moves in that engagement, so they're gonna need to take their time, you know, KOing some of these wild Pokemon and charging up their Unites. It looks like in this match, Kabi Chans really has for free's number. Every single fight, they just have a better strategy inside of it. They really, really do. Now Chelvin kind of taking the brunt 
of that Muse attack force here is now that base Reggie is going to hit the map, and we just got to see how they're going to play it. It looks like uh, For Free really would like to get this. They are starting this objective. Multiple members of Copy Chandra's watching it right here. We're going to see what they want to do. They're not able to steal it. They're actually going to let them take it here and then peel back and get ready for this next fight. No Unite move on Buzzwell yet. No Unite move on Blissey yet. Uh, and on the other side, no Unite move on Trevenant. No Unite move on Eldegoss. So we're going to have to see how both of these teams want to play it. Obviously, Copy Chans is in a great spot right now. They don't need to do anything except let For Free make a mistake. Yeah, Chelvin trying to space out the defensive counterpart on Copy Chans, uh, Tomato. Tomato just going to front line very well. They're buying time. Yeah, and that's all that they want to do right now is drain the clock. With less than two minutes left, they know that For Free needs to make some massive plays right here. And all they have to do, just let them make some big mistakes, let a couple Pokemon get caught, and you are winning this thing, and we're heading to a game number three. Nice big solar beam. The Absol's still okay from it here, but just some good chip damage. Absol moving on, man, maybe getting a little too deep. Sreyu almost down. Bliss assistance comes and saves it. Buzzwool moving in. Well, now Trevor Unite pops up, and they're trying to follow up. Three players get caught in that Rabble Rouser by Chelvin going to keep them standing as they were caught alone. Now we're looking to pivot, but this thing settled out back immediately. We kind of threw a bunch of resources at each other. Everything fizzled out. Now we're going back. Gatlu poaches the tree, but can't quite get the KO. Blastoise running the cover with the spin. Now Sarayu eats an Electro Ball. They're half HP. Everybody's on the hunt for them, and that's a big time KO for Kabi Chans. Can they leverage that? Yeah, I mean, huge play right there. Time is ticking down. They're actually starting this Rayquaza because if they can take it off the map, there's absolutely no chance for For Free to do anything right here. Just baiting them into this engagement. Got Lou here in this top path watching this as we have Trevenant moving down. Blastoise getting caught by the Espeon Unite, but it does not do too much as Espeon goes down. Buzzwool is going down. Only Blissey is left, and Kabi Chans is going to take game number two, tying it up here in our first series at the AL's Cup. Yeah, whatever defense 4 Free is trying to mount here doesn't really matter because what they need to is Rayquaza, and what they're getting certainly is that big dragon in the middle. What incredible stuff right here. I mean, we saw just a shaky game on the side of Copy Chance, right? A dominant performance from Four Free. And then immediately the script has been flipped, which, you know, I've heard that you're not even allowed to do in Hollywood these days, but they did flip this script. Now Copy Chance with a dominant game two. Well, I mean, look at it this way. The script is read from left to right by EU and right to left by this Japanese team, which means the script might have been flipped, but it reads the same Spraggles we got there. That's really important that the script uh, is flipped but reads the same. I think that's huge as we look at the score. Huge difference, 149 to 639, tying up this series, and it really felt like the draft was a huge problem from, from 4 Free. They just got pound, counter picked very hard. Uh, Absol did not feel like it was it, and it's really tough when Kata is hitting the best Hydro Typhoons I've ever seen multiple times in one game. And that Mew. Uh, from Kabi Chans was absolutely devastating right here. Kabi Chans must be feeling pretty good. Really, uh, their strategy just seemed to be can we shut down Zervis? As you talked about before, these support players being so important. They took away the Hoopa, they took away the Eldegoss. We're taking a look at some of the big moments from that last game. Huge Unite from Absol, but this happens so many times where even though they get a really good start to an engagement, they are not able to clean up these fights. Yeah, and this actually turns into a massive trap as they're trying to work on Reggie Alecki, but Copy Chance is buying just enough time to be able to sit and restore on pad, and then they actually get Katlu knocked out here, which we're about to see after the sick four-player Hydro Typhoon. Yeah, these Hydro Typhoons have been so beautiful here from Copy Chance. They've just set up so many amazing moments. We have the fight here down in this bottom path for this uh, Reggie Steel, which actually went pretty well for 4 Free. There were a few good bottom path fights for 4 Free, but the match really started turning once this Tier 2 got pushed in. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're firing off Unite moves here at the three-minute mark, and that's just resources going down to try and make sure that the dam doesn't burst. But tough luck, kid. That crack was big enough. That dam is burst, and those points went in. And we can see Espeon trying to make something happen right here, just really trying to stay alive inside this fight and didn't want to get KO'd in that moment. Not able to make anything happen with their Unite move. After Absol was caught, it was just, you know, the dominoes kept falling on the side of 4 Free. And now they have a big question, you know, what are they going to do here in this next draft? How important is Buzzwool, or, or how important is something like Eldegoss? It seems like they needed it. You know what, Eldegoss might have made some difference there, Spraggles, but to me, the night and day difference between Sereyu's Absol and that Wicked Blow Urshifu cannot be understated. 
It's another secure tool, but most importantly, because it has some of that hindrance, has some of that uh, hindrance resistance when it's trying to use its moves, it's able to work through a hydro typhoon. It's able to work some through some of the static, the tree, things like that, that they were trying to insulate themselves behind. And that to me is a difference. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a huge difference in that match. We're gonna see if they wanna pull that out. Player of the game, Rom from Kabi Chans on the Mew. That Mew was amazing. You saw the resets from Electro Ball coaching. You know, every time you're coaching, lowering that cooldown there of Electro Ball. And you just saw the relentless boosted attacks and Electro Balls come out from Rom. A dominant Mew performance. It felt like, felt like they were kind of shut down game number one. Well, game number two, it looked incredible, even with Absol, which I think was looked at as a Mew counter. Yeah, uh, but just as well was, of course, that Urshifu. Of course, Rom holding that Azumarill, showing us what Pokemon they're probably never going to pick today. <laughs> I think it's possible. We get 117,000 damage, by the way, on uh, that Mew, which is insane. Nine knockouts, able to put 130 points on the board. And uh, again, especially when you have a team that is as coordinated and as good as these teams, you see a build like coaching Mew just have so much value. Of course, and they were finding their targets. They were securing objectives with Electro Ball. They were leveraging that very well, and actually quite often using it on Chelvin to keep Chelvin from being able to have a real full HP engagements, kind of chunking them at half HP right off the rip, which makes it very difficult for a Crustle to get into that frontline X's or multiple targets behind a Rock Tomb because they will immediately blender themselves with that Rock Tomb because everything focus fires into the middle and they just don't have the sustain to get in and out of there. I am very interested to see what happens here in game number three. I mean, Four Free looked so amazing in game one, and then we had just a complete flip here in game number two. You could see on their faces, I mean, they were riding high after game number one. Uh, game two looked so different, and I think it's, it is worrisome for the team because not a lot was changed on the side of Kabichans. You know, they picked a, a, a different look there for their supporter. They grabbed that Eldegoss, uh, but a few things changed for Four Free, and they did not work. No, they did not. We're going to see where they go. I mean, these bands are staying the same so far. Um, is the Zorak where they want to stop them? Yes, it is. So again, really relying on this homework that they've done previous to this matchup, knowing how important it is. And uh, because of that, they forced this thing to a game three. Eldegoss yes. first pick by Kabi Chans, and they're putting it to Zervis saying, what can you actually do, my friend? I mean, I love this pick. I have to say, I absolutely love it. I think it's a great counter for for free, and I think they're, they're going to have a difficult time dealing with this here. But now we have the counter right back grabbing away that buzz wall, which has been so incredibly impactful from Kata. I love this from Chelvin, and they might even have the opportunity to do some switch ups if you want a little bit more of an offensive presence. I don't think that's where they'll go, but it's just something to keep in mind here. As we have a quick lock in the Mew, why not? Rom wants it, Rom gets it, and tree for tomato, and I think you'd have to pry that Pokemon out of their hands if you have to. I think so, as we see our next two picks here on the side of For Free. Zante on the Espeon has looked incredible. Zervis, however, hovering this Umbreon. So we could see, you know, that kind of that kind of supportive, mean look, wish Umbreon uh, out of Zervis right here on the side of For Free. I think that's exactly what we're gonna see, Spragos, which makes this last pick for For Free even more paramount because they're going to be lacking a little bit in the heels from their support player. How are they going to adjust for that? And we've got some ranged monsters. Yes, we do. We kind of got the double beam set up, it looks like, here on the side of Kabichan. So you've got the two solar beams coming out. Now, it's always possible we could see a Petal Dance Venusaur wanting to get in there and fight, but I have a feeling we're going to see some insane range here on the side of Kabichan. Still with the Dragonite, you know, it's, it's nice for them because it's not a Pokemon that has much priority for a lot of our NA EU teams that we watch oftentimes. So they can get it late in the draft, and they've been doing an amazing job with it. Sereyu, on the other hand, ditching the Absol back to that Urshifu that was so incredibly dominant in game one. And I have to say, if you got somebody in a mean look, that's one of the easiest wicked blows you could ever find. You better believe it. Um, Chelvin and Zervis are going to have to mean look out of their minds. And I want to see Chelvin eject button and surf back towards the team to set up some quality knockouts on this Venusaur, on this Mew. Pick up some traps, lay them down, and let Sereyu go to work. I'm wondering how devastating this Eldegoss pick is going to be. I mean, we can see, uh, I really think they feel like they have found, they have cracked the code on 
free. If they take this Pokemon away, if they take Hoopa away, Zervis is in a lot of trouble. We're going to see what Zervis can bring out here with Umbreon. You know, it's a very different play style than obviously these ranged supporters like Eldegoss. It really is, but if there's one support player that can do it, it's certainly Zervis, captain of the Tallybobo Believers that won on this stage last year. Of course, an anchor for this four free squad, kind of a, a real mental warrior for them. So if they say Umbreon, I'd say give them Umbreon. Yeah, and here we go, everybody. We are loading in right now to game number three here. We're going to see which team is going to move forward in this group stage. Kabi Chans, your purple team. For free, your orange team all tied up in our first set of the day. And they're looking to go to work. Chelvin in the bottom path, unsurprisingly. Zante needs to try and get online with his Espeon and Tomato. The relentless phantom going straight at him, no fear. Yeah, and here we go, just looking to see which side can get some better secures here, and that Mew is doing an amazing job. They're continuing to push towards all of their Pokemon here, seeing what they can pick up. Tomato in some trouble, but it is a Trevenant. It is able to make its way out there. Really great stuff to start from Copy Chance. Yep, Galu able to actually grab that wild Pokemon out from under Copy Chance. Good, decent start for them, but they really want Zervis to tick over to Umbreon. And here we go. We have the Dragonair sort of moving towards the central area, seeing if they can get vision on Sereyu coming up. They do know Sereyu is there, pushing them back right there with their auto attacks, setting up their Dragon Dance as they get ready for this fight. Got loot not yet five here in this top path. We're going to see how this goes as they push forward towards these birds. Big boosted attack from Venusaur right there, and they're able to secure a decent amount on the side of Copy Chance. Yeah, but don't undersell the Wicked Blow. Able to take a couple for Sereyu, exactly what they wanted to establish with Sereyu heading to the top path in that little skirmish. And now poaching the bundle, be taking it for themselves. And you really see the value that Buzzwool brings in these early stages of the game. Tons of pressure on top of Sereyu. Eldegoss is there for this support, but here comes Gatlu. They want that action. They're going to get that action. Sereyu going for the gauge. Dragon is a half HP. Can they get the KO? Eldegoss does. But now Gatlu scrapping up, and Zante's attention is peeled back by the Mew. And now everybody's getting low. Can they at least get a courtesy Eldegoss? Break. They're not able to get the Eldegoss, but they were able to chase out the Mew. Ooh, Eldy getting very, very low right here, almost being picked up, but we can see the Dragonair moving forward, trying to stop them right there. Here comes Tomato, looking for a big wood hammer, not able to make much happen yet. We see Sereyu moving into the central area here, looking for a pickup with the Wicked Flow. They don't turn towards the uh, wild Pokemon noob snacks. They take down the tree. Well, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, Kung Fu Masters are known for being able to break a piece of lumber or two, and I'll tell you what, Tomato just got cut. I've never heard that. You've never heard that? I'm, I'm lying. I have heard that. All right. Okay, there you go. And that's that's that beautiful pause that you and I like to work in every broadcast at one point. I'm surprised we did it so early. You know, it's really nice when you have a flow, but every once in a while, hey, everyone calm down a little bit. Let's just take an awkward pause and get ready for a next fight right here in this top path. We do have the Pedal Dance Venusaur. I said it was a possibility that we see this in this match. Nice big pickup there. That's the mean look into that Dragonair. Sereyu in some trouble right now being pushed back in this fight. But we've got a different look than I expected from this Venu, but I thought, you know, it's all always possible they want to brawl with this thing and they do yeah you know double beam was certainly an option they said no we have a secure tool let's get this front line and let's have another way to create space and Venusaur just existing there certainly does that first to the mark here is this Chelvin as a war turtle can't quite get the blast away. he's taking that boosted auto they're sitting at level six red ice is at half and we're going to square off with our secure devices here and the hyper gets it done. So Rayu quickly repositioned, caught the mean look so they don't get quite out, get KO'd right off the rip, but Dragonite closing the door. Yeah, really great stuff there from Copy Chons. I mean, if you let a Dragonite hang out around an objective, charging up that Dragon Dance, making sure that Hyper Beam is incredibly powerful, they are able to take it away from you. 85 to 8, Copy Chons in control once again here at the start of game number three. Feels a little bit more manageable, though, compared to some of the other six-minute marks we've seen between these other games uh, and this one specifically. So there's no real uh, necessity to get too nervous yet for free. You just have tons of time. And here we go. Copy Chun's moving up here. Nice big horn leech into this bush right here. Tomato being picked up into the mean look. The wood hammers, you know, knocking a few members of for free into a stun right there as they are just getting set up to take this Reggie Alecki. Not really anything for free can do to stop it. Another one heads over to the side of Copy Chun's. Yeah, my problem with uh, Zervis's mean looks right now is they always seem to hit Tomato and not really any of those prime targets you really like to trap. I say that and of course Rom goes down on the view and now we're going after Zervis. Zervis is low HP. 
Ice Neon Unite going to space out this Venusaur, but Gatlu's pulling after him. They uppercut them out of the action, and Chelvin's looking for a way in. They surf Kata back towards their own base, see if they can reposition. Dragonite Unite is out there flipping the script back the other way. Chipped up quickly by the Cotton Spore, and now there's two players down for four free immediately off the back of Tomato in that engagement. Trevor and Unite is out. Gotlu uses theirs, but now they just have to reel and back up because this Copy Chance team is grueling. Reggie Alecki doesn't go in, but it does not matter for Copy Chance as they win a massive fight there, push for free back, and continue to increase that score lead. 182 to 38, and it feels like everything is going amazing for Copy Chance here in game number three. It, it feels like game number one from four free is such a distant memory as we're closing in on the last five minutes here of game three. Well, we're looking for an opportunity. There's four minutes, 45 seconds left, which is plenty of time in a 10 minute game as it turns out. However, this bottom objective is here. Venusaur is gonna be last, but we might have a whole fight for this thing. Here we go, we have this Dragonite just still charging up near this objective. Sereyu getting some good positioning on it as well. Nice big Solar Beam moves in right here. We're gonna see how these teams wanna fight this. Here comes the Surf into a big Hydro Typhoon. Regirock extremely low, secured there by 4-3. Nice, they needed that for the experience, of course. Chalvin getting good spacing. A Hydro Typhoon was decent. It didn't actually catch any targets, but it forced a bunch of stuff out of Kabi Chans in that instant, which means they couldn't focus on the Reggie. And now a nice little poach into the Wicked Blow. Rom goes down again, and those are the targets that you're trying to engage with as this four free team. Yeah, if you're able to set up those combinations, grabbing that squishy Pokemon, Venusaur would be a good option too if it hasn't hit a Giga Drain yet. Grabbing it, pulling it towards the team, setting up a massive wicked blow and you just got that one two punch and a pretty instant ko on these squishier pokemon yeah look quickly repositioning kata saying kata you want to get in here let's try and of course now we're punching using the unite move venusaur goes down and now the umbreon unite pops as well they're looking for an opportunity and they're starting to work on this reggie Alecki. Closing the gap is the Eldegoss. Knife surf spacing on top of the Dragonite, forcing them far away from this objective. Hyper Beam comes through, but it doesn't matter. Secured by Sereyu. Yeah, beautiful play there from 4 Free. You could see they were waiting, sort of making sure that they didn't try to take that too fast because they knew that Solar Beam was coming from Mew, and they wanted to make sure they were able to get the objective there. Really nice stuff from 4 Free. They've had a couple of moments that have been really fantastic under this five-minute mark, but still, they are behind. 222 to 38. Yeah, oh! Wow, nice repositioning on the Aselgore and just absolutely gripping that buff out from under Sereyu. Nice little play. Yeah, the positioning there from Woodhammer, you can see they were able to angle it so that the side of the Woodhammer catches the wild Pokemon. Of course, you can do this to enemy players as well, and it repositions them to the center. So you see top Trevenant players set up plays like this all the time. Yeah, great work in tandem between the defender and support players to be able to take that buff without needing a lot of firepower behind them. Just clever plays and <laughs> clever repositioning to take that. And here we go. We have multiple members here of 4 Free heading down to this bottom path. We're going to see if they want to try to get this objective as we have a few players from Kabichon's not available to fight just yet. Moving in with the wood hammer though, it looks like they're gonna start this thing, at least push them back. Yeah, the frame between the horn leech and the surf can't quite reposition tomato like they had hoped. But now Gatlu does find tomato. Tomato going low again. Gatlu with the follow-up. Now this Reggie Rock is at half. We've got the Dragonite lined up, ready to go. Zervis is trying to move in. Can anybody wicked blow this thing down? No, because it's secured by the Hyper Beam. Now Ray hits the map. It looks like that was a really unfortunate situation where Regirock, I think, pushed Sereyu back. And because it pushed Sereyu back right there, they were not able to complete their combo that they set up on Tomato, the Trevenant. Uh, I can't tell if that's exactly what happened, but I, I do think they almost had a KO right there that was just thwarted by Regirock, the paid actor for every enemy team. I mean... Look at this. Kami Chan's immediately tried to almost pivot into a fight to see if 4 Free would bungle it up and walk into them while they had the buffs. But look at this positioning by 4 Free, complete rotation. Yeah, 4 Free getting pretty aggressive right here, and they're looking to pick something up. Gotlu maybe looking to grab something on this Mew right here. Oh, real heads up play. They know Gotlu is there, but they're able to pick up the Venusaur into the mean look. Here comes the Wicked Blow. Are they able to pick up this KO, though? No, they are not. They move on to the Eldegoss now. Hydro Typhoon kicks out, but we're moving back. Reservus is looking for an opportunity. They already used their United as well. We're pivoting back. There's one player down, two players down from three players down from four free. Immediately Mew pops their Unite move, scrambling back and got loose full HP almost. They can make a move here. Chelvin's very low. We're going to have to look for an absolute steal situation. Chelvin's looking for an opportunity. Gatlu's using everything they've got in the tank. Ray Quaze is at 2%. Hyper Beam's early, but the Mew secures. Huge secure there from Kabi Chans, and there really was just not enough that four free could do. They were looking for a possible Hail Mary there with that Hydro Pump 
seeing if they could get the secure, but they could not. Copy Chons looked at as one of the best teams in the world, one of the top teams in Japan at least, and they are showing up here in the AOS Cup, taking down what is looked at as one of the best teams in EU in our first series of the day. Who would have thought that targeting down service was the recipe for success to dismantle 4 free with so many strong players on that team? They go after the captain straight for it. Four players down for 4 free. We're in garbage time because Kabi Chans is going to win this one. Incredible stuff there from Kabi Chans. Going from a really, really difficult game number one and turning the entire thing around in game two and three. You can see that they're very excited about that win, obviously, coming off such a shaky game one to have an amazing game two and three. Must feel pretty great. I mean, very dominant, especially in game two. Signs of life out of four free after that five minute mark. You know, some quick confidence builders getting that basement Reggie, decent fight upstairs on the following Reggie Alecki, but they couldn't convert that after the Paid actor Reggie Rock bubbles out Sarayu, can't secure that loud objective, and it almost seemed like that was like wind out of the sails. Yeah, incredible stuff from Kabi Chans. You know, the big question was, are we going to see one of the invited teams from Japan just come through and dominate this thing? And I think a team that everyone is worried about is Kabi Chans. And you can see why in this game, even after a shaky game one, they were not shook. They were confident, they knew what they needed to do, they adjusted, and they took a huge win off of for free. That huge win is an understatement. That's a great way to start. On stage, in this group, one of the best, best scraps we've seen in a minute between top teams. And we're taking a look at the uh, the damage numbers here. Zervis 9K, Chalvin 15K, and that is shades different than what we saw in game one. Yeah, I mean, really, Really great stuff from Kabi Chans. They were able to shut down for free. I don't know if for free really had a plan if they did not get either Koopa or Eldegoss. I like some of the looks from Zervis, some of the mean looks, obviously. But even when they, you know, nailed them, they got them onto Venusaur with Petal Dance Giga Drain. It was just able to weather the storm throughout that. And you saw them not able to take it down. They were expending so many resources on this one Pokemon, but it stayed standing throughout this fight. Kabi Chans again here taking game two. You can see the numbers on the screen. I've got to tell you that Dragonite too, the toughest thing about it is you can't leave it alone for even a moment. It will take any objective off the map. It really, really, really does. And Kabi Chans builds well around it to make sure that you don't really have the time or the space to get to the Dragonite. And that is part and parcel because of Kata, who absolutely came alive here in game two and three and was just uh, an oppressive force for Kabi Chans, just in the face. Hydro Typhoons, four or five players in game two. This uh, Giga Drain Pedal Dance Venusaur in the face, causing static, causing trouble, so they could never get on top of Dragonite to keep them from easily securing objectives. And like you said, if you give Dragonite every single moment in the world to secure an objective, it's gonna do it 10 out of 10 times. Yeah, and here we go. You can see some of the big moments from this match right here. This is a push onto this uh, tier two goals, and this is match number one when 4 Free was just absolutely dominating. Yeah, I mean, it was a good look by them, no questions asked, and the difference apparently was the Eldegoss. I think the Eldegoss is a huge difference maker right here for free, just, you know, taking every opportunity to fight and win, really only having one tough moment at all in match number one. Yeah, right. and this is the absolute, maybe its brightest moment was right here, using that Unite move and getting a follow-up KO on Tomato. But that's about all the positive you can say about that Absol. It was not what the doctor ordered. Yeah, unfortunately, they were not able to do enough with it here in game number two for, for four free. Kabi Chans, it felt like every time four free was trying to take something off them, they just had such an amazing counter punch, such an amazing counter play. Anytime they pushed onto a goal zone, they were ready for it. And we can see this tier two getting a lot of action in, in all of these games, as now we have Kabi Chans pushing here in game number two. Yeah, and again, we see the Absol Unite for almost no real value as Kabi Chans is just able to hang in there, hang in the pocket, score their points, and I mean, it just kind of run a rough shot through 4 free. Yeah, 4 free just having a lot of trouble here. Now we're on to game number three. We can see that Venusaur, and every time they catch it in the mean look, every time they pick it up with Buzzwall, these are nice moments that 4 free would be looking for a KO, but with the Giga Drain, you know, if you've got that huge amount of damage reduction, and at the same time, you have all the resets on it to heal yourself. So they push forward in this fight, get a massive catch right there, and then they are down. Three players down, and from there, it was over for four free. 
Hobby Chan's taking a massive game one win. One thing I want to kind of draw everybody's attention to if you're paying attention to the bottom part of the screen is actually the ban percentage rates of those Pokemon in UCS Blaziken sitting at 0%, Zorark sitting at 2%, and uh, what kind of nightmares are Kabi Chan's going to be able to drum up <laughs> if you don't have the research on them and you give them one of those two Pokemon? Because it looked rough without them, and if For Free did their homework and says we absolutely can't contend with that, I am afraid to see what Kabi Chan's can do when they have them. Yeah, obviously there was something they were very worried about, but at the same time they should have been worried about a lot more. We have an interview on the main stage with our winning team team right now. We're going to throw it on over to them. Wonder Chef, take it away. Thank you very much. We're here with Noda from Kabi Chans. Congratulations. A great set. Uh, I have to ask, how did it feel after game number one when it was very one-sided for 4 free? Right. So we basically just, you know, talked about how to get back to the game. We swapped a little bit, a uh, few things, and just wanted to make it, you know, make it better for the next game. Okay, great comeback. And then I have to ask, how does it feel to be here in London representing Japan in an international competition? えっと、日本代表として、この we're the strongest team in Japan. We want to show that we are the strongest team around and that's what we came to show to everybody. All right. Uh, is there my final question? Is there one team that you would like to play in this competition? One team it's going to be Luminosity from America. Uh, all right, in the open bracket. Well, thank you again. Congratulations one more time. They're going to be moving forward, but I'm going to send it back to the casters to take it away. had their number, but you saw Thank the you. counter picks in the draft. You saw the level at which they can play, the level at which both of these teams can play. They said they were worried about one team, the world champs, North America's Luminosity. Okay. Worried about them? Maybe, maybe not. Willing to prove yourself against them? Definitely, but it's up to Luminosity to make it out of that open bracket first. Let's take a look at our MVP for that third game. Yeah, player of the game, Vitopo on Dragonite, and we talked about it. You just can't leave this Dragonite alone with any objective, and I love the play here from Kabi Chuns. Every time that they had even the slightest advantage in one of these fights, Boom, they move Dragonite to the subjective, they start hitting it, forcing the enemy team into some really bad positions. They can decide to either continue ripping some of these objectives down, or they can turn right on the enemy team and start fighting them. And we saw them play, you know, both of those options inside of these matches. It worked amazing for kabi -chans. And again, Dragonite's one of those Pokemon, it's just really hard to counter pick it because right. a lot of teams don't play it, and you're probably not going to ban it because obviously they have a Zorark that they're very worried about. Right. And that's, <laughs> when you have a team with that much depth, you literally can't ban everything. So you need to have strategies for all the rest. And um, as good as the homework that For Free did to identify the correct bans that they believed in those moments, they didn't quite solve the puzzle of this Dragonite, and they thought they did. But the Eldegoss started getting taken. And yeah. we, we there was just the right brick to pull from the Jenga tower to make it collapse. Yeah, I mean, that was the big thing. I think they noticed, and I've, you know, I've heard from a lot of these players how different regions play the draft differently. And one thing I was told by some members of Exile was they would notice that a lot of the Japanese teams would really, you know, use draft to isolate a player and take away some of their best options. And yep. I think they absolutely did that with Zervis. We had some good looks from Zervis, some good setups, but clearly that player is way more at home on Eldegoss or Hoopa. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Hoopa, Pokemon I threw on my list of Pokemon to watch. And, I mean, I think there's something you could say. If it keeps getting banned out, it's probably pretty darn good. Yeah, we all didn't throw Dragonite on there. <laughs> nope. we, but maybe nope. we should have. Maybe we should have put Dragonite on that list.
Ooh, nice little tweet. That's Blaine, the coach of nouns. Three hours till the Swiss bracket starts. Up a little early. Maybe can't get sleep because there's a lot on the lawn, uh, a lot on the line specifically for nouns today. There's also a lot on the lawn. I would like to say. You know, I don't think you were even wrong in mentioning that. You can see those are. That is a word. That is a word. We're heading into the Excel Center here, live in London, where all of these teams are competing. Now, Blaine Nouns Esports. They are playing in our open bracket, which again, of course, you can see that over on the United. Night Battle Hub stream if you want to take a look at that. Ooh, what a beautiful tweet right here. Doob Snacks reporting from the squat position all weekend. And you can see a little Sableye back there, a little gentleman. Yeah, a little gentleman. I love the Sableye representation. This pretty much nails one of my fits to the T, which is hyper impressive and something I was super excited about. I got to tell you, the face on that is kind of scaring me. It feels like that's what you would look like at a nightmare of mine. Okay, fair. I mean, I guess. Here we go. We got our glasses. Utah from Nouns Esports ready to go. They're repping Nouns here as they're looking to move forward in that open bracket. Yeah, uh, I believe the kids call those noggles. Those, the kids call those noggles. That's what those are. I'm not always in on what the kids are calling things. Well, you knew what, you knew what uh, a lawn was. I did, of course. Which is something that most people at home don't know what it is. I think most. Um, so I think I think you get a break on the Noggles thing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have some more incredible Pokemon Unite action coming up very soon. Obviously, on this main broadcast, we're looking at all of the group, uh, these big group games. But we will be right back here in just a moment. We're going to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. Don't I go will anywhere. be mad at you personally. Don't even really be. move the position you're in. I kind of want you to do a whole freeze while we're on break. We like, will too. We will too. Hey, I'm Sareyu, I play for, for free as a jungler and I am from France. Mm. Honestly, I don't know because I don't know the level of people on stage. I don't know, maybe we will be in a different meta with some team popping up. So I, we're just going to respect all our opponents and play our best. So if I have to say something, it will probably be Nouns right now. Nouns is from EU, but uh, we will see. Um, it will be my first uh, international and official LAN from Pokemon Unite because I could not be there for others. Uh, it will be... I mean, I think it will mean a lot, honestly, because uh, I have players that compete, competed in like other years on um, international competition, they never won. I mean, uh, there was one, but it was like EU one, it was not like worldwide, so... Now there will be every region, Gatlu was also like uh, one best of five to win the World Cup, so... I think it will mean a lot to the team, probably even more for my mates than myself. And 2023 NAIC, game against TTV and Amaterasu, I think I was playing Sableye. There was, a, there was this game where I spun as a Sableye in tier 1 after using ult instead of immediately scoring. And that score, uh, that score not making it made us lose the game. Actually, my jungler uh, punched me after, uh, after that. After that. <laughs> it, yeah, in my shoulder. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm trying to think if I have something hype, like or something funny to put in, but I don't think. I don't think so. I think my most embarrassing moment is when we lost March, because it was the only up to now. It was the only regional tournament that that we lost. Like out of the, the 12 Brazilian tournaments that there were, we won 11. Like so, the one we lost is like kind of annoying because it's really like it. It makes the record like not perfect. Like, oh, okay, we have like a 93% win rate. Okay, not 100. It's really annoying that's not 100 because like you could have won. Like, it's it so close. Yeah, that's the most, I, I want to say embarrassing, but like the most in annoying moment. I, I, have a, I have a lot, honestly. Okay, I, I have a good one for this actually. So uh, over three years of Pokemon Unite, I've had a lot of experiences where people have probably made a lot of fun of me. And that's, that's just how it is. 
<laughs> you just got to learn to go with the blows. I would say number one is probably what uh, has stayed with me from season one, when I used to play jungle roll and or central roll, and that was the Cinderace Corefish ult. It's the final game of the regional finals against 1620 Kings, and my Cinder ult auto aims onto a Corefish, costing us the game. Very fun way to go out. I mean, look, it's been clipped, it's been watched a thousand times or whatever. It's, yeah, it's fun. It happens. I guess, like, <laughs> it can happen to anyone, guys. <laughs> Don't aim your Cinder ults and Corefish. Welcome back to the AOS Cup here at EUIC in London. We are already started into the action, both the Swiss Open Bracket and the group stage, which you are currently watching. We are going to be watching a game number two coming up very quick. Oh, what a day it's been so far. We're just getting started. It's actually unbelievable. I mean, of course, I'm Wonder Chef joined with Zoinks. We're finally on camera here. I mean, I guess I was just doing the interview a moment ago, but That's we've true. been over in the crowd. We've been watching the open bracket. We've actually just been running back and forth, yeah. basically. And there is so much stuff going on over there. Of course, just as a reminder, twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub to catch all of the open bracket action. Uh, our good friends over there. But I mean, just between there and then here, that last game was awesome. I don't think anybody is at the end of the day being upset that there's not enough Pokemon Unite <laughs> yes. to watch at the moment. There is so many incredible games happening. Uh, I don't know if I have any new updates into the Swiss bracket, but we've seen some crazy upsets already and potentially an upset in that last group stage game, depending on who you ask. However, uh, Kabichans have been getting a lot of good press lately, and uh, they, they proved it in that last game, looking fantastic. Taking down another tournament favorite in for free. And a reminder of how our group stage works, a team that loses in this point of the tournament is not eliminated, but they are moved down to basically the loser's bracket of their group. So for free, we'll have a, a longer road ahead of them to that top eight. That's right. They still have a chance, though, of course. Uh, there are going to be two teams making it up into their group coming from the open bracket, which, of course, we will see who that will end up being because who knows? At this point, right. there are so many different teams that are uh, making a big splash over there. In case any of you didn't get a chance to see it, we did see some upsets. Uh, team YouTube going down in round number one. Team GT going down in round number one. Uh, I believe, oh, goodness, there were, there were so many, honestly. Um, uh, yeah. Yellow Bingo, right? Yeah, Yellow Bingo lost their first game to Team Exile. So Exile starting off in a really good run as well. Um, I'm not too sure about Nouns Esports or Luminosity Gaming. I'd love to get an update at some point from either of those teams. And I'm sure we'll be getting those throughout the day and trying to keep you updated. But in terms of our group stage, we already have that one result. And we have our teams getting set up on stage for our second group stage game. That is Antic Esports. We are looking at right now your representatives from the OC region, able to be the AOS Cup play-in champions. And that's why they're playing today. Look at Sulu. Look how excited he is. Praying for some good games today. <laughs> and no tech issues. Sulu, who, uh, yeah, of course, I'm a, I'm a gigantic fan of this region in general. The OC region is kind of the uh, the one that I kind of camp with. Oh, actually asking for water. What a diva. Uh, no, <laughs> stay hydrated out there, even though it's been raining out here in London. Still uh, perfectly matches the aesthetic. And we do have the team here to look at them. Challenged, Anon, Liz, Sulu, and Robbie. Uh, they've been a real powerhouse in the OC region, which does have its own share of difficulties with just how uh, remote it is, quite literally. Right, yeah, a remote region, not the most amount of teams. So there's a lot of question marks around this region at basically any international event. And Antic Esports at this tournament is trying to change a lot of that. Uh, I will call it a narrative surrounding that region. And from what I have heard, this team is potentially been able to do it. I have been uh, hearing a lot of good things about this team from the lead up these last couple weeks, whether in scrims or practice talk. Now, you got to take all of that with a grain of salt. Uh, no, when you talk to players, no one's ever lost a scrim before. <laughs> uh, everyone's at 100% win rate. Uh, so you got to take that into consideration. But Antic has definitely been making an impression. This team, however, is made up of so many players who have had made a ton of those up into this moment. You're looking at Alter Ego, the representatives from North America. 
ton of those, and also a ton of names, which is why they're named Alter Ego. Uh, but that's JL, Machizel, rolling it down, Kratos, and Joey. Uh, they have been, they did extremely well in the first uh, official tournament of this season, and they're still looking to be powerhouses, but uh, they're kind of a newer team as far as competing together, right? There are yeah. players who have competed together, but as a full team, this is their first season. Uh, but obviously, some incredible players on here, and yeah. some really cool characters, or Pokemon specialists, I would say as well. Yeah, that's so much fun to talk about with this team. Obviously, Machizel, I think there's a Pokemon that jumps to mind when everybody thinks of that name, being a Machamp, uh, which they've actually showcased on a main stage before uh, when they were able to win the AOS Cup tournament. It was on the back of a back-to-back -back win with Machamp. So obviously, Alter Ego has showcased that they are willing to play some crazy stuff, but make it look fantastic. And Machizel and Joey are probably the two new players to a lot of people if you've been following Competitive Unite for quite some time. Uh, all the other players have made it to that world stage before. Those two uh, obviously are still known within the community, but new to an in-person event stage. So seeing Machizel and Joey play is gonna be fantastic. That's right, that's something that we really don't get to talk about enough is uh, this is a scene, right? The Pokemon Unite scene that has such high level competition, but it is or has been in the past, let's just say, primarily online, right? The monthly cups generally online. Uh, there are there have been the in-person events that we've had before, you know, NAIC, EUIC, but this is one of the big opportunities for so many of these teams to get their first opportunity for playing offline, in person. Yeah, and here's one player we really wanted to look at on Antic Esports, is Challenge, playing the Espeon and the Galaceon. Two of these evolutions, you're gonna see a lot of these this weekend, folks. These Pokemon are so extremely strong, and Challenge, one of the best there is at these two. Yeah, yeah, challenged uh, maybe uh, competing a little bit later than some of the other more well-known OC players. Uh, kind of, I would say maybe halfway into the last season of Pokemon Unite UCS, we got to see challenge really kind of bump up, join one of the top teams. But now here on this team has been absolutely popping off. I mean, this truly is a bunch of star players. OC as a region have a lot of different teams that have had some of the same players on them, right? right. There's not uh, the, the widest player base because they are just so far away, but we get a chance to see them kind of all try out and see when they make it together. That's true. All right, we actually have a video piece to hear a little bit more from one of the players on Antic Esports, Sulu. That teamwork, that synergy, the actual communication of the team. Like, we're all friends, we get along. We actually want to be there and play, and we like solving things together. There's no sort of, like, communication hamper or people thinking that they're better than each other. It's always coming down to the fact that, like, people want to do the best they can, and they also want to support their fellow friend. Like, to us, we all have our individual motivations for wanting to win and wanting to play at the highest level of Pokemon Unite, and that is also, like, amplifying our drive to win as a group. And to me, that's just something that you can't beat. So it's a lot harder to get quality practice against the Europeans and North Americans. And you guys have some incredible gameplays. So we aren't able to really see that outside of watching tournaments and seeing, oh, well, what would we do there? And so it's like always this hypothetical game. So I would say that we do have like a pretty big disadvantage. It's quite unfortunate that we're not able to play against the breadth of players that you have access to and against the wonderful play styles that the players that have to offer. So. We're always a little bit uh, bummed out by that. Like we've tried to make up for it by playing against other overseas teams, but it's just never just the same because of the, the ping gap. So something that we really love to do and we're really looking forward to is just do our best for OC region, despite all the circumstances that are like likely leading to, you know, unfortunate placing. So we really just want to do our best and we can't wait to show what we have to offer. Great to hear from Sulu on Antic Esports. This team is so excited to play and prove their stuff against international competition. Obviously, being remote in OC is tough to find those scrimmages, those uh, practice matches. And well, now they have uh, the most important practice ma matches ever, potentially, in front of them. <laughs> yeah, if that's considered a practice match. But uh, we can take a look at one of the players on the other team that they're going up against, and that's going to be Kratos. Uh, the real Kratos, of course. You know, a yes. little bit of history there with the team name Alter Ego. There may or may not have been three Kratoses on this team at one point or another. This is, oh, was it four? I think it was four. Uh, you know what? It's too many. I'm trying to 
forget it intentionally, <laughs> but this is the real one. Yeah, and take a look at some of the statistics that Kratos have been able to put up this season. Espeon on seven and three with that win loss. So a very, very good performance from Alter Ego so far in the season. Obviously a tournament win in February and a top placement as well in March. Not the tournament win, but still looking amazing. 81,000 damage on the Espeon, 73K on their Glaceon. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of what we're going to be seeing uh, over the course of this weekend is going to be Espeon really having a very high impact on a lot of these games. Yeah. That's one of the Pokemon that we didn't see too much in the first cup of the season. Uh, I mean, you know, we didn't see it, not see it at all, but we saw it from a lot of the teams in the second cup of the season. So uh, we're starting to see like, okay, you know what, especially with now that the fact that we've got two bands per team and uh, some of the Pokemon that we maybe have uh, used to seeing are not going to be making it out to the actual match quite mm -hmm. as much. Much. Uh, just going down that one step, there is a great opportunity to see that Pokemon. That is true, and I know you all want to see this match begin so we can see these two players go up against each other. We have the two captains of their respective squad, JL for Alter Ego and Challenge on Antic Esports. And they are playing some different roles, but uh, no one is doubting the impact that either one of these players has on their roster. Oh yeah, I mean, we just talked about Challenge, but can we talk about JL? I mean, Please? actually, can we possibly talk about JL enough? I think it's, it's impossible. Yeah. Uh, of course, one of the strongest supporters players in the world easy yeah. to say right and that's not even a question uh, but of course I have to make sure you know somebody's gonna be mad at me for that but it's pretty much without question especially I mean you can see right there my Pokemon, Pokemon Hoopa uh, is just so so impactful in every single game with them Oh my goodness, yeah. And not just on Hoopa as well, their support pool is extremely deep, but I think their main Pokemon being listed there, mm -hmm. with a 14 and three win rate, I think is uh, going to be making a lot of sense. They're, uh, they are incredibly, incredibly strong and gifted on that Pokemon. And of course, a host of them. But when they're on Hoopa, it really does look like a different version of Alter Ego. Yeah, and just looking at that last set that we had on a broadcast, we know that Hoopa is already potentially a big choice because it was banned away, right? I mean, like not seeing a Pokemon is kind of a showing of how good they potentially are uh, if you can't see them. So I feel like Hoopa, again, it, it kind of comes in and out of like how much people actually value it, but it's always obviously quite strong, especially when you have a specialist for that Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the bands, I mean, we, we didn't really talk about this, you and I at least yet, because we just got on here, but the fact that we've got more bands now means that we get to see stuff like we saw in that last set where there are these targeted bands for specific right. players. Yeah. If I'm going into Alter Ego, there's definitely a few Pokemon that spring to mind about bands. Hoopa could be one of those. We talked about that being the main Pokemon of a JL. Another one that is maybe a little off the beaten path might be a Pokemon like Trevenant. Mm -hmm. um, Trevenant is definitely a extremely strong pick right now in our metagame and of course is prominent, especially when Joey is playing that Pokemon. Oh yeah, Joey on the Trevenant is incredible. And I completely agree with you. I think that that is a very, very feasible ban. Now, one of the big reasons why we don't see maybe as many targeted bans is that sometimes teams are like, well, we kind of want to use that too, right? Uh, but Trevenant, not to say that not every team can use it because Trevenant is so good right now. But uh, when you have a, a specialist on one team with that Pokemon, it's not like getting rid of Trevenant for yourself is like, well, our entire strategy is out of the, you know, it, it's gone. Uh, so you can either steal it away or just ban it and just say, you know what, deal with it, play with something else uh, mm. because that, that Trevenant is, is something else. It's special. Yeah, it is so, so strong. I'm interested to see Antic Esports' kind of mainstay picks or their team identity begin to emerge throughout this tournament. They're actually a team that has been boot camping here in the EU for, I think, almost over, over two weeks at this point, actually, yeah. I believe. So they have been putting in so many hours in the practice area, playing against other top teams, a lot of European talent, of course, but as international talent is coming to this event, I think they were adding more and more teams to that repertoire. It is going to be very cool to see, I guess, the fruits of the labor, if you will. Yeah, and another thing about Antic, just as a team, uh, is that they, you know, we got to hear Sulu talk about the difficulties of playing in a region that's a, a considerably more remote than any other region that you could possibly have. Their ping playing against these other teams is very difficult. But one way that they try to make up for that is they do so much research. I remember uh, watching ACL and Sulu just talking about every single team and saying, yeah, this player is ridiculous. This player is going to choose this. Like, they've got to ban away this from this player. And it's just so much knowledge from regions that, I mean, obviously they could play against them here at AOS Cup, but uh, it's not like the primary regions that they're going to be playing against, and they just have that level of knowledge. So when right. you don't have your players in your own region that you can just look at constantly, you gotta look out, and they certainly do. 
All right, folks, it looks like the match is starting. Antic Esports has got some energy. We hope Alter Ego can be matching it because, well, we have an incredible game on our hands, folks. Let's get into draft of our game number one between Alter Ego and Antic Esports. I'm very excited for these first bands. This is going to be a really big part, of course, of what we're going to be seeing. Uh, it does look like we're going to get the Mew band away from Antic. Very interesting first band, the Buzzwall, a pretty classic band. We saw it go through in the last set, but uh, that and then, of course, the Leafeon that we're seeing, both of them pretty expected for the rest of this, the, uh, the weekend, even. Yeah, I would totally agree. Yeah, those Pokemon, extremely popular bands. Buzzwall and Blastoise, both banned up by Antic Esports, but maybe the two popular top pack Pokemon, especially in the West. So seeing those Pokemon out is going to make it very interesting to see what Pokemon lands in that spot. And look at this, Alter Ego actually going to take away the Crustle, maybe the premier defender that we see to in today's day and age. Yeah, this, this is a, a particularly interesting uh, choice that we've made on Antic Esports, where uh, we get to see that, oh, you can actually see Sulu taking a, a look at some, some notes right there, I think. Uh, but they now are saying, we want to control the top path. We've get, we're getting rid of a lot of top path options that you could potentially take, uh, but they haven't gone and selected it first. They're actually going to, interestingly enough, go for that Hoopa, which we were just talking about, is so good for JL. Yeah, with that Hoopa being gone, it kind of shifts how Alter Ego wants to approach this draft. You could grab something like a Blissey, which is a great target support Pokemon, uh, but it kind of enables more Brawlers and things like that. And grabbing a Sylveon and Dodrio, they're still kind of leaving themselves open up to whatever strategy they could take later on in their final two picks. Yeah, I do like the Dodrio. We've seen that it's been a pretty flexible Pokemon. It can go a multitude of different kind of directions where you want to actually send it in path. Uh, but they, uh, they're they setting themselves up basically in a, in a flexible situation, just like you said. But, oh, the Gyarados, one of the newest additions to Pokemon Unite. A very unique uh, mechanic for evolving. Yeah, we now have an effort gauge. Of course, you can evolve at level 7. No matter what, once you get that point, you will evolve into Gyarados. But, of course, accelerating that a little bit quicker is an option for you with this Gyarados. Alter Ego with these final few selections are currently hovering a Sableye. I guess Hoopa being the main Pokemon of Jail is true, but I feel like a more iconic option would have been uh, that Sableye. Yeah. But it's okay. We got Machismo Machamp on stage in game one between Alter Ego and Antic. That was the good old bait and switch. They were like, are we going to give you the, uh, you know, the Sableye? Is it going to happen? Just kidding. We're not going to give you that, but we're going to give you something else. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, that does mean that we're almost certainly, I would say, going to see the center area, uh, Dodrio. But on the other side, we are going to finally be choosing another speedster. I think this is a, a classic choice, yeah. usually, uh, to kind of get that evolution for the Gyarados from the Magikarp. You want to have it with a strong speedster or something that can be very aggressive early in the game, get a lot of KOs, and help you pump up that effort gauge. Yeah, and we have Azorog as that last pick when you know there is no Clefable on the enemy side, right? We finally get to the end of the draft. We see all of the crowd control options that Alter Ego has in their tank, and we've decided that a Pokemon dependent on dashes, on resets, and not being stopped is going to be available. They're going to grab that Zorog and lock it in. A non on this Pokemon is going to be kind of make or break. When you play this Gyarados, the most important part of the game is getting that Magikarp evolved before the eight minute mark. And usually that is only be able to done, uh, able to be done if you have your central area Pokemon have a successful flank into the Magikarp lane to help them get some damage, some experience, and of course, up that effort gauge. Well, I'm really excited to see this. OC very rarely gets to truly compete, especially, you know, in an in-person situation against any other region. Uh, this is, like I said, you know, I've got a personal connection to watching a lot of these players, watching for a long time, and they have honestly such good individual skill, right? Each one of these players is incredibly good, but it's time to see if they can handle playing against the Interval Competition on such a high-stakes stage. And of course, we have to mention it. Currently, it does not, but Dodrio will be having the correct amount of hats. I believe Spraggles <laughs> would be very, very upset if we do not bring that up. All right, we have Machizel and Joey into the bottom path. Interesting that we are bringing the Machamp down here. Normally, you don't see very many melee Pokemon in the bottom path. It's really tough to contend with those long-range attackers, like just the Sobble right now, who's incredible last hit secure with the Water Gun. But as we remain in that top path, watch that Magikarp just flopping around, desperately looking for last hit knockouts to try to accelerate that effort game. Yeah, this is completely different from how I thought they were going to split up where their Pokemon went, but 
it's really interesting. I think this may have been kind of a last minute flex where this is the most aggressive, in my opinion, start that you could possibly have up against this magic heart path. Normally I would have expected Dodrio down uh, in the, maybe taking a little bit more of the center, not just kind of sitting up top permanently, like maybe going for a little bit more of a switch, but we're actually going to be having the uh, Sylveon take the initial EXP, getting a little bit of the switch to the Machamp on bottom, like you said, which is very rare, but having this early Doduo plus Sylveon up against that path is very hard to deal with. Yeah, the Evolution powers like a four strikes again, and they're able to take one buff and head towards that top path. A huge play by Machizel to get the K opener, a giant eject button dynamic punch, combination brings them across the map and they find a KO on Winon. Yeah, this just worked out so perfectly for them. They were going to get a few of those Aos energy in, but most importantly, there is just nothing going on for this Magic Harp. And currently, they're trying for a little bit more, maybe a little bit green on the side of Alter Ego. We will be going down at least the Dodrio so far, uh, but still so trying to find some way to evolve, just getting a little bit more of something anywhere. Uh, but right now, might be getting KO'd again if they can't get out of there. Such low HP in there, they're going to finally drop. That is devastating. Not only are they going to get prevented from evolving to the Gyarados for quite some time, which we're now we're hitting past that eight minute mark. A lot of the times the benchmark of if you are playing this Pokemon correctly or not, but they are going to give so many stacks over to the Chisel's good job. Ton of damage into the Sylveon. However, Roland, not the turn, is going to jump back in with that Mystical Fire. But great coverage by Robbie on this Snorlax. Another Pokemon we haven't talked about too much, but take a look at that. Joey with an x engage engaged. It's going to be good for two. Boxing a nap, but nothing that you want to take. Now it's just going to be Anon trying to defend. And there are just too many Pokemon. Yeah, got to get out of there. Going to get a little bit more speed. Try to get away. But so far, this early game has gone completely to Ultra Ego. I will say, though, as they've been really focusing on stopping the Gyarados, it finally does evolve, and on top of that, the level difference is not super gigantic. It could be considerably worse, considering how much of a lead it seems like Alter Ego has, and they certainly do as far as points. Yeah, I think we might have to revisit that after first Reggie, yeah, uh, but, yeah. but we'll see what goes down, because Machizel is almost level 9 already. We almost have the Machamp, the Fist of Fury, and now the level 9 for them is there. The benchmark has been earned. Good news for Anti Esports, though, is the first objectives of the map, the base and Attic Reggies have spawned in now, uh, but they still have those outer goal zones available for the Hooper portals to transport between them. Another dive by Kratos to try to take some of these wild Pokemon. And they're able to dick, uh, they're able to dodge all of those attacks from the Zorark and make it away, and Machizel with the coverage as well. Ooh, this is so aggressive from Alter Ego going all the way into the center area. I mean, there were objectives, but the true objective that Alter Ego wants is just everybody on the side of Antic Esports. But Antic will be securing that Regilecki pretty free. And on the other side, we are going to see Alter Ego take the basement, Reggie. So uh, despite the fact that there were so many challenges, they basically just had a, a you know, gentleman's agreement, a handshake right there. You take top, we'll take bottom. Everything's going to be okay. Quick thinking by Alter Ego, though, on the rotation of the Regilecki lands, a score happens from the Gyarados, but that goal zone remains. Having those outer goal zones stay intact has become incredibly important in today's metagame. Having map pressure and being able to have that vision up constantly is paramount. And now all of a sudden these invades are looking a little more deadly. Zora going to try to unite move for a bit of anti-dive, but it's not going to be good enough. We're going to have Alter Ego rushing towards the bot side to try and score. Ooh, this could be a good turnaround. That was a gigantic yawn. A ton of the members of Aldrigo going to sleep. There just isn't enough follow-up. Though Drio going through, trying to dive into that back line, doing so quite successfully. But uh, yeah, that's going to be everybody that was there defending gone from the side of Antic Esports. They're getting just run over at the moment. Uh, they're kind of split up. Their one saving grace is that they have been able to kind of control top during that time with Sulu up there on the Gyarados, just kind of wandering around, getting some more points in, getting some more stats. And when you see those pushes, a lot of the time we can talk about overextensions and danger there. But you got to remember, Alter Ego is a good trap on what the enemy has in terms of resources, and so many Unites were still missing out of Antic Esports' kit. Now, finally, we are hitting that moment where they will have some of these uh, these huge Unite moves, hitting at level 9 for the most of the cast. Uh, Hoopa and Snorlax still just shy of those. Uh, there's nothing funnier than just seeing Yawn walk away. Uh, but again, the aggression coming out from Alter Ego. This time, though, they're not completely grouped up, so there is the potential, uh, not a huge potential, but they very much could find themselves in a situation where they cannot escape. Uh, they are going to sort of get out of there. Looks like three of them are going to be going top two, potentially bottom for these next Reggie spawns. But Antic for sure is committing up to this Reggie like he once again. 
Oh, Machizel doesn't get hit by that first snipe shot, but the second one is not going to be the case. We actually have to Bliss Assistance Unite move to save the Machamp, and actually they're able to turn and burn and knock out that Gyarados as well. Big flanker on the backside from Kratos. They're good for one, and Teleon is down, but now it's a non's turn to get to work. A huge chunk of damage is an alter ego, but nobody falls, and now Robbie is the next target. JL and Machizel still working together. The Unite move does go wide, and now they're forced into a 2v2, and finally, Anon and Sulu will get on the board. That's actually really gigantic to get, to get that KO. They did trade away Anon for it, but I mean, just again, if they have higher EXP... Oh, oh my goodness, that was a max range snipe shot. That was beautiful. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, we did manage to see the Regilecki taken from Alter Ego, and there still is a basement Reggie, just completely uh, sad and lonely and alone. But, you know, the more KOs that we get to see here, which we might be seeing another one. Uh, no, it looks like we're just actually somewhere almost helped out right there, pushing back, as we're gonna see Robbie still trying to chase down these two invaders in their center area. But most of the rest of the team cannot follow that up because they've got to deal with that Regilecki. This Heavy Slam Yawn buying so much time. You can see Robbie not doing any auto attacks after landing the Yawn to make sure that time extends. And that full combo, though, again, is gonna be too much damage for even a Snorlax to withstand. Robbie getting KO'd. Kratos really chasing now that Zora getting dangerously close to the Inteleon into the Gyarados, but they are able to get the KO and get away for free. And get the Reggie Ice for free, most likely. Does not look like anybody's going to be challenging it from the side of Antic Esports. Antic really, I mean, they've only got 45 seconds left. It is going to be going to a Rayquaza really win for them. I mean, just over 200 points lead is not the most uh, insurmountable thing in the world, but I would say pretty realistically, that's what they've got to be aiming for. They've also got some very strong secure on their side and team fight potential. Most of their team fights have not been happening as one big team. They've been relatively split, been using mobility of the Hoopa quite a bit, and this is their opportunity to kind of make it their first big fight. Yeah, we're headed into the final stretch, and yeah, we're gonna have a big fight. I think this is the ultimate time to do it. But you're right, we do have the toolkit. Um, Hoopa does still have its Unite move, uh, and Zorark, and Teleon, Snorlax, and Gyarados all the same. We're only Pokemon missing it currently is that Dotrio, and Kratos is currently scoring 100 in the home base, knowing that they can make it back in time. Uh, well, you know, that might just be a sign for them to step on the gas. Antic Esports is going to be moving forward. Anon is very, very far forward, getting hit down by Machizel. He's barely going to get out of there. That Unite is going to kind of go wide. The Bliss Assist is going to make him a little bit stronger. Salu also is trying to get out of there. A nice triple stun from Liz. They're just trying to waste the time on these Unites. They haven't used a lot of their resources quite yet. Salu just barely getting out of there. But this fight is pretty split up as everybody is going to be jumping on the Hoopa Unbound. And that is going to be the first KO. Well, actually, there was another one with the Intellion going down just yeah. a little bit earlier. Uh, Antic now down in numbers. They've got time for a regroup, though. Yeah, Kratos able to find a huge flank on the Inteleon. I think that made it a flip situation totally impossible. Antic Esports going for their own back caps. Alter Ego responding in kind. Robbie with a huge stun, and we're going to have a great capitalization by Anon on the Zorark. That is going to be 20 seconds gone for that Blizzy. JL not going to be back for quite some time. They might have their Unite move when they return, though. Robbie getting the stun onto the tank. They're pushing on the top side, though, for the most part. Rayquaza, the next main objective. Joey, the lone defender around this Rayquaza hit, as Machizel is just getting lower and lower. Another Another one falls. That's three members down for Alter Ego and four members up for Antic Esports. Ray Koiza below half HP. They've got to get the last hit here, and it will be Anon getting that last hit. They're down still by just above 200 points, but there's a back cap in the home goal zone for Antic Esports. They are just slowly, slowly getting scored on. It's up to 600 points inside of Alter Ego. There are going to be more points in, but they're still down by 61 points on the side of Antic Esports. They've got to find more. They've got to find something. They still have some shields. There's 17 seconds left. They're getting closer and closer, but they just don't have enough in the pockets quite yet. Match number two of the day. We got a score race, folks. That will be Liz dunking in a doubled up to two. Anon has no rage shield, and they are not going to be able to score. And Alter Ego, with a Herculean effort in the scoring department, are going to hold on to their lead and win game number one. Barely, barely. Let's, I mean, we got to take a look at this actual score. They were only Ooh. up by about 50 points. That is as close as can be. Antic, being behind that entire time, did an amazing job of retaking in that Ray second fight. Not the first one, but right. the second time around. But yes, the back capping was so, so good. And that is one of the reasons why we see Godrio as such a gigantic uh, threat a lot of the time. Not only is it just strong as a Pokemon, but its ability to sneak 
sneak around, get those kind of triple scores with it. It's just the way that the Pokemon works is so good. And it's perfectly built into this composition to be such a nightmare for Inteleon to deal with. Challenge was constantly having to deal with this Dodrio in the back line that was just making it so difficult for them to play. We got to take another look at that match because of how exciting this first game was. Yeah, this was, I mean, it, it was it was obviously the Alter Ego show for quite a yeah. while, but Antic was such an interesting strategy as far as the draft, right? I mean, I feel like I just want to take a second to just look back at that again, because honestly, a lot of these replays are going to be Alter Ego running as four or five and just running over Antic. That was just how the fights went. But going for the Gyarados is a very interesting pick. Uh, still, I would say maybe a Pokemon that's not fully fleshed out competitively. We do know that it's strong, and it can be strong, but can also fall maybe more flat than any other Pokemon. Right, exactly. You see a Unite move used defensively. One of the best parts of Gyarados' kit is that it can be a great offensive tool or defensive tool as a Unite move, but it falls a little bit short kind of in both categories in this final fight. The best look from Antic Esports, like you were mentioning, was this refight, but honestly, we were hoping for a lot of that in that first moment, but I think with the huge Dodrio flank from, yes, the man on your screen, Kratos, I think it was just too much of a shutdown for them to deal with. Yeah, the, 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 that was so, so perfect. I mean, okay, so the big thing about Unite, of course, you can see Kratos here, player of the game for sure with those points in at the end. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest thing about Unite is that in those situations, knowing exactly how to manage your resources becomes a very different game of managing resources even one minute prior to that. When you're managing resources in the middle of the game, it's usually about KO timers and buff timers and, uh, you know, Unite timers, quite obviously. and. This time, you know, at the end of the game, it's about managing how many uh, AOS energy you have in your pockets. It's managing your shields from Rayquaza, which was one thing that I think potentially we could have seen a little bit better from Antic, but they yeah. didn't have much time. So it's not to say that they uh, messed up. Obviously, they won the fight. It was extremely close. But uh, the fact that Kratos was so quickly able to just run over there and say, I know exactly what to do in this situation on a main stage here right. was great. Oh, Kratos, no stranger to this stage. I think they've been a uh, sub on a world championship team that like two times or not championship but at a world championships event now multiple times multiple years in a row uh Kratos no stranger to this stage so fantastic to see the performance yet again from alter ego uh, obviously when this team was able to win their february tournament and then fall a little bit short in uh march cup now, kind of the question was, is that say more about North America as a region or about this team? And a lot of questions have been raised about Alter Ego, but well, with how well they're performing in that game number one, I mean, macro-wise, mechanic-wise, it felt great across the board. So I think a lot of those fears are being quashed right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the whole, I would say, storyline of uh, kind of every team in Pokemon Unite is about teams bouncing back, right? We've seen so many teams where it's like they're doing great, and then next time we see them, they maybe don't quite, uh, you know, hit the results that we thought that they would, and then it goes back up, and then it's, it's time to kind of see, like, how they bounce back from those situations. The good teams, uh, they bounce back even stronger. The teams that we don't see as much anymore, they don't bounce back at all, unfortunately. Yeah. But, uh, we, you know, with a team like Ultra Ego, plenty of players that we know are strong players, like you said, you know, many of them have a lot of experience playing at the highest level competitively. You get to see these types of teams say, okay, well, you know, we didn't make it in the March Cup close to what we wanted it to be, right, uh, for winning. So what do we do? What do we change? And clearly they've made some adaptations. Yeah, and they look fantastic so far. Now, we wanted to talk about uh, adaptations, about what they would look like for Antic Esports. Now, obviously coming up shy in that game, number one, took them a long time to get rolling. And then even once they did, it felt like their team fights were still a little lackluster. How about in the draft screen, though? Anything that you'd like to see Antic really adjust? Well, I mean, I just want to say they, they can't get rolling because Roland's on the other team. Oh, but, that's such um, a good yeah, tech, though. Unfortunate. That's such a good tech. That is, actually. If you can, if you can win 6v4, you know, just steal their team. Uh, yeah, there you go. No, honestly, I love the fact they stole away the Hoopa, and I think it did quite a good job for them. Uh, I just think, you know, the Gyarados, it's a big risk. It didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. uh, I do feel like also they didn't quite get a chance to pop off as hard with Zorark as they wanted to, which maybe was a big reason why the Gyarados didn't end up working out. And a lot of it was Antic Esports being really smart as far as how they split their Pokemon in paths. 
Yeah. Ooh, yeah, interesting. Okay, so we are going to see a Blastoise ban on the side of Antic Esports. Now, history would suggest that we are going to be seeing a Leafeon on Alter Ego, and yeah, that will oh. repeat those Pokemon just a little too strong to make it out of the ban phase. And now this first pick for Antic Esports is interesting. We saw this exact same thing for Multigur on this side. It was the Crustle first pick. We're going to see that again. The best defender in class will be going to Antic Esports. This is such a strong Pokemon, and it's one of those Pokemon where you almost don't even talk about how strong it is because it, the only times that you really get to see it uh, like in a clear way are when it gets an amazing Rock Tomb, which is kind of all the time. So you, I'm kind of wrong about that in general. <laughs> uh, but uh, we are going to be seeing that, I think, as the first pick a lot. It does tend to be kind of one of the best meta Pokemon that goes under the ban radar a little bit. Yeah. Uh, same thing with Inteleon that we're also going to be seeing on the side of Antic that's looking really strong. They're also going to be taking away the Dodrio. Wow, okay, so Sulu is going to be locking in that Pokemon. And now Kratos is going to have to find something new to bring into Thea Sky Ruins. Uh, this is before we saw, of course, the Dodria, like you mentioned, which is mostly utilized for its scoring pressure and its incredible flanks. Now we are going for a very different look. The Glaceon and the Espeon being locked in. Two extremely powerful evolutions, incredible at that mid to long range, and have some of the best passives in the game. Glaceon in particular, a Pokemon that is very good into Dodrio because it can ignore that first big dive. Yeah, and then of course you don't actually have to manually hit Dodrio with anything with uh, with Glaceon as well. Uh, all the auto hits are so good against those speedsters that are really trying to sneak around. But let's see what the other picks are, including a Garchomp for Antic Esports. It's going to be closing out with the Blissey as well. I feel like Blissey is a great call here. There are a lot of very strong targets for Bliss assistance, maybe yep. too many uh, at this point, but uh, it's a it's a solid choice. Yeah, it partners so well with that Garchomp when it's in its Unite move and that crazy outrage when it's all the way into the back line. It can be a fantastic combination. But she's going to be bringing back the Machamp yet again. We saw the Eevee kind of split some of the central area off and only take a little bit so that we could have the Machamp roam all the way through and clear their own wild Pokemon. I have to imagine we're going to see another look very similar from Alter Ego in our game number two. Yeah, and one thing that's pretty scary to me, although Honestly, this is pretty interesting. I'm not sure if they're going to switch up paths. Now, Sulu generally going the top path, and uh, Anon usually going, uh, well, I mean, you know, usually like center or whatever you really want to do, but basically Sulu goes top path. So are we going to see the Garchomp go somewhere else? I mean, we, we have seen some pretty interesting ways that uh, we can split up these Pokemon, uh, but the Dodrio may be the one that's committed to the top path, which has been a lot more popular recently. Yeah, that's true. I do think we could see that. Um, we could see them switch, uh, switch yeah, roles as true. well. Totally a valid option. Garchomp's central area is something that I haven't seen in quite a long yeah. time. Uh, it's a Pokemon that is dangerous early, but a little more dangerous in the path. If, if getting invaded would be a nightmare for Garchomp to have to deal with. And JL on that support is well known for maybe not staying in a place that the uh, enemy is super happy about. Yeah, I mean, you can say that about Alter Ego in general. Uh, yeah, right? that's they, true. They are Kratos team. was there all day today, so yes. yeah. Yeah, well, actually, kind of the entire team was, but uh, we're getting into our game number two. Last chance for Antic. Alter Ego just needs to win this one more, and they're going to be moving forward. Uh, but now, uh, you know what? What do we see in the center path on Antic Esports? Yeah, we got that Gibble roaming into the central area. Machizel and JL going to be working again in hand to hand, this time a little more traditional of a top path. Sulu does get that first score. We have another stacking item on this Dodrio. This time it's going to be the attack weight, though, when in Sulu's hands in that last game. It was actually AO's cooking for Kratos. Yeah. Ooh, almost catching him. A chop just barely getting out of there, but it's going to be the no duo going down first. This is, once again, this is a signature for Alter Ego. They go so aggressive in their top path, usually sending one of the evolutions up alongside whatever else they have. They just do not let off the pressure. But uh, one thing that's pretty interesting that they may have potentially thought is they, with how much pressure they tend to put on top path, maybe they just didn't want the Gibble to have to deal with that. There is the obviously the fear of the invade, just like you said, but, I mean, you know, if they, it clearly they made the right read if that was the, what they were going for. And it gives you a pretty decent level 5. You have access to Dragon Rush, a Pokemon move that can steal a lot of these wild Pokemon over to their side and perfectly executed by Anon. However, it is Machizel to strike first and another knockout for them. Both Suluwu and Liz going down. A 2 KO streak for Machizel. I think it's 3 in total so far in our match. Yeah, and again, like I said, aggression in that top path is the name of the game for Alter Ego, sending four up there so early, and then again, rotating down. Now, they do have a lot more damage.
damage here in the center path to be able to defend than they did in the first game. Already getting one KO, maybe trying to chase down JL, but that's going to be a hard task to actually fully get that KO. Just going to be trying to distract them. Yeah, I was uh, pretty surprised that Challenge was able to earn that knockout. A nice water gun at max, which I actually think that was an eject button by rolling into the water gun. A bit of, uh, a bit of an unlucky movement tech, but that's all right. They are back in the fight. Level 5 currently. Tulumu in too much danger. All of those Icicle Shards able to land and hit that target. There you see, Heratum emerges with both passives by the Evolutions used up. We do have a non trying to keep this fight ongoing, but it's Joey with so much sustainability on the Trevenant. They're lasting forever, but eventually this tree will fall. Four members of Antic Esports needed for that knockout. Yeah, I almost thought he was going to keep going, as you said, Joey was going to fall. That yeah. was, uh, was uh, like an inch from getting a little bit more HP, but uh, that is how Trevenant goes. And I will say, uh, you know, the, I feel like the strategy here was top path is going to suck. It's going to be a really, really tough situation to deal with, so we're just going to focus a lot on giving Anon the, the, uh, the really late game scaling Pokemon and just giving them safety, which that was not safety at all. I, that may have been a little bit of an error. I don't think they wanted to charge into the other team. They probably wanted to pull the Pokemon back, so may have just been a little bit of an execution error. They are going to be going down, and it's going to give a great opportunity, especially if they can get this K on the Grussel, which they do. Great opportunity for Altigo to push down. Great trade, though. Challenge has been landing these snipe shots very consistently onto prime targets. Eldegoss absolutely one of those, a squishier Pokemon, and when it takes that full slime shot damage, it is going to vanish. Uh, so great shot from them. However, the Red Dice not really within contention. You see Alter Ego positioned very well to prevent any slime shots from stealing that way at the last second. And uh, during this fight, which is it's, it's almost their center goal zone, but uh, we can talk about that later. Is right now we're going to see the glacial stage used. Alter Ego really trying to push this down. The Rock Tomb is going to be a little bit annoying for them, but it looks like Antic has decided that it's not worth trying to risk defending that. They are going to let that goal zone go down, but that is going to give Alter Ego. A lot of free space to kind of go with their uh, their aggression of rotating through the other team center area and a huge unite coming out from a chisel trying to get the double ko is only gonna need one more hit the points are gonna go in giving a little bit of instability not quite able to get to the citrus berry so that will be the slow uh well i was gonna see the slow double but jail actually got that ko yeah jail want to get involved yeah absolutely yeah. come on i put my time in on the support roll at least let me get the knockout and so far <laughs> the bloodthirsty support is going to already have a nice moment now my chisel i did use that Unite move in that little 1v1 skirmish moment, or 1v2, I guess we could call it. They won't have it for this next objective fight, but looks like they're gonna be pretty alone around this Regieleki. No pressure on it whatsoever from Antic Esports. Just trying to scale as much as they possibly can. Garchomp and Inteleon would love these extra levels for the next fight. Yeah, there is a lot of respect in this, or in both of these teams during the objective fights. Right now, Crustle is going down. I mean, oh my goodness, they are chasing it so far. They're a little bit split up, but all the oh. sure hits. There's no way to get to your teammates in time. A great target getting close enough, diving that back line, and they're just going to continue with Unites coming out all across the board. We are going to see the Unite try to come out from the Garchomp to defend, and Reglick is still not going in. A nice drill pack to try and push it away a little bit further, but it's not going to be enough. That is a staggered full team wipe into a reg like getting pushed in that tier 2 goal zone. This alter ego team is just so clearly one of the best teams in the entire world at this point. Look at that coverage from a chisel. Kratos gets pulled away by the Garchomp. That's extremely low on HP and we immediately have the Machamp response. Look at that! A triple lineup with that Unite move. Machisel with a KO streak at 3. Crustle the next one to fall and Machisel is at, let me check, level 13 at just under five minutes. Jail also now two for two on lowering the streaks of Majizel by just completely stealing away those final KOs. But that's what you gotta do, you know? What, however many KOs you get, you gotta give the last one the support. It's like a tip, you know? You're like, thank you for making sure that I am still fighting at this point in time, still healthy and fighting. Uh, that triple trample just eating up the passive, and that is, like you said, one of the difficult things about trying to play into this comp. JL, once again, uh, Owen actually didn't get the KO, just uh, it was a kind of post-mortem <laughs> one right there. But Machizel just absolutely popping off. Look at this level 14 at four minutes on Machamp. Now, this is one of those moments where I just really don't see a world where Antic can actually fight over this top Reggie Alecky anymore. A Reggie steel buff on the side of Alter Ego is going to make their team fight so extremely powerful. I don't think they really have an option to try to fight this one at the moment. So, we are going to see rotation from Antic Esports. Great macro call from them. And Tell Young going to throw in 30 in that bottom tier goal zone and still able to walk away. Bit of a miss on the Dragon Rush, but it's all right. They have no one else to chase. Alter Ego going to be 
be playing that one, you know, surprisingly <laughs> passive for their team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anything but just holding forward for 30 seconds straight is pretty passive for Alter Ego. But yes. uh, there we Another go. Ult. <laughs> oh, and this is a late one, but it is going to be able to confirm two KOs. Not going to throw the last one to jail right there. We are going to see the Unite coming from the, the Garchomp to try and get something in return, but nothing. That is, though, I will say, a pretty late set of Unites to be used kind of across the board. Not that they can't potentially build them back up, but they may not have it right at that two minute mark if anybody is looking for some early action. Yeah, I mean, I would start critiquing the Machamp Unite move before anything else, but the fact that they were responded to on the other side, yeah. I think is what is mostly leaving myself scratching my head. Now, I talked about how Antic probably couldn't play around this top right Shieleki, but they are still going to be lining up to it. Robbie goes down quick. Crustle may have some defenses, but they are getting absolutely shredded. SBO Unite picks up two, tries to take the secure, but it's going to be the Dodrio. Sulu will be able to steal that one away. Garchomp does have that Blitz assistance, but it comes just shy of chasing down those two Eevees and immediately punished. Roland finds that KO. And we're heading into the final stretch here. Two minutes and 15 seconds left. So we're going to have some of these Pokemon on the side of Antic Esports getting up a little bit late. May I note, by the way, at the three minute mark, we saw level 15 from Machizel. Uh -huh. yeah. Absolutely a monster. And oh no, that is actually gigantic. We are going to have at least 20 seconds of not having that Dodrio on board. That is going to delay the plan from Antic Esports so much. And they're down by about the same amount of points as they were in game number one. They've got to make this Rayquaza to happen, but they've got to make sure there's no more potential staggers with respawns on their team. Silver lining is Anon was able to earn back the Unite move onto the Garchomp, but maybe even more punishing, they don't have Liz's Bliss assistance to pair with it this time around. So if they go in, it is all or nothing. And when you're going all or nothing in the two evolutions, you gotta make sure you aim for the KO. J uh, Joey playing very aggressive. Antic does know where they are, but they don't really have the tools to deal with it at the moment. An attempt at a Horn Leech kidnap, but not gonna work out so far. And Antic's got to make a move. They know they're behind by a lot. There's also a few Unites missing still on the side of Alter Ego maybe, uh, but we've got an opportunity to potentially start this fight. Everybody's very split up. We're only at a minute left. Unites coming out from the guard shop. Anon trying to go in, trying to make something happen, but nobody's there to actually back it up. They trade one for one with the Trevin. And Joey the only one going to be going down, but Machizel as usual is going to be the real, uh, I mean main big threat, just being 15 so early. The Triple Trample going through so many Pokemon that just do not care about it, but that's going to be able to at least get one more member down from Alter Ultra Ego and only one down now, two on the side of Antic. They're staying relatively even, but again, the powerhouses are still up. The damage is still up on Alter Ego. They've got Machizel sitting at full HP, just being supported there by JL, who is just chasing down everybody. Yeah, Machizel channeling that Unite move for almost forever, trying to find that invisible Inteleon. And uh, JL gonna be in the enemy home goal zone, throwing in a Hundo Burger, and it counts. Blissey not able to spawn in in time to stop that scoring attempt with only 10 seconds remaining. I think it might be all over for Antic Esports. Alter Ego holds strong. Rayquaza will be knocked out by Machizel. Of course, it's Machizel on this Machamp. How could it not be? And Alter Ego take the match two to zero. Oh, with, with such an incredible showing from the champion, both the games. I mean, Antic, they were fighting their way back, especially that first game they managed to get really close at the end, but it was just Alter Ego truly controlling the pace in game number two. Uh, I mean, they just, uh, okay, well, first of all, you know, we may have players here watching, this is EYC, that are not as familiar with the meta, and we gotta talk about how rare it is to see Machamp. That is not a meta Pokemon at all. No. And and, but it makes, uh, Machizel makes it look meta, right? With yes. their crazy strong aggressive build. Running that rapid fire scarf on the Machamp as well. One of my favorite techs that Machizel brings to the game. An auto attack speed uh, item build. But Machizel at 92,000 damage in that game. We were walk, uh, we were really wondering if some of these later Machamp Unite moves were going to be dangerous. Well, it's all right. Machizel, when you're executing that perfectly, it is absolutely worth it. Yeah, you can see here just some of the speed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there were six KOs in total on the side of Antic Esports. So you more than doubled, you almost tripled. If maybe if Jail wasn't stealing so many KOs, okay, you can see those three right there. You would have tripled them, but uh, you can see all of the assists from Jail, an absolutely tremendous amount as usual. Yeah. Uh, they, I, I feel like their draft in game number two was so good.
What a bunch of superstars on this Alter Ego team. I think Antic Esports had some showings of true strength uh, in that first matchup, and their tournament journey is not over, just headed down to the loser's bracket in this group. But I do think that Alter Ego is emerging as this just absolute powerhouse of a team and kind of returning to form from what we all remember them uh, in the, of course, the North America AOS Cup play-ins. Without a doubt. Also, I mean, returning to using that Machamp every single game. I know I keep talking about it, but uh, it is, it was, I mean, okay, hitting level 15 at the three minute mark, unbelievable. We can actually see it again in the replays because that was, I mean, the one third of the game and you have a level 15, which is just unheard of. Yeah, oh my word, it was so strong. And I believe this is our game number one. This is when Joey's Crustle was really impressing me. Some big moments were on the back of this player with those perfect X Scissor Rock Tomb combinations, even utilizing the eject button, that immediate dash maneuver item uh, to really enable some huge moments. And the Zorark in this match just felt just shut down at every turn. Same with the Inteleon in the back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we did eventually see in game number two the Italian working a Absolutely. lot better, but yeah. a lot of it was just, you know, what was sitting in front of it, and uh, with the Antic Esports, the way that they uh, had to defend against this, this, I don't know, just this terrible, like, just crew of just Pokemon just running at you the entire time, it was really hard, I think, to build that space, but in game number two, uh, they did manage to, I love the fact that they managed to steal away a few Pokemon, right, stealing with the Dodrio, stealing away the Crustle, it was just all uh, very smart as far as being able to kind of defend and lit uh, challenge do a great job on them tell you absolutely but of course the true star of the show jl on the elder gods uh, no yeah. no no hard no. carry machizzle machamp even there you see moments where they are 1v2 but their level lead is so enormous they are feeling totally fine to use the unite clear out one target turn and take down the other and we are bringing this reggie lucky at that five minute mark Five minutes, a very important time in Pokemon. That's when the jump pad enters into the game, which allows you to defend those tier two goal zones a little quicker. Not available for that Reggie Alecki push. Uh, and that's why you see it land so easily and why Alter Ego is so aggressive with that push. Yeah, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, all, and every other push that they make, they're also very sure. aggressive, but I do uh, agree with that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, great job from Alter Ego. Honestly, this was one of the biggest questions for me is that Alter Ego has their own unique aggressive play style, very different to the, even the aggressive play styles that we see on some of the other teams from other regions. Yeah. So I was wondering, will these other teams be able to handle it? So far, not that Antic was just completely crumbling under it, but they just didn't quite have a strong enough. All right, what's up, everybody? Yeah. I'm so the Pokemon Ego United. are going to be in that position where they actually have just to win one more game to make it into tomorrow's top eight and they just have to play against one team whoever wins out of the swiss team so having a great road in the future and i hear we have an interview ready on stage with alter ego so i believe it'll be spraggles take it away that is right we are on stage with joey from alter ego the big winner from that game give it up for him everybody point to everyone who didn't clap you didn't clap you didn't clap so joey tell me what do you think was the big difference maker for you guys there in game number one well game one and two i gotta give them a champ man we gotta lock in my champ which is every game so, go again it gotta be the machamp man nobody expects the machamp but we always use last speaker man which is the champ is it that Machamp is that good? Is it that Machizel is that good on Machamp? Is it that you can't counter pick it? Like, what's the secret sauce there? You just can't beat him, man. Machizel, Machamp, undefeated attorneys. Now, I know before we started this interview, you were adamant. You said, I need to shout out some people. We will allow that. Let's hear some shout outs. There's just two group of people, my parents and the rack. My parents and the rack? The rack. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are you worried about coming up in this tournament? Could be a team, could be just a general fear like spiders. A lot of the Asian teams, they're like unknown and they're really good at the game. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Joey from Alter Ego. We're going to send it back to the booth. Give it up for him. Still not clapping. That one's still not clapping. All right. Take it away, boys. Fantastic to hear from Joey. Uh, and of course, giving some shout outs to a few people, but also the shout outs to Machizzle Machamp. And apparently the secret sauce is 
You just can't beat it. It's the tech. It's Machizel Machamp. Right, right. Like, oh, yeah. So why, what makes Machizel Machamp Mach so good? It's Machizel Machamp. Oh, yeah, that's of course. It. All right. Well, we know that now, yeah. and <laughs> that does not give us any more answers, but possibly even more questions. Yeah, that is true. But I think the true answer we have is how good this team looks. Of course, moving on to that winner's side, like I was just mentioning before we threw the interview, they only have to win one more game to be able to move into that top eight. And what are they playing for? Let's talk about it. A lot on the line here at the AOS Cup. Let's take a look at the prize money. $100,000 altogether. That is a huge amount for these teams. Of course, first place taking home 30000 for themselves. And it goes all the way down to our top eight. A solid amount for every single team that can make it there, which is far easier said than done because yes. this is a, I mean, we're, you know, currently on this broadcast, I just want to remind everybody else, there is a, we are watching the currently invited teams. There is an entire open broadcast happening on the twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub. And they are bringing access Action from teams that are pulling off gigantic upsets, teams that we honestly might not have thought would make it into our current uh, kind of like part of the tournament. I mean, there's so many parts of this tournament, but they are. Yeah, it's true. We have yet to see some of those Swiss uh, teams get into the group stage yet. We haven't, that hasn't concluded, but I can't wait to see them try to compete for this $100,000 prize pool. Not the only thing on the line though as well. There are championship points being awarded for this tournament. And of course, the world slot, which is on the line. Whoever wins this tournament will be guaranteed a spot to play in the world championships in Honolulu, Hawaii, regardless of region. So like whoever team wins this wins an extra world slot in essence for their region, which is a very, very exciting moment. But it is going to be an amazing tournament. Uh, I believe we actually have a video up and coming that we are gonna throw to. So let's take a look at that. All right, what's up everybody? I'm Zoinks, a Pokemon Unite caster here with Pokemon Unite player Vazid. How you doing, Vazid? Uh, I'm doing well. We had uh, quite an unfortunate game, but uh, okay. other than that, I I'm, I'm chilling. All right, so you're playing in the open bracket today, which is a gauntlet. So many incredible teams, best of one territory, very intense. How do you prepare for a tournament like this? It's about be not being nervous, I think. It's uh, keeping your cool since it's a B1. A lot can happen, like my game. But uh, yeah, just uh, keep, keep yourself calm. Obviously, your team's incredibly strong. But if you had to pick one team in this open bracket that looks the strongest, who do you think it is? Outer Banks. Okay. Get dance, get dance. All right, Outer Banks getting the vouch. Awesome. Well, Vizid is just one of the players playing in this tournament. We actually have a ton of players competing in the open bracket. We have an entire area and a bunch of people who have turned up to watch the games as well. So exciting, including our top eight group stage. But we have so many teams all set up in the open bracket competing to try to make a spot in the top eight group stage. So if you want to see who can make it there, who can win the top eight groups, and of course, earn the first spot for Worlds, make sure to keep watching the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. Well, apparently that video was me. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I really got to find a better way to throw to myself <laughs> in the future. I will iron that out though, I promise. I'm going to be like, oh, hey, hey, zoinks, run out there really quick. Yeah, we'll I see did. how fast you can get <laughs> out there. Uh, but no, it's great to see all the teams that are playing in the open bracket. I mean, that's literally what I was just talking about. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen out there, I'm glad that y'all get to see a little taste of what the competition looks like out there. The space is huge for our open competitors. Yeah. There's so many people watching that secondary uh, kind of broadcast up, just even from that secondary B stage. Yeah, it's awesome. And we saw from Vazid in that interview, who's playing on Team Sirius. We heard a mention of Outer Banks, who I believe started their tournament and Swiss stage 1 0. So Outer Banks feeling pretty good, I, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, they also That's actually wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, they actually started 0 and 1, but still a very, very strong team, especially Nemesis, a team that we are really excited to see. But we are going to be seeing so much Pokemon Unite today, all day long, and I can't wait for it. So we will be back after a very short break with more AOS Cup. My name is Alex, I'm also known as Sulu, and I'm from the OC region, I represent Antic Esports in Pokemon Unite. 
I'd say, of course, I'd like to answer from uh, the two different groups, right? So from the qualified teams, our biggest rival, well, in my opinion, I have lots of respect for my European friends for free. I think they're an amazing team led by an amazing player in Zervis and everything they want to do is so collected, so intelligent. Really something that uh, I'm looking forward to actually. Like I'd say less of a rival, but more of like, I really want to have the chance to battle them. I think they're amazing players and I can't wait to see how we go head to head with their play styles. They're just so clever. Uh, so that's one. And I'd say from the open bracket, someone we could see come out is Xingdei and Rudei. They are a Taiwanese team and they're very powerful. They, we play them a lot in the Asia region. They've uh, made the trip to London. They got all their, they did everything they could to attend. And I cannot wait to play against them. I think that they have like a lot of ability to play up well and they're a very strong team. If our team were to win AOS Cup, it would mean everything. It would mean the first time OC has won an international MOBA event. That would be historic, groundbreaking. It would mean that uh, a lot of our the calls about OC losing spots and whatnot would be like sort of invalidated because we'd be there in a position to actually show that we do deserve to win and we are able to compete with the best in the world. OC to win and our team in particular, it would mean everything. Like it's something that we strive for, of course. But we understand it's a little bit out of reach of like where we are right now. But that doesn't mean that things can't change before we reach the tournament. And we're doing everything we can to get to that position to be able to make something happen, make some history happen, and you know, like get the crowd going. Like that's just something we love and we can't wait for it. Like really, like if we were to win, it would mean everything to us. And we can't wait to get to that position. So my first contact with you tonight was actually I was streaming League in like in like my bedroom and uh like in 2021 as soon as it launched and a friend of mine told me that like a new pokemon mobile launched ever since that day so uh, ever since first day of the game i started playing the game and like i started grinding grinding and grinding uh up until like two weeks in i already had a team and like it was a team that lasted for like three or four months before i actually joined with the guys that i'm basically with up until now like with some minor changes but it's basically the same crew so yeah Basically, ever since day one, I've been grinding the game. Okay, so uh, I used to play a different MOBA competitively, and I like Pokemon. So Pokemon Unite being combined of them was an easier transition for me to play in the competitive scene of Unite. Um, I started playing like since day one of the game, and uh, a few months after, it, I figured out to be pretty talented, so I played, I played five stacks, I played with other players, I played with different teams, and here we are. Eh, un día de la nada vi a alguien que estaba jugando el Unai, entonces me dijo, juega, me dijo, este, para jugar, o sea, me prestó su celular, entonces acepté, y cuando empecé a jugar, este, me gustó totalmente el juego, me gustó totalmente el juego y, y dije llegando a casa me lo descargo y lo descargué y, y ya. Uh, so one day I started playing Pokemon Unite. My friend introduced me. I got it on the Switch. It was free. And I, I loved the game so much. I spent like day and night. I was like, I couldn't drop it. And I would, I would dream even about Pokemon Unite. So I'd come back and I hit Master, the like top 100 players at the time. And I was like, okay, I really want to do more with this. So I bought a stream card and I started streaming. And then that's inevitably what led me to play uh, tournaments, competitions, and sign up with the first UCS Underground Zero. And we're back here at the UIC in London for the AOS Cup for Pokemon Unite. We just saw two amazing sets on broadcast, and boy, it's been an amazing trip for me so far here in London. But uh, these teams, they're just getting their trip started because they have a whole lot to fight for. And we're moving on to a different group this time who's going to be uh, playing their first game. I can't wait. We're going to see another look from Japan. This will be Unite Holic. And then our first chance to see Latin America North. We're going to see Rework Respawn on stage. A team that, let's admit it, you and I are yes. very high on. <laughs> very excited to see this team compete. We've talked a lot about them in power ranking segments in the past. And just a lot of lead up for this squad into this tournament. But now it's finally time to see them compete against international competition. And first up is Japan in Unite Holic. 
Oh, yes, but I do have to say, of all of the Japanese teams, Unite Holic is the most out there by a gigantic oh, yeah. margin. They are such an interesting team. They have the most uh, bizarre strategies, I would say, they that do. work when we do not expect them, and uh, they are definitely going to put on a show. I will put yeah. it that way. It's going to be interesting. A, a big storyline with Unite Holic recently has been they have had one player change recently. They had one player leave the team. We're back to a new one and so now we have a uh, mame going into this central area it will be very very interesting to take a look mm. at but we got a replay up and coming that we want to take a look at of some epic gameplay and i believe that is of the last match that we were just looking at but yeah i have to admit these day <laughs> this match has been exciting all day it? long we're coming out we're coming out we're gonna find that hold on chill 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 uh, Garchomp has ult too i think they're gonna combo, they're gonna combo. Go, go. Okay. That's the combo, that's the combo. We live it, we win. Nice, it's gonna go in. Did you, did you? He doesn't have ult yet. Nice. Cross up, cross up, cross up, cross up. No jump pad yet, no jump pad. Nice. What's the map, what's the map? I wanna do map. Uh, I love hearing comms. That's one thing that we don't get a chance to listen to all that much when yeah. we're, uh, you know, doing these online brackets. But in person, I mean, that is just such a huge part of it. And that's something that I got a chance to hear, too, when I was out there looking at the open bracket setups. Yeah. I mean, you can literally, like, hear the people, like, the, the teams yelling at each other, their captains. They're like, it's okay, it's okay. They're slow, they're slow. Go down. You know, it's, it's like, uh -huh. it's just, it's so cool to see. Uh, it's, uh, I'm glad that we get a chance to capture some of that for this broadcast. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like we could dissect a clip like that for a while to talk about what makes top teams take and what's important to think about in the middle of an important match like that and you hear them talking about what major combos you need to play around have they used their big resources have they not when's it safe to push when's it the best time to risk it and you know really have a big moment like that and well alter ego obviously showcasing a master class in great macro knowledge and execution something you want both of obviously that is one thing that these two teams on stage currently are also masters at. We've seen it time and time again in their local regional tournaments. Uh, Rework, Respawn, of course, winning in February and then having a fantastic performance, but not a win in that March Cup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, you could say that about most of the teams that we have actually invited here for uh, this AOS Cup. A lot of non repeat winners, but uh, I mean, Rework, Respawn, they are they're so, so good. Uh, I mean, we, we, you and I, you, like you were saying, we got a chance to talk about like how much we love this team, uh, but. I mean, their aggression is just so strong. Like, mm. uh, specifically, I think we were talking about earlier, like, who our top player to watch was, and I had mine as Reggie. That's one of the players where we respawn. Such an incredible uh, kind of, like, assassin-type player. I'm not yeah. sure exactly where we're going to see them play. They've got quite a bit of flexibility. It's not always the assassin role, but uh, I love watching them play. It's true, I, and I hope, and this maybe is a selfish request, and I love it when players get to play in this in-person environment. They're playing a minimum ping compared to events in the past that they've had to play on, and when they get that chance, it feels like those players who love those high-skill, high-impact Pokemon tend to move towards the Zorark. <laughs> and yes. when they do, incredible things happen. And there it is, our look at the Rework Respawn Squad. And boy, am I glad that we get that look. Check out Steven. They obviously <laughs> ran to the Pokemon Center. They got their haul already. Steven plushed up. Relax, relax. Also, the <laughs> horns. Uh, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know, this was a team in the previous season of UCS. It is, as far as I know, the full uh, repeat roster of former Entity 7. Now, there's a different Entity 7, not confusing at all, but uh, they were going for a while as uh, their name was Draft in Ranked, which actually ended up happening. Right. And then they changed it. They're like, well, wait a minute. Now we can't ask for that with our team name. So they changed the rework respawn. Uh, but they are so good. And they are a team that enters so many uh, community tournaments. They are yeah. hungry for like like just victories and experience, and it really shows because this is the, probably one of the teams that has the most experience against the entire rest of the field. I mean, as hard as difficult as that is, you know, they probably have maybe some of the most. Yeah, and then of course their opponents, Unite Hulk, the other team from Japan, um, having a pretty incredible start to their season already. Uh, the Japanese preliminary qualifiers are technically there. Um, so they have already competed in their first preliminary tournament and they were able to make it into the top three, uh, something that Kabi-chan's case was not able to do. Uh, I believe they finished out at fourth place. So uh, Unite Hulk looking great. Yeah, I love Unite Holic. I mean, 
Like we said, they're a wild team. Uh, I we know that we're going to see something very interesting from them. We just don't know exactly what it's going to be. Of course, we can talk about at ACL. They were so... <laughs> infamously uh, strong with the score comp, which is something that we don't get to see a lot of the time, and it's mm -hmm. exactly what it sounds like. You really put a lot of focus on just scoring uh, points, and, you know, a lot, a lot of, like, uh, priority, I guess I could say, in fighting, which is a weird thing to say in Pokemon Unite, but they made it work, and a few other teams did copy that and make that work as well once they saw exactly how strong Unite Hogs could do. If we see score comp, it's because stuff got wild. <laughs> but on, of course, Rework Respawn, the player that you wanted to talk about is Reggie. Reggie195, the player to watch for this team. Zorark and Dotrio being their two big, strong Pokemon. Win rate on Zora currently 100% across the <laughs> season so far, and 17 MVP awards. So having, of course, what, a lot of those games where they're top damage, top score in lobby, uh, that's just Reggie business. Yes, uh, you were talking quite very literally about how strong Zorark is for a lot of these players, but even on ping, you know, on these online tournaments, yep. we got to see Reggie just absolutely destroy with that Pokemon. Uh, the other really, I would say, like, specialist Pokemon that's not on this list for a very good reason is Leafeon. Now, mm. Leafeon, the reason why it's not on that list is it's just banned all the time, True. and so I'm assuming that there was just not an opportunity to play it very much from Reggie, but back when we got to see more Leafeon, like, back before the most recent Leafeon nerfs and before we got the multiple bans, uh, Reggie was dominating with that Pokemon across that region, and honestly, Honestly, quite a few other regions, so a player that I'm looking very much forward to see. I can't wait. The last thing about Rework Respawn that I want to talk about is, of course, Sherlock, the top path player mm -hmm. for this squad. Incredible in their own right, a lot of skill, a lot of notoriety behind that player, but most notably could not make it to the World Championships um, last year in 2023. So it felt like Rework Respawn at that time were playing with just not their full roster, mm -hmm. felt a little bit different, but now they have the chance to play it out with their full squad. I cannot wait to see what they can do. On the other side, though, Unite Holic, <laughs> this titan from Japan. In that Asia Champions League that we were mentioning, they brought us some crazy stuff like that score composition, of course. But one of those, um, one of the unique things that Unite Holic brings to the lobby is the central area invade that never stops. Yes. <laughs> Unite Holic loves to put uh, Yupuno, who is their support player, I believe, most of the time, or, or a defender sometimes when they play that Umbreon, and will just stay on the invade from start to finish, unrelenting, trying to steal away that central area experience. Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of similar to what we saw from Ultra Ego not that long ago. We sure. do see a whole lot of kind of similarities, I think, between those two teams. But on the other hand, we do see a lot of aggression as well coming out from Rework Respawn. I have to say, if I had to kind of read three teams that were going to be the most aggressive, it would be the three that we just saw. So a lot of this is going to come down to what the picks and bans are going to be. I think the picks specifically on the side of Unite Holic are going to be very important because they can go so many weird directions. Absolutely. Rework Respawn going to start off our draft with a Leafeon ban and a Zorark ban is going to immediately follow it. So I have to imagine we are going to see a Dodrio look from Rework Respawn a little bit in the future. Mimikyu ban going to be the next mm. option for Rework Respawn, a Pokemon that has been surging in popularity, certainly, but we have not seen it on broadcast so far today. Yeah, it's just one of those Pokemon where it's like, okay, when it really works, it really works. But not every team truly has been making it fully work. Uh, it, did, it was a huge part of pretty much all of the teams that won in the last monthly cup and their victories. But there's no way this is the first pick, right? Yeah, they're still going around. <laughs> they're going through doing a bunch of non-traditional uh, first picks. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the Blastoise. So a uh, big question for me was how highly valued the Buzzwell was going to be today. And so far, a lot of these teams not highly valuing it. It's not even picked yet. Yeah, rumor has it that Japan rarely plays this Pokemon. And so actually electing to not take it first in the draft makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're going to get it on the run back. You may as well allow Unite Holic. Uh, not, not the Blastoise. We have Blissey, Crustle, Espeon, and Mew so far for Unite Holic. Japan really liking that Mew so far today. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot of players that play Mew in a lot of other regions, but it's just, it kind of depends on who uh, can actually play it. It's a very difficult Pokemon. This is interesting. We might be seeing, I would have to assume this is the Scyther yeah. at this point, uh, especially if it's going to be Reggie. But 
that's going to be, uh, I mean, it was most recently buffed, right? Uh, Scyther and Scizor. I mean, there's, there is a chance it could be Scizor. I'm, I'm always wrong whenever I make that call, but I would have to assume it's Scyther. Oh, oh no way. Oh. Y'all remember 2022 Mame on the Serena? I certainly do, and I'm sure Unite Holic fans do as well. We are going to see the Serena, and remember what we were talking about at the start of this match breakdown. Mame has recently rotated to the central area as a role. We might be seeing the central area grass queen that is not something that i am used to seeing at all this is very exciting i mean just those final two picks are very very rare serena considerably more rare than even scyther at right. this point but uh this draft it went a really interesting direction a lot of high value picks late the crustal being picked so incredibly late it's very surprising mm -hmm. but they knew that they already had the blastoise so i'm excited to see what's going to happen here for our first game of group c because these teams i you know we talked about each basically matchup for the first ones that we're going to see. Uh, you know, the first one of today for free uh, against Coffee Chance, we're like, this is going to be an excellent match. Uh, and then this one, we were like, this is going to be a wild game. Uh -huh. I know this set's going to be wild. No matter what happens, that's just how these teams are. Oh, I can't wait. And we're even seeing the OG synergy of the Blissey with the Zarina, a Pokemon. Of, I mean, Blissey just loves to enable any kind of melee brawler. That is the best target for them to support and strength. We saw the matchup with the Garchomp in the previous match that you and I got to cast. But well, now it's going to be looking for that Serena for some big team fight moments. But here we go. Game number one between Rework, Respawn, and Unite Holic. The Scyther versus the Serena in terms of the central area. That is not something I was expecting. It was not something that was on my bingo card for no. EUIC here at the AOS Cup. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, kind of split that we're seeing as well from the side of Unite Holic. Uh, of course, with any sort of evolution, it is not uncommon. In fact, it'd be more uncommon to not see some of the center area split. Uh, just being able to get to that level four power spike, which we're already seeing. And this Espeon is what they're going to be running as their kind of answer to this buzz wall. I'm excited to see how it works out. And you need to have an answer to this bus will early because Serena certainly is not going to be <laughs> at level five. So getting that Espeon is so, so important to try to slow down Sherlock, who is going to hit that level four. Great Bell Stinger secure in the early game. The red buff from the Blissey getting a little annoying to deal with, but that's all right. Resonant Guard is going to proc. They're going to get that shield and they're going to get back. Reggie looking for a bit of an aggressive play, but Steven does not have the HP to really follow them too deep. Double hit, threatening some KOs onto the wild Pokemon. Yeah, I think actually able to steal one possibly, but just the fact that they're up there, they're showing like, oh yeah, we're a threat. And honestly, Scyther has quite a bit of range, especially the damage of just that range portion is huge right there. Uh, we are gonna see the uh, the center area Pokemon go to different paths, which is pretty surprising. The Serena is focusing here on the bottom. They're gonna be pushing in, trying to get a KO on this poor little Squirtle who is gonna pick up that Citrus Berry. Very, very key. Uh, the Hyper Voice almost getting the KO on the Crustle. Looks like they're gonna be chasing it down. Should be able to finish that off. And now. Now, only the Serena left. Mame trying to find a KO, but they should at least be able to escape. The mobility on that Pokemon is pretty good. Yeah, extremely and strong. And yeah, Mame have an, an incredible showing, but we are going to have a pause in game for a moment. Unfortunately, we did have one player disconnect. So as soon as we get that all reestablished, we will be back into game. But I think the point still stands. A creative bottom path push for Unite Holic, trying to avoid that boss wall. Again, Zarina just not really going to be able to contend in that moment. So that's why we are seeing uh, you go with that split path and just kind of avoid the boss wall in the early moments. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm really liking kind of the way that this has been placed by uh, Rework Response. I think the, the, specifically the Hyper Voice is really, really good at dealing with a lot of the Pokemon that are especially kind of trying to become early threats from the side of uh, Unite Holic, and that is going to be sh shutting them down really, really strong and kind of stopping their momentum, which is a big deal. Uh, again, the Crustle, there's a reason why we see that Pokemon first picked, I would say, a large majority of the time. Maybe not majority, but you know, it may be the highest of the first picks uh, currently when it gets through. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the Serena, which still, I don't really know exactly what the strategy of picking it is. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, a legendary player playing it, but we'll see exactly how it kind of plays out in the comp. But that's also going to be a Pokemon that, while it does have some mobility, it's not going to want to fight Hyper Voice, right? I mean, anybody who's melee really doesn't. Uh, yeah, you're going to have Trop Kick to try to avoid most of that. You can even try to get behind the Sylveon, one of the best uh, options to escape that Pokemon in particular. 
Yeah, I think it's just a lot of great crowd control Unite moves, notably the Espeon and the Zarina, even Crustle to a certain extent, is going to make the team fight, like the dive from Buzzwell and Scyther, a little tough. Uh, it's going to be, if you're going to try to find one target to isolate and get a knockout, it's not going to be very easy. You're going to have a lot of interference to run into while on the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, I'm really curious. I'm, I'm actually kind of sad that we just got this pause because this is a really interesting moment of the match. Uh, like, I just really want to see what continues to happen. Uh, the the Mew also, which I, I do believe is the player who disconnected, is, is going to really key part of this entire comp, right? Yeah. When we do see a lot of these really like close range comps, I do like that a lot of the really strong teams do tend to uh, bring it uh, bring a backup that has some exceptionally long range, right? Like whether they can grab Inteleon or whether it can be a Mew that can beam or whether it's a Venusaur that can beam. I mean, yeah. there are quite a few different options, but that tends to be a really key part of making things happen. When you've got Pokemon that really want to try to finish off Pokemon, but they maybe can't just like one combo them, you really need to get that little bit of extra damage, whether it's an Electro Ball or a Beam, of course, uh, just some little way. I like to call it kind of the hammer and anvil strategy uh, when it happens, but yes, you are right. You want to have some big long range moment and then, of course, someone to try to capitalize. Uh, Puno trying to lock down Reggie, not going to have the option to do so. And instead, we are just going to have Unite Holic having great positioning around that eight minute fight. Poor Reggie caught on the wrong side of a light screen, not able to chase down that Mew getting uh, chased down by the Mew, actually, uh, to be 100% honest. And this is going to be Unite Holic really pushing in for this Tier 1. They're not quite able to break it, or maybe they just choose not to break it because they want, did not want the 12 points. I mean, we do see a lot of teams that really just do focus on breaking down that Tier 1, especially when it's up top and they just really want to make those retro like he's more valuable, but that is a great Rock Tomb into the beam, making sure that both members up there from Rework Respawn are very unhealthy. And man, no, we're still on this poor little Squirtle. This is not a very good look. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take it a while. They are running EXP shares, so not the worst thing in the world, but they will finally get to level 5, almost a level 6 already because of that past experience. Sherlock will go down. Unite Holic Unrelenting is going to be able to find that Buzzwall and earn that KO. Uh, also notable, a lot of early scores in this match so far. 82 to 75 before the first set of objectives even spawn in, uh, which is very, very impressive already. Yeah, and not just from one side, from both sides, which mm -hmm. is uh, it's saying it's like not one team dominating. They're just, uh, they're just both holding forward. And uh, this is going to be a pretty a secure, yeah, uh, the Regilecki for Unite Holic. They do not have to worry too much about that. Not a huge challenge. There is a little bit of a fight down on bottom. I love that they just lit the Regilecki in to break. That was a super low overdunk on that Tier 1 goal zone. So they're like, you know what? That's fine with us. And now we've got a little bit more experience up top. Yeah, exactly. We are going to try to break this top goal zone, I'm sure. Eldegust is going to score a very low amount, but it will break that top goal zone. It has to be a less than a three-point overdunk, honestly. Mame takes the whole hyper voice the entire time they're flying with the smackdown. Great patience by Sherlock not to follow up on that move and allow it to work for the full animation so they have great combination with Rev. That is, uh, that is one of the scariest things that can hit you in, uh, in combination, for sure. You're yeah. just like, oh, no, this is too much. I'm going back to base. Okay, you mean this is up here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why can't you yell so loud all the way in the sky? Uh, but right now, we are staying with just a small gold zone lead for Rework Respawn. Well, it's just a point lead, not gold mm -hmm. zone lead. They actually have the same gold zone because they both broke one for one. Uh, but they're really staying even. I gotta say, this is, uh, I mean, it's been a pretty even game, but the levels for Rear Respawn are so good. Yeah, they're looking fantastic. And Reggie's played very patient on this Scyther. Scyther, like we talked about a few times with a few different Pokemon, it's kind of all in. You have a ton of great dive options, great utility in that regard. But once you press all your buttons, sometimes you're sort of left alone out there. And you really <laughs> gotta try. Uh, it's really difficult to make it out. So when Reggie goes in, they want to make sure they're confirming knockouts. And of course, having the option to use that Unite move. A Unite move that does mark their enemies, and any KOs they get on marked enemies actually resets their cooldown. So, a very, very good combo play. Yeah, and I love this uh, choice, too. I, I feel like one of the big things that a lot of teams that don't use Buzzwell well uh, don't do, that's, I know it's a weird double negative there, but <laughs> if they don't choose some sort of assassin to back it up, which is weird, but Buzzwell loves sandwiching people. It's his favorite thing in the world. I love sandwiches. Buzzwell loves sandwiches. Right on loves sandwiches. Uh, but they're doing a great job with that Scyther. That Unite's going to come out just trying to take out that Scyther, speaking of it. But great escape. And honestly, the self-healing on that Scyther is pretty gigantic. It's going to use the Unite just to stay up 
and get that return KO on Mame. And now they've got a good opportunity to try to push this down, but wow, great avoid with that Unite. I can't believe Sherlock was able to take the Regieleki in top path 1v2. Like it's an Espeon and Russell. That is huge for Rework Respawn. Not only did they win a very expensive team fight in the bottom path with a lot of Unite moves utilized, but they also were able to steal that top path objective on an undersided advantage. And Sherlock walking away with the KO off camera and a Registeel buff slides the way in Rework Respawn. So yeah, the early game may have been contentious, may have been close, but Rework Respawn starting to take off. Yeah, this is the strength of Buzzwall, and I'm, I mean, I said it before, but I'm so excited to see how these regions that feel like Buzzwall is not priority do up against the regions that feel like it's priority, yeah. and just the back and forth, which we've already seen in the earlier match with Kabichans and 4-3, but we're seeing it once again, and uh, I mean, we're getting close to the end of this one, so we're going to see how it does in a team fight. but Mame, once again, very far forward, actually, with the entire team of Unite Holics, basically, uh, and there's an opportunity for a catch, but they got to make sure that... Uh, Reaper Respawns is not the one who gets caught out themselves, but even though they're on their own center area. Yeah, you see Minato playing within vision and kind of aggressive to try to surf a target away if they have the opportunity to. And of course, uh, we have the Zarina trying to do something very, very similar. A lot of healing and shielding is available for Zarina, but also, of course, with that Blissey pocket. But that is a fully <laughs> attack weight stacked Buzzwall, and that is a crazy execute on that superpower. Bye bye, Zarina. Set back to base. If you want to talk about, well, let's say, about this KO that's about to happen right here. Yeah, getting KO'd while you're actually CCing the, uh, your exes ring the uh, Sylveon, but that is like old meta versus new meta. It's like, you, we saw the Unite actually come out from the Serena as well onto that buzz wall, and there was the Blissey there, and all of that together could not beat the self-sustain of buzz wall. What a strong Pokemon right now. <laughs> oh yeah, buzz wall looking fantastic. It was in a 1v2 there, by the way, for a moment until the Elder Goss was able to rotate back up to that side. And of course, United Holic does look more threatening when they have both support core and the Espeon around. We were talking about that strategy, that anti-dive they're able to put together. However, Rework Respawn playing around it quite well. Reggie playing an extremely patient game for being level 13 at this moment. Hiding in tall grass, waiting for flanks, and just trying to be a constant threat that Unite Holic cannot lock down. I love this because Scyther, uh, like you mentioned, a lot of times it can kind of get caught up by itself and it can get picked and give a lot of that rubber band EXP. Uh, that's not going to happen this time. That They're just letting that Regilecki go in the top path. They do not care on the side of rework respawns as we're here down now for Rayquaza. And this is a pretty close match, so we could see a back half, which is going to happen. We're going to have Mame get a Hundo Burger in that top tier two goal zone, which is going to throw them into the lead. This might be the time for rework respawn to push it. Yeah, you got vision completely huge blast. So as Unite move engaged, perfectly timed with the Buzzwall. Eldegoss is going to crash land as well, giving Minato that precious HP. They need to be able to contend with that fight. However, the clock has been ticking this entire time. We're going to have 68 points scored by the Scyther, but Mame has set up a pretty wild flight on the other side of that goal zone pit. However, Sherlock is wise to the tricks and is going to jump right on top of that Serena. So, Unite move, Buzzwall's midair, but they are not knocked out yet. Super Swole Slam going to crash on the Serena. Full combo with the superpower. Hyper Voice lines up from the other side. And rework respawn, little by little, are knocking out the members of Unite Holic. Surf around the other side. Minato with a very big hang 10 flank. And they are going to be taking down the rest of Unite Holic. But the Espeon striking back. Ooh, this is now very low for both sides, but an almost 100 point lead for the side of Rework Respawn. They've got to make decisions. 44 seconds left, there's 100 AOS energy in that pocket, but they knew they made the call out. They correctly guessed, and that's gonna be a huge whiff on the Psychic Solaire. Making that correct call is gigantic. 30 seconds left, they've got to depend on scoring with that Espeon. That's really their only way. They've got some points in pocket, but they've got to score multiple, and especially with the overdunk, all are going to be about this defense. Man, Rep really revealed themselves extremely early on that tall grass. 15 points goes in for the Blissey. That's a start, but it's not enough to take the lead. Unite Holic desperately trying to get some scores in, but it's Reggie who swings in and gets the first KO, and that's just going to be the first of many as Rework Respawns dispatches the entirety of Unite Holic and starts our matchup 1-0. What a match, not even going down to the Rayquaza, just the minor decisions in the final moments. May I note, that was a disgusting surf to knock everybody off of that goal zone, but Rework Respawn making a statement defending at the one second mark.
That was game one. I know. That was game one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. That set was so exciting already. An amazing game from uh, Rework Respawn. Not only in Pokemon choice or individual mechanics, how they played around those team fights were so excellent. You called it out. The perfect call in that tall grass where they were trying to hide away. That happened twice, <laughs> by the way. Uh, Sherlock had the perfect just smack down into the tall grass. You know you're going to hit something. And Mame's whole flank is just crumbled underneath them. Amazing, amazing job from Rework Respawn. Unite Holic, though, obviously not out of it yet. They get a second chance to come back in this game number two. And whew, I don't know if you're back to the drawing board. That was such a close game, but maybe Zarina doesn't go into the central area two games in a row. I mean, honestly, uh, I love to see the Serena, but I don't love to see the Serena uh -huh. because at this point in time, honestly, we got to see that perfect moment. If anybody's like, well, should you choose Serena to fight against Buzzwall? You can literally look at that moment where like, you used everything that you had and that Buzzwall just would not go down. I mean, Sherlock on that Buzzwall was basically invincible. In the final fight of the game, too, you can see right here, that Sherlock was fighting like four people at once and did not go down for like 30 seconds seconds just getting KOs it was beautiful uh, but yeah we just cannot commit to that 1v1 against a monster like Buzz. Yeah, and of course, great uh, showcase of support play by Steven. That pull and fluff on the buzz wall all the time not only gets healing, but gets great damage reduction, which in a situation where you're going up against many enemies, a percentile of damage reduction is even more important than healing sometimes. So great support of play, and of course, showcasing a lot of resources towards one of your best tools. Yeah, especially with buzz wall, you're like, you're gonna bring yourself up anyway. You're yeah, you got You don't actually need healing. Uh, <laughs> same thing with Wish, but, uh, yeah, that was a great first game. I mean, I love any match of Pokemon Unite that goes down to nobody taking Rayquaza right. and in, in a close way, right? Where they, these teams are so close that even in that final fight, it was down to like two people up to one person up and it came down to like, can they score or not? Uh, which of course happened into that perfect read on where exactly they were hiding in uh -huh. that center area. Beautiful stuff from Lyric Respawn, but uh, that's exactly how close I want to see every single game this weekend. And uh, yeah. I think I'm not uh, at all unhappy with and a final button go button was showcased when Mame goes for that back cap, right? Mm -hmm. When you're scoring and on an ed enemy goal zone, you're the vision has been given to the enemy team. Like, oh, Zarina's not here. Maybe they even thought the Blissey would also not be there in that yep. scenario. But either way, they know at least they can take a fight 5v4. And we say Minato and Sherlock crash that top side perfectly. A Hydro Typhoon, a Cotton Cloud Crash, and a full-on Buzzwool Jump. It looked picture perfect, and from that point on, it felt like Rework Respawn had the keys to the car. Yeah, a Rework Respawn, I mean, okay, so there's so much I could talk about, about Pokemon Unite in general, and how deep this game actually is, and they, they are such a good example, right? They had so much good uh, map awareness in general, where they were able to say like, okay, well this is when we go in, and then this is how they're gonna rotate back around to us, and this is where they're gonna hide as soon as they get their shield. Everything about it was just genius play from them, and now we're going into game number two, where we can start all over with the draft. All right, we are gonna see another Zora <laughs> fan and another Mimic you ban. I wonder if this is a call out to what Mame's been playing recently, whether in scrims or in ranked ladder. Obviously, Zarina, we talked about how uh, it's kind of a wild pick, but it's a comfortable pick, mm -hmm. right? So maybe that's why we're going to it. And yep, that's yeah. right. We got a Buzzwool ban from Japan. The respect has been earned. Oh, without a doubt, that respect has been earned. Uh, we're going to be seeing the Leafeon ban from the side of Rear Respawn. I mean, they could, like I said, extremely well use it themselves, but we have seen Unite Hulk as well use Leafeon. I mean, kind of everybody has a Leafeon player at this point. Mm -hmm. First pick on the Espeon, though, that is a high, high value uh, that they're putting on that, which is not uh, unearned. Yeah, it's a Pokemon that has had uh, a lot of success in every game we see it. Honestly, I'm very curious that when we get into tomorrow, when we start seeing the percentile win rates of some of these Pokemon from this tournament specifically. Espeon going to be uh, looking very good, I think. But wow, Eldegoss and Blastoise going to go to Rework Respawn. Those were two options they had in the last match, and they look fantastic. Um, you know, there's no way we're going to see that. Well, I mean, actually, as Uniholic, we could see actually yeah, anything, yeah. but they are honestly going for a little bit more of just like meta comps right now. They're yeah. not going to go for anything super wild. I mean, that Mew is going to be amazing, and they honestly maybe could have even taken that a little bit later if they wanted to, but Mew is going to be so flexible. I 
personally, I really like taking your attacker Pokemon a little bit earlier so that you get to see more of the draft before you lock down your central areas, right? Uh, and your supporter has already been chosen on the other side, so you're probably just going to grab that Blissey again. You might just run it back, and here we go. It is going to be a repeat for Unite Holic, which is a different defender look, I believe. Interesting. I, I do like that, though. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the, you got to commit to what you're good at. And we're actually going to see the exact same pick as well as the final pick for the side of Rework Respawn. Now, I do assume that we're going to be seeing some player switches here. Yeah, we're going to be seeing Sherlock take a, uh, a more, I would say, all-rounder uh, kind of uh, angle at the Blastoise. Probably yeah. going to be going up top with that, which is what I expected. And then Reggie will going to be on that Scyther once again. So uh, looking really solid with their choices. The big question now, is how well will that top path do against yeah. what I have to assume is basically the same thing coming from Unite Hall. I agree. It's going to be interesting. Oftentimes when we see Blastoise games, we actually see a lot of teams play like full four-player pushes in the paths just to really assist that poor little Squirtle in the early game, yeah. which, which can be kind of detrimental from time to time. So we will have to see where this leads looks like in terms of lane rollouts, especially uh, when we get to the moment where players start leaving the central area, joining the path, and trying to earn a ton of experience. Because those first objective fights are incredibly important. It's why we're seeing Eevee so often, because of that early power spike. Yes, uh, well, like, I mean, Eevee is correct. You know, any evolution basically at this point. Uh, so we'll see exactly how that ends up going with, uh, especially, I mean, with the, the Serena being so early, which is really interesting and kind of goes up, up I would say the opposite of that, right? Uh, where Serena is not going to be that immediate threat that you're used to seeing. Uh, it's going to be a much, much, like, kind of, like, later in the game threat, but not really that late game of a threat. So, uh, again, I just really want to see exactly how it wants to pop off because we didn't get to see it get that chance to last time, mostly because it was the buzz wall, but now without a buzz wall, maybe you're just, you're, you're chilling. One of the things I'm really interested about Rework Respawn's composition is the choice of the Snorlax. Because we do see uh, quite a few defenders in play right now. Defenders overall as a role are actually doing quite well yeah. uh, in the game. It's a, it's a very, very strong one. But we actually have Snorlax being the option that Rework Respawn has chosen to go with. Um, which normally we see that with some more long-range threats. The Heavy Slam Yawn combo makes a Pokemon stun for such a long time. It makes it so easy to line up Solar Beams and Snipe Shots. But the composition that Rework Respawn is bringing to the table is primarily just uh, Brawl and Dive. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Sylveon kind of walks the line a little bit between those, and we can see some combination play. But honestly, it looks like, hey, we just don't want to lose early game. Let's get the Pokemon with a great last hit secure, and that's Tackle from Snorlax. I will say, though, uh, the way that we saw Reggie playing that Scyther last game was almost more like a ranged attacker than anything yeah. else for a lot of the time. So I do agree with you, but Reggie's unique play style is very interesting. Uh, who also, may I note, did a ma play like a really good kind of like max range Leafy on, uh, and also has the ability to play some other attackers at a little bit more range. So uh, that just might be one of those style things where it's just like, yeah, well, we don't have to commit if we don't need to, which is going to be a good thing up against that team, especially don't want to get caught behind a rock tomb anywhere and it does look like we're getting these players uh, fixed something uh, set up so hopefully we'll get back into this one very soon we want to make sure that they're 100 for their games absolutely yeah we gotta we have some of the best in the world on stage working things out right now so we will have uh, this sorted out and back to some great competitive Pokemon Unite very soon and I don't think that's too big of a surprise with the amount of incredible stuff we've seen so far these games have been Amazing. So I uh, I personally am just over the moon excited to see how the remainder of this tournament goes up because the way we're starting, the way we're starting, these games have been fantastic. Yeah, and just as a reminder again for everybody else, this is our first time where we have two broadcasts, uh, two official broadcasts for this in-person event. So you can check out twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub. They are doing the open bracket today where you can see a whole bunch of really well-known teams. I mean, uh, you know, I'm going to say a lot of teams that have already lost, but, uh, you know, Team GT, Team YT, Team Illuminosity. I don't know if they've lost, actually, we've been here. Uh, there's Team Yellow Bingo. There's, uh, we've got Shin and Raude from uh, Taiwan. We've got so many different other teams that you should definitely know if you've been following the scene. If you have not been following the scene, you should go learn about those teams. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, multiple streams, multiple places to catch the action because there's certainly a lot of it. We yes. don't want any of you missing any of it. But currently, we are in our group stage right now. I believe this is Group B and Unite Holic and Rework Respawn. The squad's taking it out. But 
Uh, and we can take a look at uh, some of the most picked Pokemon that we've got as well. And Blastoise ends up as the most so far in this tournament. Uh, this is, again, one of those things where Blastoise very highly valued. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just a tournament. This is the entirety of UCS, mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, you know, the majority so far of this season has been similar-ish in meta. We did get to switch over to the multiple bands after the first month, but uh, Blastoise, people love it. It's strong, but it's it's just right under those bands right now, I think. Yeah, a, a Pokemon that will get banned quite often, but avoids it from yes, time to yes. time, which is tough. Just enough. Yeah, exactly. Blastoise, uh, but we see a few Pokemon on this list because balance patches are kind of moving away from being on this list. We'll have some new up-and-comers very, very soon. Clefable and Slowbro, obviously the two that I think are more notorious here. But Slowbro, kind of the surprise that we don't see more of this Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, now, Slowbro to me is one of those Pokemon that uh, it's it's kind of been the same personal level of strength for basically all of time. Uh, you know, it doesn't really get the note that it should be like stronger or weaker. It's just like I don't know what I'm doing. But <laughs> but it's it's cool because its individual strength in the meta is based on how good of a target it has to slow be. So the stronger the target that one team can potentially have to be their hardest carry, the better it is to just have Slowbro as an answer. And right. everything it brings to the table, always good, always solid, always strong. Uh, but just, yeah, what, when there's not too much that you can target out solo, you're like, I don't know if we need it. And when there is, you're like, we need it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is one of those Pokemon that it was kind of uh, enabled by draft yeah. Uh, you know, it's yes. really tough to just rely on it in blind pick all the time. There were moments when Slowbro was strong enough to do so. But all of a sudden in draft pick, that Pokemon feels even better uh, and, and so, so strong. And Man, uh, in this game, we might not see it, but we're going to see some different defenders like we talked about before. Snorlax going to be one of the options, and I believe that's Rework Respawn locking that one down. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I love the uh, the Snorlax. Snorlax has been kind of. I almost want to say. I mean, okay. So we've we've obviously seen a lot of different eras of Snorlax being picked a lot or being picked not at all. Uh, and I kind of feel like it's kind of going back up into the spot where we're seeing a lot more Snorlax, mm. uh, just because of I guess kind of just like a buffs and nerfs and bans on certain defenders. Like now that we're seeing a whole lot less Umbreon, I think people have shifted down one more, and uh, it's really really cool to see the Snorlaxes, which we've seen actually kind of a lot of today already. Yeah, yeah, that's that is interesting. Uh, another new option, rework respawn. Of course, putting in the Blastoise uh, in the top half in this round, where last time we saw it uh, play more of a defender role. This time, we're going to see that Brawler Pokemon enter the battlefield. Uh, I don't see any Rapid Fire, a Rapid Fire Scarf equipped to this Blastoise, so I don't know if we're going to see the spin. But honestly, you still could play it with that option. They're running stacking glasses, so having big damage numbers honestly is fine for Surf or Spin. Yeah, yeah, and there's been a lot of, uh, I mean, definitely the, I would say the meta shifted from being uh, spin water spout to being uh, spin hydro pump a, a lot more recently, which yeah. is really interesting to me. So, but the thing about Blastoise is that we've seen competitive teams in even the current meta play it in every number of ways that you possibly could. That yeah. Pokemon can just do so many things. Uh, for anybody who isn't, again, as familiar with Pokemon Unite, uh, EXP share, that's really the item that you like to take a lot on your supports and your kind of supporting defender, right? Yes. Uh, where you get to take it and it gives you like a passive EXP. Uh, we can see right there with the respawn on the first win. But uh, the... The passive EXP is really good, but then you don't become like that much of a carry. So we get to see Blastoise used as that kind of supportive defender. We also get to see Blastoise used as like an aggressive non-EXP share uh, top pather. That's more of a brawler, more of an all-rounder, even though it is a defender. Uh, so there's just a whole lot that you can do with that Pokemon. And we're getting to get to see both in this first match. So obviously, we saw the Defender Blastoise look in game number one. We're going to see the Brawler Blastoise in game number two. I particularly am quite excited to see um, either one. Obviously, you see a lot of Pokemon in the top path who are great at utilizing those stacking items, Attack Wade, Aos Cookie, even the special attack specs. All fantastic options to amplify a specific stat the more you score up into six scoring times. So uh, in the top path, those goal zones are a little bit closer together than they are in the bottom path, and it's just easier to contend with. So you know you can get those scores. 
All right, well, it looks like most likely we're getting back into game here. So game number two, Unite Holic down one game against Rework Respawn from Ladam North, who is doing an amazing job so far. But one of the closest games that we've seen in the entire broadcast, and now we get to see the follow-up to it. All right, I can't wait. Thank you, everybody, for waiting patiently as we jump into game number two. One stack already in for Sherlock. That's the nice thing about going into a team with uh, Pokemon who takes a little bit longer to level up in the central area, like a Serena. You know you're safer for some of these earlier stacks. You got to go into that Espeon and the Blissey, which is scary, but you know you can at least get one. Yeah, and at least just that one is pretty big. It's also going to give that little boost of EXP. Uh, and any little boost is very, very important when you're just trying to get past that Squirtle phase, quite honestly, which we've seen so many people get locked at. Look at this adaptation from Reggie. Actually going to the bot path on their first push at nine minutes, knowing that Mame is going to be appearing. Mame, by the way, running X attack. We haven't really talked about that at all, but anytime you see that pulsating orange circle beneath the Serena, you know that they have amplified their damage with that X attack battle item. Yeah, that's uh, that's one that we I feel like we see a lot more once upon a time. And goodness, they are just really fighting for, of course, those EXP. Uh, that was a little bit hard to track who exactly got which. It looks like it was a little bit of a split. The highest yeah. level, as far as just the little circles, looks like it was Mame on that Serena, but just by a little bit. Uh, so you do like to see that split up staying pretty even. And up top here, it looks like we've got to, a lot less chances to get those stacks in. Yeah, and again, Reggie playing a very patient game on this site. They're not trying to jump in and turn a situation from bad to worse so they are not going to be able to chase that Pokemon down. Yupuno does land a nice rock tune to prevent Minato from getting back, but at this point in time, the bottom path tends to be just two very large defenders just kind of poking each other. Yeah, yeah, they're just like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> oh, you enjoying London? Yeah, yeah. Did you get any, uh, any English breakfast? Yeah, yeah, I love, love the beans. But uh, right now, this is going to be a lot less of just a little poking as we've got a pretty big collapse here, trying to get that middle EXP. It does look like some of it was stolen away by Reggie on that side there, but majority still probably going, especially with that main uh, little option there. To Unite Holic, who looks like they're rotating up top mostly, trying to push this down. We do have the War Turtle, which is already going to be better than nothing, but uh, this is still just not enough to defend. We might be able to get a pushback with this Scyther, though. Yeah, great water spout onto those two targets who are trying to score on the bottom side. In the end, we do have the Espeon landing their score, but Mame is not able to put in the 30 points into that top tier goal zone. United Holic may have the lead, but they did not break that top goal zone, which was their main objective with a four player push. So stifled a little bit. Mame get a fully engaged. Stomp hits multiple targets. The Rock Tomb a little bit late, but it's still good to take out the Eldegoss. Minato with a three player heavy slam is going to be enough for United Holic to have to regroup and push back. Another Rock Tomb makes things a little sketchy and Unite Holic is still gonna keep pushing forward. Oh, the ability to flex back has been so good for Rirk Respawn, but now there's nowhere left to flex back to, as we're gonna see Minato get extremely low, finally not getting KO'd, though. The Unite gonna come out, take down War Turtle. They're gonna be trading for the Crustle one for one, although it looks like Reggie went down as well. They're still holding on this goal zone. Some more points going in, but they're finally able to break through this defense. Only the Sylveon left, trying to Hyper Voice will get the KO before anything else happens, although they are gonna be taking down that goal zone, managing to get the KO as well on that unit. Man, sick coaching from Mew. I know they eventually do go down, but they avoid getting knocked out by that Scyther by coaching to their Serena on the other side. And well, that'll in fact give Mame enough of a runway to be able to make it out. And now we have the Serena headed into the central again to take even more experience. And they did finally break that top tier goal zone. Not a large overdunk, but neither of these teams have been particularly concerned with that in our matchup. Honestly, uh, electing for quicker breaks rather than big score leads. Yeah, and that's such a regional thing, which is super cool to see up against each other. But both these teams uh, definitely kind of go with the same strategy. Reggie or Steel going to Reggie. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. You know, you've got to get every Reggie if your name is Reggie. Uh, but that is going to be a nice little buff for them. On top of the fact that Rio Respawn, they were down just by like barely by levels. Uh, they mostly are just getting outrun by Mame, who yeah. managed to really, really pop off as far as levels go. So they would like a little bit more EXP, but they're going to be slightly ahead on levels as far as every everybody else on the team, so it's weird to see it that much lopsided. Uh, they just got to get that singular pick, and that'll be huge for them. And I don't haven't been stack counting, but I know they are definitely higher than 50%, if not already full, thanks to a push on that tier two that nobody was watching. We do have the spin, Bliss Assistance onto Mame, but they're pushing all the way to the back line, the three. They're going to throw that Sylveon up in the air, who's able to fairy frolic and avoid a lot of the damage, and all of a sudden, Reesburg Rework, uh, Rework Respawn has an answer. Espeon Unite move to try to slow down the push, but Blastoise is still 
still charging forward. Sylveon with the Chaos Streak of two. Sherlock is able to take one and recall back to base. I was talking about how good Rework Respawn is at flexing backwards, and they did that so well. Uh, we actually saw the accidental unite into the uh, solar beam, or it's not solar beam, uh, the, yeah, solar beam, uh, from uh, Reggie, and they managed to get out at like one HP. We saw Minato get out at one HP, everybody at one HP. That's gonna be a lot more e or HP as we're gonna see the unite come out from the Snorlax, just to build a little bit more space, guarantee that secure on the Regilecki, which is just gonna be going in as we're gonna see Unite Hall continue to chase down. Same positioning here from Mew, just landing those beams from below, but they're not gonna be able to fully catch out anybody, and they've got quite a far way to run, so I don't know if they're gonna fully commit. Checking to see if they can steal anything from that center area, but it looks like this is gonna be mostly a retreat. Man, the duel between these two tanks has been one of the most interesting things for me to watch. Minato and Yupuno versus against each other. We're gonna have Minato going the distance to dunk that 39. Huge yawn, but just moments like that, having the patience to not auto attack, they send that yawn for the full amount of time. Around that Reggie and Lucky fight that happened just a few moments ago on the top side, we're able to see a great combo onto the Mew. They left them sleeping, and that was the perfect moment for Rework Respawn to take down the objective while that happened. So really, really good tank play, playing around your cooldowns, playing around the knowledge of your moves. Yeah, we did manage to see, well, um, we'll say this is a really aggressive push. Oh, I'm sorry, they didn't have beam or anything, and it looks like just yeah. barely able to get back. They knew, they knew for sure that Reggie was going to be in that tall grass, but uh, it's just all about the cooldown, so great, great, great choice to actually back right there when it normally would have been a little bit more of a scary option, and this is going to be a four versus four collapse here on this oh. basement Reggie. The Reggie steals. The Unite's going to come in from Reggie, be able to immediately KO that Espeon off the bat, doing so much damage to everybody. When you're a group, that Unite does infinite damage, and now we're gonna see the Unite come out from Mew to try and get back in, but the Yawn! Oh, it's perfectly timed again. They were trying to get the secure in that moment. Minato is just on Mew duty to make sure they don't have a chance to try to steal it away, but it's Mame who you should have been worried about. X attack into the fray, and they're gonna take the Reggie Steel as well. Metrop kick into the enemy backline. A supportive Unite move from Steven is gonna bring some healing, but now they don't have it for the remainder of this push. Yeah, or maybe even a little bit later. Uh, we're seeing everything in pop right now. This is two minutes and 40 seconds. Somebody tell the players that there is something, another objective that is not a tier one goal zone that they're gonna have to deal with, but that is gonna be the Crustle going down. The only true casualty of this fight. Uh, this is a lot of resources to not have. That beam is gonna land, but uh, they're gonna think maybe that it didn't quite, so they're just gonna be able to back. Uh, that's a lot of Unites used at two minutes, 30, two minutes, 40. I don't know what we're gonna have up left. I mean, just look what we have on board. We've got uh, two Unites in the entire game? Yeah, and we do have Sylveon in sight. They're working towards the top half two Pokemon that are excellent at ripping down wild Pokemon's HP bars, so they should be able to get it within the five seconds we have remaining in our match and threaten the Regia like it towards Unite Holic's side. In the nick of time, they do. But look at this, Unite Holic playing for really good positioning while Yupono actually covering a ton of the Rayquaza pit, having great awareness of that. And this is where Rework Respawn really put in the work in the last game. They're actually going to defend against that Regilecki from Unite Holic. Literally the best time Regilecki possible, 2-0-1, which is amazing. Yeah, we actually have Reggie working towards it through a very, very interesting flank angle. Going to go through the enemy's central area. As obviously, they don't think that Unite Holic has enough damage on Rayquaza to really make that a threat. So you can allow the Scyther to back half, and we even have Sherlock playing a defensive Blastoise on that top side. Yeah, now we're a little bit split up. Rework Respawn does not want to stay in that little choke point down there. We've got a very, very low uh, Snorlax. Just Minato trying to get out of there, trying to find a little bit more healing, but they know that somebody's in there and those beams are just landing over and over. Both our top path brawlers as well, kind of sitting up top. We're gonna see Sherlock defend against potential back cap. They know that they've got the lead after what they just did, managing to get that Regilecki in. And with less than one minute, somebody's gotta make a move and that somebody's gotta be Unite Holly. Yeah, Rework Respawn has earned this lead. So they're able to just play very comfortably in this moment. Minuto with a huge heavy slam combination into the Yon and the Unite move. Reggie is gonna capitalize perfectly. That is the combo play that Rework Respawn has, uh, has got in the draft screen and is executed here in the match. Rayquaza would up for out down extremely low. Mame is able to get out of that engagement, but them and Crustle are the only two Pokemon still up in this fight. Ray Reggie goes down. Unite Holic still have a chance. Oh, this is actually really scary. They've got to deal with Mame. They've got to deal with this before they commit to anything. Rayquaza is getting really low, but they, everybody's getting really low. Mame's trying to do the damage. Nobody's dealing with them, but it's gonna be Minato getting the final hit on the Rayquaza. Seven seconds left, and Rework
Dark Respawn is going to confirm their second game win and their set win against Unite Holly. Snorlax by absolute goat. Oh my word, the last hit secure from the defender on the Rayquaza. The clock probably wasn't even favoring Unite Holic if the Rayquaza does go down in a scenario, but Rework Respawn really making sure of their victory as they take down Unite Holic 2-0. That is a huge, huge statement. Japan considered such an incredibly strong region, but this was a great set of games from Rework Respawn. I mean, we know how strong they are. I feel like I feel like we are justified right now. I seriously cannot explain, if y'all haven't been watching for a really long time, how much you and I have been talking up Rework Respawn. I know. And finally, finally, they get to be here in person with their full team, and they are just absolutely making a statement. They crushed it in April and confirmed their spot in the group stage, avoiding the Swiss Open play, and they made their way here on the stage. In March, they did get second place to a team in the Open, by the way, and NG7 John still is mm -hmm. competing. But now their path has gotten even better looking uh, to make it into tomorrow's top eight bracket. They are one away from that uh, winner's side opportunity. They're waiting to see who's going to win from the Swiss side of their bracket. But here it is, taking a look at the stats. We have Rev with five KOs, Reggie with that seven knockouts on the side. I know that I always hype up Reggie, but boy, that was the most interesting Scyther play I've ever seen. Yeah. It was a great style, not over committing, and clearly you can see it put in a lot of work. Although, you gotta say, the damage overall on the side of Rework Respawn, it was very focused, right? You can see it's considerably lower than Unite Holic, but they managed to collapse at the perfect moments to get their KOs, while a lot of it from Unite Holic was poked and ended up getting healed by, you can see the 75k from right. Steven. Yeah, this is what we like to call a dive composition in Pokemon Unite. It it encapsulates the theme because you're working around that Scyther and even that Rapid Spin Blastoise is a great engagement option, but you're playing off of two big things. Heavy Slam from the Snorlax and Hydro Typhoon from the Blastoise. Either of those options are incredible to enable the Scyther and that's why you're seeing Reggie, one, play so patiently in these games, just chilling, waiting for the perfect moment and they're still walking away with great stats. Yes, yes, extremely strong. What a great set. I'm glad that we get to see one more little look at that. This is the one, well, this is one of them that I was looking forward to the most. I mean, obviously every single match that we're gonna have uh, from at least pre-qualified teams is gonna be amazing, which we've only got one more, I believe. But this one, I mean, like I said, we've been talking about this team and Unite Hulk has been such a great team. I'm so happy that we finally got a chance to catch them as well. But uh, this was just so solid as far as just like, the, again, I want to talk about it before, but the map awareness from Weaver Respawn, they are so good at knowing exactly where people are going to be coming from and where they should be to deal with that, or where people are going to be trying to aggress them where they need to back up and not overextending to the point where they can still get out with barely any HP. Oh, it was looking fantastic. And I got to admit, I didn't know I'd ever get the opportunity to cast Mame playing Serena again. True. But I am happy I got the option because today it was fantastic. Two games in a row. Yes, it comes up a little short both of those times, but boy, oh boy, is it fun. Uh, and I think for awareness for teams going forward, this is the look that Unite Holic has presented two games in a row. If you are preparing for this team, whatever Swiss teams make it into this group, they'll have to compete with Unite Holic going forward. You got to be aware of this composition and how to counter it. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's really interesting that both these teams, I mean, it does make perfect sense, right? They kind of went for a relatively close run back to their previous comps. The biggest deals were the bans, uh, which made a lot of sense. They they gained a lot of respect. They were like, okay, well, we can't let that buzz ball get through again, which was uh, making it a much, much closer game for sure. But uh, overall, it's just these teams were running their comps. And again, I feel like it gets down to the regional versus regional where they're like, well, yeah. we don't actually need to step on each other's toes here because this is what we've been playing. It's what you've been playing. Let's see how it goes. And let me tell you, it went pretty well for Rework Respawn. That's my favorite part about this tournament is the fact that we are seeing regional meadows clashing against one another at not just the World Championships, which normally and in the past that has been our only opportunity to do so, but now here at AOS Cup, we have a second international main stage tournament that's already been delivering. We've seen Japan succeed. We have seen now Latin America North succeed. 
And I guess we have one more group stage coming up very soon where we're going to see Latin America South competing and Brazil competing. The only two regions we have not seen on our broadcast so far. I'm so glad that we got to have so many different regions and just seeing, I mean, that's the big story for me today is just seeing every single region versus every other single region. Yeah. And I'm kind of going to see like, which of these teams are like, well, wait a minute, hold on. And like what Latin North was doing was really good. Yeah. Maybe we should look at that or what, you know, what Japan was doing is really good. We should look at that more and getting the chance for these teams to mingle together, which we've already seen so much of and mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's for the better, sometimes it's for the worse, but it's a lot of learning. Yeah, but all right, on stage, we have an interview with Rework Response Sherlock. I believe it's going to be Dupe Snacks. So, Dupe Snacks, take it away. Hello, everyone. Rework Respawn 2 0 against Unite Holics. I'm here with Sherlock. Sherlock, I have to ask, you started the day 2 0. You started your tournament strong. How are you feeling about that? Eh, empezaste el torneo super con toda fuerza, con 2 a 0. ¿Cómo te sientes? Me siento muy emocionado de por fin poder estar aquí y realmente quiero demostrar de lo que es capaz mi equipo. I'm very happy to be here and I want to show what my team is capable of. Well, we saw plenty of what you're capable of. Again, 2-0 against a phenomenal squad. How did you get your team ready, Sherlock, for this event specifically with all these different regions represented? Vimos que la fuerza que tienen ustedes, ganando 2 a 0 así de un, de un equipo tan fuerte, eh, ¿cómo se prepararon ustedes para venir a, a un evento tan, tan importante? Pues como todos los deportes, entrenando diario, esforzándose mucho y todos enfocados en la misma meta. Well, like every sport, we have been very focused and we are very, very focused on our goal. Last question for you, Sherlock, before I cut you loose. You are very focused. The team seems ready. What team from this field, open bracket, or in the group stages, would you like to play against in the grand finals? Bueno, ustedes parecen realmente muy enfocados. Y, y entonces, ¿cuál equipo, sea del open bracket o de los cualificados, que ustedes quieren enfrentar? Realmente me gustaría enfrentarme contra Luminosity porque son los bicampeones del mundo. Well, we would like to uh, play against Luminosity because they are by champions of the world. Well, that is a great team for sure, but they have to fight through the open brackets. We'll see if they even make it to the group stage. You all are off to a great start. Let's send it back to the desk because we've got more group play straight ahead. Awesome, thank you. Great to hear from Sherlock, and of course, Dupes next. Uh, but great to hear from Sherlock, who our director actually just came in and let us know that Minato, a, a player on that team, shouted out Sherlock as the reason they win or lose games, win or lose, uh, because of the wild card effect they bring to the team. So many crazy options that they can do. Yeah, yeah, well, our producer technically, but uh, yeah, I mean, that is definitely the truth, though. I mean, we've seen a lot of what Sherlock can do, and uh, it, it definitely works out a lot. That game, that was definitely a Sherlock-centered set, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Game one, especially, the, the bus will makes it through draft, and we see what Sherlock can really do on that power pick. And then game number two, we saw the Blastoise, but it's actually going to be a player of the game award going to someone we haven't talked about too much. It's going to be Rev, the attacker player, and honestly, I feel like we should have been discussing this Sylveon a little bit more. More. But it's hard to with rework respawn. Their combo plays, their little like two v two fights, are so good because they have those texts down perfectly. In game one, it was that SmackDown full hyper voice combo that we talked mm -hmm. about, and Rev was lining up plays like that all series long. Yeah, that was actually disgusting. But it was. Uh, yeah, I mean that's the thing about rework respawn is they very rarely take one v ones or one v twos or one v threes, which in the case of Buzzwell sometimes. But sure. uh, they very rarely take them unless it's a very specifically intended one. It is always a coordination, like you said, between multiple members of their team, which uh, was just so so strong. So sometimes, you know, even though we do talk about some of the the players who get to kind of show off, like, oh yeah, this is obviously a lot of KOs and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, it's like this is every single person on that team. Yeah, the the talent is bursting at the seams with a squad like Rework Respawn. Uh, and I am personally am very, very excited to see them moving on in the tournament. But same to goes to Unite Holic, a roster that I am very, very excited to see keep on competing. Again, just moving down to the loser's bracket of their group stage. Still alive in this tournament, but uh, the road is much more difficult. Going to have to win a few more group stage games uh, than previous if they are going to be making it into tomorrow's top eight. 
Yeah, and that's going to be against players or teams, I should say, players and teams, players that are on teams, coming out of the open bracket. Uh, and, of course, the open bracket is on uh, twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub. I really wish that I was watching some of those matches right now, but there's so much that we can't watch everything. Luckily, you all can watch everything. We can actually see yes. the Swiss rankings so far. This is a lot of updates that we haven't seen. <laughs> Oh, this is so fantastic. Okay, interesting. We have seen, uh, apparently we're getting word of a few teams having buys in this scenario, but look at this. Nemesis, Capybaba's, Brave Birders at 2-0, Nouns Esports as well. And ooh, interesting, last time I checked in with Exile, they were currently 1-0, now sitting at 1-1. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, a lot of these teams that we see here, actually, oh, another big thing to note, okay, both the interviews that we've had, or two of the interviews that we've had, have had uh, the answer, who do you want to play? LG, Luminosity, currently one and one. They are wow. fighting for their spot. And uh, we do see uh, the Team YT and De Croissants, they both have buys. They're both actually uh, pretty hyped up. So we'll be interested to see how they do. But up on top, I mean, those are some interesting names. I know that, I mean, the NFC 7 team currently, they, like you said, they did really well in the previous cup. I expected them. Copy Baba's pulled off a pretty big upset earlier against YouTube, was it? I actually forget. There's so many of these matchups, but I know they defeated a really strong team. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's really cool to see how this out. And we're obviously, we're just starting in the Swiss bracket. So who knows where we will be going as the Swiss bracket continues on. And I doubt those top eight teams will stay exactly like that yes. for the whole tournament. We are going to see so much shifting as the tournament goes on. And well, we've already seen some fantastic stuff in the group stage. I'm sure you've all been tuning in to both of the streams to see some awesome stuff in the open bracket as well uh, because the Pokemon Unite action at AOS Cup here live at AUIC is no stranger to excellence. Uh, it has been amazing so far to watch, and being here live in the venue is just unbelievable. I wish I could share it with all of you because it is so fantastic to be here. The energy is just, it's out there. Yeah, and it's only the start, right? I mean, this is, of course, uh -huh. just day one of two. We're playing through the open bracket today. We're playing through this particular stage, instead of group stages. And then we're going to be building down to, or building down, breaking down to a top eight tomorrow. I mean, we're getting rid of some teams, right? We're building a top eight by breaking down the pool of players. So it's a little combination of both. Uh, but yeah, we are going to have, I mean, that's going to be the most intense of it. However, today it's intense in a different way. I mean, it's exactly. just, it's focused versus just chaos everywhere. It's so much about keeping your head focused and moving forward and that's what we are going to be doing here on broadcast we're going to be jumping to a very short break but when we return the final game from the initial matches of the group stage is going to be team legacy versus team fusion Well, my dad is in the Philippines, but he was supportive of me when I was playing Dota. But uh, here, I think my mom and my stepdad is pretty supportive of it. And a lot of my friends are supportive of me in playing Unite. They, some of them watch the streams, some of them watch my streams. Yeah, I think they're, they're very supportive of me. I mean, the, my parents uh, specifically has always been kind of supportive. like. They, they haven't only been right at the beginning because like I actually quit my 9 to 5 to start playing the game. So when that happened, they were kind of reluctant because like, well, where is your money going to come from? But um, yeah, as, as, as they seen like me growing on stream, on YouTube, and then out traveling the world like twice, we're going to go for a third time, right, in London, the, in the UIC. So like it became kind of easier for them to understand like how big it is and how... Um, Oh, actually, I like it because, like, my dad has seen me playing games ever since I was born. So, like, you can't really deny someone from doing something that like, they have been doing forever, right? Um, so, yeah, even though they were, like, kind of uh, reluctant when I wanted to quit my job, like, they're they're totally okay now. Mom watches every game. Mom texts me after every game, after every tournament. Yeah, they're awesome. How about it? Este, el año pasado que fui a Japón, ellos antes de ganar la regional no sabían nada en que yo competía así. Pero después de ganarla, yo les conté de que había ganado el pase a Japón y que iba a ir al Mundial, pero pues ellos como que se lo tomaron a juego y no me creían, ¿no? Pero después de eso me apoyaron siempre, 
hasta, hasta el momento todavía me apoyan y así. Um, yeah, I would say they're pretty supportive. Like my friends, my family, they know what I'm doing. It's not like I was only doing that in my life, so... Like, yeah, they support me, they support me totally. My friends and family have always, like, been a bit open-minded. They've always been helpful regarding whatever I needed. My, my parents in particular, they've always been like, look, if you really want to do something, go do it. But of course, you know, probably should make sure all your matters are in order. I'm in a good enough position to like, I guess, pursue something like this, like to a decent amount of time. And my mother, like, you know, God bless her soul, has always been like there for me, no matter what I have. Like my grandma as well, like I, she only speaks Spanish and I go over to her place once a week and I tell her about all my miseries and all my successes and she cheers for me. It's uh, such a blessing and I'm so glad and lucky to have uh, such a supportive group of people. And I have to mention my girlfriend. She's been f with me for the whole journey. She's been there every step of the way, uh, every failure and every success and I wouldn't be able to do it without her. So lots of love to you, Claire. Uh, o sea, an anteriormente, hace un año aproximadamente, no, no, no creía en mí, o sea, de que, de que esto podría ser algo bueno para más adelante. Pero después cuando vieron que empe empecé a tener ingresos y ahí fue donde que empezaron a no decirme nada, entonces empezaron a ver que generaba más y solo se alegraron a por mí. Yeah, so like what makes her team special is definitely one is how long we've been together. So we've been together with like basically the same roster with like one or two, two changes since 2021, since like November 2021. So it's been a while. Um, we know each other from everything that we do, like in our lives, like from hobbies to how we're gonna play games to how it overall things, what training schedule fits better. We're also all really, really technically good at the game. So like, ever since everybody joined somebody, everybody was already pretty good in some other game. So like, me and Fob came from League of Legends. Wolf came from like, a lot of mobile games before. He was actually a pro in another mobile game before. Um, Leo and Soto were like, high elo in some other games. Um, so that's basically the main differential. Like, Pokemon Unite, it's not any, any of us first good game, which I think helps a lot. Like bringing the baggage and just improving on the baggage that you already had makes it, it makes it so your peak can be a lot higher. I don't know how it's gonna be this year. Like since we made fifth last year, I don't think this is gonna be the same way, but people actually see us as underdogs. Like we come from a region that's historically in MOBAs is not really good, to be honest. Like our best performances are not going 0 and 20 in group stages. And uh, right now, like last year in 2022, obviously that may, they may have helped with making teams underestimate us, but now I think it's gonna change a little bit and teams are gonna respect us a lot more. So we can actually follow that in and um, try to be more aggressive than we were last year and like be more dominant. I think being an underdog actually helps in like some stages, but you can also turn it around and make it like an advantage to be respected. Here we are, back with the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. This is the AOS Cup, live here in London at the Excel Center. Coming up, Doob Snacks, Legacy versus Fusion in Group D. This is our first match here in Group D, and man, I cannot wait to see these two teams go at it. Absolute powerhouse squads, and Fusion has won both of their months here in the Unite Championship Series. Pronounced Fusion one of the only TPCI regions to have done so. And by one of, I mean the only one. On the other side though is Legacy, anchored by Mazo, a team that in years past, UCS years past, have really seemed like the unstoppable force from their region. Fell just a little short in March, doesn't matter. They're at the AOS Cup, they're on their, their revenge tour here. Yeah. And lining right in front of them is Fusion. Yeah, I, I cannot wait to see these two teams go at it. Obviously, we have great squads on both sides. The entire group stage so far have just been an amazing game after amazing game. Uh, 
big Mazo fan myself, so I can't wait to see what Legacy brings out here. You can see Mazo on cam right there. He's always got an energy about him oh, that terrific. I think is so powerful when you're playing a competitive game. It feels like he is having fun all the time. Yeah, you can't discredit the rest of the team around them. Bob, Soto, Lel, Wolf. This is the team that was uh, affectionately known as OO Nation last year. Uh, picked themselves up, got picked up by Legacy here. And a team of five players that are used to winning and don't plan on stopping today. Dispatching last year very publicly in a show of brilliance. Tally Bobo Believers, one of the favorites of last year's World Championships. That's right, yeah, they took down the big EU team that a lot of people thought could make it all the way to the Grand Finals of Worlds, and they got pretty far into day two as well. You can see them here up on the big stage getting ready for this game. And I feel like some teams don't rise to the occasion on the big stage, you know, there's a lot of pressure. But every time I have seen them in these moments, they play great under those big lights. I mean, you take a look at this squad. Their fans last year came unglued. The support that they had was relentless. And Fusion trying to make some fans for themselves here. Fusion, great players across the board. Anemo, Tempo, Kea, Draken, Zynus. Uh, my eyes are on Kea for sure. Interesting, yeah, I feel like I've heard so much about Tempo, so I can't wait to see this team in action. I can't wait to see how they want to draft uh, against Legacy right here. Obviously, one of the best parts of this competition is seeing different metas collide. You know, what is coming out of Latin America North? What is coming out of Japan? What is coming out of EU? And what happens when they meet? Last year, we didn't get to really see any of this until Worlds. Right? So right. now, this year, we get to see this here at the AOS Cup. Well, let's take a look at Bob from Legacy, uh, a player that we have seen on the world stage that is going to be, look at this. Bla look at the diversity between just what a Blastoise represents and what a Blaziken represents. Blaziken average 102,000 damage. Maybe unsurprising what we saw it banned earlier in the day. Yeah, you can see a 100% win rate on this Pokemon. So I have a good feeling that they are not going to let that player snap that up. They would be making a big mistake right there. But if they don't get it, they've got Blastoise that they're using sort of in this top position that players play almost like that carry all-rounder. Blastoise slots right in there. We're seeing our first bans come out right now. Legacy's going to have first pick and first ban, and they are getting rid of Dodrio. Looks like Buzzwool on the other side. Very, you know, typical bans that you would see. Dodrio probably targeted. Buzzwool is just, you don't want anyone taking that. Yeah, exactly. And actually, going from Inteleon to Leafeon, so we see some truly traditional bands out of Fusion. Buzzwool, Leafeon, unsurprising there, which allows Legacy the flexibility to go a little bit more pointed. And they're kicking this thing off with Falb's Blastoise. Yeah, they decide to not go the route of that Blaziken with that 100% win rate. Now, it's possible it's because they didn't get one of the other components that they wanted for that setup, right? Great picks on the other side here from Fusion. We've got Crustle, we've got Blissey getting locked in here. Crustle just such a dominant defender Correct. in the game right now. Really incredible. We're likely seeing Falb play this in the top path. We're going to have to see how they want to play this game and what defender Let's they might go. bring Let's out go. the bottom path here. We've got Hoopa and we got Mazo hovering the Sylveon. That is such a prize for Lel specifically, a phenomenal support player. We saw them play a lot of Eldegoss. We saw them play Blissey Clefable last year. Lel on this Hoopa is nothing to scoff at, and Hoopa not something we've had the opportunity to see too much already today because it's often getting banned. Mew is a, a really interesting Pokemon because I think a lot of teams sort of dropped off Mew. You know, when a Pokemon gets a small nerf inside of Pokemon United, it feels people are very scared to pick it up, but I think Mew really hasn't lost much, uh, much at all inside this competitive environment. Tempo grabbing the Mimikyu. I've seen a lot of teams banning Mimikyu out from top Mimikyu players. It's going to be really exciting to see what they're able to do with this, and I'm also curious, are we going to be seeing Play Rough? Are we going to be seeing Sha uh, you know, Shadow Claw? It's going to be interesting to see how Tempo wants to play this. I love this three evolution set up by legacy here of course sylveon umbreon espion which means they'll have hard impacts early they'll be able to out rotate through the hoopa and lel which means if they can keep fusion from hitting their power spikes specifically now anemo in this tree they can take over the game very quickly and snowball 
Yeah, you see a lot of these top teams, when they're grabbing these Eevees, they're picking Pokemon that evolve early and get a huge power spike at level four. Glaceon obviously is a little later at, at level six, but these are massive power spikes really, really early. And if multiple members of uh, you know Fusion are waiting till level five, that's just a, a huge amount of time that Legacy gets to try to control the game. And if they can control it, if they can take that advantage and never give it up, that's how you are winning with these EV comps. One thing I have to highlight here, there are three characters on the side of Fusion that can limit Hoopa's resets, right? Keep players from going through. You have the Egg Bomb, you have the Crustle Walls, even X Scissoring somebody out of the circle. And of course you can Horn Leech or Wood Hammer players out of that portal so they can't be reset. That's the thing with the Hoopa portal. It goes down, you see the timer tick. You still have to be standing there. So if you're knocked up, if you're pushed out, you are not catching that reset and you are KO'd. Yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see what build we see out of the Trevenant. It looks like it's being played in sort of that top path carry role, which you can absolutely do in this Pokemon. It's extremely versatile. Just like Blastoise, you could see it in that bottom path as, def as more of the stereotypical defender. You could see it in that top path looking to get their stacks early and looking to carry hard. So we're going to see how they want to play Trevenant. Really, there's not a single bad move on this Pokemon currently. No, it's terrific. And the fact, it just shows the depth and strength of these Pokemon here. Of course, the Blastoise and the Trevenant specifically, both slotted as defenders, but taking that top path kind of all-rounder-esque role. Yeah, it's really going to be interesting to see how they want to play it. There are absolutely some great matchups for Trevenant on either build. We're taking a look at the head-to-head -head right here between Mazo and Zynas, both captains of the team, both attackers. Main Pokemon for Mazo is Leafeon, main Pokemon for Zynas, Inteleon. Leafeon oftentimes can be played in that attacker role, getting experience very fast. 100% win rate on Inteleon for both players right here. Yeah, we've actually seen it like out of a player like the Stockings in NA, you know, when they're on a run if they were getting that rolling as well. I mean, if you have a solid Inteleon player that is not missing those snipe shots, it is a truly game-changing Pokemon. We got this thing sorted out. We're back into the axe. We'll pick that in here as we get underway for game one. That's right, game one, Legacy, your purple team. Fusion, your orange team. As we head in here, we got Crustal, Mew heading to this bottom path. And you can see those Eevees just gobbling up all that experience in that central area on the side of Legacy right here. Yeah, they're going to be able to jump back into the path and really impact this Ruble because, of course, Mew shows up with Ori, that pseudo power spike engaged. So it can be a bully if it wants to. Look at this, quick rotation. Sylveon is here. We're going to lay in some damage and we're going to look for some targets. Hyper Voice is all over Phantom. And ultimately, no K opener there, but they are able to take some off of them. Yeah, they take some wild Pokemon and just look at the insane amounts of pressure that they are able to put on Fusion so early. It's why all of these Pokemon are extremely popular in competitive play right now. You are just able to make really, really aggressive plays and start dominating the enemy team. And a lot of times it feels like in Pokemon Unite, the first two minutes and the last two minutes decide so much of what happens in this game. I agree completely. The fact that this uh, Lel is already level four is great. If they want to do like a hard rotation, they can. But now they're getting on top of this Mimikyu. The Mimikyu is getting shredded. It's Hyper Voice and it's put down by the Hoopa. K opener to Lel and Legacy. Yeah, big K opener. They're like trying to push here, but it looks like they're going to have to back off. They actually take a berry right here, but I think the smart move is to peel back. Great. You won the engagement and you just don't want to give up anything. One of the worst things you can do in Pokemon Unite is give up a massive lead, give up a, a higher level KO to your opponents. And here comes the curse. Again, I was saying we didn't know what kind of Trevenant we were going to see. It could have been Woodhammer, but they're playing more damage focused build, less focused on stunning the opponents. And now a mean look on this Crustle. Crustle is way, way down on eight. HP, it's able to scuttle away. Nice coverage by Mew with the light screen. Rock Tomb is up as well. But again, you can feel the pressure that Legacy is putting in each path immediately because of these EVs. Yeah, absolutely. As we can see Tempo here in this center, they're able to take essentially all of this. It is the Shadow Claw Mimikyu that we saw a little bit earlier. So it's not going to be invulnerable through some of these fights, but it absolutely rips through some of these tankier Pokemon. Yo, Whoa. best Hoopa portal ever. Are you kidding me? All three players coming through. Only War Turtle coming back, which shouldn't have happened. They shouldn't have been there. Um, but I like this idea of the other two decided to walk back through path. 
Yeah, I think that was the right call. I'm actually super surprised that War Turtle came back because right. it was, you know, obviously going to be going down here. However, they push towards this goal. Mimikyu goes down for it. Trevenant coming in to try to make something happen here, grabbing a berry and pulling back. Here comes the Electro Ball, the Hyper Voice from the Sylveon trying to push them away from this goal zone. And now we have Blissey in a lot of trouble right here getting KO'd. Yeah, Sylveon needed to get one back after getting knocked out themselves. We've got a quick rotation. We're going to the bottom path. We have eight seconds until the basement. Reggie hits the map, and it looks like Legacy's posturing for that one right now. Yeah, Legacy's set up in a great position for this. Obviously, Hoopa makes that much more possible for some of these teams, right? Registeel already at half right here. Crustal completely stuck inside that mean look. Here comes a beautiful solar beam with the steel. Just a one pixel in range to take that thing. Sado was doing great with the mean look on the Crustle to make sure they couldn't get too much into their area for that basement. Reggie, it doesn't matter when you got a Mew, baby. No, it does not matter right there. I mean, Mew just has such a chance to really steal anything on this map. We see Trevenant coming to the top path right here, getting very aggressive, pushing towards the side of Legacy, looking to see if they can keep them away from this Regieleki. Tempo ripping Regieleki a bit, but now turning to fight a little bit onto the side of Legacy. Yeah, jumping up into the skies as the Sylveon looking for an opportunity. But this is the, the back line, and they're going to put pressure on, catching everybody at the Psychic. So Lair is the Espeon, but it's two players down for Legacy as we are pushing, pushing, pushing. Tree's going to secure for the side of Fusion. We're going to pop that Trevor Unite, put everybody in the forest curse as Regieleki hits, and all of a sudden the score lead has an opportunity to grow it does but they at least secure some KOs for themselves yeah they were able to push everyone back but at the same time they lost that goal zone and now they are down 0 to 83 so on the scoreboard things aren't looking great however the fights are going pretty back and forth we see moments where you know that Mimikyu almost goes down speaking of that Mimikyu already level 11 here for fusion gargantuan for the Mimikyu to be level 11 we saw it early in the game it was the K opener it went down first giving all that central air experience over to Legacy, but they haven't been able to leverage that in the way they want. And now the Mimikyu's back in action, looking for more targets, and Fob is looking to babysit just a little bit in this top path. Yeah, I mean, the higher level that they get this Mimikyu, the more danger Legacy is in. This Pokemon has a reset mechanic in Shadow Sneak, so if they're able to get a KO with Shadow Sneak on a Pokemon, they can Shadow Sneak again and again and again, continuing to bounce between enemies or wild Pokemon and pick up tons of KOs. It has so many many amazing properties it, it lets you essentially teleport to an opponent or wild Pokemon and it also fears them it just sets you up in a great position to KO yeah tree looking to drop on top of that basement Reggie here looking for a rotation to get some points in and now Draken's moving forward they're gonna try and X scissor uh, the Blastoise out they can't Hoopa can't run the coverage either Lella's trying to grab berries but the Trevenant's taking them both Electro Ball on top of the Blastoise a little bit of push by uh, Falb there to try and get on top of these defender players but they're getting smothered by fusion all right the rings are on battle we're gonna look for some stunts. KO Trigger 2, I believe it was Fob coming through with a Sylveon, and now we're pivoting on the squad. The tree's trying to scramble out, but trees move slow, Spraggles. I don't know if you've ever seen one run. I haven't. Half HP, Sylveon back in the action. Cross with the Rock Tomb, Forest Curse back the other way. And now there's one player down, and all of a sudden, Legacy has the positional advantage on this Reg Ice. Yeah, Legacy looking pretty good here. Mazo on that Sylveon, picked up some KOs elsewhere on the map, and has now made their way to the bottom path right here. Here comes the Mimikyu, just barely missing that Shadow Sneak, as we see Sylveon getting extremely aggressive. Reg Ice is already at half. The Hyper Voice looking for some KOs right here. The Bliss Assistance saving that Mimikyu. Crustal getting low, Umbreon getting low. Reg Ice is almost at nothing here. Fusion looking for the security they get it. I have seen so many mean looks on Draken, the Crustle, in this game not result in a swift enough KO to cause too much trouble for Legacy to bounce back from. They need to get better mean look targets in because Draken, they can't close it up between the Sylveon and the Umbreon. So they need to start focusing that up and getting a little bit more support not support player, but support damage to get those KOs quickly. Because if the Crustle makes it out of that mean look, it's there to X scissor and open up more space for the rest of the squad. Yeah, it, without question, if they're able to not only get the hyper voice on these targets, but let Espeon hit it afterwards, that's going to be the difference maker between picking up some of these KOs. We're looking at that right now. Misses the side beam right there, but still able to pick up that KO on Trevenant as they continue this push towards this goal zone big time surf and hydro pump. And they're looking for a fight here. Yeah, we're rubble round housing here taken to the front line is Draken on that cross so they're gonna try and rock tomb somebody through surfing back is fall but they're gonna make it out here as we're deciding to have that X scissor and pivot onto the swab blue and Altaria so what could have been a fight fizzled pretty quickly yeah, and that Crustle had a relatively late Unite move. 
They're going to have to look for a lot of wild Pokemon to charge that Unite move back up. We've got 30 seconds until Rayquaza right here. We see three Unite moves down uh, on the side of Legacy, four Unite moves down on the side of Fusion. So we are fighting pretty intensely, and no one's fully ready for this fight at Ray. No, but we need to settle up. We need to check where our pips are. Espeon needs to pick up their Unite. Mimikyu and Crustle on the side of Fusion needs to pick that up in the next 10 seconds. We already know Tempo might tick over to it, but they're certainly not actively trying to get it. And here we have the Espeon going to pick up a buff, and hopefully their Unite move in short order. Now we've got this, you know, Mimikyu here hiding in the tall grass. They're going to be able to use Shadow Seek to try to find out where the opponents are and decide if they want to jump in on any of them right here. Nice Solar Beam catches two on the side of Legacy. As 16 points going in that bottom path they're still up so while that's not a huge amount of points it just puts them in an even better position and cuts off some opportunities for hoopa right we see legacy right now has to make a decision of how they want to play this they're tapping rayquaza but i don't think fusion thinks they're just going to rip this thing right in front of them tempo looking for their play looking to see when they can jump in and try to pick up a big ko the shadow sneak goes wide misses everybody right there mean look comes in as they're going to fight Egg Bomb hits two. We got the curse, but we tried to paint split a little bit, and everybody's scattering like Roach with the lights on. Rock Tomb's gonna pivot, but look how grouped up they are, Spraggles. This might be an opportunity for Fusion to jump on top of them. Yeah, here we go. Fusion, here comes the Shadow Sneak onto the Umbreon. Big Unite move here from the Hoopa as they're pushing forward. One down already. Espeon is caught. Hydro Typhoon kicks up a couple, and we're looking to leverage that. We got the Space Beams coming out of the Unbound Hoopa, and they're looking for more targets. One down on each side, and Emo is so low. They get surfed into the hands of the rest of the Legacy squad. Can they actually pivot and get the KO? No, it's flooding back the other way. You said you're bringing us to us. We'll take you down, son. Electro Ball picks up another. The whole team is wiped. Ten Jack, Queen King, what? Ace, deal them out. Deal them down. Put them down. Fusion. Fusion taking a massive team fight win right there. And really, as soon as the Mimikyu got going, it just could not be stopped. KO after KO, chaining them all through that Shadow Sneak into a Shadow Claw. Beautiful plays there by Fusion as they absolutely dominate that Rayquaza fight. And truly, a lot of this match right here, essentially ahead the entire time. Yeah, there was almost no doubt. Once the Surf came back and you were trying to pick up a cheeky KO, but all of a sudden the Mew Pivots gets two back the other way. And you said the Mimikyu was just chaining off of that Mew engagement. And, and it just, it was unstoppable after that. What a look by Fusion. Yeah, great stuff from Fusion right here as they're going to take game number one. Now, obviously, Legacy, an amazing team, but they lost in March. A lot of teams lost in March. Walter Ego, Antics, a lot of teams won their February plans. They did not win in March. One that did, Fusion, they're winning here again today. Oh, they looked solid, solid bell to bell. Two defenders putting tons of damage in. You can see the idea of Mazo. You put Mazo on Sylveon with the Hyper Voice uh, kind of rip the shred of those high HP pools. The problem was just with Mazo, they couldn't close out KOs on the Crustle, on the Trevenant, and when you're committing your mean look to those targets and you're not leaving with a KO, that is a problem. Yeah, here we go. Some of the big moments from that match. Again, you see Tempo jumping in here, looking for these big KOs. Shut down in this top path where this fighting is just intense at this goal zone. Unite move for Unite move from these two defenders as uh, we have Blastoise surf on in. Hydro Pump taking down the Mew right here. This was a back and forth fight, but score wise, always good for Fusion. Yeah, they were scrapping incredibly well. Like, this is a nice, just amazing presence on the opposing pad. Forces out the rings unbound, a little bit of a scattered pushback. Yes, they got KO'd here, but they got an early commitment, and now you didn't have the rings unbound specifically for the Reg Ice Brawl that's to follow. Yeah, and here we go. You see Trevenant going down right here. A lot of great moments from Legacy. There's a huge solar beam, and we have the, you know, Espeon go down there early inside that fight, and that was just going to be really tough for Legacy to come back from. Yeah, Hydro Typhoon kicks up a couple, but that was not enough to get the KOs they needed. Just Draken goes down. They're able to take care of the defender, but look at this. You try and surf an Emo to get them KO'd, and then the floodgates just opened up. You had Zynus in the back, and of course, Tempo coming through, and it was just curtains. Yeah, incredible stuff there from Fusion here in game number one. We're going to have to see what Legacy wants to do in game two, how they want to try to play yep. into this squad here that just felt like they were really in control. My question is, 
something we uh, let's let's okay first off let's take a look at the top path player and emo who was able to play the tree the defender very well and we saw them kind of leading the charge on a lot of engagements uh for this fusion team yeah i mean we were wondering what we were going to see we got that curse pain split so really playing this as a damage dealer you know trying to get into the enemy face making it difficult for them pain split obviously setting up opportunities where they want to take down this trevenant but every bit of damage they're doing to it it's dealing it right back to them and we just saw how powerful it was in that game it got stacked up really well we see the two stacking items there ao's cookie for the hp attack weight for the quite literal damage and it was frontlining incredibly well right there with draken you know is a nice uh, overflow valve from the true defender onto kind of like what can be considered an, an off tank in those moments mm -hmm. and it literally allowed them to win that final team fight draken goes down anemo steps up they're the one that eats the surf back into the rest of the legacy team and all that did was generate miles of space for Zynus and tempo to take over yeah and now it's that uh, moment for legacy right mm -hmm. they're gonna have to decide is this strategy working for us was it just that you know a bad engagement here or there or do they need to really change things as they head into game number two it, it does seem like fusion was just in control top to bottom in that match i'm interested to see what legacy wants to bring out here in game two as we're going to get ready to head into our next draft we're going to have fusion our first pick here they ban hoopa as their first ban yeah, and Lel was having a lot of impactful plays as Hoopa throughout that game. So maybe cut that off. I mean, we saw the pressure that you can put on support players, you know, in our first match of four free versus Kabi Chans, right? Hoopa was eliminated by Kabi Chans every single game, and it had a lot of value. Yeah, absolutely. Hoopa going down here. Mimikyu now banned on the side of Fusion. So obviously they say, all right, someone on Legacy might counterpick this. They might have a good Mimikyu themselves. We actually don't want to deal with it here in this game. And it looks like we might be banning out Inteleon as the next ban. We are. We're going to see the first pick here for Fusion. It has the opportunity to be Leafeon. We know Mazo can play Leafeon. High octane pick. Kia locks it in instantly. Says, no shot, dude. Yeah, and here we go. I think Legacy knew that was going to happen. We have a possibility of grabbing Meow Scarada. We have a possibility of grabbing Crustle. The only thing I wonder, at, at, we were hovering Dodrio there for a sec, but we did switch to Falve. I was going to say, it feels like they're probably not going to be counterpicking more speedsters right now, so they can li you know leave that till later in the draft if that, if that is what they want to play. I, I agree. They're going with the double defender core of course that blast was going to be going in the top path kind of giving fusion a little taste of their own medicine with that double defender action here we go Mew getting locked in I feel like Mew is just crushing it today and I think some teams too readily just hopped off this Pokemon after they saw the nerfs Mazo cycling through the Rolodex here just trying to see what Pokemon they want to bring in Sylveon was very powerful but it wasn't shutting down the enemy a lot as we may see Dragonite may see the Espeon yeah, Espeon was played by, I believe it was Wolf last game. Mazo's locking in, so they might actually do a switch and final preparations there. But taking a look back the other way, we've got a slow bro locked in. Nobody's taken over the slow beam, one of the most potent unite moves in the game for individual shutdown. So the slow bro pick here is really interesting because that says to me they think that Legacy is bringing a powerful speedster as their final pick, and they're saying we're not going to let you, you know, put us in a bad position here. We've got the slow beam. If you're picking something with a lot of dive, we are going to shut it down. We're going to have to see what they want to bring in. Possibly the Absol right here, so they could be right from uh, from Fusion that they did want to bring in that speedster. Yeah, the counterpoint is, is this game they don't have the shred, whereas at least last game they did through the Sylveon's Hyper Voice, they don't have that shred factor. I actually like this pivot I a love, lot. I love that choice. I am so happy they didn't go with Absol. Candle looks so much better here. It does, and I think they correctly noticed what Fusion was doing. Now look, Slowbro is amazing if they have a speedster on the other side or not, right? But I think they knew exactly what Fusion was up to. They knew that Fusion was going to shut down anything with a good amount of dive, so they can't really bring out their Meow Scarada. They right. can't really bring out their Absol. Instead, we're playing even more at range. So we've got these re this really tanky front line and a ton of range. Then on the other side, this really tanky front line, amazing range from Mew, and dive from the Leafeon. So we're going to have to see what ends up being more impactful right here. You know that Leafeon? jumping in with its Unite move and then right into a Bliss Assistance to keep it healthy and, you know, have it start 
wrecking these squishy Pokemon, it absolutely could work. But if Legacy on the other side is just able to play at range, keep them away from them, peel off this Leafeon every time it comes in, they'll set up some big wins in these fights. Fobs, Hydro Typhoons are going to be critical. Lel's Cotton Spore, I expect him to go that to try to like chip up the Leafeon anytime they go for an engagement, could also be incredibly important. And lastly, Wolf. They're building a front line for you. If they do their job, you got to hit all your moves because we need that damage. I wonder if Draken will go Scald in this game. You know, Surf is unbelievable and I think probably the better choice most of the time, but they are going to be playing at a lot of range. I'm wondering if they're looking to get some extra damage out of something like Scald or if they just want the incredible control that comes from something like Surf. We've got Trevenant Blissey heading up to this top path. Slow bro and Mew to the bottom path. This is game number two, Fusion. Your purple team up one game against Legacy, your orange team. You mentioned Blast, excuse me, Slowbro, Surf. I like Surf specifically because you want to get to your slow beam target, which in this case I think is going to be Blastoise. So it's either an inject, uh, eject engage by Blastoise for the Hydro Typhoon, or you can surf into the back line and then catch a target like that. So I, I'm always a fan of Surf, you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's such an amazing move. You see in this top path, Mazo made it up here. I don't think they know exactly where it is, although they can probably guess that he's up here trying to do something. Comes up looking for the KO on the Trevenant. Trevenant's pretty hard to take down. Blissey also using the X speed to get out of that situation. So not a lot of value from the Espeon coming up, but you did push them away. Tempo now deciding whether they're going to go top or bottom. They could have made a play as to have it look like they were running away, or they might just be taking the long way around so they're not seen as they're heading up to this top path right here. Mew also making their way top. That's going to be four members of Fusion in the top path. They're going to have great opportunities for KOs. Your tempo taking almost everything with that solar blade and literally just walking away saying, nope, that job's done. Moving down here. Slowbro does evolve in the bottom path, holding it down in front of two by themselves and honestly did a great job. No points for it. Yeah, and now we have some nice experience for the side of Legacy here. We have Espeon heading back into that central area. Leafeon just moving up and down the map, looking for good opportunities as they head back to their central area as well. Just rolling back is Anemo on this tree. Gonna get a stack in. Of course, they're playing that top path. They want that cookie up. They want that attack weight up. Now, back on the other side, Mew shows back up in a path, and that is a very impactful path between Slowbro and Mew. Yeah, absolutely. His points are raining in here in the top path. Three members of Fusion are up here right now, getting pushed around a little bit by Wartortle, but able to make it out of the situation. Trevenant in some trouble right here, but they are not able to take it down. Blissey also just getting beat up, but these are huge sacks of HP on the side of Fusion. Credit to Fob. I mean, a half HP Wartortle was able to fend off three players with some tactful skull bashes and, move, and just chicanery, if you will, able to push that pressure back. Wolf hitting Chandelure, great place to be. Now they can start trapping and burning their opponent between Sado. And we have, are we Poltergeist? We built in the living room out here? That's right, we're putting it together, we're heading to Ikea, and we're figuring it out as a couple. That's what you and I could do. We really could build furniture together. I really think so, Snacks. But they're gonna do it a lot easier than we could. I, I believe both of those things you just said, without a doubt. Bob against Scrapping, trying to get to level seven to hit their evolution. Nice little egg bomb to push stuff on the side of Fusion here. Tempo goes down quickly, Trapped in the rock tomb is Zynus, and they get chip shot by this Espeon. Wolf starting to heat, excuse me, Mazo starting to heat up a little bit, and now Draken caught in the rock tomb as well. Tons of damage being reined in, and Legacy is setting up these traps just as you'd expect that Crustle to do. Yeah, and the thing I think you wouldn't expect from this Crustle is the stealth rock. So they've got a lot of damage. In fact, I think a lot more than people expect. Nice secure right there for the side of Fusion. Uh, but they don't have the control that they would have with X Scissor. Instead, they're deciding to trap them in that rock tomb and set up an area where they are taking a ton of damage. Again, really high HP targets on the side of Fusion. So maybe they're looking for some opportunities to actually put some damage on these Pokemon. They are looking good. I like this very kind of you mess with the terrain type strategy that Legacy has put together. Make every path seem innocuous to for Fusion to engage with. Nice little surf by Fob getting spacing as well. And it's really been Kia and an emo show up here. Really working truck and trailer together, but unfazed is Legacy. However, the score lead right now is in the hands of Fusion. Yeah, Fusion's the only team that scored some points, but this Reggie Alecki could change that as they push towards this goal. Mew is here, Leafeon is on the way, but it does walk. Beautiful surf, 
Eject Hydro Typhoon kicks up four players right into the Psychic Solaire by Mazo. They're looking to get their points, and they certainly do. They're closing this lead gap very quickly. Mew Unite is out, but no real good targets. As an Emo steps up, they pull their guys that living room right down. Nobody wants to walk through that house as everybody decides to pivot back. Yeah, Blissey Unite there, and maybe the Blissey Unite is the reason they didn't continue pushing that fight, but it also could possibly be a Blissey Unite that you just didn't really get a lot of value from as Legacy decides to peel back. 56 to 90, Legacy now up, looking a little different from game number one, and their strategy of, you know, playing at range, zoning them out is working very well, and Leafeon has not been able to find a lot of big moments yet. No, not quite yet. Wolf again trying to get the spacing going on, trying to maintain this goal zone for the team until they can get a little bit of support. And quite literally, Lel rolls up and says, well, I'm a support. Let's see what's going on up here. And here we go, just cleaning up some of these wild Pokemon on the side of Fusion as we have an objective getting ready to spawn here on the bottom path. Ten seconds until we have a bottom Reggie on the map. You can see good positioning here from Legacy, and they're just setting themselves up to know exactly where Fusion is coming from so they can either decide to rip this Reggie Steel, which they're doing right now, or zone them out and then turn for a fight. No, that Solar Beam is too far away by Zynus. Now we're going straight in. The Slow Beam was out, and it, oh, excuse me, they tried to use the Slow Beam, was not out, and now they're looking to push rubble rouser soto they're looking to just put the uh, excuse me the stealth rocks which is enough to get spacing i mean they're just throwing so much traffic psychic select kicks up too and now again fusion can't stop this goal zone siege and this lead is getting out of control and we see leafy on jumping in using the unite not able to pick anything up right there and this is going so well for legacy it feels like that amazing uh you know, Chandelure counter pick is really paying off right here. And there isn't much Leafeon has been able to get done uh, against this team. It really hasn't been able to engage well. Why? Because of the Poltergeist, because of the Rock Tomb, because of the Stealth Rock, because of the Surfs. Like, there is so much terrain manipulation on the side of Legacy. It is causing a problem. You can't engage through it, and you can't dance through it with the Emerald Two-Step. And look at that right there. As Trevenant just completely pushed out of this fight. You know, a Rock Tomb with the incredible amount of slow sets up perfect flamethrowers for that Chandelure, and they are so incredibly powerful, especially after it hits level 11. I, I mean, it is just slowly but surely working the way of Legacy. They are grinding this game out. They've found themselves in the, in the lead here by 78 points. Uh, nothing to scoff at as we have three minutes left on the clock and really Legacy is just churning forward. Yeah, Legacy just keeps moving right here. We have another opportunity for a secure on the side of Fusion. Honestly, that was pretty close with the Egg Bomb. Espeon Unite pushes them back as the Leafeon tries to jump in. Blastoise Unite knocks them up in the air, but Mew ends up chasing that out and getting a KO. Chandelure in some trouble right here. It is dealing with a Trevenant. It can, really can't get away from it as Mew picks up a second KO. Mew goes down to the Blastoise. Blastoise trying to push this Trevenant away, but man, that pain split keeps it around for way too long. Zynus and Animo doing more work than maybe they ever had the right to uh, in that particular skirmish. Leaving with two KOs back the other way, not bad. However, two minutes, 30 seconds, that was a lot of Unite moves kind of flashed in the pan there under three minutes. Yeah, we had a lot of fighting right there, and you can see these players are doing everything they can to get their Unite moves back, KO some of these wild Pokemon. Reggie Rock right now just being taken by Legacy. There really isn't anything Fusion can do about it right here. They're in the power position right now, Doobsnacks, and they need to be, because if they lose this game right here, they are heading down to our loser's bracket, and you want to stay in the winner's bracket of this tournament to give yourself the best shot to make it to the grand finals and punch your ticket to the world championships in Honolulu. Rayquaza hits the map. We see our players getting ready on both sides. A few Unite moves down on each team right here. So we're going to have to see when they actually want to push this fight. The nice thing for Legacy, the longer Fusion takes, the better it is for them. They're already up on the scoreboard. Zautau getting sussed down a little bit, surfed, Rock Tomb is dragging, trapped a little bit, Stealth Rock's down, but can't quite make it over the wall to actually deal some damage. Yeah, Stealth Rocks are going to get stopped by any of those obstacles there, so if they, you know, decide to dive in on this crustal right there, that would have been a horrible moment for them, but instead, the Stealth Rocks just don't get much done right there. Again, Slowbro just kind of, you know, wandering, getting vision for their team, and at the same time, surfing and stunning them here. Nice big flamethrower, but they end up backing out. Yeah, forcing out the eject button is huge. That means they can't eject, engage, and slow beam a target. So that's worth noting here, Spraggles. Yeah, absolutely. That's very, very powerful. Uh, and they're not able to take an, an advantage of that. They're going to have to walk Slowbro in at a target right here as Trevenant is moving in, but, at, you know, just getting pushed back as well. Playing at extreme range as a side of Legacy, and they're doing great with it. They're trying to move in for this fight, and they get the eject button out of Mew. 
just slow rolling it. I mean, Legacy has to feel great about this situation. Leafeon tried to go for the back half. Now we're finally working on Ray. They need this thing. Oh, Psychic Solaire kicks up, picks up a couple Zynus. is very low, forces out the Unite. Trevi Unite back the other way. Blitz sits on the Leafeon. They go into the back line. They get Espeon very quickly. Shandy Unite is out, which means everybody was blind, but we're still moving forward. Southtown looking for a Stealth Rock on top of KO, but it's not quite there. Rayquaza is getting super low. Who's going to pivot to it? We're going to look for a Smite. It's going to be the Leafeon. It's going to be Hydro Type. No, it's neither, but it is taken by Fusion. What just happened? Spraggles snatched. How did the Jaws of Defeat Fusion make it happen? I have no idea what exactly secured it, whether it was like a tick of curse damage right there or an auto attack from the tree. I can't believe the flamethrower didn't get it right there. As Slowbro put some points in, Eldegoss put points into the bottom path right here. Blastoise is trying to make something happen in the top path. Trevenant pushing towards this bottom path goal here. We're gonna have to hold our breath a little bit, but it looked like Fusion was able to take that. They did get one burger in. I think that's gonna be all they wrote. That is enough to cover the difference. We'll confirm it on the scoreboard here. Bang, just enough. I mean, that Hunto Burger got it done, Spragles. What a game. Legacy felt in charge. Incredible stuff there from Fusion, and that Rayquaza just did not go down to one of their secure moves. Absolutely criminal that somehow Trevenant was able to pick that up in this moment, and Fusion takes a big victory right there from the hands of Legacy. I Tempo went in with the Solar Blade too early. Falb saw that. Hydro Typhoon to try and get everybody up in the air on Fusion so that um, uh, Wolf could come through with the Flamethrower secure. And like you said, I have no idea how that was just snatched out from under him. But I, I like, color me shocked. I have no idea what just happened. I want to see it, absolutely. I want to see that last Rayquaza moment right there for sure. Wolf, I think they were zoned out. The Chandelure was zoned out pretty well, so that was really great stuff on the side of Fusion right there. They just couldn't get in a good position to actually go for their secure. I don't know if they missed when they threw Flamethrower, if they th threw Flamethrower slightly too early, slightly too late, but somehow Trevenant able to pick that up. And that's how it goes in Pokemon Unite sometimes. You know, the fight gets really chaotic around Rayquaza, and the team that is behind has an opportunity to come back with Ray getting that low. I, I, I have to commend Legacy. That was a very creative way to isolate a Leafeon. And to be fair, Tempo was not as impactful in this game as you'd expect a Leafeon to be. And again, because I keep calling it kind of terrain manipulation, just so much just stuff in the Leafeon's way for these engagements. Yeah, and there we go. You can see our victory screen once again. Fusion taking the games 2-0 against Legacy in an incredibly close game here. 320 to 298. I'll say, I think Legacy, uh, you know, played a better game for the most part, but Fusion was able to take it right there at the end. <laughs> It's a shame for Legacy. I know they're they're not happy with that game specifically, and it's obviously its result. They get 2-0'd here. They're still in our group stage, but now they have to win out to make it into day two here at EUIC. And after traveling all this way, you know they don't want their adventure to end after another best of three. Absolutely. And look, the, the, the goal is always win. Every game, the goal is always win, but especially once you're in that loser's bracket, you're just at risk of going home. Fusion doesn't have to worry about that right now as they're looking great as they 2-0 Legacy. You can see the scoreline right here, incredibly close between these two teams. That's the thing across all of our group stage matches we've seen so far. We have seen a, a couple 2-0s, but none of them have felt like complete landslides. Again, these regions, the disparity between skill levels or whatever you might say, is becoming non-existent, which is making, which makes every region have a true opportunity here. And we're seeing it over and over again through these group matches. Yeah, just some crazy good games from these two teams. Uh, I think Legacy thought they probably had that one in the back. I thought it was very close too. But Fusion looking fantastic in game one. A nail biter to take down game number two. And as the only team to kind of win their regionals, you know, back to back, they're, just, they're looking great. Yeah, well, they'd like to add uh, AO's Cup to that string of, uh, of big time wins here without a doubt. That would be nice, right? Again, I like to, I'd like to win that. The winner, I, I want to win. I, I mean, well, I, I've asked, and they said, you can't. You're actually not competing. I was like, well, what if I compete? And they're like, but you're not. It, it's like a whole thing. I feel old. like I'm often arguing with people that don't get exactly what I'm talking about. I'm saying, is there a way to let me win? Right? Right. Well, that's why you and I are paired up as a casting duo, because while most don't know what you're talking about, I happen to just know a bit more than that. Yeah, 
and I honestly don't follow it sometimes either. Incredible stuff there from Fusion as they take that. Again, the winner of the AOS Cup, they qualify for the World Championships. But before we talk more about that, we've got an interview ready on stage. We're going to throw it on over there. Take it away. Thank you so much, Spraggles and Dupes. Thanks for casting an incredible game. I'm on stage with the winner, Animo from Team Fusion. Incredible win. Animo, you had the game winning moment in that game number two on the Trevenant. You knocked out the Rayquaza. How good does it feel to have such a big moment on a huge stage like this? Bueno, eh, qué victoria increíble, ¿no? Eh, Tuvieron, eh, derrotaron el Recuesa y ganaron en un, en un escenario tan grande y internacional como este. ¿Cómo te sientes? Uh, right now I cannot believe that I just did that, actually. I, I don't even know how to do it, but I, I think uh, it was a bit lucky and a bit scared. Yeah. Hey, that's all right. Uh, uh, luck as a part of it is totally okay and incredible stuff. Now, one thing about your team is that you are extremely consistent. Uh, you haven't lost a monthly cup yet in your region, and last year was very, very similar. How do you have so much consistent success in Latin America South? <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, actually my team and I, uh, I think we only dropped one month cup, I think. And it was the last, the last year, not this year. And it feels really good to know that we are really consistent, like doing this job. And also it feels too happy to be with my, with my partner because we are all friends. So it's not like only a job, it's like we are a family. Oh, that's so good to hear. And, and I got to ask, is there anybody out there, fans, coaching staff, or anybody else like that, that you want to give a shout out to? Sí, quisiera darle un gran saludo a toda la comunidad de Latinoamérica Sur y Latinoamérica en general, toda Sudamérica. Muchas gracias a mi comunidad, a todos los que nos están apoyando. I really appreciate all support. Uh, so just a shout out to the whole of South America, Latin America, and all the supporters and fans that are supporting us through the tour. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Animo. Congratulations on your win. And we're going to throw it back on over to the casters, Spraggles and Dupesnacks. Amazing stuff there, Dupesnacks. Obviously, I mean, he even said it like, hey, I felt pretty lucky right. in that moment to take that Rayquaza. And it looked like it, even though it was a great fight from both sides. And when things get that low, it's a, you know, it's a split second moment. It's a decision that's made. It's the decision to either fight the enemy or go for Ray. We're going to take a look at some of the big highlights from this series right here. This was game number one. We have that Sylveon. We have that Mimikyu as they're fighting here in the top path. Yeah, I mean, we had some great, great surfs out of Legacy here, of course. Uh, Santao Falb doing a great job in on those Pokemon, and unfortunately, in that moment, couldn't quite get it done. No, but they were able to fight it back right there. As you can see, we head towards this fight here. This is when Mimikyu just was able to start catching members of Legacy. They needed to find their moment. Mimikyu was able to find it. And once they started kind of that KO train, it was hard to stop. We have Mimikyu just getting stunned over and over. But we have the Bliss assistance into the Mimikyu Unite. And then we just see the push start to happen. We recognize that they need to start running, but they can't get away from this Pokemon as it's just chasing down members of Legacy. Yeah, even with the Electro Ball, right? Following the Mimikyu in helps a ton in those moments. Now we're taking a look here at game two. Nice little Psychic Solaire by Mazo as they had a nice top tier one goal zone push of their own. Yeah, I think Legacy looks so much better here in game number two, really able to adapt and counter what Fusion was trying to do. I think it was very solid for most of this game here for the side of Legacy. Slow beam onto the Espeon here, but still even not able to get a lot done. And that's exactly what they were trying to counter. Without a doubt. Um, the fact that they couldn't find that much purchase just speaks volumes to the skill uh, that they're moving with, right? Now we're gonna take a look here. Nice little Hydro Typhoon, but this is a good push by uh, Fusion to just kind of exist in the space. What they left with two KOs when in all, under all circumstances shouldn't have gotten any. 
Yeah, and here we go. Just that Trevenant able to survive through so much. Here we have that big fight. Trevenant unite. We have the Leafeon jump in with the Bliss assistance. We see the Stealth Rock coming out. They're looking for some KOs. Blissey gets very low right here. And then we can see the moment where Legacy realizes they are not able to win that thing. Yeah, they had a, a really great game too. And I don't want to undersell that. But as Nemo mentioned, a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. And the skill factor is that if you're in the right place at the right time doing what you're supposed to be doing, things happen to break your way. And for fusion, consistency, as Zoinks mentioned, is key. They show up, they keep doing all the right things, and you catch those lucky breaks in those moments because you've done all the hard work leading up to it. Yeah, especially when you're already up a game, right? Correct. You know, right. when you're already up a game, you get to take more risks in some of these fights. Like, let's say you're fighting around Rayquaza, and you've got, if you could somehow put odds to it, a 65% chance to win Rayquaza. Well, by pushing that moment right there, you have an opportunity to actually win the entire series, and some teams are surprised by it. We're going to take a look at that Rayquaza moment again. I'm very excited to see it because it was pretty nuts right here. This is the end of the game when Rayquaza is already gone, and we're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> just bang. Have you ever wanted to see the time tick down? I have, and yeah. we just showed it to you. We so showed you're it to you right you're there. You know, you all... You almost caught me with a coffee right there. We got close but, but to another did. one of these, but, but, <laughs> but we didn't. didn't. But, we, but didn't. we didn't. Here we go. This is the replay we're looking for here. 50 seconds, of course, Rayquaza starts being chipped in. You talk through this a little bit yourself. Psychic Solaire kind of kicks off the action, right? The, everybody goes into a frenzy. Bliss Assistance, we'll see the Shandy Unite here in a moment. Throwing the blind on the opposing squad. Rayquaza is starting to get worked on, surf through, and of course the Bliss Assistance up top. Rayquaza is so low. Leafeon early Hydro Typhoon is there and just... <laughs> I, I don't, I don't it was, even, was it a curse tick? I what? truly do <laughs> not know what got the secure right there. I mean, I can't believe it. It's just like incredible stuff. But they were able to get it. Ooh. Oh! It's almost like we uh, we didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know it was going to happen. Uh, incredible stuff right there. I I, I want to slow that down. <laughs> I want to watch it like millisecond by millisecond just to see exactly. It could have been the start of curse damage. It looked like Trevenant got knocked up right there. Regardless, incredible moment. I mean, those are the moments that happen in Pokemon Unite yep. that are just unbelievable. It's so close. Both teams can get this. You saw great zoning again there. That Chandelure was just not able to get in and do enough in that moment to get the secure. There, Zainu is going to get the, the tip of the cap here. Uh, two knockouts, one assist. That Mew is everywhere. Yes. That Mew is everywhere. And maybe, I think you can make an argument that game one was phenomenal for, for Zainu. Didn't have quite the same impact, but at the end of the day, they get the win, which means they're doing just enough to get there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think if we're looking at a, a player of the game, you could throw it to Trevenant. I mean, yeah. you could say, like, whatever happened there, that was definitely the play of the game. Uh, really close for both of these squads. And again, I think Legacy kind of had their number through a lot of it, yeah. but a Great fight from Fusion, and they took the opportunity to take the win. I'm, I'm, I, what, I, what I want the folks at home to know is when they put that Rayquaza replay, Spraggles and I were both four inches from the screen trying we're... to see what just happened. We're right here. And we still missed it. Yeah, we still couldn't figure it out. If you know what happened, go ahead and tweet at Unite Esports and let us know what was able to secure Rayquaza and, in and that moment. And for the record, I want people at home to know, we know. Like, oh, we, we know. know. We know. But we need to know that you know. Yeah. Were you paying attention? Yeah. I don't want to test the audience, but I think this is a good opportunity to test you right it's now. Great time. What secured that Rayquaza? Figure it out while we go to a quick break. Don't go anywhere. You've got to break out that pad and paper, and you really need to see what happens. Do the math. We'll be right back. Do the math. This one, like, this is a super easy question for me because, like, it's honestly beating Tally Bobo and going through to day two in Worlds. Like, the one, the moment we realized that we have won and we advanced, like, we had this curse in, in our heads, like, we had this big thing in our heads, like, not making uh, to day two 
on 2022 in London. Why like, it's like something pending, you know, it's, it was super annoying, it was super heavy on everyone. And finally, having it off, like we made it to day two, like we can compete in the top eight, we can compete in the playoffs. It was a super good feeling. And um, this is definitely the, my favorite moment in the night series overall, like in, in, in the tournaments overall. In the final of the regional of 2023, in the phase of winners, we were losing for 500, 600 points, and at the final, they did the request. And what I liked about this part is that we didn't let it go down, and we managed to win the game, and at the end, we won. We didn't know how, but we won. Probably my first month's lease win in Spokeshamping 2K22. Because we were like kind of a French team, so in the French broadcast, uh, people were kind of crazy. Oh, okay. Actually, I got I got a perfect one for you. I got the the clip. Everything's there. It, and honestly, you're gonna love this answer. It's it's perfect. Okay, let me get in the story time mode. <clears throat> so my sickest play that I've I probably ever witnessed in competitive was probably the way we ended the Mar uh, the February qualifier for AOS Cup. It's a very important tournament that actually qualifies you to London. And it was something that was really important to our team. We're there in the final game of the bracket reset. We played a long, grueling game, eight games against the Fury, which was uh, the team that beat us in the winner's final. And we're there in the last game. We have like probably a scrappy team comp. I don't know how we pull it together. The game is going on to the last seconds. They take Rayquaza. It looks all over for us. Half of the team were like, it's curtains. The other half were like, okay, come on, let's keep doing something. Let's keep going. Challenge, our Sylveon runs up to the top lane to try to score his 50. Asian no cap runs down to the bot lane to try to score his 50. The crossbow stops Asian no cap score. They get the Venusaur score off with this, the Rayquaza shield and Venusaur recalls to the base, but Sylveon's already scoring. The timer is ticking down. Three, two, one. I see the Sylveon, he puts up the score. Venusaur jumps right above him. And you can literally see the moment he just dunks in his head like it's LeBron James and it's over. And we're like thinking, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm like, we were probably still lost. Like, you know, it was a good try. And of course, we don't get spoiled by the mobile perspective, but we're there, we're all waiting. And it's like, we won, we won. And we couldn't believe it. And that's, uh, you know, one of those moments that makes Unite magical. It's something that I'll never forget. And it was a great like team experience. We're here at the AOS Cup at EUIC in London, and the day has been fantastic so far, Wonder Chef. So good, in fact, that we have actually wanted to take a look back at the matches that have been happening so far today. It has been an incredible event with so many teams from around the world of the highest caliber, and uh, we have seen some incredible group stage matches so far. We have, we have. This has been a great day, and again, you know, this is just half of what we have. I know I keep saying it, but twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub is going to be the other half of the action. They do have some current matches going on right now, but the ones that we got to see here have all been amazing. I mean, these are yeah. all teams that had 
been invited for a reason to kind of skip past that initial qualifying stage, the open bracket that we have here, and uh, all for a very good reason. So to see them kind of as our first matches of the day on this broadcast, pretty wild. That's true. And we know it's AM in North America pretty soon. So we want to take a look back. If you are tuning in uh, just fresh to our stream, let's take a look back at what we've seen so far today. We actually started off in Group C with four free versus Kabichans, two favorites of this tournament. And uh, Kabichans struck first. Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they struck first overall as far as the, uh, you know, tournament went, but the first match of the day, uh, game of the day, I should say, went so strongly to 4-3. I mean, you can mm -hmm. see that there in this replay. Uh, and, well, I mean, look at this. This is a 270 point lead basically 268 uh that was uh, really looking like for free was just going to sweep this set like it was looking like 100 percent theirs they really controlled that buzz wall in such a good way which uh again is kind of my story of the day the teams that are really confident using buzz wall versus the teams really confident in fighting against buzz wall mm. as opposed to banning it uh this looked like one of those where it was great for uh for free but then it came to game two and everything turned around yeah, Kabichans found a response at some point. I think that was largely due to them finding a way to make this Dragonite work in these compositions, kind of keep it unimpeded in a lot of these fights. And it took so many resources from For Free to really slow them down. Not to mention, they were dealing with kind of lackluster resources due to the fact they never got Eldegoss for the rest of these drafts. Yeah, that was such a deciding factor. I mean, Eldegoss was controlled uh, from both other games for Kabichans, and they just, they took control. It was a 100% turnaround. Uh, they managed to switch around some of kind of how they decided to deal with certain things. Uh, another big thing, uh, Sereu doing so well in the Earth Shifu, switched over to the Absol, uh, which did not quite work out. Eventually switched back in game number three, but, uh, or n not really switched back, but uh, yeah, no, they did switch back. Uh, well, but it was, it was a pretty not as effective time overall. So just great adaptation, which is what we like to see from Steve's play. Yeah, it felt like they tried to return to what worked to shut down the Dragonite in that game number one. And, and again, they figured out that Dragonite play and Kabichans moved forward in that group. So just to illustrate what we are looking at on screen, you can now see Kabichans in the winner side. They are one best of three away, making it into the top eight. And notably in that winner side of the top eight tomorrow, For Free is still around in this tournament. However, they are no longer able to make it into the winner side of top eight. If they do make it into tomorrow's day number two, they will be in the loser side which is pretty wild for free. Like you said, this is one of the teams that really people were putting a lot of value in potentially winning the entire thing. And that wasn't necessarily wrong, right? I mean, that was a close game three altogether set against uh, pretty much our two, I don't want to say our strongest teams, but two streams of the highest caliber that we have. Uh, but then, of course, we went into our second of the day, Alter Ego and Antic, where Antic, uh, they're really coming in kind of as the underdogs, being from the OC region, not being able to play with as many regions, just being so physical far away from everybody else and Alter Ego, North American representatives. Yeah, Alter Ego just playing on a level that we knew they were capable of from the start of this season. Notably, the Machamp coming out this early in the tournament. Maybe for Alter Ego fans, that's a bit concerning. The Ace already emerging, but it looked amazing in both games. Machizel was putting on an absolute show on this Pokemon in particular. They look fantastic. Taking moments like that, where they're just handedly winning some 1v1s against a Garchomp and other Pokemon. Looks amazing. Antic Esports, moments for sure their Inteleon play I think is really something that we could call out as a great option for them but falling short against North America's rep. Yeah, most noticeably, Antic Esports winning the Rayquaza in the first game, but not quite scoring enough points. Yeah. It was gigantic. Uh, really, really great game, that one in particular. But especially in game number two, we got to see, I and mean, you can see right here, there's three minutes left on the clock, and we were about to see a level 15 Machamp. It hits it literally maybe a few seconds after this, uh, which is just so strong. In Pokemon Unite, we don't have gym leaders, and in fact, typing isn't that important, but Kratos has kind of emerged as, and I'm gonna say this, this is sound, sound weird, as a bird Pokemon trainer. If they are on Dodrio, or Talonflame, or Cramorant, or Decidueye, a lot of their favorite picks, they look unbelievable. So Kratos, notable bird enjoyer, looked amazing on that Dodrio. And now we see Alter Ego again in this group, moving under that winner side. Antic Esports not eliminated from this tournament, but are awaiting some opponents on the loser's side of this group. Right, which again will be uh, coming out of the open bracket. Still, 
happening at the moment, which I've been trying to follow, and there are honestly just so many upsets going on over there. I do not know who's going to be making it into each of these groups, but I am excited to see. But of course, that was only half, you know, of what we had as far as uh, our first two matches. This was uh, a lot. This for, for only being four sets that we got to watch on this broadcast, it feels like it was way more than that I so know. far, uh, because these have been very intense. Also really cool that we get to see them in person, but of course, moving on to our third match that we got to watch, yeah. it was Rework Respawn versus Unite Holic, which may have honestly been my favorite set so far. Oh yeah, it's definitely mine. This is a <laughs> highlight of the tournament up into this point. Group B has definitely proved itself to be exciting. We don't even know half the teams that are going to be participating in that group. This was such an interesting matchup between these squads. Rework Respawn trusting in Sherlock's just raw mechanical ability to be the difference maker on that buzz wall. And in game one, it wasn't particularly close. Sherlock took over. Yes, which was honestly one of the most interesting t moments of this entire tournament so far, was that it earned the respect from Unite Holic, uh, coming from Japan, a region that really doesn't really put a lot of respect, I think, on Buzzwall, but they immediately realized, oh no, we got a ban. Uh -huh. yeah. So in game number two, they immediately went to the ban, and then we saw the uh, the flex, you know, of uh, Rework Respawn, trying to go a few different other types of options. And of course, we can't really not talk about the final picks yeah. that we got in both these drafts, which were the, uh, well, first of all, the Scyther coming out from Reggie, both of these games, and then the Zarina from Mame. The Zarina, a lot of questions still with this Pokemon about why was it chosen? I mean, Mame just very, very comfortable on that option. Leafeon and Mimikyu were rework response ban in this game, but Mimikyu was the same ban uh, in game one and two. I have to imagine that would be a very comfort Mame pick if they had the option to take it. Mm -hmm. And rework response doing their homework in making that work in the draft phase was so, so important for them. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think our only Mimikyu bans that we had the entire time so far, I could be wrong on that, but uh, certainly they were targeted and certainly they were confident in it. <laughs> the only ban switching in this entire set was Unite Holic eventually switching over, but uh, this would look so strong even once they managed to ban away that buzz wall, uh, the switch over to playing uh, Blastoise as more of that top half brawler. Uh, and yes, honestly, uh, I feel like we didn't get to talk enough about the Snorlax play from Minato. Exactly. Yeah. I say that to myself every day. I don't get to talk about Snorlax enough. And Minato looking so, so good on that Pokemon in visual mechanics, coordinating with Reggie or Sherlock or whoever needed that enabler. Snorlax was always the right person, uh, right Pokemon for the job, and Minato, of course, the right player. And there we go, Rework Respawn earning their way through the winner's side with a 2-0 defeat of Unite Holic. Unite Holic, again, not out of the tournament, just awaiting their opponent for later on today. Yeah, of course, Japan being the only region to uh, kind of grab those two spots. So having one of the teams in winners and two, one in losers is uh, already a really interesting split as far as things go. Uh, that means in winners, we've got uh, an American team, we've got uh, one Japanese team, and then we just saw right there, that's going to be LATAM uh, North. True. Uh, but then, of course, the, you know, LATAM in general has multiple regions, which uh, does continue on to, you know, the fourth match yeah. that we have, where uh, we got to see LATAM South taking their chance up against the Brazil. Brazil, uh, which is a really cool one because it's the closest as far as the regions physically are to each other that we had of our matches. Yeah, that is that is technically true, isn't it? Yeah, so yes. we have in proximity yes. being this Group D <laughs> uh, matchup between Legacy and Fusion. Extremely close game. Game number two in particular, I really thought that was Legacy's chance to take it, but mm -hmm. kind of a miracle Trevenant play from Fusion and they're able to secure the Ray and, well, take it down 2-0. But this game number one, on the other hand, uh, felt like Fusion was really in control. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just not even talking about the uh, the games themselves. I just want to talk about the fact that uh, I was I was talking to somebody else about this right before we uh, got on camera right here, where all of these teams, they, you know, they all uh, are invited for a reason. That is for previous yeah. tournament uh, or in this current season. And the only team in all of them that managed to win both of the previous tournaments in the season was Fusion. I Every know. single other team, they won one and lost one, even though most of them were, a lot of them were second place, a lot of them were top three or four, but Fusion, uh, while obviously there's a lot of people that think they're quite good, I still feel like they're falling a little bit under the radar considering they're the only repeat champions, and now they just 2 owed Legacy. And their roster, we were learning from that interview on stage with the Nemo, they actually only lost one monthly cup last year. So mm -hmm. out of the four yep. or five 
five they had available to them. They were dominating all last season as well. So the consistency has always been the storyline with Fusion and fantastic to see that working out on an international stage as well, where of course it is tough to prove that because we don't have as many events, but Fusion making sure that, well, if you treat this team as an underdog, if you don't prepare for them too much, you can get punished. Uh, an amazing showing by this Latin America South squad. Yeah, which means that uh, Latin, Latin America North and South are both in the winner's side. Uh, I know that we personally, you and I, had some predictions that LATAM in general was uh, looking to be a really strong uh, set of regions True. going into this. And I think, you know, we may have been right, a little <laughs> bit slightly right. But uh, Legacy, again, like all the other teams, not out yet. I know there's yep. a ton of Brazilian fans out even in mm -hmm. the crowd. Uh, we know from Worlds that the Brazilian fans are probably the loudest uh, in, in a very good way. Uh, yeah. They are extremely supportive. The chants, the cheering are amazing. Of course, True. over here, you know, I gotta say the, the, the French uh, fans as well, extremely loud. They're definitely uh -huh. taking part of the cake. We don't have a French team in particular quite yet. We did hear them cheering for For Free a little bit earlier, but okay. uh, I'm excited. Hopefully we get at least one French primarily team. Oh, up. yeah on broadcast. EU is very heavily represented in the open bracket as well, yes. so I have to imagine we're gonna get some European rosters making it to our main stage a little bit later today because, well, that open bracket stage is wild. So many strong squads competing against each other. It has been fantastic. Well, thanks for sticking with our recap, everybody. We are gonna be jumping to a very, very quick break as we get stuff sorted for your next matchup. So don't go anywhere. More AOS Cup right after this. <laughs>
Here we are, back at the AOS Cup, live at the Excel Center here in London. And I bet you're thinking right now, hold on a second, Cowboy. Are you guys on the chairs right now, the coveted chairs that they never let the Unite the cast on? Chairs. Well, yes, we are indeed. Welcome back. We are waiting for some of our matches to catch up right now. I asked if we could ever be on these chairs, and they uh -huh. said the only way you could make that happen, Spraggles, was if you intentionally slowed down this tournament somehow. Mm. And well, we unplugged here we are. so many cords. Yeah, there we were a lot of cords that just didn't seem super useful. At least if you want to be on these chairs. And now here yeah. we are. I'm here with Dupe Snacks, Zoinks, Wonder Chef. I mean, what a tournament we've had so far. Chef, I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of what's been a surprise or what's been really exciting for you? Honestly, I mean, just Latin in general, looking awesome. Uh, I was really excited to see the whole day uh, whether or not the Buzzwall picks or like counters would be good because Japan yeah. doesn't really choose Buzzwall. Uh, and it's kind of gone both ways. So I'm right. still excited to see it, basically. Yeah, Zoinks, what do you think, man? Oh, uh, man, I mean, we talked a lot about going into this tournament, how it's just going to be a gauntlet. Like, it's an international competition. We have an open bracket, but it's the top five in NA, the top five in EU. We've invited teams as well already in the group stage. That's what we've gotten in the cast. And I mean, the, the talent level is already there. We're not getting kind of washed games at the beginning of the tournament or anything like that. There's no time for that. Like, <laughs> the talent, we are at a world's level event right now, and it's midway through the season. This is... This is bananas. It really is. Doob Snacks, what do you think? I'm going to go a little more granular. My favorite game so far was Legacy Game 2 against Fusion. Mm -hmm. And I know they didn't win that game, but the way they draft around specifically the Leafeon and just switched up some move sets to be able to take care of that Pokemon, yes, they lost the game, but in the game of keeping Leafeon down, they certainly succeeded. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a lot of that, right? We're seeing teams that are expertly drafting, and we're seeing teams seem to fall apart inside that draft phase. And a lot of players, you know, would talk about this. As we're getting more bans, as they're going back and forth, it's no longer blind. As we're learning more about players and their strategies, teams can really win or lose this game in draft phase, and we've yeah. seen it today. I feel like for free started off this tournament so hot and then just mm -hmm. got outdraft by uh, Kabichan. Interesting choices in that matchup as well, not right. just with specific Pokemon, but side choice. Every single time in that game, we were seeing the second spot chosen. A lot of teams wanting that double pick back to back, which is a huge change from what we have seen so far in our tournament. And it was, uh, it was a pretty big surprise to me to see, I mean, for free go back to it so often. and. In doing so, lose the Eldegoss in their trap. <laughs> so right. Now, something I just got in my ear is that we get to watch that Rayquaza fight one more time Yo. and see what happens. I've been watching it on my phone, yeah. okay? <laughs> I can't figure it out. It's got to be an auto from Trevenant. All right. All right. Watch All right. the Trevenant. How Violent. slow can we do this? Yeah, Curse is gone, right? Kay. There's Trevenant's so Unite no move. true damage. Leafeon moves in. We see that, like, again, some expert zoning happens on this Chandelure right here by the Slowbro. It's getting very low. The Hydro Typhoon's going to knock everybody up. Oh, we're here. slowing oh, this we're down. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a pain split. It's a pain split on Rayquaza. Is it a... No, so wait, it's no, an auto it attack. It, it's, it's an auto attack or a pain split tick. It's one of the two. All right, can we get it at 0.5 <laughs> please? Because none of us have eyes fast enough to actually understand what happened even slow so down. So the pain split does go on Rayquaza. Yeah. It could. We saw that. Twitch yeah. chat, let us know. Do you think that was pain split or an auto attack or something else entirely? Twitch poll for the decider. Yeah, we Production. Should. I don't know if we have that power. We're Production. just in the chairs now. Can I don't know if we have that power yet. Oh, I'm supposed to be running the Twitch? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, while we're waiting here for these games, again, we have so many amazing games in yeah. our open bracket that are taking place. We should, at some point, if we can, take a look at where these teams are in the open bracket because we have right. a few yeah. that are 3-0. and I think uh, E7 Janus is 3-0. and oh, Nemesis is 3-0, and I okay. think. Uh, and I would love to take a look at that. Before we get into that, we are going to play a game. Oh, no. Uh, not like Saw type of game. <laughs> uh, like that, worse. 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 We're going to play Pictionary with the Unite cast. And I don't think we're going to do well at all. i got to be no. honest. As long as it wasn't whatever we played at Worlds where I did awful, no matter what Pokemon I was given. Oh, great. Yeah. We have the Swiss rankings. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Phew. Oh, we're taking a look at our Swiss rankings right here now. I heard that this has not yet been fully updated, okay. but we can see some of these teams here. Nemesis, I believe, now is 3-0. Okay. Uh, Capybabas, I want to say, has lost a game. I think they're 2-1 currently. E7 Yanis, I believe, is also 3-0. Uh, it's a big teams up here. Brave Birders, yeah. Nouns, Esports, Exile. We can see, if you start scrolling down our list right here, we've got Luminosity 1-1 one and one right actually, now. Actually, we did get a chance to watch that as we were in uh, like right before your last in the last game that you two were casting, uh, GT beat Luminosity in yep. uh, in in the one to one bracket. So they're one and two right now. They're one and two. Very right close now. game, but yeah. of course, even in an open bracket, it ends up GT Luminosity. It has, yeah, right, yeah, it has to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if you haven't seen enough Unite Esports in North America, you would know that for whatever reason, GT is Luminosity's kryptonite. They right. Just <laughs> seem to be able to beat them in so many situations. So mm -hmm. this is great to see. I can't wait to see this updated. And of course. You know, eight teams from this is going to move in to our group stage, yep. and they're going to start really shaking up the competition. That's when they head into a best of three in those groups, and things are going to get pretty wild once they make it. We're going to start eliminating teams, right? We haven't actually eliminated a team yet from our tournament, just a lot of placement games. In Swiss, you're racing for that top eight position. And then in our group stage, we're everybody's starting on the winner's side, of course. You don't have the disadvantage yet. So we have not eliminated a single team from our tournament. We're still sticking with our 30-plus incredible superhero level squads right so all right zoinks i want to i want to okay. see you draw the first pokemon so you're going to draw out of a hat a pokemon from pokemon unite and okay. then we're going to try to guess it now i see Explain. do we get infinite guesses or a if thousand you, guesses a thousand guesses okay great a that's thousand guesses. That's probably I, will, not I, will, enough. I will draw like visual to both the, to both the stream and all of you so you can guess mid draw Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm the keeper of the hat. Great, by the way, you can get this in the Pokemon Center. Rock Shout out. It's awesome. Uh, but here we go. You get to play Bond. Don't look. Okay, okay. Choose just one. Make sure you don't get two. Two snacks. Do not look. Don't look. Okay. Don't look. I, 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 wa I right. want to I wanna win. I know you I only get a 1,000 guesses. Right. You put it in a perfect spot for us to be able to see that. I just, All right, I'm drawn. Can you just hide it? <laughs> this is like Shem the number one knows rule. what it is already. Okay. Uh, I also can't see. I'm going to watch it on Is it a pincer? Uh, Vaporeon. Le Leafeon? Yes. Oh! oh! It's what? Leafeon. Leafeon. I was obviously. close, though. Obviously. 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 All right. Oh, yeah. yes, thank you. Obviously. I'll draw. I'll, I'll, All right. I'll yep. Spraggles pull out of the hat. We better pass this here, in the most yeah, convenient way here, here. possible. Yeah. Okay. Dude, <laughs> we'll just don't look. I'm don't <laughs> look at <laughs> things. It's two, don't four, you're three, three one. I didn't even look. Here we go. Okay. Uh, instead of drawing this Pokemon, I'm just going to draw how it makes me feel. Okay, good. Uh, come pick. In the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Indeedy. Uh, Eldegoss. Voltorb. Ooh. Ooh. I'm just waiting for the face. Are you sure it's not Eldegoss, those freckles, actually? Um, mm. What? Little mate. Scyther. Snorlax. Sleep. Yes, who said it? Doob snacks. Oh, That's I looked. Wow. I looked. No, it's just... making me sleepy. This is a big comeback for Doob snacks. He doesn't often get snacks. games right. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Can I also just say Snorlax? That actually just looked like Snorlax. That's what it's facing. I felt like that when I was drawing it. Yeah. It felt like I was really doing well. You, you, you <laughs> okay. hit it head on. But okay, Doob snacks. Yeah. You can look. Don't this look. Oh, yeah. right, you I can. You can. can look. And don't put it down on the table like Zoinks did. <laughs> it's hilarious. This isn't the one that I wrote. But it is the same one that <laughs> yeah. I read. I'm sure we have a lot of repeats, and this is going to be go. bad. Oh, I, have, I have to draw to the crowd, eh? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's yes. not easy. All right, you're Rude. also out of frame. Okay, you're fine. They got okay, you. They got you. They got back. you. Where, where am I you're supposed to? Over here? This camera? Um, okay. All right. Good night. This is, okay. this is trouble. I have to look at the TV. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, uh, Duraludon. Yes. Wow. <laughs> nice. I know because wow. I wrote it. And then, so you got mine. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now you know that there's another drought yes, on tucked yeah, away yeah. in there somewhere. <laughs> okay, not bad. I'm, not glad, bad. We're, I'm glad we're both evil enough that we chose Duraludon. Well, it's like, this will be silly to draw. I didn't think I'd be the one to have to do it. Yep, uh, which, which means that immediately I'm going to draw Duraludons. But, uh, okay, right. this is going to be Next bad. Thing. My um, drawing skills are 
By the way, chat and everyone involved, the fan art that we have been receiving uh, on Twitter and everything is Sick. amazing and so much better than everything that we've put together on these In whiteboards. In my defense, so. I didn't get to finish the drawing. Oh, so true. You think it would have been. been better? <laughs> like, as it went on, it would have gotten better? Well, look, I don't know if you know how artists draw Spraggles, but they do, but like, outlines, and they, they get the general design down, and then you sharpen it in, add okay. some color. It's okay. a whole process. Mine's the hardest because I'm right-handed, and, I, okay, I'll, 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 I'll just, just draw the guest to roll it on just in case. Yeah, to roll it yeah, on. No, that would have been good, though. That would have been okay. good. One of us is going to get one without seeing it at some point. Okay. Uh, I, uh, now I'm starting to think that I don't know what this Pokemon looks like, but it's also the easiest to draw in the world. Uh, Alolan Ninetales. It's snow, it's white. Oh, very good. Magic Thank you. Ooh. Uh, ooh, long tail. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's got <laughs> hair. Oh this my is a fake. God. This is so hard, by the way, to draw <laughs> right-handed while holding this. No shot, I, okay, okay, brother. I'm trying again, I'm trying again. I'm trying again. Yeah, try again. <laughs> try. try again. Can I, can I have the eraser, please? Give me a race. This, 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 this is Start the easiest Pokemon the to draw. Side of that. Can I, can I draw it like real quick and then yeah, not show? Yeah, yeah. I don't, you know what? I don't actually know how to do draw this. Draw it to yourself, and we'll tell you if you can show it to the kids. Yes, I know. Th th that's. I'm sorry, but this is genuinely. That like, can't be what it. <laughs> production. Looks like. You can you in post a blur okay, out. This, <laughs> is the, this is the Pokemon. I don't think you'd show it. <laughs> I don't know what you're this trying to do. This is the Pokemon. Pokemon. You know what Pokemon this it's is. It's a Gyarados. There we go. It's a Gyarados. <laughs> this is what Gyarados looks like with, with, without the head. It's not. It's not. This is what Gyarados looks like. I'm sorry, camera. No, it does not. Dude. Yes, it does. <laughs> no, you're no, it's not getting it. Oh, exactly anymore. what a Gyarados looks like. Oh, my word. Uh, hey, they're never letting us sit on the chairs again. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> you, what does a Gyarados look like? Out? I would have just drawn how it makes you feel. Okay. Yeah, you did. Well, how does a Gyarados make you feel? Do we want to keep smile? Playing? Yeah. <laughs> Are we keeping playing? Yeah, well, let's go. Okay. Oh, right. God, we should not. Oh, right. well, we really yeah, should well, not. <laughs> some of some of us shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, production. Right. Thank you. Blur out chef's drawings for our West Coast viewers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Smart. Okay. On the delay. Are you all? Can you all see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Um. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm still geeking over. It's I. Who wrote Gyarados? You drew the same thing twice. Because it's the same thing. A champ? A bowl of spaghetti. Uh, uh, Iron Hands. Uh, Mr. Mime. Yes. Oh, okay. Mr. Mime. Something with hands. Machamp was a great guess, though. Thank I definitely you. went really hard. <laughs> That's a hand. <laughs> I nailed that one. Yeah, really impressed, bro. I didn't know if we were going only Unite Pokemon or not, but I'm assuming maybe, but I yeah. put in Those were giant Unite. hands, so I figured Iron Hands. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. there. I got to redeem at least something. Iron Hands, very cool idea for Pokemon Unite potentially in the future. Oops, thanks. Give it a go. Oh, right. sure. Okay. I was going to pass it to you. I hope you get Gyarados. I hope you have to draw that. to see how many of us can get fired. I hope you get to roll it on again. Okay. Yeah, that's true. It's potentially possible, apparently. I have to excuse myself from this. I saw it. Oh, did you? You looked? Okay. I peeked. I didn't even try to. Registeel? Not even. I'm sure this is so good, and I just... Golem. Yeah, it looks like a golem. That's definitely a golem. Blastoise, Blastoise, Blastoise. Oh, here we go. Blastoise. The, the shell pieces was a choice, for sure. Turn it you know, well, backwards is, is pretty... Uh, yeah, like, yeah. looking from the back, I thought, like, a shell would be easier than trying to draw the front of a Blastoise. No, I see that. I see yeah, that. I, 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 I like the cannons are great. It, was are great. At it wasn't a chef Gyarados. All right, all right, that's fair. Yeah. Well, I think we got Gyarados faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's only one Pokemon that looks like that. There are so many Pokemon that look like that that just don't happen to be in the game. No, one, have, it's the tail, the tail, the, the spike tail thing. All right, we're, you're never, you're never right. redeeming it. You're Let's never just pretend that never happened. Hat. All right, I want to see what I get. All right, there's Pokemon in there. I believe it. Okay. I like how everyone was screaming at me to not look, and Spraggles is the one that cheats. Okay, okay. <laughs> I didn't cheat because I, I said right away. Yeah, but you. Okay. <laughs> I have honor. I have a lot of honor. How does this Pokemon make me feel? Okay, um, we're doing more. Okay, this Pokemon may. Okay. Um, okay. I'm like this. Okay. Ooh. And I'll, I'll get myself bigger pupils here. Ooh, look at that. You can and see. I'm kind of like this. <clears throat> um, ooh, that's a little too angry. I could hear the. Mm. Oh, it's okay. It's more of like a. Mm. Hmm. Okay. You, are, you, are you a sad boy? My nose. When you have this nose. It's my mustache. It's your mustache. Obviously. At this point, I'm just drawing other features on my face. I don't <laughs> think I'm going to give you guys more hints as to what this looks like. Uh, I think it's a stretch to call that a hint. 
Um, um, it is because of how I feel about it, and just know me. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, you, you slightly dislike it, but not too much. Drizzile. So, oh, Inteleon. It's got to be. Hmm. Okay, sad boy. Um, Absol. Zarina. Glaceon. Mewtwo Y. Zacian. Maridon. Oh, yeah. oh, Wicked Blow Urshifu. <laughs> Machamp. Uh, Rapid Strike Urshifu. Yeah, baby! Yay! Oh, that's good. There, there we go. go. So I, I don't feel good things. about it. I'm crying about it right yeah. here. And then here's Urshifu punching. I thought maybe you didn't like it because you didn't like fighting it, but you just don't like seeing people use it. I just think it's a little sad right It is. Now. It's water. It water is. for no. tears? Yeah, water with the tears. Are you sure you want to pass that thing back to me, by the way? We can, yes, we can absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hope that you draw, like, from the hat Gyarados again. So I, then you I, have to draw Gyarados. Back to back. Yeah, you are. Production, be ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just Anything can happen right now. Right. Immediately to break. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're down to not many Pokemon left. We're ready to get some, uh, <laughs> some more vouchers out there. Okay. I'm excited. Okay. I'm, I'm horrified, but I'm excited. Okay, you're gonna get, you, might, you might get this one. I'm not sure. All right. Feels like we should. But also, Mike, uh, we'll, we'll see. Meowskarada. We'll should we guess before he's allowed to draw? <laughs> well, we should just all do a round of guesses at some point. All right. Uh, okay. Box. Okay. Cofagrigus. Foxion. <laughs> oh, Fridge. Duraludon. Duraludon. Oh, <laughs> oh, how did we draw each other's Duraludon? That's unbelievable. That is very, very. But you got it. You got it. Good job. Very good. Well good done. Is. Well done. We did it. We did it, Chef. Finally with a PG yeah, drawing. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Well, pretty good. it's what happens. It's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Not to the rest of us. Uh, uh, it's true. But yeah, yeah. There's still chance. Fun fact, <laughs> the Raladon, one of the first notes I ever got from the Pokemon company was to stop calling it a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, see, but I'm not in trouble. I just happen to draw a fridge. Yes. Dupes Axe is the one who You did it exactly right. Coincidentally. Right. So Coincidentally. Right. Okay. Um... I am going to draw a Pokemon now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's great. <laughs> this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, kind of, kind of. But I'm going to draw it with words. Uh, that, so cheating. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. I'll start with a drawing. Um, and then they have, like, a hat. You should, well, hold on. They usually have the hat like this. And then they have a big speech bubble here. And uh -huh. it's like, please add blank. To unite. I know what it is, but I'm not going to say it. Okay. Because, oh, because it's yours. Because it's mine. Oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and usually they got like a shirt on like this and some pants. You're drawing a person who likes this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then there's like, this is always like very sparkly. I get this one immediately, so I get oh, like, like a lot of patterns. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh. The you answer, see, he, the he, answer is Pelipper. He Do drew the hat brim up. That's how you know. It that is true. Here. Oh, that is. I. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't I even recognize myself. How embarrassing. One it. of the best things that we can do in a segment like this is essentially an inside joke. <laughs> between casters, where we know, and you may know if you've watched a lot, that uh, Doob Snacks really wants Pelipper I do. to be added yeah. to Pokemon Facts. Unite. Any conversation that we ever have with people that's an you know, working in Pokemon, that's an any conversation we ever that's had, an, that's he will bring up the fact that he wants Pelipper and Unite. At this mm. point, I'm actively arguing against it, just because I think it would be fun if it never came. It's uh, it's never happening. Buddy. You want? <laughs> Please add it to Pokemon Unite. Thanks. Yeah. Your turn. Yep. It's your turn, Dupes. Thanks. Oh, there's an eraser over there. So, Regulus, how about you? What's a Pokemon you'd love to have in the game? That uh, he already gets have? everything he wants. So why don't you just like? Hey, <laughs> everything has cowboy outfits. He wanted Gyarados. He got that. I'm a big Phalanx fan. Okay. <laughs> love Cerulean. Yeah. I can't even reach the hat without my uh, After headphones. that, I think Ampharos would be a good call. Oh, okay. All right. If anyone's listening out there, Empoleon possibly. We need some supporters. Yeah. We need some defenders inside the game. Just supporters. Just supporters. Yeah, we got well, a lot of defenders. we need some supporters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At Jirachi, least one. perhaps? Ooh, that's Celebi, a big ask. Yep. Maybe? Yep. We like EX Pokemon, don't we? Yeah. Try to get them in there. For real? Should All right. I go? This yeah, one, let's this do one, it. This one should be fairly easy. Okay. I don't know about that. Ooh, a Dodria. Yep. Oh, that was actually cheating, was but great. also I wrote that one, so you keep pulling mine. That oh, was great. Okay. Well, Unless we all didn't write that. How is it cheating? One. I didn't write Dodrio. Oh. And, of course, Braggles, is that the correct or the incorrect amount of hats? It was it's guessed before right I got to the hats. You finish start it. With the finish hats. it. Anyone would start drawing the hats. <laughs> yeah, anyone would start There's drawing. one, 
Two. He's almost there. I would have actually just drawn the hats and seen if people could figure it out. I think. Now I think we that I like. Oh, <laughs> now that I like. Give him a ten gallon. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> With a feather in the Ooh, cap. Ooh, that was a good feather. Yeah, it's really we did good. It. We did Impressive. It. You, just, you have to let my my art breathe, chef. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Give sorry. me a moment to get there. Okay, you going? I'm ready to go. Yeah. All right. You don't need to let my art breathe, baby. <laughs> yeah, because it's <laughs> miserable from bell to bell. Come get on, in deep. come on. All right, let me see. Toss me the, oh, the hat. hat. Yes, yes, that. Don't look. I, don't look. Uh, yeah, I won't pull a Spraggles and look. My bad. I won't pull a Spraggles and be super honest. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I hate this one. I don't know how to draw it. <laughs> you, didn't really, you didn't really draw any of yeah, yeah. So. I did. I drew the rapid strike. It was very good. Okay. Um, you also did kind of draw the snow line. This one? All right. Let's is this see how this. it makes you feel? This is not going to be good. Okay. A boot. Uh, Serena. Yeah, baby. Wow. Stomp. Let's go. It's all about getting creative. I think I need to steal that one. Uh, hopefully, I get one. It's yep. all about getting the, the less that we actually have to draw something that's hard to draw, the better we're doing. Exactly. What did you two honest opinions on the Zarina from Unite Holic in their, in their group stage game? What were you feeling on that pick? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. It looked OK. Mm -hmm. And then it, it wasn't able to carry in some of these fights. So for context, this team, they did have a player swap recently. Their central area player left the team, and so Mame has been filling in that role where they've been playing the defender up into that point throughout this whole season. Mame has been on defender? It's been a lot of mammo swine. So okay. th yeah. the weird picks keep on coming, but yeah. he's been playing that quite a bit, and he's been role swapping to that, and it felt like going back to old comfortable in, in, that, in that last well, slide. I mean, look, we've got him a champ doing work on the main yeah. stage, and I do think that there is a lot of value in picking something that you're really good with. Even yeah. if it might not be meta, I think there's a ton of value in it. But there is a reason we don't see Zarina that much anymore. You know, after mm -hmm. Worlds in year one, it felt like they went, wow, this thing is way too good. If a player is just, you know, cracked on the sticks with this thing, and it's going to go crazy right. inside these games. They nerfed it. Now we really haven't seen it since, even though it's gotten a few nice buffs uh, throughout yeah. the, the recent history for this Pokemon. I think at this high of a level, Boy, you have to be so good on it. You have to be, yeah. if it's not a, a, a super strong choice that people want to take away from you, you've got to be so good on it. And we see some players go with it. You know, we had some Absol picks earlier. Yeah. I think Absol is kind of right in this realm. Extremely sure. good, feels like a counter to some of the squishy Pokemon because it's mm -hmm. kind of a delete button with that combination of its Unite move and uh, Night Slash. No, not Night Slash, sorry. Uh, Psycho Cut. Psycho Cut, thank yep. you. It's kind of a delete button with that, right? But at the same time, it's not super meta. There are things that edge it out. And uh, if you're not absolutely dominating on it, you're behind. And that's mm. what it looked like. Like two games of Zarina in a row just kind of looked like they couldn't fully get it together. What do you yeah. think, Kurt? Yeah, I mean, I agree. So when you, when you have these comfort picks or these pocket picks, that you have to be so good on them that you bridge the the actual power gap that these Pokemon have built into the game. Yeah. And then you need to just be even better than that. Right. Right? So if you're pulling this thing out, it's supposed to be kind of like in the back of the weeds, you know, grab it and then go, where it's not really on anybody's radar, but you can pivot to it. I don't think we're in a place where that needs to be the crux of your strategy, and when you're relying on that, you have problems kind of like we saw here. Yeah, you see, yeah, so we're taking a look at this game between Re uh, Rework Respawn and Unite Holic, so we're going to see some of the Zarina moments right here inside there. Mm -hmm. Again, a really powerful Pokemon uh, in the right hands, but just doesn't seem to keep up with some of the other all-rounder choices inside yeah. the game. It's stack dependent too. So we were seeing a lot of split pushes for Mame couldn't be a part of the early fights because they were trying to force scores in both the top tier one or even the tier two. And then moments like this, it came down, it got pretty close. It of did. course, the Snorlax hero moment at that point in time, though the clock was probably too formidable for Unite Holic to even really take it down. But um, I really think that Zarina, when it was extremely meta, extremely powerful at Worlds Year One, it was on the back of that Blissey combination. It felt like they, they were able to do that again in draft here, but it felt almost the Blissey was stretched a little too thin. It was supporting a lot of their other frontliners, uh, like the Crustle in some games, the Umber and others, and it I just felt like it didn't have enough real estate to go and actually help the Zarina the level that we thought we needed it. Well, also, it did go into Buzzwell Game One, which I think we're probably still all of the agreement Buzzwell's pretty ridiculously good. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, it, like, there were moments where it was like, all right, we got the Blissey, we got the the Serena, the Serena's going to unite against the Buzzwell, it's all alone, and then the Buzzwell just turns around, it's like, why did you do that? And just 1v2s <laughs> them, and it's like, maybe Serena wasn't the pick, actually, uh -huh. because Buzzwell is Buzzwell. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the meta has changed, right? Not only are things like 
buzz will more popular and better right now, obviously. Uh, it, it's just also a different landscape entirely in the game since we had Zarina as a popular Pokemon. You know, special attackers, once Slick Spoon came out, got so much more value. Yeah. So you see just different team compositions that Serena's even trying to play into. And the fact that we just don't have mirror matches anymore, you can see some really <laughs> disadvantageous positions for Zarina right. to be in. You just mentioned Buzzwool. You know, when Zarina has to jump in and stomp or something like that, and the Buzzwool on the other side can knock you into the air, bring you down, pick you up, slam you into your allies, do it again, like, all of that is going to make it really tough for Zarina, while Zarina has to stay there and brawl mm -hmm. into a Pokemon that is kind of brawling, but it's more just kind of like knocking you around. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, you, you said stretched thin. The reason Zarina and Blissey worked so well year one is because every team that was running that had Hoopa, and that's how you prevent the Blissey from being stretched thin. Yeah, it's Plus, tank. on top yeah. of that, you can have multiple resets through the Hyperspace Soul, through the Soft Boiled, through the Bliss Assistance, and then through more hyperspace holes. So the Zarina kind of gets that, uh, the coal in the engine to keep ch yeah. chugging forward. And that's not where the meta is now. It's true. Yeah. You have to that, commit to it. It's actually a really interesting point you bring up, though. We, we've seen a little bit of Hoopa on stage, but not very much. It, it feels like it's receiving bans kind of left and right. Yeah. But despite that, it's still not emerging in games, even where it is available, which is a bit of a shock to me. Deep Snacks, I know you play so much Hoopa. Why, why do you think we're seeing a little bit lack of it? Um, so the teams that can really leverage a Hoopa, for example, like for free and service, right. they're having it taken out from under them, and then they're mm. Eldegoss taken. The teams that you're less concerned about Hoopa, which means you're, you believe your macro is stronger than the other team, even with Hoopa, then it's a non-factor, and you remove one of its biggest advantages. Teams that can get clever with Hoopa are the ones that aren't actually getting it available for them to play, which means we're not seeing it getting to shine. I still think Hoopa is an S-tier support in this game, and I think it, it's really player and team dependent. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think that is a big factor, right, is whether or not they have a Hoopa player. And then if they have a Hoopa player, you ban out Hoopa. So yeah. now they no longer have a Hoopa player. The flow and chart. We saw this, yeah. <laughs> if well, this, then that. Yeah, yeah, if good Hoopa, ban Hoopa, right? <laughs> yeah. We see that with teams where they're just straight up Blaziken bans the whole way. They say, we're yeah. not running into this Pokemon at all. Hoopa is the exact same way. We don't want to deal with it. In fact, for free, essentially, Got, just got hard countered, it felt like. They took the Hoopa right. to make sure that they didn't have that option, and then they were first picking away an Eldegoss. I have to say, so when I look at a draft like that, I feel like every player in the game, if you have information on your opponents, this is how you need to be drafting. Yeah. Not only banning what you don't want to see, stealing away something else that they can play. Like, take away all of their weapons. Take away all of their options, their best things. Because then we saw Zervis pivot onto two Pokemon that he was good with, but boy, he didn't seem to have the impact that he would on LD or Hoopa. Let me go to support defense school right now. I want to say that, yes, Zervis I dropped out of support defense school. <laughs> I felt like I knew it all. Like, I don't know. I was just a I'm, a th I'm a third year senior here. I'm like, for some reason, I just can't graduate. I have tenure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, taking a look at Zervis specifically in that matchup, because it's so easy to hone in on, because it was targeted bans to them. Blissey is still a solid Pokemon. We're seeing teams pick it up. That's that wasn't like, in game two. That Absol pick felt like an absolute tragedy. Like they were not getting much mileage out of it. And in the third game, I, th I think th they lost it on the draft screen, and I don't think it was the Eldegoss first pick. I think it was actually in their later stages when they had two tanks, um, and, and they could have, I keep saying, like, Glaceon Icicle Spear would have felt so good and would have covered a lot of the gaps they had. It would have allowed them to chase down uh, Zynus on the Mew, right, with the Icicle Spears once it got too close. It would have facilitated some shred on the double tanks that they ran the entire time. So... I think because they were dialed in on Zervis, we're dialing in on Zervis and saying like they were taking a lot of tools away from them. But I don't think that was necessarily the beginning of the end. I think they they had that happen and didn't adjust well enough. Yeah, they from also that had that pedal dance Venusaur. Yeah. It was clever. That was great. The thing about that pedal dance Venusaur, you know, uh, obviously Solar Beam has been the more popular build for a while now, and it's just because with an energy amp 
and a solar beam unite move like you've just you're able to just shred yeah. through enemies in an incredible way mm -hmm. but that pedal dance such an interesting choice yes they could lock it down with mean look and they could kind of set up this combo that they were looking for where they mean look and they're able to move in with the wicked blow but because of pedal dance and the multiple giga drains it's just able to tank all of that in that final fight they put so many resources into taking down Venusaur and they could not take it down. Yeah. Chef, I feel like we've seen a lot of, we've been talking a lot about the draft answers and stuff we would have liked to see. What about a team that you think has been doing really well in draft? Is there any like teams that you're like, man, I really like these picks every game after game? Yeah, I mean, I actually do kind of feel like a lot of teams that we ended up seeing today got really good drafts, but that's because I feel like we've had a lot of games where it's been I don't want to say non-interactive drafts, but the majority of their cores have been just their comfort picks, right? Like sure. when we saw, for example, uh, like Rework Respawn versus Unite Holics, I didn't feel like they were stepping on each other's toes. Eventually, we saw like one ban for one Pokemon, but the comfort picks were just there because the metas are so different in each of these regions that they don't really have to worry about like, well, are you going to take this from me? Am I going to take this from you? Mm -hmm. uh, like Trevenant, for example, is something that like only some teams have been going for and not really going for others. And uh, even then, like, you know, it's only post crustal there's there's just a lot of options that i feel like are just solid for everybody all around with how many good pokemon we have in the current meta and so i mean i think most of the drafts have been good uh, there have been some questionable ones for sure i mean the yeah. one we were just talking about the fact that they were going up against such a strong poke team and didn't have a true support yeah. kind of questionable but i feel like there's been a lot of just solid drafts not not too many that have been like counter drafts just cover picks okay i really like the one we just saw between legacy and fusion you yep. saw that they were trying to set up an easy slow bro pick like any speedster that legacy picked was just going to get shut down by slow bro mm. and then i think they really intelligently switched their strategy moved over to chandelure i thought they had for the most part a better match it got very very close in that final fight but a much better match and truly a a, a really smart draft pivot right there at the end i love huh? seeing that yeah, it was good. It didn't result in the W in that case, but, the, you know, the moment could have changed the fate of that game. But I do think you're right. The draft in that scenario was super, super exciting. One of the best answers to double defender, which is so popular. My personal favorite draft that's been happening so far has been Rework Respawn. Playing around what Reggie is able to do, we were finding really weird enabling tools, like a Snorlax kind of re-emerging. A Pokemon that has seen a lot of competitive play historically recently. It sees sparse play here and there, but the only time I've seen Snorlax be so popular is in compositions built around double beam, very front to back heavy compositions where you're relying on your attackers. Instead, Rework Respawn's playing a dive angle on this Pokemon and trusting Minato to make sure that the enemy has no secure tool options available at the right time. We are yawning any solar beam Pokemon on the enemy <laughs> side whenever that HP is at a third or less, and we are making sure it was shut down. It felt like every time that Reggie wants a takeover style Pokemon, like the Scyther in this case, they had an option to get enabled on the dive. And I thought that was really, really clever into a team like Unite Holic, who plays really bizarre stuff sometimes. And that's not easy to go into a draft like that. Something I wanted to ask you guys. So one of the big questions uh, this whole weekend was, uh, is, what region is really dominating right now? What's going to happen when Japan runs into EU, when NA runs into OC, as we saw earlier in the bracket, you know, a lot of these matchups. I'm curious, now that we've seen this group stage, now that, I mean, all of us have been running over to the B stage yeah, to see what's going on in all of these games. By the way, if you haven't attended a live United event, it's it's, uh, it's so much fun. I know. <laughs> like, if you're geeking out on United, it's the absolute best time. The best. Just running over and seeing what's happening on the multiple stages. Uh, but I'm wondering what you think of, like, is any region showing up as better than the others? Uh, I don't want to tip, like, my thoughts too much. I'm just curious what you all think. Like, Kirk, what, what do you think? Uh, I'll just keep it real simple. I think the, the gaps between regions is shrinking. Um, I mentioned on broadcast earlier, and it's because I truly believe it. You know, when you say, you know, number three in NA could have beat number one out of this region or whatever, that's not true anymore. I like, hate when just... he does my voice like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was saying number three. Uh, Yeehaw! Yeah, it is like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Dang, it's how I sound. <laughs> but again, just the, the, the skill, uh, I don't, the disparities between the regions has shrunk, which is making, for example, why we just saw four great group stage matches be and feel so close. Despite two O's, they weren't like complete 
smotherings in a lot of cases. They're pretty back and forth. You can see where maybe there was a little bit of cracks in the strategy, but overall, like these teams are competing well against each other, and that's exciting to see for us as we move through the rest of the year. I want to get a quick thought from both of you here. Uh, Zoinks, what do you think region-wise? <laughs> it's a coward answer. I just think it's too early. We've only seen one region twice on our broadcast, and that was Japan, and it was a win and a loss and kind of dominant in either direction. Maybe Kabichon's not having the strongest dominant win we expected, but they were going into uh, for free. He was another tournament favorite. So if we're having any takeaways, it's that um, Japan came to play. They have some great teams. And the closest match was EU as well. So I think EU also looking good. But. Yeah. Chef? I will say that is a coward answer, Zoinks. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, you just said, oh, well, it's too early to say, and then you just said every single region. Uh, but I'm going to say uh, all of Latam. All of Latam, easily for me. Uh, I think that they really, uh, this is their time. Uh, they've been, I mean, and of course that includes, you know, Latam South, Latam North, and Brazil. Uh, that last match was so good, I think, and I feel like uh, Legacy, even though they're in losers, they're still, like, a huge threat to literally anybody. Uh, but both of the Latam teams, the North and South, that are still in here have looked amazing. Amazing mm. to me. I mean, uh, you know, Unite Holics easily. I think people could have put them in the top three, if not winning. And Rio Respawn just looked like they were in control. Yeah. Now, obviously, I have a very strong opinion here, but I have been told by broadcast that it is too hot for air, so I'm not going to give it to all of you. But somehow it been a hotter, very exciting than the Chef Gyarados drawing. Very hot, extremely <sighs> hot. We are going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Pokemon Unite. Don't go anywhere. I'll be mad at you. Goodbye. Bye. Well, not bye. <laughs> like, not forever. Yeah, just for a moment. Forever. Twist. Uh, I'm French, so Camembert. Cassadero. Eh, mozzarella. I like cheese. I want to be cheddar. I don't eat cheese. Eh, sería tempo, porque sabe defenderse muy bien y sabe en qué momento entrar para poder seguir peleando. The best player on my team is Joey, because he's the best defender in NA. Uh, mechanically, fall. Reggie 195 porque es muy confiable y aparte es muy bueno. Uh, Charvin, because he looks like Erling Haaland. Robbie, because he never gives up. Zera Ora. My team will let me. I will play Zoroark because I like playing Zoroark. Yao Skorodok. Cinderace because it's my favorite month from the beginning. Yo jugaría a Lucario porque me gusta mucho. Desde chico me gustan las películas de Pokémon. Pikachu top lane because it's really annoying and I can throw electro balls all day. Ese jugador sin duda Sherlock porque hace muchas cosas muy locas. Wolf because he will literally fall himself in the middle of the enemy team. Me. El más troll sería Draken. Probably me. <laughs> I would say everyone. Everyone is a most troll. Cramoran, because yes. Greninja. Pudra is an excellent Pokemon. I've always believed that it has very good mechanics, Pudra, but my team doesn't believe it. Ballon Flame! I'm telling you that Slowbro is just the best Pokemon in this game ever. I still think it's super. It doesn't correlate that it's my main, but it's it's very overpowered. It's 15 degrees Celsius, which is really cool. Uh, between zero and 20 degrees. 19 degrees. Ah, mi temperatura fría. I'm not good with temperatures. I'd say. <laughs> and 2023 NAIC game against TTV and Amaterasu. I think I was playing Sableye. There was a there was this game where I spun as a Sableye in tier one after using ult instead of immediately scoring. And that score uh, that score not making it made us lose the game. 
Actually, my jungler uh, punched me after uh, after that after that. <laughs> it, yeah, in my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I'm trying to think if I have something hype, like or something funny to put in, but I don't think. I don't think so. I think my most embarrassing moment is when we lost March, because it was the only up to now. It was the only regional tournament that that we lost. Like out of the, the 12 Brazilian tournaments that there were, we won 11. Like so, the one we lost is like kind of annoying because it's really like it. It makes the record like not perfect. Like, okay, we have like a 93% win rate. Okay, it's not 100. It's really annoying that's not 100 because like you could have won. Like, it's, it's so close. Yeah. That's the most, I, I want to say embarrassing, but like the most in annoying moment. I, I, have a, I have a lot, honestly. Okay, I, I have a good one for this actually. So uh, over three years of Pokemon Unite, I've had a lot of experiences where people have probably made a lot of fun of me. And that's, that's just how it is. <laughs> you just got to learn to go with the blows. I would say number one is probably what uh, has stayed with me from season one when I used to play jungle role and or central role and that was the Cinderace Corfish ult. It's the final game of the regional finals against 1620 kings and my cinder ult auto aims onto a Corfish, costing us the game. Very fun way to go out. I mean look it's been clipped, it's been watched a thousand times or so whatever. It's yeah it's fun, it happens. I guess like <laughs> it can happen to anyone, guys. <laughs> Don't name your Cinder Old some Corfish. Welcome to the 2023 Pokemon World Championship. It's been an incredible experience. They're going all out for this world. The opening ceremony with the drums, like everything was beating, my whole body was into it. You've seen the show, you've seen the, the decoration, everything, like it, it's definitely worth in Japan. Like it's everything I wanted it to be. So exciting just to walk down the street and see all your favorite Pokemon everywhere and to watch your children's faces as well when they light up as they see everything. Pokemon just brings such joy to everyone's lives when it's things like this, it's amazing. Altaria, there's only some health left on the Azumarill, and nice. its accent is going to be able to Shadow Claw down, and he will become the 2023 Pokemon Go World Champion! It's accent, the most decorated Pokemon Go player in history. No. Are we there? Are we there? There's a second energy and cycle that we're waiting for. Now we can attack with the Kyogre. Aquastorm is going to do so much damage. It's going to take out those bent Pokemon. And Chao Tong En is your junior division world champion. Pumpkin Pit! Oh. Pumpkin Pit can discard the stadium. There's a Luminion V that can search out boss's orders. Bring up the Arceus V. Gabriel Fernandez is your seniors division. World champion here in Yokohama, Japan. He's got a ton of cards in hand. Power Tablet. Vance is playing quickly. Does he have the pieces? Switch card. Moving the Mew VMAX into the active spot. And boss's orders brings up the Zacian V. Vance Kelly, the 2023 Pokemon TCG World Champion! Out here, it's only really got that pollen puff or the clear smile, but it gets the knockout. Sora every Sora is your 2023 Pokemon World Champion. Now, oh, Arcanine's gonna like, avoid I don't think that, that KO's but Gastron, Gastron survives. survives. That it's means, just a uh, sliver of Lord, HP. It's the Arcanine sled. That means Gastron gets an attack off. It should get a knockout here if it goes for Ice Beam. It's Italy Amoogus, that's down. It's a 3v1 now. The battle is just canceled, and Tolia Ogawa is your seniors division world champion in Japan. Get 
any secondary effects. So as Pollen Puff will take out the GM Pow, and all Michael Kelsch has remaining in this matchup is a sleeping Dragapult. Michael throws in the towel, and Shohei Kimura will be your 2023 Pokemon World Champion. World Champion. It is crazy winning Pokemon Worlds, especially here in Japan. The atmosphere, it's unlike any other tournament I've ever been to. It still hasn't really set in that it's real, but it's really exciting, and it was super cool seeing my friends in the audience, and it's been a great time. I'm feeling good to be a world champion. It's something I'm gonna remember for a long time. position there the the Ogapon taking a lot of damage not really able to stick around as long as we would like it to have done to have that follow me support to allow the gouging fire when it eventually came in after the Chen Pao you know mysteriously hung on with that <laughs> visible focus sash that it had in his back pocket yeah. Um, but yeah I think that was the real key turn and, and Len didn't really give up with that that momentum swing from that turn one kept it going closed out the game Everything is back onto Lorenzo now to come back, readjust, and see how you can better handle the Dragonite because that is the big threat going into this match. It's obvious the Corviknight is a threat, but once you are putting so many resources into that side of the field and trying to prevent the Tailwind from going up again, then you've got the Dragonite to deal with at the same time. It's very difficult. You've got to split your decision. You've got to really pick the targets right and not go in, doubling in to a protect this time around. But we do have an alert. It is game three of this round five. Chiam Pao, Ardrapon versus that Corviknight and Dragonite pairing yet again. Uh, maybe wanting to try to focus down, like you said, on the Dragonite straight off the bat would be great, but there is also the mind game of the protect. That is true. You don't want to go into the Dragonite now, fall for the same, the, uh, the, the same sort of situation that happened in that game too so you go into maybe the Corviknight here because you know it has to go for that tailwind to really get that Dragonite into position where it can go for the skill shots and then start setting itself up speed wise we see the protect coming out once again yeah, it's a bit of a bait situation, as it seemed like, unfortunately. Renzo did focus down on the Corviknight, but it did miss. So that is really huge right now. You know there's a potential of even picking up a Vlex. Oh, oh wait, it's so a there's huge. a critical hit. But, 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 there's so many things going on. The Corviknight somehow survives. You have a critical hit, water terrestrialization, sort of ruin, and somehow this Steel Bird has been able to survive all of this onslaught. <laughs> That's three times it's been able to just hang on in the set this is huge getting that tailwind off is so important especially for that dragonite we saw the importance of the, the scale shot and how strong it can be into that chen pound really be able to be that option to shut it down take that option away it's the first thing you've got to do and it is coming out here once again oh here it comes scale shot is it going to be enough to be able to unite all of lens uh, probabilities and being able to pick up the ko 30 no it's oh. a four hit rather than a five hit unfortunately not being able to do so, which does allow Chien Bao to perhaps try to focus that, but no body press completely dispatches of it. That is a huge turn here for Len and a huge advantage being the Corviknight. You think 
isn't going to be out, able to outspeed the Chen Pao, but is, takes it down, leaving the Ogre Pond to get another Ivy Cudgel off. But this doesn't matter. The Covenite going oh. down now has done its job. It set the Tailwind up, and it's dispatched of that Chen Pao, making things a lot easier for this Dragonite to close out and do what it did in that game too, make it one step further for Len to taking this set. Yeah, and it's a good way to be able to still get that focus pressure onto the field. Sure, uh, it is quite unfortunate you weren't able to pick up the KO onto the Chien Pao, but at least Renzo could try to capitalize off of that in bringing the Gouging Fire in a bit earlier to perhaps try to deal a bit with this Dragonite. Yeah, and now we do see the Amoongus hit the field for Len, so he is going to have that redirection available to pull any of those big threatening attacks away from the Dragonite here. <laughs> You've got to look at Renzo's side of the field as well. The Ogre Pond, the Wellspring form, has got access to follow me, so going to be able to pull in those attacks from the Dragonite as well, maybe give the Gouging Fire a little bit of protection. The Amoongus has to be careful as well around that heat crash, and then obviously the Breaking Swipe is something that you can utilize fully here because the Corviknight and the Mirror Armor ability are gone. They are indeed, but uh, if it hasn't already been hyped enough, I do believe we also have the Unite stream going ahead and watching us as well. So hello, everybody. Welcome in. You are in the middle of a game three where things are extremely, extremely on fire. And we are going to see a Trastalization from Len, and it will be that Dragonite going for the Terra Fairy here, removing that Dragon weakness. And if we do see a Breaking Swipe from that Gouging Fire, going to have that immunity going into this next turn. Oh, this is going to be so crucial and big but actually rather than seeing the breaking swipe come out right now we've got the burning bulwark it does have the potential of picking up that burn which is going to be so crucial in lens strategy but no we have the complete ignore focusing onto the ogre upon trying to at least deal as much damage as you can here not picking up quite the ko from the looks of things and the range and actually hitting four out of five times rather than five out of five but the crucial thing is at least it's in a two hit ko range and you didn't uh, down to the bait. Yeah, and now the Amoongus doing such a great job because this Ogopon is a pure water type. It can't ignore that Rage Powder. The Ivy Cudgel pulled into that slot, further protecting this Dragonite, getting away scot-free once again. Going to be in a position where it can fire off that skill shot once again. This turn, maybe into the Gouging Fire. Does it force the Ogopon on Renzo's side of the field to go for that follow me mm. to protect the Gouging Fire? But the Terry, the, the Fairy Terrestrialization gave him complete immunity from that Breaking Swipe. But the important thing here here is the redirection from Renzo's side. Double redirection, now one actually being followed suit with the Amundias over on Len's side in order to allow this gouging fire to enable itself and try to dispatch of the KO that it really, really needs to focus down onto this Amundias. Ogrepon sort of did its job. It was able to deal real good amount of damage as well as get the redirection going. But Renzo's final Pokemon, as well as this follow-up move from the gouging fire, are going to be really crucial into clarifying who is going to be able to run away with the set. Yeah, and the heat crash coming out into the Amoongus. Is it enough? It is yeah. enough to pick up the Amoongus, take away that option of redirection. Now the Dragonite in a position where it doesn't have that support, but Len's still got one more Pokemon left, as well as Renzo, like you say. It comes down to what these both trainers have. We know that Renzo's got that Landorus Incarnate. Can it be enough to pull this back? for Renzo. We're going to have to see, but there is a very fresh adaptation with the Landorus Incarnate now on Renzo's side. It does add a bit of interest here. We know that Earth Power is so powerful, boosted by the Sheer Force and Life Orb, and the Dragonite is no longer a flying type. It is now susceptible to it. Yeah, you have to be careful if you want to launch off one of those Earthquakes here with the Garchomp. You can't do so freely into the Dragonite, as we do see that Landorus just protect here, maybe scouting out what Len is going to do this turn as we do see a scale shot fired off into that Landorus, blocked by the Protect. Blocked by the Protect, but more importantly, the Gouging Fire was completely ignored. He crashed, tries to focus down on the Dragonite, two hit KO, does put it in a really good stead right now. Dragon Claw, we see the double up on the Landorus. Len clearly identifying that this Landorus is going to be a real big issue and thorn on his side, but we know the Dragonite still outspeeds the Gouging Fire. Question is, if there's going to be another double up, can Landorus go for the double turn. I think you've got to go for it, I think, if you are Renzo, because if you get that double protect off, it pretty much locks the game up for you. You go for the heat crash again into the Dragonite, you pick it up, and then you've got two versus one against that Garchomp, which gives you everything in your side of the field. But if you fail that double protect, the chances of it actually being uh, happening, not going to happen here. The scale shot straight into it. The big question is, is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? Indeed, so far at this range, it seems like, except if there's any sort of critical hit that may come into play, oh, it's definitely not 
Funnily enough, this Landorus is really shrugging off all the damage of all those scales being shot its way. Heat Crash does finish off the job on the Dragonite, allowing the Landorus to perhaps be able to move, but once again, depends on the speed training interactions of both of these Pokemon. Yeah, and it is going to be down to the speed interaction. Whoa. The Garchomp going for that Dragon Claw, oh. picking up the Knockout Sword is the Gouging Fire versus this Garchomp in the latter stages of this game. And we've got a one versus one Gouging Fire, not really liking its spot, if I'm completely honest, but we've got the Breaking Swipe, so a lot of real interesting situations going on right now, oh. but a two-hit KO guaranteed with a minus one of attack does mean Garchomp may or may not be able to pick up the KO onto the Gouging Fire, but at that range, no. it does not! So close to picking up the knockout, but the Gouging Fire coming back with that Breaking oh. Swipe. Taking enough damage, taking it down to minus one attack, putting it in a position now where it is going to be able to close up this game for Renzo. With one more breaking swipe, it is going to be enough. Oh, but there's no protect, and it does pick up the KO. Surely there could have been an opportunity for the protect. Get that leftovers recovery going, but no, Renzo runs away with that game three and gets that fifth coveted win. 5-0 and oh going into the next round. An amazing showing from Renzo and both Len, but what a game for us <laughs> to kick into this round five. And what a way to finish as well, coming right down to the wire between these two Dragon-type Pokemon. The Gouging Fire looked in a really awkward position there. The Earthquake threatening so hard, but the Breaking Swipe, such a useful oh. move. And being a single target attack into that guard jump was huge because it did yep. just enough damage. And I think you made a good point where Len could have maybe went for that protect there, but would it have been enough? How many protects would you have needed to get another earthquake off in that situation? It'd be tough because I feel like it would come down to a roll, surely. We've got, we saw the minus one was able to, you know, uh, position yourself to the point where it would still guarantee a two hit KO. Like you said, if there was a minus two attack on Garchomp, it still is single target. And we know it's a spread move. It's 100 base power, basically. It's tough. And it's being dispatched by a very tough Pokemon, being Garchomp. But it would be extremely close. That, yeah. that, that, that's a guarantee. Yeah, and we are just looking at some of the highlights from this match. This Corviknight threw out, oh <laughs> surviving God. that huge critical hit, Ivy Cudgel, getting that Tailwind off and then setting the stage for the Dragonite once again. But the Gouging Fire, a great call from Renzo, bringing it in the back, bringing it in at the right time and utilizing it to its full potential, just picking off the pieces that were beside that Dragonite throughout, and it came down to that Gouging Fire right at the end, being the MVP for Lorenzo to close this one up. Yeah, we... And we saw the Garchomp actually outpacing that lander as being a bit of an indication that most likely the training would have been to the maximum potential for its speed. So that's sort of like the theme, the intricate detail of being able to understand and, you know, better process the speed benchmarks, right? Uh, Garchomp does have that slight advantage, but it was enough to be able to at least dispatch of the Landorus in that case. Maybe open lends up to a scenario where Garchomp can beat and 1v1 the Gouging Fire, but Gouging fire, too hot to touch, clearly. Yeah, yeah I think you really got to identify that turn where Renzo... Here we are back. AOS Cup, EUIC, London, England, Dupes next, Spraggles. Where, but still in the lounge. They kicked out Chef because he was the real problem. For obvious Child. reason. No, <laughs> for, for clear, a clearly obvious reason. Had to but go. I am here. Obviously with Spraggles, we already said that, Content Cowboy, yeehaw. But of course, with Nemesis, who's currently leading the pack in the open bracket. Nemesis, boys, please introduce yourselves. So, my name is Yee Fan. Most people know me as my Yee Fan, but my name in game right now is 2016 Fan. Absolute grief, grief maneuver for us casters, without a doubt. Mm. Of course. Um, I'm the defender for Nemesis, Asnable. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. So you are the stars of the open bracket right now. Obviously, you won uh, in NA in March, so you were a team to watch in this. And you were telling me uh, a little bit before we hopped on here, that you didn't have the best results in the play-ins. How far do you think you've come from the play-ins to March 2 now? Like, where is your team at compared to the uh, play-ins? Yeet, if you want to take this. Um, we definitely improved a lot over the course of the year already. So I'm really excited to see you know, how we turn out by Hawaii. Yeah. I think we've got a good chance to win again this year. We'll see, though. I think so, too. I mean, uh, it's your team is it's really interesting. I feel like uh, you're a team that is always winning by a lot uh, in your games. I don't know. I would love to know, like, what 
goes into your strategy around that, but I feel like every time I'm watching one of your games, when you get to Rayquaza, whether you win Ray, lose Ray, win or lose the match, you're going in there with like a 200 plus point lead a lot of the time. Is that like something that you really focus on, scoring a lot early? Yes, we do, and, uh, and usually we do accomplish that goal. So when we go to the Ray pit, usually our strategy is do not get Kato. Yeah. Because, you know, that's the most important part in the game in the last two minutes. So um, we always try to play really smart, con always conscious, aware of the, you know, our surroundings and try to make the least amount of mistakes. So it's, uh, you know, for, for fans that have followed you two specifically, as well as like LGC, Rex, um, and now Metallic, of course, when you're taking a look at a team, there is, it's rare that a team that is as consistent as you all have been, UCS season two, of course, great March, doing great today. Um, it's rare that the team that is most consistent is also incredibly innovative, and you all kind of cut that both ways. Um, as well, you're nodding your head a little bit. Um, how do you kind of parse that out by finding consistency while also being so creative? Um, I'll be honest with you, we, we just l love to throw different ideas out um, in scrims, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we don't bother with it. But uh, we always try to do different things just to keep, you know, everyone on their toes to make sure, like, we're not playing what's always meta. But we will play meta. But, you know, we'll surprise you guys. Yeah. Fix, so. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I feel like Yeet being the kind of player who almost invented Decidueye for mm. the competitive scene. Uh, you're someone uh, that I always have my eye on because you've, you've always got something interesting. I mean, as a whole team, you guys always have something interesting. But yeah, what gives you the confidence to go against the grain, you know, go against what many people might say is the meta right now and go, no, this is actually, this wins and I'm, I'm right. And you're not making a, a bad choice. You're making the right choice. I think it, it just comes from experience and confidence, you know? I play Desi, it works on ladder, it works in scrims, works in other tournaments, so, you know, I, I just build confidence over time yeah. with those type of things. Do you, know? you find, is it, you know, you're playing it on ladder, you know, you, you get a great feel for the Pokemon, you're mm -hmm. playing it in scrims, you're like, it's pretty good. Do you wait into a tournament a little bit to throw it out, or is it like early on, you're like, you know what, I want to game one, try this out? Uh, I want to pick what's best for the team, you know, I don't really... And in the first year, I played Desi pretty much only the entire year. Um, but nowadays, I kind of play every attacker, and I just want to pick what's, what my team thinks is best. So, well, Talking about what the team thinks is best uh, to kind mm -hmm. of pivot, but using that uh, analogy that you just uh, used, well, you, you all have gone with Metallic for this event. Relentless, mm -hmm. of course, with you in the AS Cup Quals, with you in your March Cup win. Uh, Metallic stepping in, and I don't just want to say this, my player to watch, only person to choose a player out of the open bracket, they're 4-0, so cruising and bruising. Um, what has Metallic meant to this team adding them in this moment? I mean, that's a just a big mental hurdle uh, for you all to overcome, just in, especially with just now winning with Relent. So how did you justify that, and how has it paid off besides the score sheet that we see today, Asnable? So for Metallic, we realized that He's really multi-talented. He could play a lot of different Mons, especially if we tell him to, if we need the specific Mon, and that's what we actually love about him. Um, you know, we love Relentless too. You know, he put in a lot of work, but with Metallic being uh, the young prodigy, because that's what we call him, he just, you know, he has the skill to be one of the best players in the game, and we love the fact that he, he has that, that Mon pool that could really help us out, and that's perfect for us. Yeah, and I just want to add, you know, we love Relentless too. Um, he really just, it was his own decision to step down. He didn't want to, he didn't want to come out to London. He's got things with work and stuff like that. So Metallic was our sub and he just turned 16 in time for this tourney. So he's with us and we got just as much trust in Metallic as we did in Relent. Yeah, I mean, Relentless truly played uh, an insane march, you know, top path tree, mm -hmm. really kind of bringing back the curse pain split action mm -hmm. and was just a mutant in the front line, like could never get taken out. 
uh, and was just I, honestly that's why I wanted that's why I chose Metallica as my player to watch because Relentless left some big shoes to be filled, especially yeah. off a big win, and they played insane. Uh, so I'm really happy to see that Metallica has taken on that challenge and is doing well for, for you all uh, this weekend. The same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Obviously, right? I mean, NA has gone through like some crazy roster mania lately. You have a player swapped out, multiple players on Luminosity, Team mm. YT. I mean, things are moving around. TTV disbands and yeah. players oh, are man. scattered to the far corners of NA to start playing on different teams. So it is a pretty wild time in North America, but you're in this open bracket. You're now 4-0. You've guaranteed your spot in the group stage. Uh, tell me, obviously, you, you're playing a lot of different teams from a lot of different regions. Is there anything that's really standing out region to region where you feel like, oh, NA is really strong in this way. EU is really strong in this way. I can open it up to both of you, Asnable. Why don't you start? I, I, you know, for EU, definitely their mon pool and who they prioritize a lot um, and their bands as well. It, you know, it definitely threw us off because, you know, it is different than NA. Um, but, you know, Japan, the, the Apex teams, they're the ones that threw us off with their comps because we don't know what their meta, they play everything. So it definitely... It's, it's really hard to tell right now wh who has the best meta right now because right. we all have our own thought process, our own opinions on it. But I think NA is pretty strong we're on our you know thoughts of what's the best bonds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think, Yeet? Yeah, I mean, I remember in season one, there was kind of distinct differences between the Americas, Europe, and Asia and in play styles. And I feel like it's a lot less so now. I feel like everybody's more kind of the meta is more solidified, especially like as far as strategies of where to rotate and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I will say I watched the game on the main stage. I think it was Mame versus uh, uh, Mame versus rework, 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 rework response. Yeah. And Japan has been not believing in the buzz wall as much as North America. So that's probably the biggest difference. Yeah, uh, the Buzzwell thing is a big region. difference. Because I saw from their qualifiers, like the stats that got put out from their qualifiers, and Buzzwell was at a 30% win rate or something like that, and I was just mm -hmm. kind of shocked. But they, you know, they definitely have a different strategy. Even in 2-4 free earlier, they didn't care about Buzz at all. They let 4 free have it every single time. They just had other things that they wanted to counter, uh, and they were able to make that happen. It's kind of shocking because I think it's just such an unbelievably powerful Pokemon, but every region seems to have some slight tweaks. For instance, Dragonite. I would love to hear your, your guys' opinion on Dragonite. Uh, other regions, like, you know, things that are teams that are playing in ACL, they love in Dragonite, but I never see it NA EU. Because, oh, for sure, for NA and EU, I feel like we're more so much on team fight composition where, you know, Denai is perfect for just flipping every objective off rip. So, you know, that's why for us, like, when we know there's a Denai, we always try to rush to KO him right away because he's the most, he's the key player of, you know, the whole entire game. So that's why we probably don't really see them and a big responsibility because when you're playing Denai, you have to secure. Yes. If you don't secure, then what's the, you know, what's the point of playing them on? So, um, but... You know, we do th think D, uh, D Knight is in a good spot. It's just probably for NA, we, we're more or less in tuned to flipping in that sense. We're more team fighting. When, when you're talking about, uh, I, I like that analogy. It's just like, it's in a good spot. That's just not how our region plays. Uh, but I did like you addressing this region will play this, so that means how we play is different. And I think that's a problem we saw specifically with 4 Free, is they kept trying to take team fights when the other team was trying to do something completely different. Uh, Yeet, have you identified other regions that might play differently that force you all to approach them differently outside of maybe a team fighting aspect? Um, I haven't really thought about like changing the approach too much. I think our strategy is to kind of do the best we, we can, we know how. Uh, based on whatever the situation is. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. Do you guys, yeah. Is there basically a, ne a way Nemesis wants to play a match? That's what you're trying to do when you head in there? Or is there any counter punching where you go, no, we're changing we, something up here? I feel like we want to, I feel like we feel like we kind of know all the possibilities of stuff you can do. And we just try to do the best option depending on whatever happens. You know, there's no specific ways we want to play. If anything, 
we probably we like to fight a lot. Yeah, we do. We, <laughs> we <laughs> love the KOs. We like to fight, so. so, but um, you know, like how you guys were saying, like eight, the Apex teams. I mean, we noticed them. Like they love Mew. Like we always see them play Mew. So like for sure, we you know it's in our thought process. They love Blaziken as well and Luca. So we're always thinking about them because those are still good mons that you know they could change the tide of the game off of one play. So we definitely are watching those teams for sure. Yeah. I'd love to know a little bit about your guys' thought process with draft. Obviously, it changed recently. You know, we had two blind bans. Sometimes you're banning the same Pokemon, but a lot of times everyone knew what they were doing. It's mm. like first ban was going to Buzzwell, second mm. ban was going to whatever the next thing was you wanted to deal with, right? Now there are four alternating bans. What does, what does Nemesis concern themselves with when it comes to draft? Is it... Are you really focused on the other team? Are you focused on what you think in like the meta overall? And how does that change when you see some like different choices from some of these regions? So it's both of those things. It's we sometimes it'll be depending on who we're playing against, or sometimes it's just what we think is the overall meta. Also draft order. That's uh, you know draft order very big on us. Like yeah, if we're second pick, we're for sure not letting you know no buzz will obviously because sure. but uh, first pick. We love to like diversify our bands because, mm -hmm. you know, there's other teams that love to play this one mon and that's perfect for us. I think ever since they added the two bands and actually know the order, I feel like the meta has, you know, the game has prospered even better now and it feels it feels good yeah, to know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see some teams where it feels like, oh, they won or lost in draft. You can see that so much more with this new system. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, I want to drill down just even a little further on draft. Uh, are you guys interested in first pick? Or do you like the two back-to-back -back from second pick? Because I've noticed a few of the Japanese teams, it feels like they're like, yeah, yeah, you take first pick. We want to grab two Pokemon really? right yeah. away. I think I feel like first pick is better. I, f I feel like first pick is better for us too, but I don't know, the whole tourney, we've been second pick the whole entire time, yeah, yeah. and we did well. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Something to think about and consider maybe yeah. moving forward, eh? Um, I wanted to that. ask you, you keep talking about, hey, we always, we, we lean into what's best for the team, what's the best thing to do in this moment, um, and pulling away just not from draft specifically, but the in-game, um, is it kind of a collective shot call scenario, or is somebody kind of like the overarching voice, and then if somebody goes, nope, I'm going in, you just kind of full trust go, what's, what's the di dynamic on the mics when you guys are playing? I mean, um, Rex is usually our, our shot caller, uh, yeah. but... You know, it's Rex and uh, Trainer, and so also Yif, and they both sometimes when they say their calls, we listen absolutely to their calls. But for me, I'm just the guy who gives out information. Whatever I see, whatever I see in the mini map, objectives, uh, be, uh, you know, beast farm uh, spawning. So that's really how it is. But for Rex, is usually our main shot caller when he's deciding what we should be doing. Very good. Yeah, I think in those moments, it's always great to have a, a voice that you're kind of all following, right? And then uh, it sounds like you're the kind of team that's like, all right, that's the call. Like, we're moving on it. We can discuss it later if we didn't like it, but right now that's the call and that's what we're playing. And you, know, you see some teams have trouble with that because everyone has different pieces of information. Everyone can see different things on the map, but yeah, it feels like you just gotta follow. Mm -hmm. You gotta follow the calls inside the games. It's been working out great for you, 4-0. Oh. I wanna ask you something, not necessarily outside the game but how long have you been here in london what are what are your scrims been like like what's that felt like for you guys how we've been we've been to london since uh monday and we've been practicing every single day double or triple scrims mm. but i mean the work uh you know it's always the amount of work you put in it, it will show the results so i i feel like that's the reason why we're four four and oh right now we've been putting in the work I mean, London is beautiful. We're having a good time, but right now our main objective is to win AO. So that's why we're just practicing, practicing, practicing. Yeah, I mean, of course, if that slot is so important. The winner of AOs gets a ticket to Worlds. The first team qualified. Do you think getting that spot, obviously, everybody would want it. You'd never turn it down. Do you think it could put a team in a position to sort of, you know, kick up their feet and not you know, as intensely work on their gameplay? I, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say yeah, because, you know, even if you win, the job ain't done yet. You know, you still have to win worlds. And, you know, yeah, you can feel comfortable, but, you know, you always have to be ready. And, yeah, I think 
I think it's best bet to always, you know, be be on your A game all the time. So even if we did get the, you know, let's say we win, we the you know the practice ain't stopping. We're still focusing up. We're still gonna play every day and try to get these, you know, these dubs. So nice. Very good. Any final questions here, Doob Snacks? Final question. Yeah, well, we got one more, and then we're gonna be throwing to a game here. All right. If you wanna, if you were to pick each of you, mm -hmm. uh, Yeet, I'll start with you. Who do you want to square off against in the grand finals? What would make the win the sweetest by beating in the grand finals? That's tough. That's why it's a good last question. Let, Great. I, you know I crushed it. I got one. That's I got a good one. one. All right. You got one? I got one too. You okay. go first. Okay. Uh, the team grand finals. Nouns Esports. Ooh, Nouns. Ooh, solid. Taking EU down in their hometown. All right. That's a good one. I was thinking AE. 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 Okay. <laughs> the N-A-N-A. -A. Uh, that's a little storyline right there. That would be that's a, a nice that's little storyline. That is a one nice of you get in that spot. Well, we are going to be throwing this thing back to our casters here in one second. <laughs> Thank you both for hanging out in the booth. Congratulations on making it to groups. I can't wait to see you play for later it. on today. We've got an incredible match for you. Shin and Rude going up against Outer Banks. Gentlemen, if you're in the booth, take it away. If you're not, we'll be if right there. If you're not, we'll thank you <laughs> so much, you two. And thank you, of course, to Yeet Ben and Esmo for a great interview. Thank you, everyone else, for bearing with us as we get this next game set up. Because, yeah, we got an incredible one cooking up for our final round of Swiss today. Shin and Rude versus Outer Banks. Yeah, this is a really cool storyline on both sides, to be 100% honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, now this is, of course, a match to get in. But, uh, I mean, just from talking about both sides, right? Uh, okay, actually, you choose. Which one do you want to talk about? Oh, uh, let's start with Shin and Rude. Of course, one of our visiting teams okay. uh, to this event. Yeah. We have, of course, a APAC East team, the only uh, representative of that region at this tournament, and traveled all the way to participate in the open bracket. So, uh, you know, didn't have that invite, didn't have that travel, just all on their own, and they do it, and they are having a great tournament so far. You already mentioned it. This is a win and in into that top eight. We don't know exactly where they will end up being seated, but if they can take down this in this, match yeah then they are making it into that top eight group stage yeah and uh, it would be really interesting to see shin and rode uh be the qualifying team now they are they've won uh you know their their kind of first place spot over in uh, taiwan and they were also in acl in the same group uh as both of the japanese teams that we yeah. have here today they were in the same group as uh, copic chans and they were in the same group as uh um the united, united Holics. thank mm -hmm. you <laughs> i'm uh, there's too many teams here uh and <laughs> they did not quite make it out but but in that group, they did 2-0 Kabi okay. which is one of the only teams that, uh, you know, really kind of dominated and didn't really lose that entire tournament. But right. that was their time where they lost. That is a really interesting kind of setup. I have heard that some of the members are not the exact same, but it's a combination of some other players from uh, some strong teams. But I'm just excited to see what they can do, I mean, especially representing their region as their only team and making it one step from qualifying. Yeah, they are so close. I mean, we have talked about it at nauseum all day long about how this open bracket has just been a gauntlet. So being able to make it through these teams, I believe they were able to take down a team at YouTube as well earlier today. So um, just a lot of incredible squads have been put in front of them and to keep emerging victorious is a huge showcase. So awesome to see from one of our teams from the eastern side of the world. What they're going up against, I mean, we're giving a lot of teams that home turf credit, but it will be Outer Banks, their opponents on the other side. And you see them getting ready for game right now. They are a team that has had um, some pretty fantastic success online in tournaments recently, but I feel like a lot of people were sleeping on this squad up into um, this tournament. And well, they have had a fantastic run so far today. Yeah, uh, even though they are three and one currently, um, yeah, you have to remember that they, their only loss was a close game up against Nemesis in the very first round of the tournament. And Nemesis currently is sitting at a 4-0, pretty undefeated, pretty unchallenged, uh -huh. I would say, obviously undefeated, it's a yeah. zero, but pretty unchallenged as for how, as how strong they've been. So the fact that they took them to, I believe it was something within like 100 or 50 points, like it was definitely down to like a score race at the end. Mm. and they they're still fighting that was their only loss kind of goes to show that they are also truly truly here to win oh yeah 
I can't wait to see what Outer Banks could put together because if this is a team that can make it into the group stage, really the sky's the limit up at, that, at this point. So it's going to be fantastic to see from them. So here we go. We have Mello, Caligola, Livian, Krinsky, and Kid Tans making up the roster for this event. Kid Tans, the one you could see most closely on your camera there recently, just a lights out attacker player. Ateleon, definitely their main Pokemon that it looks so fantastic when they're playing, but they do have a huge repertoire of options. And seeing Cali return to the stage is just a very exciting moment for every EUIC fan. Yeah, I feel like you can say this about actually kind of every EU team right now, but it's really cool to see a whole bunch of players that we're familiar with, but kind of forming a new team for this season, mm -hmm. uh, which again, that really truly is kind of every EU team, uh, which is why EU is so exciting to see. Uh, but this is just another example of that. And clearly we've seen that all, a lot of the EU teams that are doing that right now are doing quite well. Oh yeah, yeah, EU having quite a bit of success as you announce esports doing extremely well. I love the call out, by the way, from Asnable saying that that was their yep, preferred yep. opponent in the grand finals. Would love to go up against down so I like a bit of rivalry emerging from NA and EU but in this time around it of course is with Shin and Rude. Shin the Ice Ikura Solo and Z-Ray gonna make up this roster. Yeah this is uh, I'm, I mean I'm really excited to see it as well uh, I got a chance to watch a little bit uh, off the broadcast of course ACL you know having a slightly different format means you don't exactly get to see 100% of what uh, each of these players is most comfortable with playing we do get to see it sometimes but not 100% uh, and so, again, the matching of regions has been really kind of the story of this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already got, I mean, what, in, the, in the, the top bracket that we had eight teams in, there was seven different regions there. Uh -huh. So we are looking to potentially make it to eighth if they can win this match. Uh, but again, it's all just about the different play styles that each region brings. And not only just the play styles, but of course the metas as well, seeing how highly yeah. they value things like Buzzwool or uh, different uh, supports is a really big one. So I'm excited to see kind of what they bring from their own regional style. I am as well. And on our uh, at the top of the show, we all input our top four Pokemon to watch throughout the mm -hmm. tournament, right? We did graphic. I had Blaziken listed as number one uh, yet to see on our broadcast. Yeah, so yeah. a little Good bit call. of an L for me. But we might transition that to a W right now. From what I have heard about Shin and Rune is that Blaziken is the truth on this squad. It is either going to be banned or it is going to be first selected by the squad. That is how strong this Pokemon is when it is played by this team. You know, uh, even though you have taken an L so far on that, I do think that it's been adjacent every single game. I mean, for example, for free, they got a lot of really good opportunities to do things like pick Buzzwool instead, but otherwise, for sure, I feel like Gatlu would have possibly been on that Blaziken. I know he's been playing right. that uh, a good amount. Or uh, other times, we saw the full ban on the Blaziken, you know, yeah. for multiple teams in a row or games in a row for the same team. Uh, so I feel like Blaziken is right there. Also, I was thinking about it. I didn't really talk about it earlier, but I feel like that pick, the center area, Serena from Mame, if that was Blaziken, that would have been really good. Oh. But, uh, of course, that is neither here nor there, uh, nor anywhere. But right now, I could totally see it. I think Blaziken has been really fighting its way into the meta. Uh, I'm excited to see if it would be a center area Blaziken or a top path Blaziken. Yeah. Personally, my, uh, I might get blown for this, but my stocks in top path Blaziken have gone way down, mm -hmm. and my stocks in center area plays again have gone way up. Interesting. Yeah, I actually think you're kind of on trend, though. Uh, I, I do think that has been a little bit common uh, these days. We're seeing more and more central area plays again, at least success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just being able to protect it for, uh, rather than let it get shut down, potentially. Also, just, just such a, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. There's a, a really heavy competition for uh, top path right now. Uh, not just as far as uh, the picks, which is uh, definitely true, but also we see a lot of teams put a lot of focus and pressure on the top path because they know if the top path pops off, they're probably going to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, so sending certain things to the center area, which is also some other things. Uh, we've seen some interesting pick center area in previous games, like yeah. uh, earlier. So I think it's going to change. It's going to change a little bit. And we do see the waving, by the way, on screen. Wrong direction. Please yeah. look at us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they're waving at, yeah. but that LED screen is bright and very cool to look at. Um, we haven't talked about Outer Banks too much. We talked mm. about a couple of their players, but what I'd also want to hone in on is Krinsky on this defender role. Uh, has found a lot of success on a lot of different teams so far this season. Uh, kind of just roaming around wherever they need to be and trying to earn championship points, but it has kind of found a home in this Outer Banks squad as of recently. And I gotta say, they are fitting in extremely well. If I'm Outer Banks as a roster, I'm making sure we find a way to convince Krinsky to stick around because their defender play has been fantastic. 
Yeah, and the defender picks as far as regions go have been pretty interesting as well. Uh, we know for sure that Krustle is pretty much highly valued everywhere, but uh, one of the, I think a few of the big picks have been like whether Snorlax is kind of uh, a go-to, which we've seen a lot more. Uh, Trevenant, of course, which I think is still uh, ridiculous, although we've been seeing that even more in the top pass. So there's just so many different directions you can go there. Uh, some of the regions still kind of like Umbreon. Some of the regions just do not even look at Umbreon. Yeah. Uh, there's just so many different things you could do. Uh, Blastoise. Everybody goes Blastoise. <laughs> Blastoise, Crustle. Like, I mean, there are just options all over the place. It's just what makes it through that banning phase initially. Uh, and how do you want to enable your best attacker players in doing so? It's always the choices that are being made within these draft screens. Most of these players are almost ready. They got the lobby all set up. I can't wait to get into this game number one. And just in case you are tuning in and not sure where we are at in the tournament, this is the Swiss stage of the event still. And we are in the final round of Swiss. Whatever team can take down the other is going to be moving on to the group stage. And did we even mention Wondershap? This is a best of one. We did not mention it. And by the way, look at this. Great player to watch. Thank you, Production, uh, bringing up who may be going for that Blaze again uh, if we are going to see it. Uh, not yet. Yeah, lost the match playing Zorark today. That is uh, pretty impressive. Zorark, another one that we've kind of we've actually seen not pop off as much as it could have, but a lot of good Zorark players and a lot of Zorark bands, surprisingly. You know the wild, one of the wild things about Zorark from some of these APAC teams, uh, SAR included, tend to play the Night Slash Zorark. So the, the less mobility focused, the more combo oriented build. But we have the draft all set up. The teams are ready to go. And we are going to be getting our final round of Swiss. Winner of this moving into our group stage. Oh, this is exciting. I'm glad we get to see one of these. Of course, right before we get the bands, which you are going to see the buzz wall, makes a lot of sense. Shout outs to Unite Battle Hub. They're still running the end of this uh, open bracket as well as us. Uh, so twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub. But the Espeon ban getting pretty early. Not one that we've seen banned a lot, but certainly picked a lot. Yeah, definitely. Espeon taking the credit for the ban, and now we are most likely going to see a very early Inteleon pick from Outer Banks since that Espeon attacker is no longer an option, but we do have more evolution based attacker builds we could go for a bit later. Russell. Oh, another and that double ban focused in on Kid Tans. Espeon and Inteleon could be removed from the game, otherwise very generic but strong bans coming mm -hmm. out of Outer Banks. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, there there are so many good special attackers right now, but uh, when you really kind of go for a double focus, you force them to, oh, well, <laughs> there we go. That is one thing that we have not seen uh, very much at all so far on broadcast and that we haven't seen it, but uh, one of the most banned overall on this particular stream is the Leafeon, who immediately gets first picked uh, from Outer Banks. Uh, that's one that it's very risky to go through, and uh, yeah. even if you're not necessarily playing it as a full assassin, it is a really strong option just for kind of range damage. I mean, Solar Blade has a lot of range. I mean, you can play it also multiple different movesets. Right, yeah, you kind of have the Speedster moveset and that Razor Leaf area lays, and you kind of have the Attacker moveset almost yeah. in that Solar Blade build. But we have SAR's roster filling out with that Mew Attacker pick very, very early. SAR love this Mew. So many of these Eastern teams really value that mythical Pokemon in particular. Um, we're going to have Z-Ray locking it in for the squad, whether that changes later or not. We'll have to see. Kid Chance is going to grab Ooh. the Venusaur uh, for this pick and maybe it's finally going to happen, Wonder Chef. <laughs> I get the Blaziken in-game. But not on the team that we were expecting. Shinro yep. Day not getting a chance to pick it. Now, that's definitely the spot where it could have potentially been there, uh, but they also maybe just wouldn't. It's really hard to say exactly where everybody's going to be sent. Uh, we could just be seeing the top path tree right now. It's looking like with the items that they're having, that might be the case as we mm. use the XP share so far on the Blastoise. But uh, this has got to be a Scyther, I think. What do you think? Yeah, definitely going to be going with Scyther. Full heal, I have to assume that is going to be the choice into a slow bro is an interesting op opposition to have to take down though of course you have a decent matchup into that venusaur leafeon as well you're going to be very comfortable in but not uh having to avoid that unite move at all times is going to be very very challenging however krinsky might elect to try to shut down the blastoise with that unite yeah. move we often see that the amount of value you get from hydro typhoon can all be snuffed out by a great slow beam 
Yeah, I am a gigantic fan of uh, talking about how good of a counter slow beam is on reaction to Hydro Typhoon, and especially when we're here in person and there is no ping, uh, the ability to react to that is so strong for a lot of these top teams. You can see and hear the startup of the Hydro Typhoon, and then you just boom, slow beam, and it stops completely. <laughs> uh, and then the Blastoise is in a position it really doesn't want to be, which is ideally when you're uniting, you want to be in the middle of everybody, but now you're in the middle of everybody and you're not doing anything to them, so uh, you're just not having a good time. Yeah, a bit of a crime in that scenario, but here we go, folks, a best of one. So whoever wins at the end of this 10 minutes will be moving on to your group stage, the other in a very difficult position, having to rely on, I believe, your opponent's win percentage to see who can move on. But either way, all that's important, whoever wins is going to be moving on to group stage. Yeah, this is really, really big. And of course, being able to go into a group stage means that they're going to be able to play more two out of threes. But uh, I mean, this draft is done. It is set. Uh, there's not going to be any more adaptation in this particular set. They're going to be able to adapt in the game. But right now, uh, we're going to see a pretty aggressive start, I would say. Uh, not a lot of uh, super strong, I would say, defense from the side of Shinro Day, just with those two Pokemon up top. Yeah, not having great pushing power to make sure the enemy team can stack. I'm honestly surprised we didn't see an earlier flank from Kalia. I believe they actually tried to go and steal a red buff from the enemy side in case the Scyther was safe clearing, but did not have that option. Instead, just going to rotate up to the top path at nine minutes and just threaten themselves up there for the 850Bs. And uh, right now, Scyther is kind of getting down there a Ooh. little bit slow. It will be there just in time for the spawns, but certainly wasn't able to threaten too much as far as positioning. It's still going to be in a good spot for her, though. Going to be jumping down. A nice check button now, but it's too late. I mean, the damage between the Scyther and the Mew at this particular level for both of them is so incredibly good. Even this Blastoise, relatively tanky. I'm sorry, Blastoise. Uh, Slowbro, different water Pokemon here, uh, is relatively tanky, but it was almost taken down. A great coordination from SAR there. We actually saw a light screen from the Mew cut off the retreat for the Bulbasaur, so Kit Chance had nowhere to go, and Scyther able to earn that KO for basically for free. Now we are gonna have both the Leafeon and the Blaziken getting a ton of scores into that top path and getting free attack weight stacks, but Xingdi ain't done. Xingdi on this side there are gonna be clearing the enemy central area, including Kid Tans. Yeah, and the only defense right now is the Elder Gospel. We're getting a lot of weird chasey 1v1s going on. Uh -huh. uh, Nikoro getting very low, actually. Still continuing the chase despite that, and they are going to be able to get the KO on the Elder Goss, uh, but a weird kind of disjointed brawl here as we're going to have the uh, Venusaur come back in as well, Ivysaur, uh, to try and defend, but honestly, a lot of members of Outer Banks are just falling one by one. SAR full committing to this fight, whereas we have Outer Banks just slow committing and basically drip feeding the enemy squad. Solo's gonna be able to take out that Ivysaur as well as Kid Tans goes down. We just sort of have these half committal pushes by Outer Banks and it's punished by this full commit by SAR into that enemy central area. Yes, there were some big knockouts on either side, but still, you gotta favor SAR there. Kali gonna punish the Mew from not full escaping or, or having their eject button up cool down to get over that wall. Great solo blade cut down. Yeah, that, uh, oh my goodness, the chase, and that's gonna be Leafeon going down. Scyther, uh, so far, doing a great job, and we saw that earlier from Rear Respawns. Scyther might be kind of moving his way back into the meta from certain regions, and I love to see it. Uh, but yeah, that's a nice little uh, second KO in a row. Double from the Scyther, plus they're gonna be able to score up top a good amount. Still, the score score is staying pretty even, uh, but this Regirock could definitely help with the levels, and there's a chance for secure from either team. Yeah, oh, the Elder Goss is able to take it. Great play by Lynx. Honestly, they needed that experience so, so bad. If Mew steals it away, that could be catastrophic for them. And crowded credit to Outer Banks, not only succeeding in the bottom path, they were also able to take Reggie Alecki, and it lands, leaving the goals on that five. Leafeon dunks, that's a 35-point overdunk. Two uh, tier one goal zones down now. That is a huge swing from Outer Banks kind of feeling like they were behind, Ooh. being significantly ahead. And now we're gonna see uh, your pick trying to 1v2 right here. The Blaziken, once it pops off, it is so good. The problem is it can get a little bit shut down and then end up having to fight kind of similar Pokemon of a higher strength. And all oh, the uh, enhanced auto, nice. A little bit manual block right there from Cali, just trying to make sure there was no uh, follow up to get the KO. But a nice little safe push out of 
from Outer Banks, and uh, they're just gonna back up. Listen, we're not gonna overcommit to this. Yeah, Mew Boost is probably not in danger of getting that KO thanks to the Reggie Rock buff that they're still currently holding. I believe the entire squad still has it. No one being knocked out since that team fight on either top or bottom path. So they have it for a few more seconds, or 30 rather to be exact. And nice little KO by Cali. They got those attack weight stacks in early, and they have not been wasted. Those Solar Blades scaling great off of Leaf Beyond's attack stat, a Pokemon that already does amazing in that regard. Those Solar Blades are hitting so hard right now. And we gotta talk about this too. The secure power of Outer Banks is so yeah. good. And I feel like, you know, first to one, you really want to have really strong secure. Uh, but they managed to go for really strong secure without sacrificing too much else. Like, it's not their main goal, but they just happen to have it. Oh, the wood hammer is saying, get back over there. Uh, we're going to get the KO on you. And this is a heavy push Ooh. to try and close out this tier one gold zone. Nice chase down. This Scyther, once again, is Shingi is just doing such a great job running away with so many KOs. Yeah, another situation where SAR full commits and it takes Outer Banks a long time to respond. However, Kid tends to does use that Unite Move Solar Beam combination and earn themselves a KO. And now that fight is at least going to elongate. Pain Split so devastating into that slow bro because of all the HP that Trevor is able to recover and eventually they do take them down. Hydro Typhoon lists three into the air, perfect from Ike Ikura. And then uh, the Egg Bomb gonna make that Blaziken's life even more difficult. And yet again, SAR putting on a showcase in the enemy's central area. Two KOs with one beam right there out of the Mew. Great stuff. Uh, that was a lot of commitment for that fight. I'm not going to lie. Uh, that was a lot to just be like, well, we just want to win the fight in their center area. Right. It did allow them to build some space, and Shinoro Day got to kind of choose which objective they wanted. Interestingly enough, they went for the Regilecki. Registeel going uncontested here to Outer Banks. Regilecki going uncontested here to Shin and Rode. Uh, but with such a close score, maybe they just want to, within the next two minutes, try to find the ability to kind of hold their own defense once we get to Rayquaza. Yeah, these days we're actually seeing almost an even 50-50 split, whether teams want to favor the Reggie Alecki or that basement Reggie, depending uh, what how you're building your composition. But honestly, just a lot of the time it's due to play, uh, team play styles. Reggie Alecki will land and break that tier two, opening up a huge part of the map for SAR. However, uh, it will be very tough to try to get a back cap into that home goal zone. However, if they have the opportunity and you earn yourself a massive score lead via that, it could be so bad for Outer Banks. Yeah, right now, I mean, this is the opposite of a massive score lead, but I think that's really what both these teams have been fighting for so much. This is a high-scoring game. I mean, 212 to 238, that's more than some games end up on, and we are still at the three-minute, I mean, before the three-minute mark, so uh, definitely we are going to go to a pretty scary final two minutes. Uh, nice KO there, Shinti, once again, I mean, that's got to be... We've already seen on broadcast just watching them, like, seven KOs and not yeah. four, eight. Nine. Uh, so the sides are looking like a great pick to me. Yeah, we're looking at record breaking numbers out of this bug Pokemon. Shingy <laughs> looking fantastic so far. However, Cali keeping pace with the levels almost. Scyther at level 14. Cali's Leafeon very, very close at that level 13. And when it comes to secure tools, Leafeon's got a little more firepower, a little more damage in that Solar Blade and Emerald two step combination. But make no mistake, Green Illusion Dive can be just as much as a team fight takeover maneuver. With that Scyther Unite move, it just really sings if you're able to sweep through the enemy, uh, chain KOs together, and that's something that Leaf Beyond maybe not as strong at. It, tra it trades out the combo for the more damage initial. Now, these teams, these comps, are really similar as far as their overall playstyle, right? You've got a, a mid-range kind of assassin, uh, you've got both two Pokemon that can beam, you've got a brawler, uh, you've got, uh, you know, a defender and a support. Uh, normal. Mm -hmm. So nothing super wild. So as we're going into this final stretch, a lot I think is going to be about the positioning. And already we're seeing a potential catch out here on the slow bro. Took a lot of damage, but honestly, not as much as it could have been. Uh, they're going to be able to recover very, very quickly. Managed to get back to safe ground. And we are looking so even going into this ray fight, both in points and positioning and levels, just everything. Yeah, Krinsky takes a lot of damage. You're right. They were caught out, but of course they were able to gain a lot of positioning just because of that. Rayquaza just being tapped by both sides, but we talked about it earlier on in the broadcast. Of course, Outer Banks' composition is fantastic at securing. You got Solar Beam and Blade, your choice. Uh, big Surf in from Ikaro, but no Unite move to capitalize, but it does draw out the Elder God's Unite move. Solo with a big flanker on the other side. The Blissus is going to land on the site there as Shang-T engages, and that's one for one trades on either side. Kid Tens is able to knock out the Trevenant, but they are currently 1v3 and they can't hold up against the rest of them. Shingdi is going to get that second KO, and the Scyther and the Blissey are going to move to the home goal zone to attempt to score. With a minute left in the game, this will give them a gigantic lead. 
And that means that it has to be Outer Banks making the move. They were actually defending on the bottom tier one. They thought that that's where the back door was going to come from, but they just went straight to the home goal zone, which is incredible. So now they're trying to chase the other members. I mean, Shingi just running back with so many people chasing them. We're having Blaziken going to get caught instead, or I should say catching the Blastoise, who's going to Hydro Typhoon to really nobody. Somebody was already getting KO'd, but they still have the numbers advantage. Rayquaza is extremely low. 36 seconds left. The last hit on this team, and it's the beam from the Venusaur. Kid 10. Making it happen. There's a lot of points though from Shin and Rode. They have more members up, or I should say at least even members up, and they're just going to score. This is going to be a score race. We gotta see who, how much each team has in each pocket. Oh man, the Mew is still has 50 points in pocket. That Hundo Burger goes in 640 currently for SAR. There need to be more scores happening immediately from the side of Outer Banks, and they are knocking on the door of the goal zone. 21 points from Levian is going to be thrown in by SAR. It's been counter scoring the entire time. These teams are racing towards the goal zone with the time is up. 42 in from Blaziken, but 38 in from Scyther. We got away for that final score line. Oh, this is so down to the wire. Who's going to win it? And Shin and Rode by 46 points, just barely qualifying for the main bracket. Unbelievable buzzer beater moments. The decision by Scyther and Blissey to abandon the team fight around Rayquaza and score in the home goal goal zone, trusting that their team could hold down the fort for long enough to return to that team fight is unbelievable. Outer Banks may get close with the Rayquaza secure, but Shin and Rude walking away from this one with the match win, and they are going to be four in one in our Swiss round, adding them to our group stage. Unbelievable. The choices made in the clutchest moments there were so good. I mean, eyes in their veins being able to not panic defend, not panic return. They said, no, we're going forward and we are making this happen. And they were so confident in their math. And you know what? They were right. As close as it was, them losing Rayquaza was not the end. That was an amazing match. I cannot believe how close that was. Oh man. I mean, Outer Banks really had some incredible moments, right? But I think in that final team fight, if I'm gonna bring up to anything that felt the most impactful, that Eldegoss Unite move happening really, really early in that team front for kind of a, a fake engage from Ikura, who surfs in on the Blastoise and then immediately retreats, draws out a major defensive Unite move and allows the next dive to be picture perfect. And Ice and Shingdi line that up like dominoes and Scyther and Blissey get to work. Oh, that was, uh, I mean, that was one of my favorite games. I'm so glad we got a chance to see this one. We can take a look at the stats. I mean, you can just see the score. What a high scoring game. I mean, over uh, 1,200 points, over 1,300 points in the game alone. But Shingdi, you know, I was counting the KOs earlier and I was definitely low by the end of it with 10 <laughs> KOs, also 242 points in. So I'm sure they're getting up the MVP later, but wow, <laughs> Scyther really looking good. Yeah, I mean, Z-Ray and Shingdi, both 70,000 plus damage in that matchup really really strong able to take down a few of the squishier targets on the other side and I mean draft was all built around this right it was a double kid tans focus ban to force them all the way onto the Venusaur a Pokemon that is more susceptible to some poke damage or even the Scyther dive so uh, I mean Shinrude came with the game plan executed it perfectly and now they have the result yeah, I mean, it's so, so smart to be able to focus on a team, especially when you're not you're not really in a bracket where you know exactly who you're fighting, but uh, to be in an open bracket and say, oh yeah, this is who we are going to fight next and be able to get that information on the spot is really amazing. Uh, I'm always very impressed by that, but that's exactly what they did. And I mean, again, I really got to shout out Outer Banks. That was an incredible game from them. This was as close of a game as you can get in Pokemon Unite, right? Yeah. Where not only uh, does the race fight not actually matter but the scores are down to literally we have to see who wins at the end we can't keep the count of it ourselves because it's just so back and forth the levels were great the fights were extremely even they ended the ray fight with four up for each it was just a perfectly even match can we just let them both in <laughs> potentially depends yeah. on the swiss standings but I, I do think that this was a few of the moments and this captures on the replay right now what felt like the story of this match shin and rude working like a well machined unit and Outer Banks while having great individual prowess and a couple of good combo plays together as a team most of their objective gameplay it felt like they just fell short in the team fight area whereas Shin and Rude were not missing a beat in that regard 
Yeah, their fights were great. I mean, they were fighting a lot, of course, being very aggressive, pushing to the enemy center area quite a bit. Uh, but just as far as their actual fights, exactly like you're saying, I mean, this was beautiful. You know, they just knew exactly how to collapse on any target that they wanted to. Uh, I mean, especially with uh, Shinji on that Scyther, unbelievable. Uh, which is, by the way, again, now this is our third really dominant Scyther game, I would say, overall. Mm -hmm. uh, so we gotta keep looking at that for the rest of the tournament. But uh, <laughs> this is where most of the fights happen, in the center path. And this is, looks like a two minute fight, but it's not. It just happens to be happening halfway through the game. Exactly. And, and it's SAR again, kind of uh, laying out the uh, terms of engagement yeah. uh, when it comes for these fights. They are choosing where they're gonna take their battles. And of course, they are forcing Outer Banks to play their game. Shout out to Kid Tans, having absolute hero moments throughout the matchup on this Venusaur, whereas it felt they were kind of left alone by some of their teams sometimes, but it was secure the ray, turn some fights, make it a little more interesting on that Venu. They had big mode. This is, of course, where they line up. There's two solar beams and one solar blade all thrown at the Rayquaza in that moment, mm -hmm. so uh, obviously we're Outer Banks very excited for that moment, but in the end, it's Shinnerude able to outpace on the scoring front. Just barely, just barely, just barely. Um, but I mean, again, a great, great choice from them to not decide to try go in any other direction. Also understanding exactly what to do if they did get out secured, which yeah. we kept talking about. The secure was certainly on the side of Outer Banks as far as their power of secure, which did come into play, quite mm -hmm. obviously. Yep. Uh, but understanding that is great. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a winter view on stage. Ice from SAR and Dube Snacks are waiting for us over there. So let's throw it on over. Dube Snacks, take it away. Hello, everyone. I am here with Ice from Shin and Rude. That was, that was a tough match. Let's take a knee and talk about it. Take a knee with me and talk about it. Okay, that went down to the razor's edge, down to the wire. What were the feelings of elation after you guys win? And of course, you find out that you ever qualified for the group stage. I think for all of us, it's a very great feeling because the all took a chance on us. We took a chance on ourselves. We traveled all the way from Hong Kong and Taiwan just to be here. And if we didn't qualify, it would be devastating. But you did. So yeah. it's not as devastating as I guess it could have been. Ice, 4-1. You guys are moving on to the group stage. What is your biggest concern now moving forward? You did the tough part. You got through the open bracket. But, I mean, I guess there's more that's difficult ahead, right? So what are you guys going to do to reset your mental moving forward? I think we're going to go have lunch. Good, good start. And then pray that we don't end up in Kabi Chance and for freeze group. Okay, okay. <laughs> so lunch and prayers. Throw vitamins in there, and I think you got the whole Hulk Hogan slogan. No problems. Ice. If you were to square off against any one of these teams in the grand finals, and you could pick who you beat to qualify for Worlds, which team would you like to see in the grand finals to qualify for Worlds? I think I would like to see Nouns uh, or for free. Really lean into you really just want to make sure that EU knows you showed up to EU to beat EU Something like that something like that. All right. Well, let's uh, let's pack her up pack her in this is ice I'm dupe snacks back to the casters in the booth to press this thing on good job, buddy. Thanks, man. Thank you so much, Dude Snacks, for that wonderful interview. And of course, congratulations to Ice and the squad for confirming their spot in the group stage. Be interesting to see where these teams all end up in terms of their seeds and who their opponents are going to be. Uh, I feel like we probably have Nemesis being guaranteed the first seed, but I shouldn't even say the word guaranteed because it's not technically guaranteed. So we will have to see where these teams actually end up. Yeah, yeah. Of course, each of these uh, open bracket teams is going to go in, and uh, they're going to be pretty quickly. Uh, well, they're going to be up against another open bracket, exactly. Team, right? And yep. then after that, the winners and the losers of those matches are going to go up against the invited team. So, mm -hmm. uh, still plenty of plenty of unite. That's true. We got a lot of competitive Pokemon Unite action for you all day long. And then, of course, tomorrow when we are going to be having the top eight bracket as well. But we have had our group stage already beginning. We have a bit of a segmented broadcast. And, of course, if you have been tuning in since the start of our stream, you have seen the group stage matches of A, B, C, and D from all the invited teams. But now that our Swiss stage has just completed, or at least uh, the one game of that Swiss round, but once this round has totally completed, the top eight teams from that Swiss stage 
will be getting added into that bracket and will be playing against another team from that bracket immediately. And then we'll be moving on to play one of these teams that was invited. It's going to be fantastic, Wonder Show. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, just to, to make sure that it's all tidy there, uh, the winners will go into the winner's side of our top eight for tomorrow. And then the losers, uh, well, they'll lose. But eventually, the winner of the losers bracket will go into the losers side bracket for the top eight tomorrow. Yes. And then we'll decide our winner. Winners. But you really want to make it into that top eight tomorrow because yeah. that's where the money goes. Again, reminder, there's a $100,000 total prize pool for this tournament. So mm -hmm. you really want to make a piece of that, especially if you traveled, you know, all the way as far as Shannon Road Day did. I you know, know. They said the, uh, the work took a chance on them. So uh, I think they would like to definitely make that back. But uh, this is, uh, I mean, it's great to see for me that they were able to do so well. Again, the one singular team from their region uh, the making it here and qualifying is beautiful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Obviously, they've been putting in the work, whether in practice mode or just uh, traveling and working together as a squad. All of that has come together and has been successful thus far. And they actually mentioned it a little bit. That there was a prayer element to their interview, and they were <laughs> discussing that they do not want to be put into that group with Kabi-chans and For Free. Is that fair to call it the scariest group in this tournament? I feel like it is. I actually think it might not be, okay. but uh, I think they're all really scary. I will put that out there, but I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to have more competitive Pokemon Unite at the AOS Cup for you right after this. Let's start the international championships. Here comes the Shadow Ball. We can hear the crowds. It looks like we have another GBL Lindos going to top eight here. Is this enough to KO the Stumpus? And it is. Down what goes a game Hilarion Stumpus. This is huge. I mean, this Latin American community, we're always high. And I feel so happy because it's huge for us as a community, it's huge for the game, and it's huge also to receive many new players. So you're always welcome. Ronaldo trying to become a champion here in Sao Paulo. He's two wing attacks away. He goes up for it, and that is it. JW Ronaldo is your first Latin American international champion here for the Pokemon Go Championship Series. The community is awesome. The card game is awesome. And I think everybody uh, has some fun playing it. This is the perfect time to start playing Pokemon. Uh, oh, oh Serena! Serena. Luigi has the Serena. Let's see if he plays it. Does indeed play it. Brings up That's the it. Mew VMAX, and Luigi will be the Latin America International Champion for the Juniors Division. Yeah, you gotta go for the flip, and is it? It's, double it's heads. a double heads! That means Yuichi wakes up! Snorlax can take out the other Snorlax, and Yuichi will win the Latin America International Championships. We have two incredible players lined up here toward, of course, three-time international champion and trying to accomplish the unthinkable here with the fourth win. I see the quick pull that he also did top deck. Lugia gets this started. Charizard will get fully powered up here, and there's no way this Lugia can survive here. That there's the game. Enough. Toward Reclef, he has finally taken over the globe, and he is the Latin American international champion. It feels absolutely unreal to win LAIC. That was the missing piece. Now I have this champion trophy from each continent that I can bring home and 
feel extremely proud and happy about. I am absolutely speechless. Eu estou ainda ainda estou sentindo a sensação de ter vencido. Então estou muito feliz. Ainda não cabe a ficha. Winning uh, international is feels awesome. Me sinto muito bem, muito realizado. Era o meu sonho ganhar o internacional e agora estou à procura de ganhar o mundial. I've never been to Japan before. I'm really looking forward to Worlds. Winning Worlds would mean the world to me, especially winning it in my home country. E seria seria incrível, né? Você ter ter um reconhecimento mundial, você se provar como jogador, seria ter palavras. I'ma tell you about the come up, how I learned the game. Every challenge that I faced, how I earned the name. Nobody said that it was easy going for the gold. Go. You gotta take risks, Risk. you gotta be bold. But I'm here to run the race, yeah, I'm here to go far. Go. Here to take names, names. here to be a star. star. And when I finally make it, I'll be at the top. Best of the best, yeah, I'll be walking. When legends are alive, I'll be walking. Just a matter of time. You better get yours, cause you ain't getting mine. Learned every lesson in the hardest way. But that's the path that I chose, that's the hero's way. No yeah, they said I couldn't do it, but I proved them wrong. At the top of the mountain, right where I belong. Sure. And now I finally made it, yeah, I'm at the end. Best of the best. Yeah, I'll be walking. Where legends are alive, I'll be walking. We are back. AO's Cup action raging on, and we are still in the final round of the Swiss stage of the tournament as the group stage has begun as well, kind of in tandem. We're going to be finding out these final opponents who are going to be joining the invited teams in the group stage. It's an exciting time, Wondershem. It is, it is. There's still, of course, a bunch of other matches happening currently off broadcast. And just as a reminder, one more time, uh, Unite Battle Hub, twitch.tv slash Unite Battle Hub. They're currently playing Exile versus Brave Birders, which is going to be one of the final matches that's happening. Uh, but I think we actually can take a look at some of our groups because we are mm. starting to form them. And of course, we got to just remember exactly who these teams that are in the open bracket are going to be playing against. Of course, yeah, just a reminder of how the group stage has gone because it's been a little while ago now. We had Alter Ego take down Antic Esports. Alter Ego in great position to make it into the top eight from winner's side. That's right, Alter Ego uh, honestly looking strong, strong, strong. I'm a big fan of them right now. Uh, had a little bit of a hiccup back in the March Cup, but it looks like they are back stronger and better than ever. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Antic Esports can do. Obviously going to have to be playing up against a open bracket team. Whoever gets seated into that group 
Whoever goes into Group A definitely has some challenging opponents to face. You could just say that about everyone. Whoever right. goes into Group B has some challenging opponents to face. I'm just going to say it for every time now. Yeah. Uh, honestly, you can. This one is true. Extremely. I mean, they're all extremely true. I don't know why I keep saying it. A rework respawn up in winners. Uh, they are looking so incredibly solid to me. I feel like they're currently maybe my favorite, but it's so okay. close that it's it's I can't even call it. But I just like walk, watching them. Yeah, they are a fantastic team and able to take down Unite Holic 2-0. And we did talk about it a lot with some strange drafts. But talking about strange drafts. Kami Chons versus Four Free maybe one of the more exciting matches we had earlier on today. A very, very good one. But it's Kami Chons from Japan able to dispatch Four Free from the winner's side of the bracket, uh, setting up Four Free in a win or go home scenario. Right, but still for free, I think he's on a lot of people's list to potentially win the tournament. They could still absolutely do it. They're going to have a tougher time now, but the fact that they did take Kabi Chance to that final game, I think is a statement within itself. Yeah, absolutely. For free, uh, a lot of people's pick to win this entire tournament, by the way. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of expectations riding on that squad. Group D, though, this was such a fun match to start the day. Fusion able to take down Legacy 2-0 after a wild last second finish. Legacy currently residing in losers. Fusion on the win and in to the winner's side of day two. Yeah, now, you know, I know a lot of these teams, I mean, we just heard uh, Shinro Day uh, Ice with that interview saying that really they don't want to play against the Kabachans for free group, but I think that this might secretly be the nightmare group to run into. Uh. Both these teams, extremely strong. We saw how close the matches were, and I said it before, Fusion, the only team that has won both of their uh, monthly cups so far, which is already a pretty strong statement considering yeah. pretty much every other team has only won one and not won the other. A history of success that's a little unprecedented outside of maybe just a handful of teams. I mean, mm -hmm. Luminosity Gaming having two world championships back to back. But at this point in the Swiss stage, it's looking very unlikely that that team will be joining the rest of these squads in the group stage because it is only the top eight. And we have said it so many times. It is one of the most stacked open brackets that we have ever seen. The first of its kind for an in-person Unite event uh, at an official EUIC event. So uh, I'm glad glad that we're starting with the bank. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, really, there is, as far as I know, there is actually no chance that uh, uh, that LG qualifies when they are our current world champions. We saw multiple teams saying, if we get further, the team that we would like to fight in the grand finals is LG, but that's just how difficult this competition is. There's so many teams that have done well. I mean, I believe uh, them, they were went down specifically to, I know at the very minimum, GT and YT, any yeah. two-letter team name that ends in T. Uh, it's just their kryptonite, I guess. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that alone, I mean, just shows that NA is really here to play, and a lot yeah. of those teams are still in contention for qualifying. Yeah, make no mistake, North America sent the best of the best to be yeah. at present at this tournament. Uh, but so did EU, and so did so many of these regions. I mean, SAR coming from APAC, uh, Japan has two teams here, and then, of course, a Latin America North team, E7 Giannis, has been looking fantastic in that open stage, too. A team we haven't talked about too often, but they were able to take down Rework Respawn in the grand finals of March. So having a recent huge credit of success and obviously showcasing their talents in the open bracket has been very exciting to watch for everybody who's been able to tune in on that second stream or be here in person. Y'all, the crowd in the open bracket area is crazy. Wonder yeah. Chef and I were talking about it. It is packed over there. Everyone is so excited to see all of the games that we have playing here at live events. EUIC was legendary last year. I feel like we already found a way to top it, though. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, you know, being our first open bracket in person is yeah. awesome. And, uh, yeah, the entire crowd, I mean, we have technically kind of more space than everybody else because we have both the uh, our stage here that you all have been watching on this broadcast, and we've mm. got the other stage with the open broadcast. There's just a kind of almost an equal amount of seating. Uh, so, and it's just been full the entire time. There yeah. are so many people here that are just so excited to watch Pokemon Unite. There's players from a bunch of different regions that not only here just to play, but to yep. watch. Uh, you know, I saw somebody uh, from uh, Brazil. I, there was somebody, there are multiple people here from Japan mm -hmm. just to cheer on the Japan teams. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of, uh, there's NA players. There's obviously a bunch of EU players. They're cheating. That's not fair. That <laughs> doesn't count. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but you're from everywhere. Just, can, just here to watch and support the team 
teams, which is yeah. great. I feel like this season, it's so cool. I mean, actually, I kind of feel like we start to, I mean, we've seen it, obviously, the entire mm -hmm. run of Pokemon Unite, but uh, starting from Last Worlds, I feel like we really got to see, like, this great clash of all of these uh, these mm -hmm. regions, and we get to see it more throughout the entire season this se this time around. It's, it's great to me. Yeah, one of the biggest things that players have wanted, fans have wanted, and obviously, Zoinks has wanted <laughs> has been more <laughs> international competition on land and in person events and the fact that we have it this year is such a huge plus and it has been awesome to see it happening live and of course be a part of it so I am I am so stoked it was it has been awesome you and I had the pleasure of being in Japan for last year's world championships and this was some of the best games we have ever seen of Pokemon Unite just because of the environment that it creates and well, we're back in it again in London this time at EUIC, and it has been awesome so far. Yeah, and it's wild to think that we're only partway through the season, right? I mean, we are mm -hmm. uh, not there yet. We, this feels like a world. This feels exactly like Worlds felt. Mm -hmm. Obviously, slightly smaller scale. Obviously, Japan Worlds was gigantic. But, uh, you know, the, the amount of people that we have here, the double areas, it feels like we're already getting what we got at the end of last season, at the start yeah. of the season. And it's just going to continue on and on, of course, uh, just throughout the entire season. There's a bunch of different other ways to qualify. We've got uh, NAIC, which is going to be the uh, North American regional qualifiers, plus or regional finals, plus the last chance. There's just so many different ways that we can see more Unite. That's true. All right, we're just getting the teams all set up on stage, so we're not going to uh, talk to you any longer. We're going to jump to a very short break, so don't go anywhere. More AOS Cup right after this.
Hello, everybody. Jake, your resident content cowboy here, live from the B stage, essentially, live from where the Swiss rounds are happening. And they wanted me to come out here because there's still games going on. We need these games to finish so that we can get them up on the main stage. I said, bring me pump. I needed pump right away. Here is the French caster extraordinaire pump. Uh, I want to talk to you first just a little bit about uh, some of the matches you've seen today, maybe some of the teams to look out for. Oh, I mean, there's so much teams to look out for, especially the foreigners, you know. Coming into an event in London when you're a EU team is something, but playing the open brackets as a team from North America, from Latin America, and stuff like that, it's always so nice to see. And I saw teams like Nemesis and uh, E7 pulling out such great plays. And EU teams are still in, so our hopes are still alive. Yeah, you're still happy. We still got some great EU teams. We just had a match finish behind us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and maybe what that means for the bracket? Yes, it was the Plush Keepers Alternative, my team, which I am manager, owner, and also sub for this event. Obviously, I did not play because it would have been terrible. Uh, <laughs> not this time, not this year. You have played, actually, in UCS before. And I have a 0% win rate. So that's uh, that's the thing. Now, to be fair, so do I. I also have not played, but I have a 0% win rate. You could say you have persons. Works. Works both ways. Works both ways. Anyway, we are playing against another French team, which is Des Croissants. And uh, they just won a few minutes ago. That means they have a chance to qualify to the top eight, which means they will be in the group stage later. And for the Plush Keepers alternative, that means we finish our LAN event with uh, one win and four losses. Kind of unfortunate. We had two great games and we. Kinda messed up the Raikwaza, you understand? Not only the flip, because Raikwaza is not only about the flip, it's how you deal with that objective. Do you flip it or not? At which timing? How do you handle the opponents, the ones that can secure the objectives? There are all this stuff, and we kinda messed up that uh, aspect of the play, and in the best of one format. What do you think, from all the teams that you've seen out here, who do you think will head into that group stage and really have a chance to win the whole thing? I'm European, so I want to say Nantes Esports, but uh, to be objective, uh, I don't want to say Nemesis either, because uh, I have my EU pride. <laughs> That's only for about that. He won't say Nemesis, because he has the EU pride, but he's kind of saying Nemesis without saying it. Saying it without saying it. Uh, Nemesis. He got close. He got really close, and then he named another team. So we got right there, right there. Obviously, we still have a few games that need to finish out here, and soon we will have an idea of what this entire group stage is going to look like. A lot of teams in this Swiss round went three and two, so you have to figure out which one of them are actually going to move forward. We know we just saw Shinarude. We just saw Nemesis. A lot of those teams qualified already, so we're going to have to see what the rest of the bracket looks like. Do you know other teams that have qualified? I I could see you're counting furiously. Yes, yes. I, I was counting your team, and I was like, oh, there's this one, this one, this one, and so many teams. Uh, I think GT is in. There were also Outer Banks, which might be in. Uh, Capybabas is in. Nemesis is in. Uh, E7 Janus is in. Uh, and yeah, it's. I, can, I <laughs> can he cheat? Can he cheat? I'm getting word that you cannot. Uh, so let me ask you, I know that you're an EU diehard. You'll never say a, a team other than EU is going to win this thing. If you have to, EU can't win. All of the players are locked in a room somewhere and they just can't get out. There's no way that we can figure out a way to get them to play. Who is going to win this thing? You can't ask me, Spragos. Oh, you got it. Just... The question could be, which is the scariest team for me? Yes. Could be. Honestly, um, I, I'd say Kabichans first, but we played them on stage for three lost. I think next best of three is for us. So I'm um, kind I know United Olic and their weird draft sometimes. They could surprise us. They're a really, really great team. And uh, yeah, I know that the Latin America regions are really, really strong and they scares me a lot too. A lot of amazing teams. Again, we are going to find out very soon what our full group stage looks like. I'm going to send this to break right now. Pump, I want to thank you so much. You're an absolute legend. Thank you for being here. Any last words? Uh, thank you for the dedication to the crew cast, to uh, all the people working for this broadcast, for these events. It's what makes us, you know, 
I'm involved in the community, I organize live events, I do content creation, and it's all because there is official support from the Pokemon company, so thanks for that. Amazing stuff, we will be right back.
Welcome back to the AOS Cup, everybody. Thank you for waiting patiently as we are awaiting our group stage games. And guess what, everybody? We got them. I am Zoinks. This is Wonder Chef joining me, and we have even more tournament action for you. The Swiss bracket was going on earlier today, and it is now concluded. I'm very excited to see the results of that uh, stage of the tournament. Yeah, again, that's the end of our first open bracket officially at an in-person event. Although it's not the end for those teams by any means. It's kind of yeah. just the start for them, which is actually terrifying. But I'm also really excited to see uh, what teams actually qualified. Uh, there are some definitely great names in there, as we expected. I mean, it was pretty much impossible for no great names to qualify because basically the entire bracket was great names. We can see here Nemesis in first seed with 5-0 making a giant gigantic statement. Yeah, very interesting. I think this Swiss ranking stuff might need to be slightly adjusted. Some of our three twos I know are a little different on win percentage rate. So please ignore that top eight icon on the left hand side of your screen for now. But uh, Nemesis, the only team to go 5-0 and it's going to be the number one seed making it in. Yeah, and uh, uh, we've got the new Elite Seven uh, qualifying from Latin America North. We've been very excited for them. Uh, just, of course, they did manage to uh, defeat a uh, one of our teams that is invited here. And here we go. We can see which teams have qualified out of those brackets with the three twos. Exactly. So on the right-hand side of your screen, these are the eight teams that have made it there. Nemesis, Kapibaba, Shin and Rude, E7 Jonas, Nouns Esports, Outer Banks, GT, and Team YouTube. All right, and of course, they are essentially seated. You can see here uh, kind of the top and bottom, then the second, and then the second from the bottom, and then it kind of goes down. So <laughs> kind of like a sandwich, which does leave uh, some of the funniest situations. Actually, maybe it's not exactly, or no, it is exactly like this, which leaves one of the funniest situations, Outer Banks and Shin and Rode. We just saw them on broadcast. Yeah. They're playing against each other in their group, which is so funny, but that's just how it goes. They weren't right. even right next to each other. Yeah, exactly. That was the closest seeded in terms of groups when it comes for the two seeds coming from the open bracket. And since they were so extremely close in tournament results in Swiss round, obviously one slight differential with that game win, it will be a rematch. This time in a best of three environment though, right. which I think Outer Banks is gonna be very excited about. In other news, we have Nemesis versus Team YouTube in a first round matchup. It's gonna be very interesting. Uh, GT versus Kabi Babas, uh, which is also gonna be great. And I believe in our broadcast, we're gonna be watching Nouns versus E7 John. Well, we can take that a look at that match right here. Of course, that is still up on the winner's side. So the winner of this match is going to be fighting against Alter Ego and the loser going down to fight against Antic Esports uh, kind of for their tournament lives. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going to be a very exciting match. I'm really excited for it. Nouns, of course, having, I want to say, a little bit of a disappointing uh, yeah. record over the course of the season. But everybody knows it's an incredible, powerful team with great players. It's just something happens hasn't clicked quite yet, but qualifying here in a, with a strong record, I think is a great start for them. They have a fierce opponent though in E7 Jonas, but that doesn't stop us. Move on to Group B. It'll be Copy Babas and GT from the open bracket who will be getting added to this group. So of course, Unite Holic and Rework Respawn's group. The winner will move on to play against Rework Respawn. The loser will go on to play against Unite Holic in that elimination match. Another set of two cool teams. GT actually lost their first match of the day, but then got ended up getting paired up in the final match of the day. Uh, so they did manage to lose their first match, make it all the way through and qualify GT, of course, a very popular team from North America. And then Cappy Babas may have been, I, I don't think this is a hot take, that they're the most unexpected team to have made it this far with such a strong record. Yeah, absolutely. An EU team that has been looking extremely good. I believe in their first round, they were able to dispatch Team YouTube, another top 16 team. Uh, so they are feeling great about their run so far. Very, very confident. And here's Group C, Shin and Rude versus Outer Banks. A few wild things. You already talked about the rematch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, we also heard from Ice on the interview <laughs> that they would specifically not like to have to play either of these two teams that are in the invited slots. Yeah, um, you know, we heard uh, Doob Snack say, "All right, a little bit, a little bit of praying is involved in your, uh, you know, your your break right here." And uh, unfortunately, they did not pray hard enough. They got <laughs> the exact group that they didn't want to. But I mentioned it earlier, Shin and Rode actually defeated Kabichan's 2-0 in the ACL group stage. So uh, if uh, there's any team here who has a, a positive record against Kabichan's, they're 
got to be the only one. So if they can make it up there uh, through the winner's bracket, that'll be huge. Yeah, what a gauntlet that group's going to be. Group D, though, no slouch either. Nemesis and Team YouTube. So the North America rivalry happening in Group D. The winner will go on to play Fusion. The loser will go on to play Legacy. Now, we had a chance to talk to Rex from Nemesis a little bit uh, during while we were on break. And Rex talking about how this is going to be a very tough group. Honestly, was not pumped about being first seed yeah. in the open bracket. Obviously, that comes with its own benefits of being able to relax and know you are making it in a group stage. But this is a fierce group. You called it maybe the sleeper top group. Yeah, especially with this. I mean, Nemesis obviously being seed one now adds to that. And then Team YouTube uh, being the final seed kind of feels like an unfair final, you know, eighth seed to <laughs> make it in because they are, again, a legendary team that's been doing extremely well. Uh, they brought in Pika Diff for this time around, which yes. I think is such a great addition. Uh, also a player that just really, truly, in my opinion, thrives in like the live environment because he has so much freaking experience in it. Yeah. Uh, so they've obviously done quite well. So I do feel like that to me is still kind of the Tim was there group in its own way. Yeah, Team YouTube is a fantastic team, one I'm really excited to see. They are going up against Nemesis, who look untouchable yeah. right now, but I do think uh, they still have a chance, even if you do lose to Nemesis, you move into that loser's bracket, and you play up against Legacy. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice reward. To even have a chance to keep moving on, then, of course, you move on to the elimination match after that. So, folks, we have been having an epic broadcast going through uh, open bracket, through group stage, but we're still in the midst of group stage. And we have a lot of incredible games coming up for you. And like we said, our first one that we are going to see on our broadcast will be Shin. Uh, sorry, not Shin and Rude. <laughs> we It'll want be, to. We but... did. We already saw that one. <laughs> It'll be Nouns Esports versus E7 Jonas. Right. This is really exciting for me. This is two teams that uh, I didn't really get a chance to see as much off broadcast. But mm -hmm. uh, I just really wanted to see how they were going to do during the day. I talked about it a little bit earlier. E7 Jonas uh, are doing amazingly in their own uh, region. And then Nouns kind of the, uh, I want to say like the super team that was never looked like a super team in this current season. Of course, previous seasons Noun, one of the, if not maybe the most well-known EU yeah. name uh, currently still around, right? Which is not a, uh, I mean, there's a lot of teams that have changed, but uh, with of course quite different players, but I mean, hey, they've, they've been to Worlds under that title. Right. And, and trust me, and here in the XL Event Center, Nouns Esports playing on stage is kind of a thing of legend. And I guarantee we are going to see a bunch of Nouns supporters in that crowd cheering on this team for this matchup. We talked about before how we have, of course, that secondary stage. Fraggles called it the B stage, where there's a lot of people and teams watching the event. But now we're going to have the main stage be Nouns Esports focused, and they always come with the big group. They do. I mean, I do know uh, as well a lot of the players, you know, we got to hear it in the interview earlier. Uh, was it was it Asnable? I actually don't remember. It was one of the two that said Asnable, that they would yeah. like to beat Nouns mm -hmm. uh, a little bit later on. Uh, we also heard, uh, I mean, we heard a few different teams uh, talking that they would like to beat Nouns. And uh, there is, again, there's a lot to be said about the experience that a lot of these players have. I mean, whether it's on Nouns or on different teams, uh, offline, in this environment, uh, this is, uh, there's a reason why people were calling this kind of like a, like a star team. Right? Mm-hmm. And you gotta know, these teams who have been playing Swiss all day are so excited to be entering into best of three games. Yes. <laughs> like, they are so happy that they get to have a full on a series against whatever team is on the opposing side. Entity 7, Jonas, has such an exciting team. They've played against, uh, they've played under a few names so far this season, most recently Hoenn, uh, but they're also the reigning champs of Latin America North. Uh, they were able to take down Rework Respawn just a little bit ago. So not to confuse everybody, but I really want to confuse everybody really quickly. Rework Respawn was Entity 7 before, and oh, then yeah. uh, now they're not Entity 7, and then Hoenn was the other team, and then now they're Entity 7, kind of, uh, but they're Entity 7, Jonas, so it's just a whole lot of confusing name changes, but the point is that a lot of these teams are just really good in that region, yeah. and uh, we're going to see a whole lot of them. Yeah, they're lights out. And there we can see the Nouns crew getting all excited for this matchup. And of course on screen, you can see this team getting locked in. We got Utah and Megu stand, uh, sitting there right beside each other. The classic duo um, getting locked in and ready for tournament play, but of course, it's a Desu right there by the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a lot of great Desu on camera moments. We told them to get a Pokemon card ready to showcase. I don't know if they have it this time. <laughs> it's tough. Last time they knew they were going to be on permanent Dragonite duty. This time, Draft might 
make them go a few new directions. Yeah, Dragonite as well, only showing up in a few games today. Yeah. Uh, we could see it technically. Uh, by the way, great glasses. Love that for them. Uh, look at that. It matches the noggles. The, uh, it matches the, the logo on the shirt, right? <laughs> and thing. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, Looking at us. There you go. Yeah, I guess you wanted to showcase it. And we do have um, this squad who, like you mentioned, uh, has had a tough start to the season. Nouns Esports, but it, you know, the tough part to the season is so on the back of a expectation surrounding this team. We definitely all thought this team was gonna come in and start stomping EU. No one was gonna come close. And now we've had two tournaments, both with grand finals that they have not appeared in, in either moment. Nouns Esports falling short in both February and in March. Yeah, just a, a surprise to everybody, but I think it's a really uh, big, I mean, thing for them. That we're still thinking that they're going to be good, but of course we can talk about uh, E7, Jonas here, uh, Texas Troy, Frank, Donlux, and Servant. Again, players, a lot of players that should be very familiar to people who followed uh, the previous season of UCS. Assuming you're following the other regions, which you clearly should have been, because <laughs> there are a lot of really strong regions, especially now. And uh, if you got that background information, then you are far ahead for the UCS 2024 season. <laughs> This is going to be a really fun matchup. My eyes are glued on Don Lux, their incredible attacker. I call him the Don sometimes, and I feel <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. like they've earned that reputation. Uh, and they have so many Pokemon they like to play in that pool. I feel like they're one of the few Mew players in Latin America North, though, that really have rose to the occasion in tournaments past. And I am pumped to see them play that Pokemon again. We've actually seen Mew as a Pokemon that's been really impactful today. Uh, but again, I say this every single broadcast, but the thing about Mew is that every, I think a lot of people know that it's really good, but you have to be really good with that Pokemon to make it effective. You can't just be like, well, I just play attackers. I don't know, let's try it out. You're just gonna be mm. terrible like I do when I choose Mew. Uh, so yeah, having that key is going, or that key player is going to be very important. <laughs> Interesting. We actually have the captain of E7 Genus, Frank, having the role listed as all. Mm. So very confident player whatever role they need to. Uh, Adesu, of course, captain of Nouns Esports, will be playing that support. It is a role swap for them this year, but we've talked about that a lot so far this season. I feel like Adesu is slotted in a great uh, to this team in the support role, but really when they're playing specific picks, whether it's the Hoopa or the Blissey, I feel like that's where Adesu truly shines. Yeah, that's the thing about a lot of support players right now, too, is I feel like uh, there are really specialties. And uh, having only at one or two can mean that you can get kind of like picked away and banned away as far as your biggest specialties. And we've seen when teams lose their key supports, they can very easily crumble. <laughs> Not yep. saying it's going to happen right here. Again, seeing these two teams that are from completely different regions, uh, both, you know, very strong teams, but they might not know exactly what to do, at least at the start of this set against each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is going to be very interesting to see these two go up against each other. Uh, Frank, though, of course, a player that has had so much success in Latin America North, mm -hmm. whether it's under this roster or another banner, uh, this team has come to play. And honestly, I got to say, I'm just so excited they were able to make the trip out, play in an open bracket obviously that is a terrifying concept only eight teams were able to emerge from that uh so it is a big risk to come for an event like this but now you've made it to the group stage you're one step closer to that prize money and of course that potential spot at worlds this year yeah you know i as far as i can think of tell me if i'm wrong on this uh zoinks but all right i think that Basically, the uh, group stage or the, the open bracket was made up of pretty much entirely EU and NA, but there were two solo regions, right? Which was this team and then uh, Shin and Rode. Uh, mm -hmm. Are were they the only teams outside of those two regions and they both qualified? Yeah. That's awesome. That is great to see. When you've got the, just one team, I mean, obviously, there's another team invited from this region in particular. Right. Shinin Rode is the only one that gets to be like, well, we don't even have an invited player and we qualified our invited team. But still, the fact that they took a chance to go come all the way out here, huge, gigantic trip, and uh, it's paid off for them, I think mm -hmm. is just a great thing to see. Yeah, it's an interesting element in Pokemon Unite, right? We're here at UIC, and there's every other title competing as well. Uh, but we're one of the only games that has this really a uh, forward focus on regional pride. I mean, these mm -hmm. teams, uh, we have invited teams, one from each specific region, and then of course Japan as well. And now we get to see this clash between EU and Latin America North. And gosh, it is so hard not to be infected by Adesu's <laughs> charm and personality. <laughs> the guy is just great. How do you not like Adesu? 
I know. It's uh, it's pretty much impossible. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I can tell you how you don't like a Desu is when you're uh, playing against a Desu. Oh, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Oof, I've been hit by a couple of Desu spirit shackles on Decidueye, and let me tell you, I would love to be not on the business end of those ones. That would be fantastic. Ooh, I don't know if we're going to see some Decidueye today, No, we though. probably... Yeah. If we do... <laughs> I would love to. If we do, things have gotten wild in the Nouns Esports camp because, of course, they have one of the best attacker players in the entire globe in Toon Slim, right? They have oh, yeah. Toon uh, currently holding out for this squad. And, I mean, we could go over every single player on the Nouns team and just talk about the star power, right? We have Toon Slim, considered to be one of the best players in the world, not just mechanically, but macro-wise as well. Has done a lot of coaching for a lot of very successful teams. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you, Nemesis. <laughs> um, but we also have the duo of Megu and Yutao, a Desu, just this rock-solid support. And then Brub, who is a lot of people's choice for one of the best defenders yep. global. Uh, oh, yeah. Defender Supreme. Uh, EU, I feel like, has always had such a strong defender lineup in general, just from a yep. lot of their players. And uh, uh, Brub, um, obviously, one of, the, uh, one of the leads there. Oh, look at that. Oh, they all have the square glasses. Look at those ones are, are black. The other ones were red. That's pretty sick. I'm glad uh, I, they've got the, the theming, which you can see on their, on their shirt as well. That's pretty tight. They got the nouns noggles, I believe, <laughs> um, are what they are called. I'm but, yeah. not calling them that. Can I, can I just choose not to? Okay, fair enough. You can call them glasses. Uh, that's not fun anymore. I'll, they have I'll glasses now. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, well, folks, we have the teams filling into the lobby right now for what I'm sure is going to be an incredible entrance to the group stage for either of these teams. Nouns Esports and City 7, these two teams have been preparing for so long for this yes. event. Nouns Esports is desperately looking for a tournament to prove that they are not washed, that they can really rise to the occasion and really show why EU should be respected and why Nouns Esports is the top team. On the other hand, we have recent champions entity seven they're playing with house money they know how good they are and they know that they are worthy of taking down a team you know as prestigious as now esports yeah this is a, this is a great uh, like kind of regional match of uh, again uh, the results certainly uh, lie on the side of uh, you know uh, e7 Jonas but like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say that they're like in even spots just because of the results, but as far as the history of all the players, here we go, that's the way I'll put mm -hmm. it, okay? The history of all the players, this is a very even matchup, right? right. We have a lot of uh, like regional champions on both sides, like really experienced regional champions on both sides, mm -hmm. or at very minimum second places, which actually both these teams have a lot of second places, so I'm really excited to see this from regions that would can normally just never compete. The stage is set, the players are locked in, and we are headed into draft of game number one between Nouns Esports and Entity 7, and we're kicking it off with the two of three bug Pokemon in the game, BAM! That is the most interesting thing I have seen, but understandably, I mean, we did see uh, another team, of course, from this region, Rework Respawn, uh, doing amazingly with Scyther in particular. Of course, for anybody mm -hmm. not familiar, Scizor and Scyther, they are the same Pokemon. It's just how you choose to evolve them uh, in Pokemon Unite. So that is a very targeted ban and I love to see it. I mean, I would say Trevin is probably a targeted ban as well. It, it is. And that's the benefit you have of first pick in Pokemon Unite. It allows you to be a lot more creative with your bans. You're not locked into some. And Entity 7 definitely going with the two most popular bans we have seen in the Unite Championship Series so far, Buzzwool and Leafeon. They're going to take that Umbreon and Hoopa, though, in their first couple of picks. Two Pokemon that we actually don't see that commonly anymore have kind of fallen off the popularity list. And no wow. way! Yeah. Welcome back! <laughs> Back to the XL Center Bruv, and he locks in Mr. Mime. Oh, I'm so excited for the Bruv, Mr. Mime. I mean, that is a legendary pick. A uh, little bit early, I would say, to kind of throw that out there, but regardless, doesn't matter to me. I'm excited that we get to see it. Uh, the, uh, like you said, though, getting that real first pick, a lot of teams don't really care about getting it quite that early anymore. We are going to get, though, the Blaziken. That has uh, been kind of a real back and forth uh, decision mm -hmm. as far as today goes, but uh, I do really like it a lot. Yeah, the nicest thing about this Blaziken pick is that it's going into Blastoise top early, so it definitely has a lot of room to breathe. Mm -hmm. Squirtle versus Torchic, as much as I'd love to break down that matchup, huh? uh, definitely can see some spacing, but all right, Entity 7 going to lock in that iconic Mew. It might not even be Donlux picking it up. They might stick with the Sylveon. Yeah, this is interesting. There's actually, I'm not saying that they will, but uh, there's a good amount of directions they could go with how they're going to split up the paths on the side 
of E7 Jonas. Uh, again, not that they're going to, but you could theoretically kind of get like a, a quick switch going into the center area more with that Blaziken. Uh, just the fact that it's the Mew it adds a lot of flexibility, and then a Sylveon's always going to be super flexible. Uh, one thing that we didn't really talk about, a Pokemon that kind of has been like really disappearing in EU and NA, Chandelure. Yeah, we see it actually way more in Latin America yeah, <laughs> and yeah, Brazil. I, I would have thought it was the other way around. Where it's going to be chosen, but Utah's going to rock that Pokemon. Not really a danger of being invaded. Hoopa could be a bit of a nightmare, but it might be needed in that top hat to enable the Blaziken early on. So we might have a clear area. On the other hand, I think the best benefit for Nouns Esports is their early game in the bottom path. That Mr. Mm -hmm. Mime Defender is one of the, or Mr. Mime Tank, I should say, is the supporter class in game. It's one of the best last hit secure options you have in the entire roster. Uh, one of the worst options for that in the defender role is Umbreon. A Pokemon that actually really struggles until level six or so, until mm -hmm. you find its impact. Mr. Mime is gonna have a runway at the start of this match. All right, well, both of these teams have finally earned their two out of three set, battling it through the most ridiculous open in-person bracket we've ever had, because it's the only one. But here we go, the start of their games. We're gonna have Nouns on the left in the purple, and E7 Jonas on the right in the orange. All right, we're gonna have one EV Ooh. moving up towards the red buff to be able to take that, earn their evolution, and then immediately retreat. And in doing so, they allow Yu Tao on the Chandelure to get the blue buff on the Litwick, which is a fantastic trade. Yeah, this is really interesting. We have two evolutions bottom and Muse the one taking the center path. See, that wasn't even the direction that I thought that they could go weird. Uh, they could have gone a lot of different options for the center path, but Mew in center has proven to work out pretty well, but you have to put a lot of aggression early to make it worth it. Yeah, it's a, a Pokemon that at that first round of Swablu Altaria doesn't have any moves that are kind of just immediate team fight win buttons. Mm -hmm. But if you can pull off that, you know, a big surf to change away that, or if you have a perfect timing on an Electro Ball, you can steal a lot of that experience. But uh, we well, oftentimes you see a lot of priority put on a Pokemon like Combuskin's Blaze Kick at level five. Yeah, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, so far, there's not a lot of challenge up top for the last hits anyway uh, on these Altaria, and we're already going to see the evolution, uh, at least one evolution up top, while pretty much everybody on Nouns up top, they're sitting like a little, you know, first first stages. They're just, just chilling, happy, trying to find anything they can. Yeah, Nouns Esports definitely playing the top side a little slow, allowing Entity 7 to get some room there, but pressuring the bot side in, in the major way. However, with Hoopa portaling down the Mew, they were actually able to trade out that knockout. So, uh, Yutao is going to go down on that left hand at a critical time. They had already hit level 6 because of some early pressure, but now at this 8 minute fight, they, not, they might not have access to both of their moves. Yeah, that is uh, that is actually kind of a fear. But honestly, I feel like uh, you know, E7 Jonas, they've got they've got a lot of uh, their power spikes that they really wanted to uh, avoid being gate kept from earlier. Again, mm -hmm. double negative, I know, but uh, they managed to not get shut down in any particular way. Uh, they're not necessarily winning in levels. The Mew is uh, did hit seven just slightly before the Chandelure, but uh, they're past their scariest point. While we still, I mean, I guess we did get the War Turtle, but it's still kind of got to go a little bit further. Nice in prison catch from Utah. This central area passing. Of of experience has kept up for Nouns Esports and it's been great for this Chandelure who is at level 7 and of course right there with them, Toon Slim hand in hand is at level 7 on the Espeon they find the Combuskin, Serving gonna have to escape from Toon Slim, not an easy option I might I add but at least Don Lux has got the cover with that Hyper Voice. Yeah, just barely getting out of there and uh, we're now about to hit the first objectives currently Nouns is split 3 top 2 bottom now well, with the Hoopa of course you're you're never really committing to where you're split up to uh, for the side of E7 Jonas. And it does look like a, quite a few of them are going to portal down to the bottom. They're not going to leave top totally uncontested, though. And it doesn't look like Nouns is actually going to go for that either. A few of them did rotate down bottom, only leaving their top path Blastoise. And this Regi Ice is getting uh, burned down a little bit quickly, but they've got to be careful of the steal. Yeah, E7 have to play with this so safe. They have not had Blaziken until just a moment ago. So there was no access to overheat. That huge fire kick move that has a Great secure, and it will be Espeon securing that. Nouns Esports definitely favored in that way, and they're able to capitalize, and down goes Umbreon as well. Oh, great call out on the Blaziken and the Tallgrass. 
Ooh, and the Psychic Solaire coming out, but not really hitting all that many targets. Uh, there was an attempt to push forward, and everybody's so low on him. John is actually overcommitting just a little bit. They've got a lot of range, but they still have to be very, very careful. I mean, the Mew range is so good at defending these Tier 1 goal zones, specifically early in the game. So that is what they're going to do. They did manage to prevent a lot of the scoring. They took quite a few KOs, though. Now you can see the level lead is starting to grow gigantic for now. Yeah, now it's Esports' early level lead because of that split experience, and then, honestly, that big push initially on topside has been, gave them benefits across the board. We have a level 9 Espeon, of course, Utah hit that level 10, but we also had Megu able to play on that topside and not even needed in that first fight around the Regis because of how much they were outpacing the Blaziken level earlier. Ooh, this Regilecki is, could be potentially important just because we're at 0-0 zero, zero in score. That's so uh -huh. wild that we're five minutes into the game and nobody has scored. Oh, a nice little steal right there. Double secure so far from that Espeon. Uh, really, I mean, been proven to be a pretty good secure in its own way. It's actually to push everybody back and potentially try to push in that Regilecki. Yeah, it was a little bit of an attempt to stop it there from Hoopa, but uh, we are going to see actually the Tier 1 goal zone on Noun's side on the bottom get burned down as we're seeing the opposite from Noun's on the top. So uh, they are going to be ahead because that was a beautiful over dunk, 111 to 79. But uh, E7 John is not out of this score lead at all. I mean, look at that. They're only down by like 25 points. Yeah, definitely not. That push onto the bot side was really, really good. And with 20 seconds until this basement Reggie spawns in, that's going to give them a lot of room to move. However, Bruv going to shut that down by building a wall real quick. And they send the Blaziken back to base. What a big catch by Bruv. Able to shut them down and Toon Slim there for the backup as well as Adesu. Now all of a sudden, now Esports has a real chance at taking this bot side objective without having that goal zone to retreat to for healing or having that speed to chase down to the objective. As expected, Bruv has found so many good picks. Right now, though, Bruv may be the pick as everybody is going to collapse some of them, and that is exactly what's going to happen. So uh, we are not going to be able to wall anybody out this time. <laughs> Normally, you want to wall them in, but uh, you're like, wait a minute, that was too many people in this time. The Hoopa Unbound is going to be pulled out and attempt to not let them get this for free, but the Blaziken is going to take it. I don't even know if that was with an overheat. I think that might have been with something smaller, uh, but that's going to give an opportunity for E7 Jonas to push all the way through. Bruv coming back with the Unite to try Try and dive the back line, stop them from getting any more of those super high impact Hoopa Unbound moves. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna see the dive in return from the Mew, and everybody's chasing everybody here. They, they've kind of just got members of each other's side on their own side, and uh, looks like we may not get out with Tomb Slim uh, being uh, trapped in there. Finally, Hyper Voiced down. And now there's still a fight going on, honestly. They just ran all the way from their side, all the way back. Bruv was going to go down right here. The Hydra Typhoon to try and stop it. Both Evolutions might go down right here. Nice eject button over the wall with that serve. Megu's going to get a KO streak of two. Solar Beam is actually going to target the Eldegoss and not the Blastoise, which is going to allow Adesu and Megu to make it out of that team fight. A very aggressive, honestly, they now probably could have broken that goal zone on the bottom side, if not for the Mew from Frank. It was so, so good. Get in the back line is able to take out Utah and just cause constant problems despite Toon Slim kind of running rampant in the enemy back line. It was just it kind of fell a little flat because of Frank's epic presence. Yeah, just the space control from Mew is such a gigantic deal. Uh, and like you mentioned, it's been, uh, you know, when the, the good players are playing it, it is doing well. Uh, free a little bit of EXP for E7 Jonas there. They're still behind slightly in level, not really enough to matter. And actually, they're ahead now, just after that. Uh, so this has been a real back and forth. I mean, yeah. score is still really close. We're only 40 seconds away from Rayquaza. It feels like we're way earlier in this game with the way that these teams have been fighting over the objectives. We will get one more basement Reggie spawning. It would have to be burned down very quickly if they wanted to and we do have eyes on it from both teams going for a pick right there just barely getting out uh well i wouldn't say unscathed but getting out in general yeah that is so much damage chandelure's passive that infiltrator is able to ignore special defense up to a stack of eight so uh whenever they are getting those constant hits and keeping that damage firepower up they're able to ignore a defender's defense which umbreon is a lot to boast so able to ignore all of that you see why chandelure is hitting so hard in these fights Really cool little strategy there from Nouns. They decided to kind of go in. They collapsed on top of the basement, Reggie, and then retreated. So it was entirely just a bait. They weren't really feeling good about trying to just, like, fight there or flip the uh, the Reggie or anything like that. They were like, okay, we'll just see if anybody overcommits. They didn't find the overcommit, but that also means that they were the first to get back up to this center area for Rayquaza. They have a slight lead, and I think they know that they might have a slight lead just based on how good their overdunk was on that top tier one. Uh, but 
we'll actually see who the first to make a move is. We've got uh, Blaziken defending up in the top path. We've got some pretty good vision, though. So if they do rotate back down through that top kind of center area, they could be in trouble. Yeah, trying to get the level 14, I'm sure if they can. Rub is completely deleted. A mean little combination with the Hyper Voice. Re uh, reducing that special defense is a perfect timing for that Solar Beam to capitalize. And Entity 7, Jonas, have hit that go button in a major way. Yuta was able to turn around and take one. Make that two as the Chandelure strikes back. Now, D-Sports not out of this team fight yet, but all of the positioning has been given over to Entity 7, Jonas. The scary thing is the Espeon is still up, and we've seen how many times it can steal, but it's so low and has such a good high chance of getting hit, and it does by the Electro Ball. The steal has to come from the Chandelure. Can it happen? Yes. And it looks like it will from the Mime, from Brov on the Mime. Oh, hard to call that a steal when Brov and Megu are positioned so perfectly. I want to put it on a cake. Oh, my word. Well done from now. Esports, Hundo Burgers reigning in for them now. The defender positioning is so fantastic there. Hydro Typhoons to ignore any other secure target, setting them sky high, and Mr. Mime putting up walls to prevent anyone from heading into that Rayquaza pit. Now it's Esports are going to start this series 1-0. 1-0, but boy, that was a nail biter. Yeah, steal was not the word right there. Secure was the word I was looking for. Sometimes it feels like a steal even from your own teammates, but boy, that was really cool close they just everybody knew they had to make a move and it came down to a great last hit from bruv on that mr mime if you wondered why we were so excited about seeing that bruv mr mime uh, you can literally look from the start of this match until the end of the match and every single thing that bruv did was great yeah you want to win early in path bruv mime's gonna yeah. be your answer you want to have an epic hero moment in the rayquaza fight bruv mime is in <laughs> fact also your answer and i am so excited we we're seeing that we're even here in the crowd back here pop off for nouns esports as well oh my word what a showing from them so good to start this series against a team as strong as entity seven Yes, I mean, this is a really big statement for them again as well. They're, they're really fighting back again for their position. Again, legendary players, absolutely across the board legendary players, not a single one lacking or even close to not being an amazing legendary player. I know I keep saying legendary player, but there's no other way to describe it. Uh, but Okay, not doing well this season. This looks like how we expected to see them play. This was their game. And really, I got to talk about it personally because this was maybe the most surprise pick to me. You know, Broke Mime, it's really cool to see. It's out of meta-ish, but I got to talk about the Chandelure. That was such a good Chandelure play from Utah. It was so good. I know we're going to be looking at stats just in a little bit after these replays, but luckily I can take a look at them right now. <laughs> and I'm looking at Utah putting up 81,000 damage on this Chandelure. There were a moment in that final fight mm -hmm. when that overheat did not get that final KO that I thought it was over, when that Mew was able to rotate out, but things got, really got scary. But the impact, you can just see it in these replays, was felt so much. Imprison, a really, really good tool to shut down the Umbreon when they're trying to get into that back line. Can't foul play when you're there, and great play there. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, the Chandler's a Pokemon that's kind of rotated out of the meta in EU and NA quite mm -hmm. a bit, but um, honestly, I mean, I get that it does not have great escape, but it's still such a powerhouse. And if your positioning and your support from your team is strong enough, it can put in so much damage. I mean, uh, the joke's there that it is truly a glass cannon, right? Quite literally, uh, not a lot of defensive options, but if you can get its damage going, it will melt people. Again, quite literally. That is true. And oh, this is that final fight, which got so scary, where Mr. Mime was able to get KO'd there before I was talking about it. I, I, I was going quick. I'm sorry. Everybody, but hyper voice from Sylvia on reducing the special defense of whatever target is getting hit by that scream made that solar beam from Mew just delete an entire support Pokemon. And yes, it got so extremely close. You can see here on the bottom right hand side of your screen, Mew has next to no HP, and Hoopa the only other Pokemon even remotely close to the Ray Pit. Oh, what a great first game. And again, oh, look at that. That's some charisma. Water, stay hydrated. Hey, shout out water, all right? Thank you, bro, for shouting out water, and I hope you all get some. Is that the secret to playing Mr. Mime well? Uh, but no, th this was, um, again, th they've earned their two out of three for sure. Uh, they've been playing all day first to ones in the open brackets. They're probably like, oh, we won. And like, wait a minute, we got to keep going. Oh, uh, yeah, Bruv HD is an absolute legend. I love watching them uh, play any defender, really. But when it's on Mr. Mime, that is where it is a great showcase. 
Also, Mr. Mime it has been a pick from them all the way in the past, but some new techs these days. They got some new toys to play with, yeah. like that Resonant Guard, which I feel like pairs so well with a Pokemon like Mr. Mime. Resident Guard, one of the most powerful items in the game, quite honestly, yep. and it's the one, I feel like it's the one we, not only us, but almost everybody just doesn't talk about very much because it's such a, it's such like a passive thing in its own way, well, right? It's because it's right next to the most powerful oh, yeah, item yeah, in yeah, the game, yeah. right? So the experience there is what we are always discussing, more of a mandatory option. <laughs> I know Grub would love to not have to have the light bulb above their head at all times, but well, you got to admit, it looks pretty good when they do. But all right, folks, we have the draft for game two all set to go. So we are going to be jumping into it. 1-0 currently for Nouns Esports against E7 Jonas. Well, you know, I personally would not mind seeing the carry mime come out from Bravo. I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing that. Uh, going for the first ban is going to be the Blastoise. Get okay. rid of that super quickly uh, on the side of E7 Jonas. Interesting. So, so Megu has been playing the top path all tournament long for Nouns Esports. And wow, electing to leave the Buzzwool and the Leafeon about not in their ban slot. And now it will be a very interesting choice for Entity 7. They are going to ban the Leafeon, which most likely means Nouns Esports is now priced into a bus will ban. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly right. what It got almost there. interesting for a moment, yeah, and yeah. then it didn't. <laughs> I mean, it's still interesting, of course, that we see the super targeted Scyther ban, but like you were mentioning earlier, uh, when you go first, and as far as the drafts and picks, you are uh, picks and bans, you get the opportunity to get a little bit more creative. Uh, you're forced as a second pick to maybe prevent the Buzzwall from coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, we're going to see the Trevenant, and man, no, first pick uh, Hoopa. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty cool one, which I, I like that a lot. Yeah, very, very interesting to see. See, it's going to give Nouns Esports the Eldegoss now, which um, they really, really like. Adesu played an amazing Eldegoss right after. But, uh, okay, this is going to be... Oh, man, I'm really excited to see where this draft is gone. I'm very interested to see why Megu actually went the Trevenant instead of something like the Blaziken in the top path when given that option. Blastoise isn't available. Buzzwall isn't available. We actually went for the tree. I am of the opinion that Top Path Tree is incredibly powerful, and I basically have never seen it not be incredibly powerful. Could be my error that, uh, you know, I mean, there's maybe a reason why we don't see it every single game, or even like the majority of games, or even some games, but mm -hmm. uh, the times that we've seen it, even today, it's looked really, really good in my opinion. Uh, we may be going for the Triple okay. Evolution. We will. Uh, two of them that we've fallen a little bit more out of the meta, the Umbreon and the Glaceon, uh, but obviously still quite strong. Yeah, the 3v is definitely a powerful composition and interesting. We are going to have a Venusaur last pick for Utah. So, a lot of special attack damage from range. They are running that Muscle Band. It's not always indicative of what build they want to go with. They are going a check button, which I usually feel is the more definitive um, item to look at <laughs> when it comes to build. I have to imagine we are looking at a Beamosaur from Utah. I think I think so too, and I think that's really smart. Uh, we had a lot of extra range on E7 Jonas in the last game because they had the Mew. This time around, they decided to forego it, and so their longest range is not that far, right? They've got, yeah. at best, kind of mid-range Pokemon, and that's gonna give the Beamasaur an opportunity to be the one who controls the entire spacing of the game. Everything's mm -hmm. gonna have to chase after it, and especially, I mean, behind a Trevenant and a Mr. Mime, that seems like it's gonna be so hard for them to actually find a good answer for. It. Yeah, yeah, I really like. Idesu and the company and Nouns Esports building a composition, kind of just focus on what they wanna do and playing the best part of their game. Mm -hmm. They're not really looking at the enemy composition, something like, uh, when you see double attackers, we tend to see a speedster emerge or a Pokemon that can really threaten that backline, those squishier Pokemon. We're not going to see that, though. We instead are going to have just an extremely strong front line made up of Trevenant, Mr. Mime, and Eldegoss. Mm. And then we're just going to trust the special attack damage that Toon Slim and Utah can rain in from range. Oh, I would I would certainly trust those two plenty. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, that would be two of my, my tops if I had to guess. But uh, here we go. Game number two. Now in Esports now only needs one. One more. They're going to be on your right side. And where are... Oh my, there's so many EVs on screen. I'm uh -huh. not even going to figure out who's where. I give up. You do it, Zoys. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Well, the Embryon's on the bottom path, I can tell you that oh, one. That's a, that's a for sure. Uh, Rub going to be pushing forward. Utah actually playing the attacker role on this Bulbasaur to start off. No central area taken. Wanting to threaten Servant on this place. Getting a little bit more. Who's also in the bottom path, by the way. Glacier going to be joining them very shortly. Utah going to have to play very, very safe when Frank is on the case. Is 
the uh, is the wait, is Dimbra not in the bottom path? Oh no, it is. It is. It's still an evolution. I was I was looking around. I'm getting so confused by all the evolutions. Evolutions obviously quite strong for anybody who hasn't been following the scene. Uh, every single one extremely good. Uh, being able to uh, kind of evolve early at that level four, hit their early power spikes is what makes them so so flexible. They can do so many different things. Although currently, Seven Jonas has the two that take a little bit longer, maybe level six with both the Glaceon and the Umbreon. So not going to take full advantage of that. Still got the Sylveon though. Yeah. All five technically involved in our game, with uh, Leafeon being the ban on, on one side. True. So uh, definitely all showing up in this environment. Mego is going with the Curse. Interesting. Uh, it is a very common choice for that top path to choose it. However, the Pain Split Curse build sometimes when into ranged attackers can be a little lackluster. However, when you Pain Split a Glaceon, that Glaceon's got to think twice about shooting Ice School Spears at you because of all that damage redirection. The Glaceon can tend to knock itself out sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, these are ranged attackers, but again, they're like mid-range ranged attackers, right? Yeah. Like, you're close enough to, to, I mean, the pain split with, with the Sylveon as well, like Hyper Voice, like, all right, come on, do it. <laughs> that's, that's great, thanks. Uh, and then, of course, just, yeah, when you see so much guaranteed damage, you're like, well, this could be a, a strategy that works out. But Bruv still hasn't quite found that pick. Early score lead going to Nouns uh, considerably more than the last game, hmm. which is uh, feeling pretty good for them. We are seeing a few more stacks probably landed from that Combusken. Wow, Utah able to get level seven quite safe. Rank and Dunlux not really threatening any real damage. Glaceon does take a little bit of that solar beam, just kind of sitting on the edge. So they will take some damage. Espeon making sure they're in camera for as long as possible <laughs> with that trampoline. Uh, great Circus Holloway, by the way. Uh, they're going to return on camera for a moment before we, being sent back to base. Utah looking like the big dinosaur, and it's 720 when it's threatening that first burst, but ooh, gonna rotate down towards bottom path, actually. Yeah, again, we talked about this in the previous match, but the Hoopa giving the opportunity to go kind of wherever you want to, and as these, uh, as we're setting up for, I guess, these first objectives, uh, we are seeing it pretty split. Of course, the first objective is gonna be experience and that is going to be so much damage onto that Trevenant. Pain Split only works if you don't get immediately KO'd. I mean, it still right. kind of works, but... You, you, uh, actually, yeah. you actually saw Megu trying to run back towards the Glaceon yep, to yep, land yep. the Pain Split, but getting KO'd just before they could get that move off cooldown. So, not going to work out for them. Regia like he will be focused on by Entity 7, bringing it down to about half HP. They got the play skin. They have the overheat there for the secure. No one from now on Esports even in the same zip code, and that's going to be walking towards that Tier 1. Yeah, honestly, like kind of all the Pokemon that needed to level up got there without too much issue this game, right? Mm. The the early game was, I don't want to say it wasn't aggressive, but it was not challenging to anybody. Like, they weren't stopping anybody. Let's see if we can get the last hit on this Reg Ice. It is going to be Toon Slim once again, who's honestly taking the majority of these secures in this entire set so far. Yeah, side beam looking fantastic for them. Mr. Mom going to get the KO onto the Umbreon, sending them back to base. But Nouns Esports, despite an early score of bringing them up to 49, have now found a way to pressure a first tier goal zone and break it quite yet. Of course, Entity 7 with that Reggie Alecki were able to manage to get a offense worthy of breaking that tier one on the top side. Ooh, and now this is going to be... Uh, oh, never mind. I was going to say it's going to be a push from Nouns Esports, but they backed up so quickly after I said that that they mm. just wanted to make me look like a liar. Uh, but it's very understandable that it's going to be a really hard set of three to push <laughs> down. Oh, no. So overheat in that animation while it's charging. If you have no vision on the enemy Pokemon, you will not see that fiery aura. So Doonslim just taking so much damage, but credit to them be able to turn that situation around. Utah able to get another KO as well, but the Glaceon will always remember his targets. Mr. Uh, Mr. Bruv HD going down on the Mr. Mime. Yeah, those uh, those were super far away, but the auto hit is truly an auto hit. It'll follow you all the way across the map. And uh, E7 Jonas, after not really, uh, well, like, they were kind of like behind in score. They really didn't weren't getting anything down, but they've been pushing really well, finally yeah. taking down that tier one goal zone up top. So they're ahead by a good amount, but still not the most aggressive game of all time. There's little skirmishes here and there. There's certainly plenty of KOs, but uh, we're not seeing any full commitment to pushes for most of these teams, it feels like. Well, now these words definitely doesn't have the composition built for something like that, right? Yeah, You're yeah, going to yeah. trust that front line and rely on those attackers. We talked about it on the draft screen. That is going to be the main choice. But now they have a clear shot at a goal zone. Great amount of vision. Going to drop that barrier just in case anybody shows up. 
and a big score on the bottom side. 89 points left remaining. Uh, pollen Puff, Barrier, whatever they need to trap the opponents who will come spawning in. I love that Bruv saw the hyperspace highway and they just set up the wall and just sat there and waited. They were like, somebody's going to walk through this and uh, I'm going to KO them immediately. Uh, but now the fight's going to be happening up on top uh, as that tier one goes on was being taken down. Of course, Ethan John is taking the Regilecki and pushing it all the way through. Uh, they have not broken the goal zone yet, though. Bruv popping the Unite to try and just stop everybody. They are finally going to get a pretty gigantic overdunk. Of course, they were trying to wait as long as possible, but they will get essentially team wiped in return. So a lot of free EXP for nouns, uh, but that's going to make every Regilecki so scary. And the score lead now very significantly in E7 Jonas's favor. Yeah, that's a good thing for announce, but it feels like more of a silver lining than anything yeah, with a yeah. devastate. I mean, that score line of 253 to 89 is devastating for Nouns Esports to have to deal with. In our metagame these days, having a point lead around the Rayquaza fight is so important. It makes your uh, areas of play way, way bigger, and you have a lot more avenues to success. Nouns Esports need to find a way to earn themselves a scoreboard or get real creative in our final fight. Yeah, and that's one of the problems with their team. I mean, I wouldn't call it a problem per se, but it's certainly one of the weaknesses of their draft is that they don't really have a lot of good scoring options, right? They've got these kind of uh, bulkier, tankier brawlers and then a lot of super far range damage. And none of those are good at pushing things down, but they are going to be pushing down this Regia Ice as the fight is going to go in. And we're going to get the reset on the Glaceon. Uh, no real big hits kind of from either side. Finally, we're going to get the uh, secure on the Regia Ice and then two more KOs, four more KOs. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jonas was like, oh yeah, we're just going to walk in and steal literally everything. Uh, after there was a little bit of a miss, I think, from a lot of the poke of the side of Nouns, it seemed like maybe there was a beam that didn't quite connect, and uh, they just weren't quite able to find their targets. And Ethan and Jonas, they've got to get a little bit closer. They took that opportunity, and they certainly ran with it. Yeah, it feels like E7 Jonas, if they have positioning in the team fight, they've kind of already won that yeah. initial battle, right? It's so tough for Brub and Megu to really be able to create that space. Even saw Adesu trying to do it with the uh, Cotton score, but it wasn't quite enough, and the Sylveon plus Glaceon special defense shenanigans was too much to take them down. Megu does have that pain split up, but it's not enough. Glaceon is going to take them down. Regia Leki brought down below half HP, but Glaceon is just free farming on the other side. These evolutions are walking all over now in eSports. This is not looking good for Nouns, I do have to say. Yep. I mean, they are down by almost, I don't know, something like 250 points. They are, uh, well, more than 250 points. Uh, they are just behind in level. They are everything. And honestly, wow, are we going to see the burn down immediately? No! Oh, what the steal from who else but Adesu? What a huge risk to take from E7 Jonas. They lose the blaze again as well. I cannot believe what a quick turnaround that was. And this is going to be the opportunity to steal back some points. Originally, he did go into the home goal zone from Nouns, but they just don't have that many people there to try and get the points in. A miracle moment for Nouns Esports, but there's still a mountain to climb. They have so many points needed, a minute and a half left. Utah going to use that Verdant Anger. doesn't literally target anybody, but at least they get some damage into Dawn Lux. They have decided they need to earn this KO before even pushing to score. Bro is actually risking a Ray Shield in this scenario to try to take out that KO, and now they're sights are set on these tier twos. Hoopa on the top side to defend. E7 Jonas has put everybody else on that bottom side. Overheat almost takes out Dune Slim. Megu can't make it to the goal zone. Ray Shield almost depleted. Still there though, just barely. That's so important. We've got a lot of good members with score shields. We've got uh, an attempt to push up top from Bruv as well and with the Hoopa defending and it looks like everybody might be starting to rotate up top. Megu, that shield is so incredibly low. They basically have to get there immediately. The defense is going to start from the center and completely walled off. Is that Silvio? Oh, the crowned. score shield, is it going to work? It's going to be enough. 100 points and they still don't have quite enough. They've got to find just 26 more. Something close to that. This is so close. I guess he's going to get with it, but he's got another Unite move. Oh. Another one. Oh, crash. He sells the race. Oh. He scored. He scored. 48 points. Adesu, the champion of Nels Esports right now. A hero play in Ray. A hero play in Tier 2. And with 15 seconds left on the clock, Nels Esports is holding on to this lead. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nels Esports are without a doubt back. 2-0 over E7, Jonas! I can't 
believe it. The ice in this man's veins. Also, we have player cams, cams on Adesu. I swear you barely craft a smile in that scenario. Gets up and is able to hug his team now as they celebrate. As Nouns Esports is able to move on in the winner's bracket side. What an incredible comeback. They were behind by so much, but one of the most well-deserved wins I have ever seen in Pokemon Unite. That was a beautiful ending to that game. That is going to be a clip that is shared for the rest of time in oh Pokemon Unite. The, the little Eldegoss that could oh. just flying directly there. Little. That is the biggest <laughs> Eldegoss I've ever seen. Adesu is a champion. And yeah, we see the hero moments on the replays again and again and again. And you see them, of course, enjoying that victory. Yes, Adesu is the hero of this moment, but there was incredible play from the whole squad. We got the fans of Nouns Esports and crew so excited about this victory and very exciting for them. They are going to be moving on in this bracket to play, of course, the winners of the invited teams. Oh, what an incredible uh, situation for them. I mean, they just have so much momentum. They're on their home turf. They are this, I'm telling you, this is exactly how we expected Nouns to play from the beginning of this season. Yeah. And this is an environment that is just so familiar to all of these players, basically. And they are truly taking advantage of it. And it, this feels like a moment where it's important to give the flowers while people are around to deserve them. Mm -hmm. Frank on that, Glaceon in oh. that game was so such a difference maker. I think the major reason that now Esports looked completely out of it before that first Rayquaza fight, this Glaceon, despite having some on-paper answers like that Trevenant, was just walking all over them. That Glaceon is just uh, definitely a threat that teams got to be wary of. Another, uh, I'm so excited to look at the stats, actually. <laughs> I was just about to talk to them, and we're going to pull them up on screen. We have Frank with 11 oh, KOs gosh. throughout that team fight. That is so many. Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole, exactly like you said, uh, basically to have a hero moment, it, it has to be that you are behind, right? right you have exactly. to be in a situation where you need to be your hero to win. And E7John has set it up so that they were so far ahead that it had to be a hero moment. And uh, yeah, you can see exactly why. 11 KOs on that Glaceon with 97,000 damage. Just, uh, just shy of the three digit number. However, uh, crazy amount of damage on Nouns Esports side as well. You tout 80,000 damage on that Venusaur. A few clutch unites, a few missed beams, but in the end, an incredible source of damage for Nouns Esports that they relied on in so many of these moments. Every, everything about that set was amazing. Oh, every player on Nouns put in amazing work. Literally every single one of them with key moments there. I mean, right. Grove also, we just saw 40,000 yeah. damage. Can I just know? I was going to say, let's not forget Megu hiding behind a rock <laughs> and then turning a corner and being able to score a full hundred with that Trevenant with yes. the ray shield. With like, like two HP on the ray shield left. I have no idea how they got around Hoopa's defenses, but it worked and they were able to put in that score. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you're taking a lot of the spotlight, but Megu definitely taking some credit for that one as well. Oh my goodness, I, we were jumping. We were jumping back here. That's, That's how exciting that was. Oh, uh, and my face now hurts from smiling because that was a great match. But that's why it's so awesome to have an open bracket. Without the open bracket, Nouns oh. wouldn't be here. Nouns wouldn't be in the winner's side. Oh, can you imagine? Well, I know one player that's pretty excited about it, and that's Adesu. And we have an interview on stage with them right now. So take it away. I am here with Nouns Esports, Adesu. Give it up for Adesu, everybody. I think they like you, dude. I think they like you. Holy, uh, I have people backstage who don't watch Unite were freaking out at that moment. That was unbelievable. I mean, talk me through what was happening in the final moments of game two. Oh, I, when, when I see that we were dead, I, I, it was like the only chance that is possible to overcome this game is getting the request, and I was alone. And when I watched request, I was like 30% HP, and I felt like, okay, they use everything. They don't have to, they don't have more skills, right? It, it's, I have a chance. So, so I use ultimate, like trying to dodge Ambrion with his mid look, in like, the, just wishing for it to get it. I don't know, maybe sometimes the, wish, the wishes come through, and it happened, and then I ran away, I scored, and the best play was right after that, because we managed to score more points. 
I don't know, man. <laughs> it was uh, absolutely unbelievable. You've got fans. You've got fans. The rest of this tournament, what are you excited for? What are you worried about? I mean, what's what's in the future for now? So I think we play against Alter Ego now. It's the last game of today, hopefully. And I think we, we need to we need to look for it. We, we didn't prepare it yet <laughs> because we didn't know we would became this far still. <sighs> there's, there's a lot of teammates there to beat. I mean, there's a lot of teams there to beat. It's a long run still, right? It's a, it is a long run still. I guess a final question. Uh, do you think a player like Chris Heroes maybe doesn't play competitively because he's scared that he'll get exposed? Chris, I think you are scared. I think he's scared too. I think he's scared. Thank you so much, Adesu from Nouns, everybody. I'll send it back to the booth. Boom. Thank you so much. Yeah, questions, questions across the board. I have to admit, my favorite one is about Alter Ego. I can't wait to watch that matchup. Nouns versus Alter Ego is definitely a title fight level match. Yes. Oh, my goodness. What? Uh, I mean, every, every match that we have now, uh -huh. basically, yes. within this uh, the stage is basically that. But uh, one more look back at this set. What an incredible set. And again, this is the beauty of the open bracket. We would not be seeing two oh. championship level teams up against each other uh, in this exact moment that we've never seen play against each other and possibly never could have, uh, <laughs> but just setting up such an amazing set for us. Oh, this push was ridiculous. And this was a moment, right, where Utah drops that Unite move, but a scoring animation dodges some of the damage, mm -hmm. an evolution uh, passive dodges some of the damage, and it felt like, uh-oh, Enemy 7 is really taking over. For that push to have that point lead, that got dangerous. Yes, yes. This was, I mean, like we said, this was a hero play because E7 Jonas was so far ahead so many times. They had amazing secure right there. They just continued to run away with objectives and mm. uh, scores and goal zones were getting destroyed and everything was looking terrible. I mean, at this point in the game, there was like a 250 plus point lead. Everything was not looking the way of nouns. But uh, as we heard, <laughs> sometimes miracles happen, right? That's true. Said. And they used all their skills, I believe. Oh, yeah, it was they also all their So yeah, no skills left, and we just have Unite moves. That's all that remains. Yeah, this choice to burn as well was a little scary. Overheat misses. The Blaziken not able to secure the Rayquaza in that scenario. It's a devastating mistake. Capitalized on by a hero play of the Eldegoss. You see here, bro, probably screaming at a <laughs> that they want to score first. Please, begging on their hands and knees, and it works out okay. And. Oh gosh, even after all of that, they still didn't have, I can't believe they got their Unite move again. I cannot I know, believe I it. I know, Can you, I, I mean, what a match for Adesu. Obviously, everybody's great, but can you imagine not only stealing Rayquaza there as Eldegoss, but then scoring the final uh, winning huge dunk because you got your Unite back? Like, just everything about that is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, if, if I'm Adesu, I'm like, I'm saving this match for the rest of my life, yeah, and yeah, yeah. anybody that I talk to, doesn't matter if they know what this game is, I'm showing them. Oh. Oh my gosh. All right, well, we have our MVP of the match. We'll bring it up on screen. It will be Megu, of course. This is going by in-game statistics with 67,000 damage uh, taken of this revenue. Very yeah. interesting. Uh, some of that they were choosing to with that pain split and mm -hmm. curse, you know what I mean? But still getting up and involved. Weakness policy, a item that just synergizes so well with that curse and pain split style of build. Yeah, and of course, you said it before, but that moment that they managed, I seriously do not understand how they managed to score with yeah. the smallest amount of ray shield left of all time. Uh, without that, they would have lost as well. So being able to shift and they realized that they were going to lose the shield, they shifted from the bottom path up to the top path, they hid and then they snuck yep. in at the perfect time. All of that, without a single like half a second being correct right there, they would have lost the game just as well. It looked like they had Inteleon passive. Look, it looks like they had yeah. Invis for a little bit. Well, I don't know they're just they a tree. It. They're just a tree, you know. Oh, yeah. You're welcome to the but There's like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of grass here. There's <laughs> trees, there's foliage. I don't know. We're just going to yeah. walk, yeah. I think I nailed the impression of a tree you did. just a you moment did. Great ago, tree by the way. Thank you, everybody, uh, for really encouraging me and supporting my path. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, great job. Everybody supports you. Everybody, uh, hashtag Zoinks tree. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, everything about that, gosh, I could talk about that. I just want to watch it again, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that replay just four or five more times. That would be fantastic. But, oh, uh, man, that match is going to go down to the history books. And let me check where we are. Oh, yeah, still at the beginning of group stage, everybody. There are so many good games remaining in our tournament. We're going to be finding fantastic stuff. I cannot wait. This group stage is going to be unbelievable. 
We have 16 of truly the best teams in the world. And I, well, I'm excited to see him run it back again and again and again. Yeah, we've called this mini worlds, but again, it's kind of just worlds, kind of to just, be honest. Yeah. yeah. Early worlds, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. There's so much to look forward to, and I know you all can't wait for it, but please, just a short break. Don't go anywhere when we come back. More AOS Cup. This is my hobby, I think, because I work 40 hours a week, then I go home to do this. <laughs> this is pretty much my hobby. Outside of gaming is a complicated question, because, like, I guess I, like, honestly, no. <laughs> um, me gusta mucho jugar fútbol, eh, dibujar, escuchar música, sobre todo jugar con mis amigos a fútbol, es lo que más me gusta. Oh, uh, I've been playing other video games, of course. Uh, uh, I used to work out, but I stopped like two months ago, but I will go back to it at some point. Uh, hanging out with my friends, some video montage and things like that. Uh, my main hobbies outside of gaming is probably like doing physical activity, in particular basketball. Like I really enjoy basketball. I only picked it up when I was about 16 and I've been playing it a lot ever since. It's just something I really enjoy doing. It's really relaxing, shoot some hoops. I played on my high school team as well. So it's always nice just to get out in the air and you know jump around, show out some, some points. It's very nice. Uh, I guess it's a little bit like Unite still. Can't get away from the game. Okay, I, okay, yeah. this one, like, this is a super easy question for me, because, like, it's honestly beating Tali Bobo and going through to day two in Worlds. Like, the one, the moment we realized that we have won and we advanced, like, we had this curse in, in our heads, like, we had this big thing in our heads, like, not making stuff to day two on 2022 in London. Like, it's like something pending, you know, it's, it was super annoying, it was super heavy on everyone, and finally, Having it off, like, we made it to day two, like, we can compete in the top eight, we can compete in the, in the playoffs. It was a super good feeling, and um, this is definitely the, my favorite moment in the United Series overall, like, in, in the tournaments overall. In the final of the regional of 2023, the LAN, in the phase of winners, we were losing about 500, 600 points, and at the final, they did a request, and... Lo que me gustó de esa parte es que nosotros no, no nos echamos para abajo y supimos remontar la partida y al final la ganamos. Nosotros no sabemos cómo, pero la ganamos. <laughs> Probably my first monthly win as Pog Champ in 2K22 because we were like kind of a French team, so in the French broadcast uh, people were kind of crazy. Oh, okay, actually, I got, I got a perfect one for you. I got the, the clip, everything's there. It, and honestly, you're going to love this answer. It's, it's perfect. Okay, let me get in the story time mode. <clears throat> so my sickest play that I've, I've probably ever witnessed in competitive was probably the way we ended the, Mar uh, the February qualifier for AOS Cup. It's a very important tournament that actually qualifies you to London. And it was something that was really important to our team. We're there in the final game of the bracket reset. We played a long, grueling game, eight games against the Fury, which was uh, the team that beat us in the winner's final. And we're there in the last game. We have like probably a scrappy team comp. I don't know how we pull it together. The game is going on to the last seconds. They take Rayquaza. It looks all over for us. Half of the team were like, it's curtains. The other half were like, okay, come on, let's keep doing something. Let's keep going. Challenge, our Sylveon runs up to the top lane to try to score his 50. Asian no cap runs down to the bot lane to try to score his 50. The crossbow stops Asian no cap score. They get the Venusaur score off with this, the Rayquaza shield and Venusaur recalls to the base, but Sylveon's already scoring. The timer is ticking down. Three, two, one. I see the Sylveon, he puts up the score. Venusaur jumps right above him. And you can literally see the moment he just dunks in his head like it's LeBron James and it's over. And we're like thinking, oh my God, I can't believe it. And I'm like, we were probably still lost. Like, you know, it was a good try. And of course, we don't get spoiled by the mobile perspective, but 
we're there, we're all waiting, and it's like, we won! We won! And we couldn't believe it. And that's, uh, you know, one of those moments that makes Unite magical. It's something that I'll never forget, and it was a great, like, team experience. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pokemon <laughs> Unite Championship Series. Here we are live in London at the Excel Center for the AOS Cup. We are now seeing the best of the best. We are fully in our group stage, and we have an incredible match coming up for you. Spraggles and Doob Snacks, right back at it. Doob Snacks, tell them about this game. Tell them about. I want to talk about that last one we I, just saw. Holy smokes! Maybe the game of today. Like I mean, what an insane finish. I've used this expression before, but that to us. I know we were dragging a little bit. It's been a long day. We've you know we've been motoring through. You more double, than me. Double paddles to the chest. I, I am just so ready right now. What an insane oh. finish. I mean that. Those are the moments that only happen in Pokemon Unite. I I cannot believe they pulled out the victory right there. So incredible. But what a game we have for you. GT. Yep. versus Unite Holic. GT fighting their way out of that uh, open bracket, and now here they are in our group stage. Of course. So Team Comms replay from last match just buzzed in the ear. Let's take a listen together, because you know they're going to be wholesome or at least hype. <laughs> yeah. I'm at not, least hype. I hope, I hope we hype. looked into what this will sound like. If you score, so defend. We need to defend. Defend, defend, defend guys. Go ball, I think. Go, more, 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 okay, more, more. Fine, fine. You to try and leave. Just keep scoring. Listen, listen to Brad. I need to leave. I need to leave. Okay. I defended. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I'm trying, bro. I'm trying, bro. Oh, let's okay. go. Is this enough? You can just watch pass, watch pass. They may be here. Nice, nice, that, nice, that's nice, nice, nice. Some nice, boys! Is that enough? Nice. Is that enough? Let's go, this yeah, I'm guessing it's enough. I'm, I'm, I mean, I hope it is. Watching the green oh. room, I was popped up. No shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got to have the interview uh, on stage yeah. right after that moment too. Now Z Sports was my dark horse, and it's crazy to say that now Z Sports is a dark horse, but they are looking like at least a speckled colored horse. Yeah, absolutely a Maybe speckled even horse. Light horse. Maybe even like one of those blonde looking horses, you know? I, are we dyeing our hair? Is that what you're. Yes, I'm pitching that we dye our hair. But before that, we've got a lot of great Pokemon <laughs> Unite that we just, need to watch. Just before that. I just want, I do want to dye my <laughs> hair. I want you to dye your hair. But we have Pokemon Unite to check out. Unite Holics. You, you can see them down there. Look. Right here. You can see them right are, down there. So I don't think we got the special effects where we get to reach down through the screen in that shot to, like, pluck them up in a cool CGI type of situation. They would have told us. I think they would have. Mm -hmm. I think they would have. But instead, what we've got, of course, is Unite Holics and G. GT. GT electing. We don't need team shirts. What we need is this Hawaiian shirt that OG wore back in season one, and they decided to rally around that, all wearing it. Look at them, finding themselves on stage. Lutano, you know him from TTV, mm -hmm. joining the GT squad. All these other names are ones that certainly the NA uh, watchers know. Yeah, without a doubt. Egg Noob, Stockings, OG, Espo, Lutano. I talked to Lutano earlier. The reason they're all wearing the Hawaiian shirts, they're visualizing being in Hawaii. They're ready to win here and secure their spot to Honolulu. Well, that's a great, you know, a vision board. Some people do those. GT has a vision wardrobe. I like it. I also have a vision wardrobe, and one day you all get to, will get to see it on camera. This is not your vision wardrobe? I don't know what I'm striving for wearing this. We're both striving for a retired magician. <laughs> we're both in that case, crushing And we're it. crushing it. Crushing it. <laughs> For those of you at home, I know we have Unite to talk about, but real for I want to address that we have been practicing our magic tricks. Unite Holic is not one of those things, but they are good Unite players. I mean, yeah, incredible stuff. They are the team, uh, one of the two teams invited to this tournament. Mame, you know, just one of those amazing players that can change the game, an incredible carry. We saw them on Serena earlier. We're gonna have to see what they wanna bring out here into this game against GT. Yeah, well, um, we were talking to Zoinks earlier and kind of the, the download on uh, Unite Holic specifically. Mame was playing Defender leading into this event. They had a little roster switch up, so they went to the central area. And that's maybe why they pivoted to Zarina, which you and I, when we were chatting about it, was, oh, that's like a year one callback. That is mm -hmm. definitely one of their bread and butter picks. And probably how they ended up on that is they're trying to find their footing in this new role within the squad. Yeah, they're trying to figure out exactly how they can make that work. And then, you know, when you're in a role that needs to carry so hard you fall you fall back into some of your comfort picks mm -hmm. zarina can still make something happen but we didn't see it earlier from unite holic no. 
Okay, we're taking a, a quick pause for the calls, which means we can either talk more about our magic act that we've been chipping away at uh, off camera, of course. It's not quite ready yet. Or what you can do is talk to me a little bit about what this win would mean for GT specifically. We know what Unite Holics is about. They got invited out here, but GT almost always seems like the bridesmaid, never the bride type situation. Yeah, GT is just so close to being the team in North America. You know, and they got so close in the last tournament right there into the grand finals, almost winning the entire thing. I think this new GT squad, you know, putting Lutano on there, I think they have a real shot to make something happen in this tournament. And for a team that just kind of had a roster switch up, they are playing so incredibly well. Let's talk about a player that is always shining, Stockings. Yeah, season win rate on Mew of 50%, cool. Stockings is a phenomenal Mew player, we all know that. But I like that second line. Stockings still boasting an 11-0 win-loss record on Inteleon and UCS this year. That is a barbaric statistic. Yeah, I mean, Stockings is just so incredible. They play so many attackers so incredibly well. And you could see that there isn't always the case to pick Inteleon, but when they do, they go crazy. Absolutely, and that's facilitated by a lot of the players on the rest of this GT team. There's one thing you can't deny that GT has done, which is progressively get better month after month. Not necessarily reaching the um, the final wins, you know, the, the on the score sheet where they would like to be, but their development is on track, and they keep showing themselves up at being a top force in NA, and now I'm trying to prove that on the international stage as well. Yeah, I mean, I think when you have a roster switch up and you get that deep into a monthly finals, you're obviously doing something right. You know, you don't have a ton of time to prepare. You're not as, you know, you're not gelling as well as a team that's been together for a long time. But interestingly enough, like you said, we have a roster switch up on the side of Unite Hogs. So both of these teams are kind of coming into this with some changes. Without a doubt, Unite Holix, again, we keep focusing on Mame. They almost seem to be like the everlasting UCS presence out of Japan that always seems to be this boogeyman, not only for their region, but on the international stage as well. But they find themselves in the loser's bracket of this group stage. What can maybe Unite Holix do to bounce back here as we're getting squared up for game one? I think the big question is, now that you're in the loser's bracket, are you going to continue the strategy that got you here, or are you going to change it up? Because I have obviously not gotten to see uh, any other games from them, but I, I don't think their Zarina was it. It, it wasn't it. It didn't, it didn't win them their game. So what are they going to be able to do? What will they change to try to take down GT? A team that looks like they're feeling pretty good out there. Yeah, I mean, they're cool, calm, and collected. They actually were matched up in the open bracket against Nemesis, and that's how they ended up 3-2, and because Nemesis went 5-0, giving them great tiebreakers and sneaking in. So, I mean, I'm not saying that they're working with their extra lives here, but they're certainly playing with house money and seeing how far they can push it. Here we go. Unite Holic versus GT. Unite Holic with our first ban. They are banning Buzzle, even though they have first pick. So they're banning it, and they don't want to play it either. Leafeon getting the ban on the side here of GT. GT. Now Talonflame getting a ban. That's got to be a very targeted ban right there. Yeah, it, it, certainly it's going to be something that works against whatever comp Unite Holic is looking to put together and a Comfe pick for GT. This is this is an indication to me that we've got a lot of homework going into play uh -huh. uh, for these selections. Yeah, if you're banning Comfe, you know that they like to support one of their players in a crazy way with this Pokemon. And we see how well that can work in some team compositions. You know, the world champions, you know, they would have Comfe, Zoroark, and it would go absolutely insane. We're going to have to see what they want to bring out in this game. Egg Noob locking in the Slowbro, Espo on the Hoopa. Oftentimes, you know, we see when players lock in Slowbro, it's because the enemy team has something incredibly powerful with a lot of dive, the ability to really get in to the back line of GT and take down some of their squishier Pokemon. Yeah, and of course the slow beam on those deep engagement targets works out really well. Coincidentally, the only Unite move that <laughs> squanders a slow beam is on that Mimikyu and can trap that slow bro mid beam. And here we go, Lutano on the tree, stalking on Espa. You know what, I, I feel like I remember a long time ago, Lutano on TTV playing Trevenant in that top path, I think before just about anybody was doing it. That's got to be a switch up, right? Like It could be. I feel like OG might take tree here um, and take that top. Maybe uh, Lutano pivots to uh, Espeon. They've been playing a lot of Espeon lately. We'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. Lastly, a gutter pick Blissey here, a great 
uh, support for them. A little surprised we're not seeing Eldegoss here. And here we go, the Guard of War. This feels like it would switch on over to Lutano. Lutano has a very mean Guard of War that we've seen many times. We'll have to see how these players want to move around right here. Uh, great composition from both of these squads. I'm, I think I'm feeling Unite Holix chances a little bit more here looking at their team. They've got the Crustle, they've got Mew, Sylveon for all that pressure. And if they can get in and get a combo started with that Mimikyu, it is over. It's going to be a little tough, though, right? Because they have a lot of trap uh, abilities out of uh, GT, but they have to use them, right? The Espeon Unite to catch and engage, huge. Slow Beam to catch and engage, huge. If Eggnoob decides to go Surf, that can also disrupt some engagements. Tree is a walking disruption machine. We've uh -huh. seen it multiple times today. And if they can insulate stocking on this Gardevoir and keep her in the back line so they're untouched, this is a team that can counterpunch very well into the Unite Holic comp. Yeah, I mean, if, if Guardi can do something here, if Stalking can set up a huge Unite move, it, it's one of the game changer Unites, right? But it's also a Pokemon, like you were just saying, it does get shut down in some of these situations. It's kind of easy to shut this Pokemon down because it's so vulnerable once you get near it. You really need a team to make sure that they are peeling the enemies away from you, pushing them, knocking them up, using that slow beam to absolutely shut them down if that Mimikyu jumps in. And then, you know, they've got a lot of range too on the side of Unite Holic with that Mew. But here we go. We're getting ready for our first game between these two teams. Our purple team, Unite Holic. Our orange team, GT, in game number one. Let's get after it. Wafu on this Mew, you called it out just then, is who I'm going to be looking for. Because Mew, with their Unite move, is a perfect tool to get on top of stockings in the back line and eat up that card of water. We can see they're deciding not to give any of that central uh, XP over to the Espeon right here. Uh, it's already hitting four though, so they must have taken uh, they must have taken that Zatu or had some part of it. I want to say that's the only way they'd be able to be forced so quickly as they head into uh, path here. Look at the pressure they're able to put on Wafu though. Of course, Mew, a very strong early game Pokemon, and oh, little eject out of Lutano trying to make it out, and now Eggnoob uses theirs to get back to base. Boosted Auto comes through, but they pick up a berry just in time. Look at this. Spacing on the Dwoobble, Lutano looking for an opportunity. Can't quite close the door on it, though. Wow, I mean, great stuff here. We see Mimikyu already getting insanely aggressive, jumping in with that play rub. They are very low on the side of GT, but they are dancing with some fancy footwork to get out of a very bad situation. Yeah, I mean, good adjustment. Lutano comes right back, stops dealing with what they're doing in path, and just shows presence. And that Mimikyu knows it can get caught. Quickly eviscerated are the birds in the top path as GT peels back a little bit. Yeah, GT peeling back right here. I mean, obviously, everyone's just throwing all the special attack damage they can at the, that little mini objective right there in the center. We can see Mew continuing to keep the pressure on in the bottom path, missing with that solar beam. Uh, I'm a little concerned here. Eggnum, usually not one of the defenders that has trouble hitting their uh, evolutions, but they're slow to it today. Pun intended, I suppose. Quick little reset on OG. Are they going to come back through? They are. That's that with glowing orb around the portal means. Yeah, they're back in this top path. They are playing the Cursed Trevenant. Now, obviously, they're playing Trevenant as more of sort of that brawler, bruiser, up in the mix, doing a ton of damage to your opponents while also being the unkoable Trevenant. In this central area right here, Unite Holic has some better positioning, but Stockings putting a lot of damage onto that Blissey. I actually like that approach by Stockings. You know, you're, you're outgunned effectively, so try and pick a target, see if you can do something with it. Knockout on Espo before they can reset. Asa getting credit for that. That. And now they're moving his machine, three players into the top path, and Mama is already there waiting for the smoke. They engage quickly on top of OG, absolutely eviscerated as their HP pool. They're turning right back around with this curse kicking, pick up two berries. Now Espo's here for the support. They get the rotation through. Here comes Stockings, another finding KOs. They're looking to push. Are they going to overextend? I would settle down if I were them. Yeah, we're going to have to see what they want to do here because they're almost all here, just Slowbro in that bottom path. Moving into this, oh man. Moving into the tall grass, Mew was waiting for it with a beautiful surf, bringing it right on over to the side of Unite Holic for a big time KO. Yeah, I really wanted them to settle out and kind of pivot to other spots in the map. You know, the central is starting to come up. Start dealing with that, play that a little insular. You got a great KO. 
You yeah, know, we got an interesting uh, choice here. We've got Scald on the Slowbro. I wasn't sure what kind of Slowbro we were going to see right here. Scald's obviously going to give them some more damage. It's also going to lower the attack stat, possibly, of that Mimikyu. But at the same time here, you know, you're not able to disrupt them as much. Yo. You might need that because look at what this Mimikyu is doing, just continuing this chase. Huge play, Rob. That is amazing. The Shadow Sneak, the Shadow Sneak, the Shadow Sneak. Three KOs in a row, and I am shocked that they didn't pivot on top of Stockings. Unite is out. That's a quick KO on the Mimikyu. That's fine. You Unite is out just so they can get out. Look at the Hyper Voice cover, though. Esco goes straight forward, pivots back through, puts a portal down, resets themselves. Look how low Wafu is OG finally taking credit for it. Wow, I mean, they chased that Mew down. That was really impressive. I thought it was getting out of there, especially after it used that Unite move in a situation where I thought, oh, you know what? It might have actually not even needed a Unite. I was very wrong. They needed more than a Unite move. They needed to run from GT. I actually like GT extending there and finding that KO on Wafu. That was a lot more uh, safe of a bet than what they did before. So I like that chase down. I like that KO. Now let's see what they can do with it. They're still behind a little bit on the scoreboard. The levels are, are not bad. Actually, they're ahead on level, Spraggles. Yeah, they're very, very close inside this match right now. One thing I got to say, I love the choice right there to unite this Gardevoir. Once Yo. again, this Mimikyu just finds their targets, picks up big time KOs. Crustle with the eject button gets a KO on Lutano, and now they're looking for an opportunity, but OG is literally spinning in the tracks here and gets x scissored into a wall. That means they're stunned down, low HP, and Stockings is sitting on this goal zone. What can they actually do? Espo's looking for a rotation, but the Regieleki's flying to the top path. Another Rock Tomb, another x or double stun. Slow Beam on top of the Mimikyu, but Bliss Assistance is right there. Trevi Knight is pop, and they're pushing forward. Spragles Mimikyu Unite is out, and now Wafu is finally getting the KO. Yeah, Wafu looking for these KOs right here as they're pushing forward, looking to take Blissey here. Gardevoir still not using that Unite move yet. I thought they might have used it a little earlier in this engagement. They, they decide not to. Sylveon having to back up right here. And we're going to see how GT wants to play around this goal zone. Looks like they're deciding that they're going to need to peel back and get as much of this experience as they can. That might have been a moment where they really wanted that Gardevoir Unite, and they just weren't able to use it in the right position because it may be a minute before they get together again. I am flabbergasted that the first basement Reggie of the game has not been taken off the map yet. No team's prioritizing that. GT almost conceding that Japan likes to play to the top path and meeting them there, getting the, in the action with them there. Yeah, we're going to have to see how these teams want to fight around this bottom objective because really no one's going for it. Instead, four members of GT run towards this top path. Here is Mame the Mimikyu just looking for some way to get in on this squad. Egg Noob spots it out. They know what they're up to, and they're able to actually just absorb that Shadow Sneak, make sure it doesn't hit, you know, Espeon or Gardevoir. Let the team score. Koopa brings them down with a big Unite. Espeon right into the Trev Unite. They're popping and they're pushing forward. OG's leading the charge. The stun is down and the forest curses on top of Crossland. They can't even get to the action. Three players down in a heartbeat as GT's looking to push. Egg Noob's gonna get that 40. Duck it in as they're gonna keep going. Yukon is just putting down Rock Tombs have strategically been very good for them, but here they mean almost nothing as Espo's gonna reset three players and this Basement Reggie still stands. Basement Reggie still stands. Huge scores there from GT as they are now ahead in this match. 3.30 on the clock. Rayquaza is here soon. GT felt like they were behind, felt like they were kind of getting, you know, you know, uh, run at the start of this game here, but not anymore. They are right back in this thing. Egg Noob in a lot of trouble, though. We'd see Mimikyu looking for that KO. However, the slow beam comes out. Here comes Lutano, and they are going to pick up Blissey. That's going to be tough for the slow bro to recoup, so Egg Noob is going to have to farm up a little bit, but Mame is still looking for opportunities. They're playing with the Sylveon in their pocket, DLR, to see what they can actually get done, and Egg Noob has no interest in trying to get their Unite move back. They're just going to move around the map and see what kind of damage they can do. And here they're moving on to this Regieleki, just seeing if they can take this down. It doesn't look like Unite Hawk really has any answer to this currently. There's so much experience on their side of the map that they need to take out so that they can get their levels. There's going to be a free Regieleki for GT. As you can see, we have scores being attempted in this bottom path. Four members of Unite Hawk on one OG. OG looking to scrap, but here comes the rest of GT for the support. They're going in and tons of damage. Wafu is down. Asa is down. They're looking for the next one. They're looking to convert. DLR says, I'm getting the H out of here, son. Mame's nowhere to be found. And 2.20 left on the clock. GT's starting to 
move. GT is starting to move. They're pushing into the central area, but let's not forget, you know, at this point, Unite Holic just went up on the scoreboard right there. So even though they lost a fight, they are winning on the scoreboard. If nothing happens at Rayquaza, they win this game. Eight seconds still Rayquaza. We actually have Sylvia doing a ton of damage right here, but they have to back off because they're caught there by Gardevoir in that massive side shot. OG needs to take a deep breath. They were in deep waters there and barely make it out. And now they're going to be able to roll back through GT with the positional advantage in the middle here. But rolling through the top is Unite. Yeah, and here we go. Unite Holic moving around the top, missing with that Shadow Sneak. But at any moment, they could hit that Shadow Sneak on Gardevoir. Espeon decide that they want to start this fight. Rayquaza being chipped up by GT right now. Just looking for that perfect moment here where they can start this fight. We can see heading back home through that hyperspace hole. Obviously, Mame does not want to jump in on that slow bro right there. At this point, we can see GT is actually caught between multiple members here. And Mame goes in for the engagement. They're looking for the target, but a quick little reset. Espeon Unite only catches two. They're trying to buckle on top. But Mame, slow beam on Mame! Slow beam on Mame, straight into the forest curse! Mame's so low, but they get out of dodge! OG's on the chase! Asa's just trying to hold on as long as they can, but they got Mame down, and OG taking credit for that one. We got a quick little reset, everybody through the portals, everybody's rolling back through. Lutano is down, no, one down on each side. They need to find an opportunity. DLR's caught between an absolute nightmare here. Not quite ready to use the Rings Unbound Unite out of Espo. We're taking a breath. Yeah, we're taking a breath right here. We still have that Hoopa Unite move. We still have a Mimikyu Unite move, because Mimikyu did eventually get caught. However, Lutano comes Coming back through that portal, they were just waiting for him right there with a huge X scissor. And now Rayquaza once again being hit by GT. GT has to know they are slightly behind here as they are using these portals as an opportunity to peel back. Now we can see OG looking for a possible score. The Mimikyu Unite move against OG, but this is a Trevenant here. They got a lot of HP. Rayquaza's getting extremely low. They're looking for the secure right here. Who's able to get it? It's Lutano. Oh, what an absolute clutch monster. Double back cap scores. Pull him back through with the rings unbound. Secure it off the back of Lutano right in their office in the Ray Pit. That's a great add to GT. If I'm looking at the books right now, they're looking to take game one against Unite Hollis. And they do. The score keeps raining in. We do have scores in the bottom path here. Hoopa putting in 100, however, and we have 44 from Unite Hollis. We're gonna have to see the final scoreboard here, but it looks like with those points in the main, GT is ahead. I feel comfortable from GT. Let's make it official here as the Hawaiian Vision Board Squad looking to make it happen here. We're gonna see if we get the mobile. Rayquaza fight. Feels like the only mistake they made was having Lutano come back through that hyperspace hole because they absolutely snapped him up immediately. Massive X scissor to help set up a huge KO. However, they were patient. Like you said, they still had that Hoopa Unite move. They waited for their moment and they were able to move back in and take Rayquaza. And I gotta tell you, it feels like in NA, really no one secures Rayquaza like Lutano. The guy is clutch. Absolutely. You have to give credit to Stockings, Lutano, and Espo because they were sitting in the Ray Pit 3v5, excuse me, Mame wasn't there, 3v4, and they sent the, essentially the defenders to go score because they knew if they got jumped on, they would have enough HP and defense to make it back through the pop rings unbound. That score, the plus 62 down in the bottom by Egg Noob, put them up. Put them up. So I'm not saying it didn't put the pressure on the Rayquaza, but it certainly helped. And here we go, seeing some replays from this match. You know, Mame on that Mimikyu was very scary, and it was something that GT was going to need to have an answer for as this match went on. Nice push right here as a possibility until huge surf takes down the tree. Terrific surf. And of course, fighting on pad here is GT, and they're able to at least hold on. The fact that Stockings was able to evade that Shadow Sneak reset is honestly just a blessing in disguise. They pop their Unite move here, if I'm not mistaken, get a quick KO, and then a solid experience into the hands of a player that you want. Yeah, I love that move. You know, Gardevoir's Unite move is on such a low cooldown right now that I think it's really advantageous to take those moments, you know, isolate a high-level enemy on the enemy team and get a big KO. We can see the slow beam into taking out Blissey right here as multiple members of Unite Hawk were in the central area of GT. And now we have that moment where they are pushing off of this goal zone, picking up a lot of KOs. Insanely close match here. It was 251, 223 till this Rayquaza fight right here. We have that huge slow beam, Trevenant Unite move, Gardevoir Unite move, just looking for KOs anywhere they can get it. There was that big catch right there on Lutano as they come back through that portal. And then here you have it, the big time security.
Just a nice secure, but I cannot understate how good Egg Noob Slow Beam was on Mame. That was a clear target. Slow Beam, pop yes. the guard of War Unite, and then you had OG Forest Curse and go for the chase. And OG getting the job done there, because it's not easy to catch up to a Mimikyu, very mobile character. Yeah, I mean, you can see why they wanted to ban that Comfey, mm -hmm. because they know that, you know, a Comfey on that Mimikyu, they might not even be able to take it down if they do complete that combo. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at the player of the game here very very soon but man i mean what uh what an incredible match for gt what a great ray fight between these two teams so close yeah player of the game og right there on the tree and uh they were moving out there moving in group yeah i mean a lot of players in, in the top path end up having you know possible superstar moments in these games you know they spend a lot of time up there making sure they get all of their stacks on their attack weight or aos cookie if they're running either one of those items and then they make sure that they are a very high level so every time they enter one of the fights they are a big difference maker and we saw that here on trevenant yeah uh, you really felt the impact of the five minute mark and down onto zero of course by og when they finally joined that bottom path push and they were up front they were causing static getting in the crustles way so they could rage on that tier one goal zone eventually close it out and get a decent score lead there and now we see you know we're going to be heading into our next draft right here gt obviously has to be feeling pretty good but they want to shut this thing down they want to end unite all its run right here and continue moving through this bracket. First ban is a Comfey. Over onto the other side for Unite Hollog, they are banning out that Hoopa. All right, well, Leafeon is the next one on the docket to be crossed out. And now we'll see where Unite Holic wants to go. It's Talonflame. They are concerned about this Talonflame, but this raises the question, does GT go straight after the support or Certainly, they're not going to go. <laughs> they're not going to go Venusaur. There's no chance. I don't think they would first pick a Venusaur here, but they are first picking a slow bro. They want that slow beam more than anything. They're not interested in a buzz wall. They're not interested in, you know, setting up which carry they want. Uh-uh. They want to be able to shut down Mame. Yeah, they're literally looking at Mame and saying, good for you. Somebody on the, uh, the rest of your team has to make it happen for you all today. Um, and just going with straight shutdown until OG quickly snaps up Buzzwole, and you know that's a comfort pick for them. On the other side, of course, that Mimikyu, which was so good, yeah. and the Sylveon as well, facilitating and spacing, great. I love the play here to bring out Clefable. You know, you could really set up some unfortunate situations for any Pokemon that are trying to dive in on a Clefable. Whether you're running Gravity or Follow Me, you could just set them up to make sure that they are not able to do what they want to do when they jump into that fight. Uh, Yupano, uh, we're grabbing that Crustle right there. A huge play. And Blissey once again for the side of Unite Holic. Yeah, I mean, obviously trying to target down Mame with that Bliss assistance. We saw it a couple times in game one. No change to game two. And Glaceon sounds so good. Somebody pick Glaceon in NA, please. I think the character is so solid right now and can do so much work. But they're leaning into Inteleon, which means they're trying to uh, potentially make stockings 12-0. They could be. It could be Stockings 12-0. Lutano, known to play a mean Inteleon himself. He did so at the World Championships last year before anyone was really using Snipe Shot that much competitively. We've got the Candle on the side of Unite Holic. I think, uh, you know, Candle really good into a Clefable setup. You know exactly where everyone is going to be standing around Clefable with that Moonlight. We're going to have to see if the Chandelure is going to be running a curse item to lower the healing on the side of GT. Might not be a bad look you know they have clefable right you know they're yeah. gonna go moonlight like it's just uh, like a natural thing to do get a little healing stoppage as uh, old chef likes to call it and you know what i like to call it that too you know what i'll start calling it that too thanks chef so we're getting ready for our next game right here 10 seconds just taking a look at some of these items we've got the shed in jadal on that uh, Mimikyu. I don't know if I saw that last game or not. I don't know if I noticed it, but that, you know, you could, you could play around your cooldowns very well with Mimikyu, especially with your Unite move, play rough, into a shit engine all, wait for that play rough to come back once more completely invulnerable. So there's a lot you can do with an item like that. Yeah, it even helps like if you miss your shadow sneak reset, mm -hmm. right? Pop shit engine all, buy some of that reset back, like you said, back into play rough anytime you might need because Obviously, Mimikyu operates off those uh, Shadow Sneak resets, and if you miss one, you quite literally are just stuck. 
Yeah, it's high risk, high reward. It, it reminds me a little bit of Gengar. It's the kind of Pokemon that can just move through the entire enemy team. And then every once in a while, they are stuck. As we see our teams heading into this game here. Game number two, GT, your purple team. Unite Holic, your orange team. Unite Holic needs this game to stay in this tournament. <laughs> Look at the positioning that Espo is taking and actually going crosstown shootout to see if they can get some vision and cause some static. They are getting vision very quickly, but that's a rotation that has happened just as quickly out of Unite Holix trying to get that Evian path into level four, and they're pretty successful. And now here they are. They're going to be able to chase down pretty well here with Hyper Voice. They make sure that we don't get a secure on the side of GT as they're continuing to move, looking to get some more damage on this Hyper Voice and possibly get a secure. No, Buzz will able to take that one. OG thrives on this Pokemon. You know, when you talk about NA and EU, there's always a good crop of Buzzwool players. It almost seems like the meta revolves around that. And Japan doesn't particularly care about Buzzwool. So OG is happy to put that to the test today. Yeah, we're going to have to see what they're able to do with it. It's weird. We've seen some real mixed results. We've seen Buzzwool do incredible into some of these Eastern teams that don't run it. And we've also seen Buzzwool completely get shut down. We're going to have to see what kind of Buzzwool OG is. Stocky moving up to the top path, getting caught right here. Uh, obviously, Blissey able to notice that. Yeah, well, yeah. Still just a chancy, though, fortunately. Doesn't have uh, any of its level four uh, abilities. So able to get sussed out, but also not really pay the price for it. And now we can see they're actually moving towards the central area right here, looking for a possible secure. We have that level five Drizzile there, looking to see if they can get something right here. Massive water gun, but they're not able to pick up a KO. They're continuing the chase. There's that shit in all right into an eject button from Lutano, but now Lutano is caught. Lutano is caught. I thought Stockings was going to support there a little bit. That's two characters that are very low on HP that I think Stockings would have been able to clean up if they hard committed to it. Ultimately, just looking to pivot away. The candle putting tons of damage on Clefable, but Stockings still on the chase. That's an Electro Ball boosted auto taking away half of Wafu's HP. Yeah, we got some low HP on the side of Unite Holic, but they weren't punished that much in that central area. Nice big rock tomb, huge hyper voice having to eject out. Yeah, I mean, that's literally what you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. Don't worry yourselves about the Slowbro, but eat up the Slowbro's resources, and that eject button is a quality one. And now we're all over this Blissey. OG wants the knockout. They want the easy experience. But we're going to pick up a berry, and we're going to keep this chase going just a little bit longer. Yeah, use picking up a Pokemon, <laughs> saying, I'll use this to KO you. Actually, that's something that only Buzzwool can do, baby, as we head down to this bottom path right here. Lutano trying to stop them from breaking this goal. While we see members of GT scoring in in this top path. So we're trading a little bit on scores in the top and bottom path, and we are deciding to break this top goal now. They could focus on this Reggie Alecki. Yeah, and you know, force Japan to play into the bottom path. We know that they don't like it, and when you have Buzzwool, that's even better, right? That's how Japan mitigates a Buzzwool, is by playing hard into the top path. GT susses that out, reads it, and uses it to their advantage. And here we go. OG almost level nine here in this top path. We have the Chandelure coming up to get a possible secure here. Snipe shots just barely missed. They're not able to pick up a KO. Registeel going down. However, Reggie Lucky going down. Both teams taking an objective here. We're going to see where the teams want to put the pressure on, and it looks like Unite Holix is willing to scrap in the top path with GT as they're taking a look at this Reggie Alecki moving it in. Espo taking a very forward position because, oh, they poach the candle off the pad and they get a quick KO with the snipe shot. Buzzwell Unite is out there going straight to the view, or excuse me, the Sylveon Unite. They take to the skies, they prance a little bit. Now the Mimikyu is just sitting on top of OG. OG is gone, and now the rest of GT has to just absolutely retreat, forcing out the Inteleon Unite as well, but Lutano can't even use that to the advantage. Yeah, Lutano really couldn't use it. The Mimikyu was able to shut them down right there, right into the Shedinjadol, making sure that they are not hit by the boosted attack there from Mew. A nice counter in so many ways to what GT is throwing at them. Yeah, I mean, it really seems like Unite Holix has built themselves to insulate around Mame to make sure that Mame remains standing as long as humanly possible. And Shedinjadol is just another tool in that arsenal. Yeah, I mean, we could just see how important Mame is to their team. And when Mame is carrying and Mame is winning these fights, they are winning. And they definitely are playing like that. Two members of GT now hanging out in this top path, just waiting to see if anyone wants to come in. Everyone doing their best Stardew Valley, just looking for some farm. Making sure that they can get all the experience on the map. And it's, it's almost every...
every single little yellow dot gone right now. It's so important to get all of your experience. It's really the only way you gain power inside of Pokemon Unite outside of your held items that you bring into a match. Look at how they've escorted Mame into the opposing central as they're trying to suss out where GT is. And GT's <laughs> kind of doing the same, but they're rolling as a pack of four, sitting around Espo for that Moonlight to have the maximum amount of targets. Stocking's responsible for the defense. Nice little solar beam here, but it's not enough to stop the eight points from going in. And now there's a little bit of a uh, deep waters here for stockings. They're getting collapsed on force out the Unite. Can they at least get Wafu? No, they get x scissored back, and they're trying to hit, but here comes the rest of GT pulling up. DLR gets chipped up. They get put down in a vicious way straight into the casket as the rest of GT's moving through. Crustle's battling up the path, but it doesn't matter. Mame's nowhere to be found. GT's collapsing on this goal zone, and it looks like it's just the Blissey to intercept. Yeah, it looks like you were going to see something from GT where they were going to take something top, they were going to lose something bottom, you know, a little bit of a trade right there, but instead, GT decides to rally the troops get everyone together and push them off of that goal zone right there and now we have two objectives on the map and no one is really set up for it big unite move here from the mimic you mimic you in a lot of trouble to play rough coming out right into the shit engine all and yeah you're yeah, nice snipe shot to buckle the ghost type pokemon two players down but i have to sh just say what an amazing surf buy stockings to cause the static and allow the Mimikyu to actually hit the wrong target with the Unite move because it was just a flurry of Pokemon into the middle, so it was difficult to figure out which one they were trying to engage on. Yeah, really impressive stuff. We see uh, the Buzz will only level 11 right now. You want it to try to be one of the highest levels in the match, but either way, level 11 is its huge power spike, so we're going to see what OG is going to be able to do now that he has that kind of combo reset once you hit your level 11. Well, it looks like both teams are ready to go in the top path. Mame looking to intercept Egg Noob downstairs. Reggie Alecki's at half HP. Esco's, Esco's going straight in for the charge. We're going to see what he can do. Snipe shot. Solar Beam comes through, but it's too early. Whoa. It's still taken by Espo. How many objectives have we seen Espo take just all by their lonesome? And now they can put the pressure on. Bliss Assistance is sitting on top of the candle, and they do get the courtesy K on the buzz wall. And of course, Egg Noob goes down because Mame 1v1 them. Stockings in their own Unite, dancing in the fog a little bit as this Reggie Alecki is going straight towards that Tier 2. And Stocking not able to get away from this situation. Big time KO right there. They tried to take out Blissey, but they have so much HP, they weren't able to make it happen. Looking at the scoreboard here, GT 263 to 156. This uh, just over 100, which is, it's where you're comfortable, but you're, you're not safe, right? Like, uh -huh. I'm glad we're here, but there's still work to do. We can't take the foot off the gas now. If I am GT, I just want to level up. I just want to take my farm, make sure we have our Unite moves, and don't do anything too egregious. Yeah, exactly. They're ahead right now. Unite Holic has to be the one to make something happen right here. We've got an objective in the bottom, and it may just be something that GT is going to let them have. They're not too concerned, it looks like. They're watching this top goal zone. I don't know if they're going to appeal for a score or not. I kind of doubt it because they are already ahead. Mew just watching that bottom goal zone a little bit. Stockings, everyone positioning themselves around Rayquaza right here. They can know, they can see that Registeel is being taken right now by Unite Holic. They are able to secure that, and it's gonna give them a damage boost heading into this final fight. It's gonna be interesting. There's two seconds left. Rayquaza hits the map. GT's in position. We're just waiting for Unite Holic to join the party. Yeah, here we go. We're gonna have to see what Unite Holic wants to do here. They're checking this tall grass using their X-Scissor. Caught the Clefable right here. We're gonna see if they decide to go and no, it actually caught onto the Buzzwool right there. They don't move in onto the gravity, but they are able to use Shadow Sneak just as a tool to figure out where the enemy Pokemon are, getting that extreme range extension through the tall grass right here. And they can see they're just moving through methodically, Ooh. looking for some KOs right here. And we see Egg Noob having to back out big time. Solar Beam Buzzwall moving in. Oh, nice Unite move by the Buzzwall. Bliss Assistance back on top of the candle. They're looking to move here. Buzzwall Unite is back out, collapsing on top of Sylveon, chipping them up. DLR goes down. OG goes down back the other way. But there's already Mame down as well. They found that target. Egg Noob's looking for a deep engage on Wafu. Can they collapse? Collapse on top of the candle, no. They pivot back to the middle. Crustle is dancing right in front of Espo. And Stockings, Lutano say, not today, Chief. Nice surf back through the wall to impede the pres presence of two more players on Unite Holics. But we are just motoring through them now. Yeah, Unite Holic, the Crustle finally goes down after that massive shield from its Unite move. We still have a Unite on Inteleon. We still have a Unite on Clefable. We have Sylveon, and we have Mimikyu on the other side. Both of these teams ready for a fight right here, pushing forward to towards this candle. Sylvia on Unite move jumping in, seeing what they can do. Here comes Buzzwool ready to clean it up right now. There's the combo we were talking about. Picks up two. And now we're going straight on top.
off of Mame. Mame engaged on OG, but right in their pocket is another player. GT, it's Espo, who just rolled the hyper beam, picked up and put down. No amount of Shedinja dolls are going to save you from that. Beat down as Yupano goes in for the next scissor, but that is just nothing but curtains as well. That Litwick might as well be a Litwick on the right-hand side of your screen because it might be a candle, but it's got snuffed out. GT looking to score, looking to win 2-0. GT takes this 2-0 against Unite Hollick. They are going to win their match right here, and that means the end of the road for Unite Hollick as GT is going to move on in this tournament. That is the game they wanted to win. Losers finals, they press forward in this event. GT now one step closer to fulfilling their destiny that they know is on the horizon. They've got the shirts on, on their vision wardrobe, if you will, and now they've taken the next step. Yeah, GT ready to continue moving through this tournament. You know, they make it through the Swiss rounds on a nail biter. They were 3-2, so it depended on how the other teams were shaking out. They were able to make it in right here, able to win this game 2-0, and now that they're in this bracket looking like, you know, a new GT. Oh, without a doubt. You know, the, the you know, double paddles to the chest from the Nouns game. This is a breath of just revival into GT. They are now pressing forward in the event, right? It doesn't matter how you get here. It's what you do with the opportunity once you are here. And they certainly knocked it out of the park in their first matchup. Yeah, incredible stuff from Unite Holic as well. It was great to have them here in this tournament. Obviously, they are a massive presence in this game players that you've known and followed for years and people that you can obviously see at the world championship still in honolulu but they will not be securing their spots i just want to point out we've seen now gt the match before was announced and earlier in the day we saw on our graphic mr mime the number one played pokemon in terms of win rate that we have and the two players, two very important factors into those statistics are Egnoob and Bruv, and we just saw those quality defender players win for their team. All right, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the match statistics here in a moment as we're watching these two teams. Uh, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of love between all of these squads, a lot of respect between all of these players. You know, they recognize how much skill there is in this game worldwide, so you, you absolutely love to see it. Yeah, I mean, you look at, let's take a look at the, the stats we throw up on the screen here. 363, 156, and truly uh, kind of the GT's game, right? It was it was slow to get ahead, but once they got ahead, they kept taking incremental advantages and never handed it back to Unite Holic to really give them an opportunity. And at the end, it was a beautiful fight out of the squad to seal it up. Yeah, I mean, this is why having a score advantage heading into Rayquaza is so unbelievably important, you know? Obviously, everyone uh, will, would say something like, wow, it's the team that gets Rayquaza. And that's sort of true, but it's also the team that's able to fight correctly around Rayquaza. And when you have an advantage like GT did right there, you're just able to let Unite Pollock make the mistakes. You're able to let them make the plays, and you can punish them for it. That's exactly what we saw from GT here in Game 2. Yeah, I mean, they were able to target down the players of Unite Holic systematically in exactly how they wanted. They literally fell in this order. Mame, then DLR. And then it was Wafu that was taking the Bliss assistance, which you would have loved on Mame. You know, Yupano was caught out, and I'm not saying caught out as and put down, but they were so far away from the rest of the team yes. that it made it so easy to finish up uh, uh, Asa, uh, uh, Asa, Asa, uh, Asa, 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 Asa. He'll get there, everybody. Yeah, maybe not. I think we're just going to have to interrupt him for a bit, but I bet if we come back from break at some point, he'll have figured it out. Nope. What an incredible game. Oh, I mean, terrific. amazing. It's so good seeing GT do so well. A lot of these bracket teams, you know, they've got that hungry energy. We saw it from Nouns earlier. We're seeing it from GT right right now they want to win this thing they had to go through an absolute gauntlet mm -hmm. in that in those swiss rounds best of one games yep. against all of the best teams out there it's crazy and they got it done yeah and they got it done and you have to remember gt made it in to this group stage and they're in losers which means they played their first match in the group stage and lost were able to mentally get it back together to take a win here yeah, and well, hey, when you're in the loser's bracket, somebody's got to win, right? And there are teams all the time that move through that loser's bracket and do something incredible. I want to throw it over to the stage here. We have an interview on stage with Espo from GT. Let's send it on over. Take it away. 
Thank you so much, casters. That's right, we are with current winners, GT Espo. What an incredible game, a very hard fought 2-0 uh, victory for GT. And now only one game stands between you and top eight. You've had a gauntlet of matches today. Who do you think has been the toughest opponent you've played in this tournament? Because you've played so many teams. I mean, it's hard to tell. First of all, my respects to everybody playing today. Like, every game was challenging. We had to fight through the win. And, you know, I'm really glad to meet everybody here. And, you know, but if I have to choose one team, I would say probably LG, even though they're not here, you know, they're still an amazing team. You know, my respects to them was a really tough game. Absolutely, that makes a lot of sense. And obviously, G2, you guys are a storied roster in North America. You've been competing for so long, didn't have the chance to play at North American National Championships last year, but now you're here at EUIC. You made it past the Swiss stage. How good does it feel to finally play on a main stage for Unite, Espo? Uh, it feels amazing. Like, uh, unfortunately, I had to miss NAIC due to visa issues last year and due to that Worlds as well, but here we are, you know, first LAN tournament for me, Stockings and Egg, and, you know, it, it just feels amazing being here, you know, meeting so many new people and playing on a stage just feels like it just feels so different, so fun. Right. And now you have one more match in between you and Top 8. You're going to face the loser of Copy Babas and Rework Respawn. I mean, how do you get your head straight on? You have so many games in a row now at this point. How do you prepare for one more game of the day? Lots of caffeine. Okay, awesome. That's some good advice. Fantastic. We'll throw it back over to Do Snacks and Spraggles. Lots of caffeine, Spraggles. And Lots that's of awesome. caffeine. That's how we operate. Absolutely. You that's know, how we operate. We are gassed up, not only from the Pokemon Unite, but from all that coffee, baby. And gasoline. Which yeah. is the other thing we keep under the desk alongside the milk. Yeah, I'm glad we never cut to us messing around with that gasoline. That would be a huge, huge problem right here. Looking at some of those big moments here from this last game. Unite Holic versus GT. GT with a nice big 2-0. Yeah, we're taking a look at this uh, like clip from game one here. We see the Miss Shadow sneak, and this is where we're able to exchange the Unite move for a knockout on a quality target in Mame. You said you love that, so do I, because yep. Gardevoir does get that Unite move back so quickly. Yeah, it's such a great play. You know, you just use it to even isolate a KO or two, and it's absolutely worth it. They'll have it back in about a minute. So if you're able to nail a few of those, you can really turn the tide of a lot of these fights. You can see the slow beam like you talked about onto the Mimikyu. So many resources being used to take this Pokemon down. They know that they had to. Big play by Unite Olic right there, taking out Lutano as you move back through that portal. Uh, this fight is just continuing on and on and on. Yeah, so now we're looking at the beginning stages of game two where we saw Lutano kind of dig real deep to try and get a knockout. Maybe thought the team was falling behind them, didn't quite shake out the way they thought, but it doesn't matter. They were able to find their presence and their footing in other ways, and this is certainly one of them. Mame turning the tides with their Unite move, kind of forcing the rest of GT to scramble them. Yeah, they forced GT to scramble. We had that beautiful secure, I think, for just from the boosted attack on a gravity from that Clefable, which is always really impressive. Nice KO there onto the Buzzwall. Obviously, the Chandelure having to pull that Unite move around to make sure that they could take them down. This is when Stockings was moving in. She was not able to finish it off right there and actually gets taken down here uh, over on the side of Unite Holic. Yeah, and this is where, okay, that's a little breath of fresh air for Unite Holic, but we get into this final team fight and it was perfect. They get Asasa, Asasa. There we go. Asasa. You'll get it one day. It's impossible. <laughs> and they're moving through. They do, the, you know, of course, Espo rolls the hyper beam, able to do a ton of damage and quickly using that high roll of the dice of the Clefable Unite move to engage quickly. And that's exactly what they did. Yupano, no chance here. Wafu, the candle, last one standing, like I said, just gets absolutely snuffed out. And there we have the play of the game you just saw him on camera that was lutano on the intellion look it could have been stockings we know stockings intellion is absolutely insane but lutano piloting it this game lutano i mean i feel like was one of the original snipe shot believers and now it feels like everybody's on the snipe shot bandwagon it's a terrific ability it's a terrific pokemon lutano actually using the snipe shot and being the first person on broadcast at the world championships actually got a penta with the intellion if you recall yeah i mean it was incredible to watch and now we are watching lutano in a new squad but still dominating with a lot of these pokemon here it's incredible it's great to see gt here but you know it is sad to see unite all it go for sure that is without a doubt now we've got more pokemon unite coming right around the corner i'm going to try and figure out how to say asasa while okay. we're on break i probably won't not going to lie but we are going to take a pause for the cause we're going to throw it to the break we'll be back don't go anywhere
2023 NAIC game against TTV and Amaterasu. I think I was playing Sableye. There was a there was this game where I spun as a Sableye in tier one after using ult instead of immediately scoring. And that score, uh, that score not making it made us lose the game. Actually, my jungler uh, punched me after uh, after that after that. <laughs> It, yeah, in my shoulder. <laughs> I don't. I, I'm trying to think if I have something hype, like or something funny to put in, but I don't think. I don't think so. I think my most embarrassing moment is when we lost March, because it was the only up to now. It was the only regional tournament that I, that we lost. Like out of the, the 12 Brazilian tournaments that there were, we won 11. Like so, the one we lost is like kind of annoying because it's really like. It makes the record like not perfect. It's like, oh, okay, we have like a 93% win rate. Okay, it's not 100. It's really annoying that it's not 100 because like we could have won. Like, it's, it was so close. Yeah. That's the most, I, I want to say embarrassing, but like the most in annoying moment. I, I, have a, I have a lot, honestly. Okay, I, I have a good one for this actually. So, uh, over three years of Pokemon Unite, I've had a lot of experiences where people have probably made a lot of fun of me. And that's that's just how it is. <laughs> you just gotta learn to go with the blows. I would say number one is probably what uh, has stayed with me from season one when I used to play jungle roll and or central roll, and that was the Cinderace Corfish ult. It's the final game of the regional finals against 1620 Kings, and my Cinder ult auto aims onto a Corfish, costing us the game. Very fun way to go out. I mean, look, it's been clipped, it's been watched a thousand times or whatever. It's, yeah, it's fun. It happens. I guess, like, <laughs> it can happen to anyone, guys. <laughs> Don't name your Cinder Old some Corfish. What's up, Pokemon trainers, and welcome to the Pop Up Pokemon Center here at the European International Championships at the XL London. <laughs> How's it going? I'm just in a living room today. Yeah, I mean, check out all these amazing plushies. Which one's your favorite? Probably the sleeping Narian is just here. It's just so cute. Oh, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> No way! All the Jumbo Plush? You've got to be kidding me! We've got the Psyduck, the Slowpoke, okay, that's my favorite, the Piplup and the Lucario. I mean, what what more is there to want here? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, hey, Rosemary, didn't see you there. How you doing? I'm good, how are you, Spragles? I'm doing amazing. I'm just enjoying Arcanine's beautiful hair and its volume. I mean, you definitely know. One day, I'll get there. <laughs> Oh, hey, Boo, how's it going? Going pretty well. I'm looking at all these beautiful play mats. <laughs> they are pretty amazing. Yep, all these super exclusive, just for EUIC uh, international play mats. I love that. The play mats are really cool. There's notebooks. There's, there's kind of a lot here. <laughs> Amazing is this. This is the Pokemon Center at EUIC. I'm gonna see you guys later because I'm about to go shopping. We want to invite you to Honolulu, Hawaii in 2024. We look forward to seeing you here. Ahui ho aku no. We 
are back here live in London at EUIC for the AOS Cup. Welcome back, everyone, to the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. We have more incredible games of Unite coming at you here in just a moment. We are now in our group stage. Our open bracket is done. All of those teams that made it through are now filtered into our groups, and we're watching one of them today. Yeah, uh, but before we get into that, Spraggles, Let's listen to the comms from GT when they win their second game here in the group stage. Let's hear those let's comms. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it. I'm going top. I'm going top. I'm going top. Heading there. Heading there. Heading. Stop on Blissey. I'm running at them. Run 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 at them. All right. Run at them. Go. 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 They're not hitting. They're not hitting. Okay. Look at Sylvie. Look at Sylvie. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Don't play at all. Don't play at all. Don't play at all. Run at, run at, mimic, run at, mimic, 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 Let's go. Ready? One more, guys. We're top eight. One more. One, one more. more. One more. That. One more. Beautiful stuff right there <sighs> from GT. I mean, you love to hear, especially you know when the team is winning. The comms on the other side. I don't know if they're as good. Yeah. I gotta be honest. You know. I, I've heard some of our communication when we're playing Unite and losing a lot. Oh, let me tell you. If you're on our team and we're losing, we are blaming you. We got a lot Guaranteed. to say. Guaranteed. We got a lot to say. In your defense, mm -hmm. we blame each other a lot, and then we both. And for our own self-esteem, have to pivot. We to agree you. that it must have been someone else. It had to be somebody else. Had but these teams, there is no one else. I mean, they are the team. They are making these decisions. Let's take a look at our bracket right here because there are a lot of interesting stories here today. Uh, I want to see where we're at. Group A right now. So we had Nouns Esports move in, go up against E7 Janus. They were able to take them down 2-0. E7 Janus against Antic Esports, taking them down, eliminating Antic Esports. Nouns Esports up one game against Alter Ego, your champions from North America. They're gonna go up uh, into the, uh, advance into the winners, and the loser is gonna fight against E7 Janus. Let's take a look at Group B right here, Doob Snacks. Group B, we already have our elimination match squared up, and that's Copy Babas and G. T rework respawn to owing copy babas and that is not an easy team copy babas specifically has been on an absolute heater from the open bracket into this group stage and rework respawn i mean as you saw earlier just such a difficult team many teams have said they're worried about going up against them we can take a look at group c here in just a second so we can see where we are at we see for free is going to go up against outer banks copy chance against shin and rude what a match right there. I mean, unbelievable. Shinarude taking down Outer Banks 2-0. Traveling from east to west to battle it out against each other, and then EU on their home turf squaring off to see if one of them can keep their dreams alive. Let's take a look at Group D, where uh, if you're an NA fan, you're going to have some surprises here. Yeah, so here we go. Legacy Fusion, you saw that earlier on broadcast. Fusion winning that 2-0. They're going up against Team YT. They beat Team YT 2-0. Now, Nemesis, who we're going to be watching here in our next match against Legacy, loses to Team YT. So the loser of this match eliminated. The winner going up against Team YT. If Nemesis wins, they're going to have to go right back up Mm -hmm. against Team YT, the person who sent them down to this loser's bracket. And Nemesis had that perfect run Correct. throughout our open bracket. So it's interesting seeing them in the losers so early. Not only that, perfect run through that open bracket. Team YT needed some bracket magic to squeak into that eighth slot at three and two. And again, it doesn't matter how you get to the group stage. It's what you do with that opportunity. And YT is not letting go. Yeah, YT is not letting go. They want to stay in this tournament. But I mean, there are so many monstrous teams in here. I mean, can anyone beat Fusion right now? We're God, watching some good. of these losers bracket games right here. But even if they're able to win these and push through, they are going up against some monstrous teams. Yeah, I mean, we saw how the brackets can potentially shake out. And uh, it doesn't matter what is ahead of you, it's going to be difficult. We're taking a quick look here, Team Profile and Nemesis. We actually were had fortunate enough, you and I, to speak to Yeet and Asenable. So you're familiar there. Metallic, my player to watch, makes it here. And now that we're getting him on stream, I can't wait to see what they can deliver on. LGC wrecks to round this thing out. Yeah, and a Yeet fan now known as 2016 fan. You know, sometimes you just pick a year and you're a fan of it. And I, I think that's what Yeet did here. Yeah, and 2016, honestly, not even in my top 
2,000 years. Wow. I mean, I, I don't know about that. I, I think there's some bad ones. If you go back 2,000 <laughs> years, I don't know about the Middle Ages. I think we might get one or two out of that. Ever heard of the Mesozoic era, bro? You're not a fan of any of those years? I don't like when you bro me with history. It's just intense, okay? We can see Mazo on the stage right now getting ready for this game. Obviously, we talked a lot about Legacy earlier. Mazo, Lel, Wolf, Sotau, and Falb. They looked great in their games earlier. As we talked about a few times, I was so impressed with some of their draft choices, mm -hmm. but they weren't able to get it done. Yeah, just got eked out by the mystery Trevenant, whatever it was there in game two. But I really think that Legacy is on point with their drafts. They just need to step into these games and deliver, right? I don't even know what you could have done in that Trevenant situation specifically, but it's really test your mental. You got to reset from that and find your way here. And they are on the brink of moving forward. Yes, they are. Both of these teams, incredible. Both teams that you could expect to see seeing each other in a winner's bracket, but here they are. One of them has to send the other one home right now. We're gonna see if it's gonna be, you know, North America or it's going to be Brazil moving forward. Well, uh, Trainer LGC, let's take a look at them. We didn't get to chat with them, but a perennial UCS gamer here. Trainers Mimic, you win loss records 10 of four now bad and of course maybe why people directly ban Mimikyu out from under this team. Yeah and you can see they are also one of the highest MVP players in UCS so they make a lot happen inside of a match. If you are a player like Trainer and you're playing some of these carry Pokemon, the only way you're getting MVP is if you are carrying these games, racking up huge KOs and being a difference maker in all of these fights. Yeah uh, LGC just a little of a story about them really helped popularize the Decidueye Greninja uh, situation, where Greninja had fallen off on literally everybody's competitive radar. LGC was coming in making an impact in kind of one of the biggest Greninja player lulls that we've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, they've had some amazing combinations here uh, on the side of Nemesis. We're gonna take a look at Falb on the side of Legacy right now, playing the Blastoise, playing the Blaziken. A lot of teams, if they know a Blaziken player is on the other side, they are not letting that Pokemon get through. Yeah, because Blaziken expert Blaziken players become problems because of just, because the Unite switching between different types of movesets, able to go deep with, with the, the punches, with the overheat critical massive, not only secure tool, but massive damage source as well. And being able to pivot to such a radically different Pokemon as Blastoise really shows the just the, the malleability and the diversity that Falb has in their Pokemon Unite pool. Yeah, I mean, Blaziken's a really interesting Pokemon played competitively right now. It's a very strong Pokemon. Pokemon, but it does not have a Unite move uh, that's typical of a lot of the other Pokemon in the game, right? It switches up its moveset. What you'll notice is great Blaziken players, they're putting a lot of pressure on their opponents because at the worst thing really that could happen with that pressure uh, is that they could make it so that the enemy uses a Unite move right? And they don't really have a Unite move to worry about. They just continue their combos, they continue fighting, they can bait Unites out of their enemy, and then at the same time, whenever they're ready, they can set up massive secures and massive damage with that overheat. So many options with a Pokemon like this, a very high skill ceiling Pokemon. You see the best of the best pick something like this up, and they're able to devastate with it. Yeah, absolutely. And coordinated team play to follow that Blaziken and facilitate what they're trying to do and be able to respond to those moves. Oh, they land a big overheat? Everybody needs to pile in and close out the KO. Oh, they get deep onto it, engage? Where's my support and tank there for the follow-up so the Blaziken can get out if they aren't able to be successful on the KOs? And that is really what makes the difference between a Blaziken that we see here on the UCS stage and maybe a Blaziken that you're playing with in your solo queue as Mazo is just cheesing to the camera, something that they're incredibly used to doing. Yeah, he's just being extremely cute. I mean, I'm not going to lie. The guy is incredibly cute. He's doing a great job being a cutie pie up there. We're going to take a look at some big Mazo moments right here. Some big baby Mazo moments here. Big baby Mazo moments. Take a look. Let's take a look. It's a thing. It's a video. Yeah, so like, what makes her special is definitely... One is how long we've been together. So we've been together with like basically the same roster with like one or two, two changes since 2021, since like November 2021. So it's been a while. Um, we know each other from everything that we do like in our lives, like from hobbies to how we're gonna play in game to how it, overall things, what training schedule fits better. We're also all really, really technically good at the game. So like, Ever since everybody joined somebody, everybody was already pretty good in some other game.
So like me and Fob came from League of Legends. Wolf came from like a lot of mobile games before. He was actually a pro in another mobile game before. Um, Leo and Soto were like high elo in some other games. Um, so that's basically the main differential. Like Pokemon Unite, it's not any any of us first good game, which I think helps a lot. Like bringing the baggage and just improving on the baggage that you already had makes it, it makes it so your peak can be a lot higher. I don't know how it's gonna be this year. Like since we made fifth last year, I don't think it's gonna be the same way. But people actually see us as underdogs. Like we come from a region that historically in MOBAs is not really good to be honest. Like our best performances are not going 0 and 20 in group stages. And uh, right now, like last year in 2022, obviously that may they may have helped with making teams underestimate us, but now I think it's gonna change a little bit and teams are gonna respect us a lot more. So we can actually follow that in and um, try to be more aggressive than we were last year and like be more dominant. I think being an underdog actually helps in like some stages, but you can also turn it around and make it like an advantage to be respected. Oh, hey, welcome back to the Pokemon Unite Championship Series. That's as cute as we can possibly be. Are we as cute as Mazo? Not even close. No. Not, not even close. I wish we were, though. But if we had, it's because we didn't have enough time to practice. Yeah, I mean, come on here. I, the guy is just so charismatic. Why won't he come to my birthday? Forget it. But imagine if we finally master the magic tricks that we're working on, and we could have done that. Maybe, uh, like, pigeons out of my not sleeve, like, kind of do one of those things, like, where'd the pigeon come from? Just... I got to be honest, I think if birds started coming out of our clothing, people would like us less. <laughs> debatable. <laughs> it is tr it truly is. As long as we don't do it too much. As long as it's not like it, birds, like every single if every like, time you cut back to us, birds came out of our clothes. I don't know what this <laughs> broadcast would be. Okay, but I'd be I'd be here for it. I'd be excited about it. I'm excited about seeing these two teams uh, really go at it here. Obviously, again, as we said before, two teams that could be coming you know at each other in the winners bracket. Here they are in losers. One of these amazing squads is going home right now. What do you think is going to be the difference maker here? Well, since we're talking a lot about birds. Um, I'd like to see oh, this. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. That's a bird's wings. That's what that noise is. Anyways, I would like to see uh, Fobbs Blaziken hit the map. We didn't have the opportunity to see it last time. I would love to see it here, um, mainly because you and I haven't uh, cast Blaziken yet today, and I think that Pokemon's are a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, Blaziken is amazing. You know, I really felt like the draft we saw earlier from Legacy looked so good. If they're able to bring that here against Nemesis, Nemesis yep. could be in real trouble. On the other side, Nemesis is just one of these teams that's so hard to beat. Let's take a look at our brackets one once more here, Dupe Snacks. Yeah, Group D, of course, where we are right now is Legacy versus Nemesis. Fusion just on a tear. 2-0, 2-0 already advanced to, to the group stage here, or excuse me, to uh, top eight. YT able to take a cheeky win 2-0 against Nemesis, finds himself in the elimination match, one game away for them. But there's so much work for Legacy and Nemesis to do right now. Yeah, absolutely. Again, if Nemesis wins this, they got to go right back up against Team YT. If Legacy wins it, they got to take down Team YT. And as I've always said about Team YouTube, any given day, this team can beat the best in the world. And look, you saw him 2-0 Nemesis earlier in this bracket. Of course, and when you look at Team YT, you know, you have your, your, your greatest hit players there, of course. But who I want to focus on is the addition, late addition of Pika Diff, mm -hmm. world's qualified player multiple years in a row, and an Otter from TTV, when that team broke up, found their new home on this YT squad. And they are stepping up to the challenge. Honor winning NAIC last year, the regional finals. Pikadiff, a seasoned LAN pro out here in Unite and helping YT break through that glass ceiling. Yeah, but all of these players that we are watching right now, I mean, all of Legacy, mm -hmm. all of Nemesis, they all have a, a ton of experience, not only playing in UCS, but playing under the big lights on the big stage. And let me tell you, it's different out there. Even doing an interview, I get a little nervous. You get the flutters? Oh, it's scary out there. I mean, there's so many people. You know what would have made it less scary? Birds. I really feel like birds are scarier. <laughs> Actually, you're, you're probably right. I think if I come out there ready to do an interview with a jacket full of birds, I'm in trouble. I got to be honest, I think I'm if, in trouble. If it works, it's awesome. If it goes the way most of the stuff we do, problems, not just for us, but for anybody within a bird's vicinity, which they can fly, I've heard, which is a lot of distance. No, we know. We won't do the birds. Yeah, we didn't even bring them. 
get rid of the birds. They're not in my ear saying no to the birds, so we're, we're split on the birds. At yeah, time. we're going to we'll figure it out. We'll figure out what we're doing with these birds. We're going to figure out what we're doing with these two teams as they are getting ready for this match right here. As we talked about, I really want to see some Blaziken here mm -hmm. out of these teams, but I don't know if we're going to get to see it. Trainer, one of those players that can pick up a lot of Pokemon. I feel like I've seen teams ban out a Mimikyu against Trainer, Leafeon against Trainer. I mean, Trainer can pull out a Greninja at any moment. I mean, we saw Trainer really lean into the Razor Leaf Leafeon when that had popped up. So, I mean, their pool is deep. But let's take a look at some uh, the replay from Fusion Legacy earlier today, which was just a phenomenal matchup yeah. between Brazil and Latam. Such a great matchup right here. Legacy playing very well against Fusion, but nobody's beaten Fusion today so far. Fusion pushing towards this goal zone right here, uh, and we see Legacy able to clean up in that fight. And this is uh, just a crazy game one match between these two teams. And it was truly, it felt kind of back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. It really was back and forth the entire way through with these two games. They were both pretty close. I would say game one felt like Fusion was more in control. Game two, Legacy really had a great shot right here. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's one of the, it's one of the perfect examples of, yes, Fusion 2 owed, but it felt way closer than just that, what that scoreline would indicate. Yeah, absolutely. When you see some of these games, I mean, you could see a, a series that's 2-1, and it's not as close as this one that was 2-0 right here. Blastoise doing some big work down here in the bottom path. Blastoise just such an absolute powerhouse in Unite right now. And you can see where Falb leans into that Blastoise and able to make some pretty decent moves for the team. But unfortunately, Fusion was just getting too big, too quick in this one as we started getting to the final throws. Yeah, and they've got that Mimikyu right there, already level 13 here at the three minute mark. Just able to do some serious work whenever they do decide to move in. Yeah, uh, this is a, a phenomenal team fight by Fusion as well able to just get on top and look we're going to see the surf here to displace i believe it's draken no draken gets knocked out they're going to take the tree a nemo with the surf to get the spacing out and just they focus fired on the wrong thing and then the mew and the mimikyu take over yeah the mimikyu just able to continue moving through here with that bliss assistance on the extra damage the big shield and then they wipe legacy off the board Nice win there for Fusion. Now we go into game two, and this was a little bit more under Legacy's control. Yeah, this match felt a lot closer. The draft felt a lot better. I love the decision not to bring in a Pokemon with a ton of dive. They have some huge moments with Blastoise. We just have one of the craziest finishes of the tournament so far. You know, we have Fusion secure Rayquaza with maybe what is Trevenant breathing on it? It's unclear. Yeah, it might have been a pain split tick on the Ray. It might have been a basic attack. Who knows? We know. You don't know at home. But if you could let us know just so we can confirm that your answer is right, let us know. Yeah, it's important that you know that we know. You know, we don't want to be the people who have no idea how that happened. Yeah, we, don't, we, we, we don't know a lot of stuff, but this one thing we do know. Yeah, this we absolutely do know. Slowbro right here being taken down. You see we're at the four minute mark, big time Blastoise Unite move here in the top path as we're getting ready to head towards Rayquaza for that massive moment here between these two teams. Mew picking up multiple games. Mew doing a lot of great work here today. Yeah, I mean, between uh, Fusion, between GT, it's, I mean, YT, Otter is a phenomenal Mew player that we we're going to see potentially in this elimination match later. And then just a terrific end game fight by Legacy. Unfortunately, the tree existed in the sphere of the Ray and took it. Yeah, and they ended up taking it and, down. And, you know, that's the way it goes. That's, that's how the, the cookie that, crumbles. That is the way it goes sometimes. And, you know, when Burn. you're th when you're the team that is ahead in a situation like this, you are able to make plays like that. You are able to have something fall your way because you are already up one game birds. <laughs> one game. See, now we don't even need the birds to just have the birds be a thing. It's wonderful. Put them in post. Birds. <laughs> I'll, I'll do all the sound effects. Can I do the sound effects? Uh, we'll find out for production if you're allowed to do the sound effects. <laughs> let's take a look at the most picked Pokemon. Sure. Let's do that. Yeah, let's put look. it on the screen. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's take a look at what we got here. Espeon, a top pick, and we expected this here. Eldegoss seeing insane amounts of play. Sylveon, one of the top picks in the game. Yeah, so I'm taking a look the rest of the way through. Blastoise, Crustle, Hoopa, all uh, really known quantities. Nothing, no real surprises across the board here, just how the meta has uh, shaken out. But I want to focus on Sylveon specifically. Oftentimes in the bot uh, path attacker's hands is that Sylveon. But there are so many flashy players 
Mazo on Legacy that you really would like to see them on a, a pop-off Pokemon that has a little bit more mobility, can have some crazier plays. And Sylveon, because of the role it fills, happens to fall in the hands of a player like Mazo. And uh, not the flashiest thing, it's just a hard worker. Yeah, Sylveon just does. It puts in the work, it screams at everybody, and it sends them on. It's like home. you. Yeah, well, I, I scream at everybody off camera. <laughs> Good call. Blastoise, Crustle, Hoopa. You know, all the po these are all Pokemon, by the way, on our list of Pokemon that we expected to see a lot of here mm -hmm. today. I'm not surprised to see. So, hey, hey, there we are. We got a lot of these. I'll tell you who's been missing from competition almost entirely. Meowskarata. Yeah, that is a Pokemon that both you and I honed in on. I thought it, I thought it could be kind of a deep pick difference maker, mm -hmm. um, and it just hasn't materialized that way. Nope. But um, Trevenant has looked great, and we're just kind of going across the board. Zoinks calling out the Blaziken, but unfortunately, we've actually seen it banned more yeah. than we've seen it picked when you and I have been in the booth. Same thing with, you know, Buzzwool there from uh, Wonder Chef. Obviously, this is a powerhouse Pokemon, but also just banned out a ton. Mm -hmm. I, again, I am surprised no one's deciding to pick up that Meow Skirata. It's so powerful right now. That Unite move is absolutely insane. But clearly, you know, teams are not doing well with it in some of these scrims, and that's why you're not seeing it here in some of these games. All these teams getting together here in London, and before they are competing here on the big stage, they are playing game after game after game with each other in these scrims, and you're learning a lot. And if you play a ton of games and you find out that your Meow Skirata just is not cutting it anymore, right. then you're not bringing it out here today, of course. Well, when we were talking to Nemesis earlier today, again, a team we're going to see here in a few moments, mm -hmm. they were talking about since they landed here in London, they've been scrimming two, three scrim blocks a day since Monday, every day to today. And they're a team that are incredibly creative, but they do litmus test their creativity to make sure that they're just not throwing stuff the wall once they actually get into a match. And Mouskarada might have fallen victim to that testing cycle. I think a lot of teams it might have. We're going to take a, a look at Group A right here. We have an update inside of Group A. Uh, as you can see, Antix Esports taken down uh, by E7 Janus. We already talked about this. Nouns Esports coming from that open bracket, taking down Janus, taking down Alter Ego 2-0. They are heading to the winner's side of our top eight. Nouns Esports is trying to change the narrative that they've built for themselves by hook or by crook this season in February and March. They have fallen shy of our expectations, of their own expectations, of all their fans' expectations, because everybody can see the individual strength of each single player, and that everybody's wondering, why is this not clicking? I hope that this is a tournament, and what a tournament for, to turn that around than this one. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Everyone in the community is basically saying, look, Nouns Esports, we're not mad at you. We're just disappointed. Very okay? disappointed. We expected more out of you. But all of a sudden, Nouns Esports coming back in this thing, winning their way to this moment, and now they are doing incredible once they hit our group stage. And that's what they need to do. They need yep. to win this tournament right now. Even talking to members of Nouns Esports, you know, ask them, like, How, how's the day going so far? And it's kind of like, ah, we're, you know, we're doing all right. We're winning some games. And these are from some players who I think could really enjoy the level that they are at in this game. But they have been humbled a bit at the start of this season. Well, this could be the moment that turns it around for Nouns. Yeah, I mean, I, we talked about before. I, thought, I called them my, my dark horse because it's hard to make them a clear front runner when they haven't actually delivered on that yet. And it's shocking to say Nouns is a dark horse. Let's take a look at some community tweets. Yeah, let's take a look at what everyone's saying on social media here. On the about social. Our, about on the social. Here we go. In London, good luck to all my friends competing at EUI. Say it didn't say good luck to the casters. Uh, I, feel, I feel slighted. Uh, it, this tweet was probably after we started talking about the bird thing in their defense. But they did take a great picture. I believe that's inside of the Pokemon Center, that uh, uh, neon signed Pikachu, and it looks terrific. Yeah, that does look amazing. And uh, there are a lot of great competitors here playing at EUIC. This is where the fun begins. Hashtag Pokemon EUIC. It's weird. It's not a picture of the casting booth. I've always said that's where the fun begins. Yeah, we're another, another tweet sliding me. <laughs> well, back to back, crazy, ever since the birds downhill. We are actually tucked behind that gigantic floating Pikachu. You can't see us because we're actually on its back laying flat. Yeah, it's it's weird. It looks like we're standing up, but we are pressed up against the back of that Pikachu staring into a camera. Is it odd? Sure. Did we request it? <laughs> you know we did. Birds. Next one. Do we have another one? I just called for another <laughs> tweet. Uh, I know we have one. Next nope. one. Next one. Next one is us. 
We're, it's because we're walking. We are just walking tweets ourselves. Well, there's nothing better than you immediately saying next one and hearing there isn't another there one. There isn't anything else because much like how I'm wrong about so much stuff, the one thing I'm not wrong about or I definitely know about is how that Trevenant secured Rayquaza. As we all do. And now we're getting ready here for this game. Still waiting for our players on stage sure. so they can check in and get ready for this match. A huge match. Once again, Nemesis Legacy. Uh, I can't wait to see it. I, it's hard because I'll be honest with you, everyone at home. I want to root for North America. You know, I want my home region mm -hmm. to do well. I'm a huge fan of Legacy. I think they're incredible. So it's I, I'm torn right now. I'm Natalie and Bruglia over here because I am torn that is a hilariously awesome 1990s reference that you and i are probably the only too old enough to know let's uh, show the tweets about that reference can we can we None? get the tweets please jeez oh we have we don't have them yeah who would who would have thrown the tweets that don't exist certainly not me certainly not 42 seconds ago now i guess uh, the real question here is after this after the dust settles which team here has a better shot of taking down youtube well, so it, it might actually be legacy because these NA teams are so deeply rooted between, um, like, stitched into each other in routine competition that I think they might be a little bit more solved. So legacy, using the advantage of all the information they have, is able to throw a curveball, see if they can, uh, you know, put one past YT, if you will. It really is interesting how the play inside of each region can be extremely competitive, even if for whatever reason that team heads to the world stage and has mm -hmm. a lot of trouble, right? North America last year is a, is a great example of this. Such a competitive region. Uh, the eventual world champions, Luminosity, had so much trouble in every tournament in North America. They won some, they lost a lot of them, they did qualify for Worlds, but they had a tough run. Then they come to Worlds and they're like a, a brand new team. They're absolutely destroying it. And this little mini Worlds that we have here, we are seeing a lot of those moments materialize as well, where these are the best teams in their regions. However, you know, you've got Nemesis running up against YouTube and these two teams are what can actually stop something in NA, another NA team. Right, and actually it's almost the running joke of what the open bracket is because, of course, in Swiss, you're paired up against teams with similar records, and it's done essentially randomly within those uh, score lines. Well, it just fell that way that NA just kept facing other NA yes. teams, so they were systematically knocking themselves out from contention. We might see it happen yet again. Well, you asked for five NA teams. You got four. I got four. That's actually pretty great. You know, we got four NA teams qualified from that bracket. A lot of absolutely incredible teams. We're taking a look right now at top Pokemon by win rate here in day number one. Now, obviously, some of these real high win rate Pokemon we probably did not see in a ton of games like Talonflame and Zorark. But I'll tell you, that Trevenant, that Blastoise, that Hoopa, these are in a ton of the matches. Yeah, and I'm unsurprised to see a kind of hoop on top of the support pile. It is so good when it actually gets into a game, and these top-level teams use that to out-macro the opponent, and it works great. Trevenant, though, really stepping up, and I, it's the it's forever the forgotten defender, it feels like. Like, you always think, like, it's not, like, the best, but it's always winning. It's always there. It's always relevant. And when your team has to fall back to a Trevenant defender pick, you usually feel pretty darn good. Yeah, Trevenant's just such a, a great Pokemon right now, and the fact that it now has multiple builds that all work very well, Basically, each player that wants to pick up Trevenant has their own spin on this Pokemon. All of them incredible, and that's why you see this thing with such a high win rate. 68% for a Pokemon we've seen a ton of is massive. That's clearly the superstar of the event so far. It's really good, and it often falls into different players' hands, either your top pass player or your defender specifically. But there are some defenders in this tournament, on Artigo, for, for example, Joey. I mean, they are defender main, of course, for the squad, but they are a Trevenant diehard. Right, here we go. We're getting ready. These teams are loading into the draft right here, Dupes next, and we are gonna see it. Legacy versus Nemesis, we're starting this draft. Band phase is ticking down. These teams are getting ready, and this is where we see what happens. Legacy quickly going after Mimikyu. Yeah, Legacy going after Mimikyu. Obviously, you can see Nemesis saying, we don't want to deal with this Buzzwool. You got a first pick, we're not gonna let you have it. Possible Crustal Band, which we do see right here, and then the Leafeon. We're gonna have to see how this draft shakes out. Trevenant, possibly the first pick right here. I mean, statistically, it wouldn't be a bad idea, but we can see if there's something else that they really want to grab early. 
Hoopa is a solid choice. Get that prime, prime support out of the way. But Eldegoss is still going to be available for Nemesis later on, theoretically. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have Mamo Swine coming out on the side of Nemesis? Let's go. I can't believe it went so early, but maybe they know that someone on Legacy wants it. The way Asenable snapped his head over, there's no shot. That's the choice that they were trying to make, and they immediately called someone over. We'll see how that shakes out. As the draft does continue on here, Legacy is on the button, locking in Slowbro, and maybe hovering Sylveon as they're waiting for the rest of this thing to uh, sort itself out. I would love it if they accidentally locked in Mamo Swine and the judges said, no, we want to see Mamo. You're playing it for sure. We see the Blaziken locked in here on the side of Nemesis along with a Blissey. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of stunned here as I'm watching the face cams, to be honest, to see how Nemesis reacts to this particular situation, because this is definitely a mental stressor without a doubt. Yeah, and here we go. We're seeing the last couple Pokemon get locked in. I would love to see a Pikachu, but I don't know if we're going to see it here today, as possibly Mew being locked in as well as Gyarados. I haven't seen much Gyarados at all, but we're going to see it here on the side of Legacy. No, I believe Antic was the, the other team that was playing it on stage earlier today. Couldn't quite get the win, so... Couldn't really get the mileage that we hope to see out of it. They're locking in Glaceon, and is this the place we have to be? It looks like it. As it was, pretty, pretty good sport, <laughs> if I'll be honest. If that was that, it's just kind of chuckling, and I guess here we go. Look, Mamo is a very good Pokemon. It is a Pokemon. Res I'm it, a fan. Without question, it's a Pokemon. Resonant Guard, very powerful on it. Focus Span, very powerful. It might not be one of the top defender choices, you know, inside the game right now, but some teams can make some serious moments happen with it. I also have to say, if it wasn't an accident and this is a mind game, <laughs> that is hats off to you. Yo, man, just quality actors. Get them in the booth instead of us, who are mid-level actors. Yeah, they're like, whoa. Oh, oh all right. no, not man. They got the one. strategy. Oh, yeah, if we were doing it, it'd be like, um, what? No. Uh, but honestly, we just watched United Holics. Mame, who was playing Defender, was uh, Defender for this team before today. They pick Mamo Swine all the time. Yeah, it's true. I mean, look, Mamo Swine has some viability, and we're going to see it here in this match as we are getting ready for game number one between Legacy and Nemesis. Asenbull does have a gold badge, or excuse me, a green badge on this Mammoth Swine. It's wearing some hollow wear, so we're not just starting from nothing. Yeah, this is a Pokemon they have definitely played right here. We're going to see how it works inside this game. I'm really interested to see how Legacy is able to power up this Gyarados. Obviously, a liability at the start of the match, but this could be a huge Pokemon as we head in here to game number one. Interesting question that Legacy has to contend with. They're sounding their Magikarp top path but they have a swin up in the bottom path, which is clearly not what Asenable wants to be playing. So where do you send this Eevee that's in the center? Do you go help your Magikarp, or do you try to press a bot path advantage with a slow evolving defender? You know, it's always tough, but I feel like you gotta help the carp uh, path. You gotta try to figure something out for that carp path. They do head up to this top path here, seeing what they can make happen. We see Mazo pushing forward right here, Fan pushing forward as well. Moving forward, Mazo half HP just forced to peel back, is playing Mystical Fire this game, and Yeet Fan just putting good pressure on Fob, trying to out-secure the, the Flail Magikarp there, but quite unsuccessful. Unfortunately, Yeet Fan going to have to pivot and go somewhere else on the map. Yeah, we're going to see what happens with this Magikarp, you know, turning into Gyarados. It, it got a buff a little while back, so it actually evolves a lot faster than it used to, and that makes it a lot more competitively viable. And once it evolves into Gyarados, it, get, it gets two moves right away. So in some ways, it, it has that kind of punch that you get from an Eevee, which is with a, a very early power spike. Metallic looking for an opportunity as Torchic with the Mystical Fire Mazo goes straight on top of them, and that's a quick, quick knockout on the Chansey K opener to Legacy. Yeah, what a huge play right there. Getting the KO with the Magikarp means you're essentially instantly evolving into Gyarados, and I mean, the massive power spike is here. They're able to fight at this goal zone if they want. You can see multiple members of Nemesis coming up here like, are they coming through? Are they coming through? No, they decide to back off. Yeah, the problem with Swinub specifically uh, in comparison to a lot of the other defenders is it's tough to leave Swinub alone early, right? Whereas like a Slowbro can contend early by itself. So can Crustle, even Mime with the walls can block off, but Asenable's gonna need some help. They could only leave him for a couple moments and they had to come right back. We did hit the Pillow Swine, so we are one step closer to Mamo. Yeah, we can see Trainer here in this central area looking to see if there's something they can do. Seeing a different flavor of Glaceon than most players are playing. This is the Icy Wind, Glaceon, not that Icicle Spear, able to output tons of damage 
damage in a burst, but it doesn't kind of have that long tail on it that you see with Icicle Spear chasing opponents all the way back to their goal zones. Mystical Fire coming in, but here comes Gyarados with a little fl floopy flopper. Is that what I called it last broadcast? We'll stick with that. Tries to go in, can't quite get into the action on that Combusk and Asenable just sitting by themselves, eats an Electro Ball. Nice coverage by Yeet. Yeah, really great stuff there. Yeet coming down to this bottom path. You can see a little bit of a low level right here. Only level five on this Espeon. You're definitely hoping that your EVs are doing a little bit better than this. Already level seven for this top path Pokemon here uh, on the side of Legacy. That's that Gyarados. I mean, Mazo catching a clean reset. They're coming right back through that portal. And why wouldn't you? You are absolutely dominating this path. Yeah, and here we go. Fall pushing up in that top path. Asenable just looking for some experience right here. We're going to see what kind of Mammal Swine we've got. Do we have Ice Fang? Are we going to see Icicle Crash out of this Pokemon? It is Icicle Crash, Mammal Swine. Here comes Trainer down to this bottom path as Reggie Rock is being chipped up. Reggie Rock is down to 30% HP. Asimo goes in the back line, and now we have the Glacial Stage out and secured with the Icy Wind. That's the advantage of that. It's a great secure tool, and maybe get a courtesy KO on South Tile. They actually get the uh, Mazo as well, and now they're looking to push. Nice little, nice little maneuver here by Nemesis, trying to make this Mamma Swine work. Espeon Unite chips up. Wolf, Wolf has to pick up a berry and see where they can go. Foul, Floopy flops onto the backside, but now they're looking to score. U Unite comes out. Can they get a target? Ice School Crash right into the core of that legacy team. And look at this. They're making out like thieves in the night. There they go. Everyone getting away from this engagement right here. Beautiful, secure by the squad. You know, you just talked about it there. This is the difference between these two Glaceons. You don't expect a lot of incredible secure from Glaceon. You expected to rip objectives down, but they are going with a different strategy right here. They are playing Icy Wind, and it's going to put a different kind of pressure on Legacy. It means they can't be comfortable around any of these low HP objectives with Glaceon around, which, to be fair, you know, you can't really ever be comfortable around that Glaceon. It just does so much damage either build you play. That might have been a, a, a consolation to, oh, we're going straight in. We put the portal down, but they have to, Metallic has to eject out, darts out, tries to go back for the engage, but the Glacial stage is out again. Can they get the Gyarados KO? They do. Falb is down. Lel has to retreat. Mazo's trying to get some space here. Doesn't even go for any mystical fires on the other team, and somehow Nemesis getting the better of that exchange again. Yeah, I mean, it looked good for Legacy at the start, especially after that, you know, beautiful Gyarados Unite move, but Gyarados goes down very quickly. Nemesis able to take control of this situation. Reggie Alecki now being taken down right here. They have some insane secure on the side of Nemesis. They are able to take it down. What I was going to say before that fight broke out is I think this Icy Wind is a consolation, or uh, excuse me, a consideration because of the Mamo Swine, because that is not the defender that they necessarily wanted. Well, well, we'll go lean into our secure and try and take as many objectives as we possible and win that way. Yeah, it's very possible that that's what they're looking at right there. It's also very possible that this is just the way Trainer likes to play this Pokemon. You know, there are some builds that are so close in value to others, you just don't see them as much. Icy Wind is much harder to play than Icicle Spear. Icicle Spear is a sure hit. As long as something's in range, you're able to target them with them. You still are able to hit things in range with this, but you have to juggle your Icicles. You have to make sure that you have them fully ready for the next time you throw some damage at an enemy. And you also have to hit with your Freeze Dry to make sure that you're doing top damage. Silently, Metallic is level 10. We haven't seen them scrap, but they've really been living in this top path, haven't really joined the squad here. And now Falb and Lel working through this Regirock. Mazo looks for an opportunity on top of Rex. Rex gets floopy flopped on and now Fob is going in, gets the KO, and that's the first one they needed. Asenables by themselves, but they are a Mamma Swine going for the engage using their Unite move a little bit, I believe. And can they find another target? Just the Mew. Yeah, just the Mew, and here comes a big Gyarados Unite Ooh. move. They are able to take this Pokemon down. Getting very, very low. Espeon coming in for a possible scare. Oh, just barely, just a hair off. Nice bliss assistance there on top of Yeet Fan to keep them standing to see if they can protect this goal zone. It might be a little too much of pressure as there are everybody from Legacy is right here. Rex is taking a ton of damage. I think the slow beam popped out on them, and now they're hanging out. KO Streak, a two for the hoops. And now they're moving on Asimble, getting stunned down, but here comes Metallic. Can they make a little magic happen? LGC on the top side. Asimble goes back for the engage, and they do pick up a KO there, as now Nemesis is starting to hum around the Mammoth Swine. Yeah, Nemesis moving forward right there, switching up their stance, throwing the Focus Blast, picking up another KO. And you know, we talked about this earlier on this Blaziken. You can just keep putting so much pressure on your 
opponents. It has lower move cooldowns essentially than any Pokemon in the game, given the fact that you can switch your move set to a brand new move set that has all of their cooldowns reset. Because of that, Blaziken is just able to outplay, put insane amounts of pressure on their opponents, and really sometimes the only thing that can stop them is a Unite move of your own. Glacial stage, pretty late, under three minutes, looking for a target, forcing out the Gyarados Unite as well. They're looking for Azimal. They kick it up on top of the pad to try and get goal zones in, and they do close that goal zone, get goals in the goal zone. And now, pivoting to Mazo, can Mazo withstand the pressure? Yeah, Mazo just being targeted right here after getting goals in the goal zone, and they do go down, not able to make it back through that hyperspace hole. Really close game right now, 136-176. Regielecki walking towards this top path right here, but it looks like they're going to be able to deal with that on the side of Legacy. We've got 20 seconds now until Rayquaza. Legacy is behind, so they're going to need to make a play here at Ray. And we're going to see what Nemesis wants to do. One thing for sure, that level 14 Glaceon is going to be a real problem. It really is. As in will position, if Salto steps up, yep, they know exactly where they're at now, so does Yeet. They're not too sure where As in will is, though, looking to pivot as the Icicle Crash comes through. Ooh, look at that damage. Just incredible stuff from Trainer. We're going to get a reset on Salto right there as they are continuing to get some farm and get ready for this battle right here. Unite moves on just about everyone except for Trainer uh, on the side of Nemesis. As Salto possibly moving in right here, Gyarados possibly moving in, but no, peeling back. Peeling back a little bit, gonna catch a reset. Metallic hasn't showed their face yet. Really looking to jump on a juicy target in the back line to see if they can catch anyone. Still kind of dancing around up by 40 is Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis up by 40 right now. They're not the ones who need to make the play. They have Metallic set up in a position to come in for a fight just as soon as they catch something. Unite move here from Mazo as they're able to peel back from this. And now we see Trainer throwing out some damage and a Unite move of their own. Glacial stage is out. We're looking to pivot. Can they actually get on top of a target? Forcing out Lel's Unite move and stunning them down, taking the KO on LGC as they're moving back through. Azimuth finally pops their Unite. They're trying to jump on top of Fob. Floofy Flopper gangs rise up. KO streak of two for the Gyarados. They're pivoting back on top of the rest of Nemesis and they're falling like Dominoes. Finally, the Gyarados goes down, but at the cost of the rest of Nemesis, it's just Trainer LGC trying to withstand the tie, but they're KO'd. That's an ace. The whole team is scrubbed, and Legacy scrambling to score. Legacy looking for a score right now. They don't have the firepower to take down that Rayquaza. They need these points, and they're going to get them in one of these two goal zones right here. They are able to stop Hoopa. They are not able to stop this Sylveon. That means that Legacy is ahead right now with only 33 seconds left. We can see that Nemesis has decided to turn onto this Rayquaza and they're looking to take it down right here. Every bit of damage being thrown at it right now. They have a couple good secure tools on their side. The time is ticking away in this match right here. Rayquaza at half, looking for this secure. We can see Espeon dancing around right now. Here comes Blaziken with the overheat. Gyarados jumping in. That's a secure Blissey for scrambling. Nemesis. Blissey scrambling to score. They left. Rex left early. They're going to get this Hundo Burger in. That's going to give them a lead. There's no scores back the other way. I think they just took this thing. Nemesis making some magic happen. Nemesis. In the final moments, ripping Ray Quaza down. We're going to have to see the final score right here as the players wait, barely able to look at the scores over. Whoa! There we go. God. Nemesis takes it in a last second play. Asenable, the biggest bait and switch on a Mammoth Swine I've ever seen in my life. Ice School Crash is exactly where they wanted to be. Yeah, look at that. Oh, no, I picked the uh, Pokemon I wanted. <laughs> That was, that was a great Gyarados game out of fall. Oh, they were yeah. taking over. I probably peppered in a little too many floopy floppers, but I was really feeling it. I feel like I was giving fall energy through like the, the alliteration, floopy flopper fall. I thought that was working. Ultimately though, guys, good bounce back by Nemesis, ripping and sending Rex on the mission. Yeah, speaking of Gyarados, good bounce back. And right there, unfortunately, the flippy floppers did not give them the win. If anything, it hurt them. They did have a few big moments in their dupe snacks with that Gyarados they did. specifically. Uh, you know, using that Unite move, jumping in towards Yeet Fan in that fight, just able to take them down right at the start of that engagement. The ending fight there looked great for Legacy. They were able to score, but there was enough time on the clock. You know, yeah. Nemesis had the opportunity and they took it. Turned right on Rayquaza looking for that big time secure. And just as you called out, Rex just with a mad dash away from that uh, fight so that they can make the score happen. Let's take a little bit of the replay from this game. Glacial stage from LGC looked terrific. And that thing came back so often. And they're able to use the icing one to take crucial knockouts time after time after time.
Yeah, and we saw some big moments there from Gyarados jumping in with that Unite move. You're able to really set up some huge plays with it. Here was that fight in the bottom path right here. Mamo in a lot of trouble. We had Yeet Fan coming down trying to stop it right here. Sylveon Unite move right back the other way. Gyarados looking for a KO, and they are able to push forward and take down the Mamo Swine. That bought a little bit of time for uh, uh, Yeet Fan to make a prayer play on the Regilock. Couldn't quite seal it up, but this was a great bot, bot path push by Legacy. Yeah, really nice stuff from Legacy trying to get them back in this game score wise and in the end the score was incredibly close as this match gets ready for Rayquaza. It really really was. We're, as we go into the final throws in the minutes we can talk about maybe what Legacy was thinking because they did ace all of Nemesis but they didn't have the firepower on their squad to burn down that Rayquaza so what did they do? They made the right call they went to score however Nemesis understanding what the situation was did exactly what they needed to do to give themselves a chance. They did exactly what they needed to do here in this Ray fight picking up two KOs there, big time slow beam looking for another KO as they're able to also take this Blaziken down. As you mentioned, they take this entire team down. That KO right there could have been extremely important though from Trainer. Possibly with a third Pokemon up, they're able to take Rayquaza. They cannot, they have to run away and score. And here Nemesis has the opportunity to take down Ray. Rex runs around, throws an egg bomb and says, I'm gone. All the best, Nemesis, you need to take this for me. And they have all these secure tools, and they are able to execute Metallic, the new kid, stepping up. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest problems of any objective, if Blaziken is around it and has overheat up, it is hard to stop this Pokemon from securing right there. It's just such a difficult thing. As soon as Blaziken was making their way in, they knew they could send Blissey away. They didn't need the Egg Bomb anymore. They were ready to go. Yeah, uh, credit to Rex, who we're seeing right now on the screen. Great game, great scores, tons of healing, obviously, uh -huh. but uh, really about that scramble score at the end. Yeah, absolutely. It's just having that, you know, foresight, having the knowledge to know there's no reason to stay here. I'm not contributing enough as a Blissey in this moment. Time is running out. If we get this Ray, I need to be there to score. Yeah, they actually had, I believe, 35 points leaving the pit. Were able to pick up an extra 15 on the way there. Really make it a true hundo burger. Put themselves over the mark, guaranteed. And they delivered. Rex, just a phenomenal support player, uh, actually told me that they were able to win a game earlier today in the open bracket playing Sableye, so you know I'm a fan. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so fun to watch Sableye <laughs> in competitive play. I don't want to see it on the other side of my solo queue games. That's a little bit of a nightmare sometimes. But seeing it in competitive play is very, very fun. Legacy right now, down but not out. They have been having a tough run today. It has been. It's just the smallest of margins, the smallest of margins kind of thinking, when are one of these going to break our way? When are we going to get uh, a little bit of shine here and able to punch through? But here's the thing. It's a best of three now, Spraggles. Mm -hmm. You won, you, excuse me, you lost the first game, but you're not out. You can still win two in a row. You can do what you did to Tally Bobo Believers on the world stage right now to Nemesis. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at the same time, they had a great game. When you were able to KO all five members of the enemy team, you obviously had a very good game. If they had a slight score lead beforehand and were just able to put a few more points in, I really think they could have made something happen, obviously, but they were not able to do that. I think they made the right play to go and score right there. They just needed to get back to Rayquaza as quickly as they could so they could defend because really Nemesis only had one shot right there. Take down Rayquaza unless they could get the sneakiest score of all time. Yeah, and it was it was pretty close. It was pretty close. Yeah. Um, again, if I'm legacy, it's just, I know I speak about it a lot, but it is important, the mental. Like, how do you bounce back from that? How do you bounce back from that game two infusion? How do you bounce back from just this race secure scramble score type situation after you aced the entire opposing squad? And what do you do with this Mamo Swine? I mean, what? What? <laughs> What happened? Because you won with it. You won with Mamoswine. Do you bring it back out? Was it a mistake? Was it really a happy accident? We're going to have to find out as we head into our next draft right here. Legacy with their tournament life on the line. Nemesis looking to move forward here and, you know, get that rematch between them and Team YT. Yeah, again, quickly removing these evolutions from the equation. Sylveon and Espeon both taken off the dock. We've already seen Mazo play that Sylveon multiple times today. And actually, a lot of NA teams specifically have been locking in the Espeon. Look at that. Three of the evolutions banned here at the start of this match. Buzzwool as well. We're going to see what the first pick choice is for the side of Nemesis. 
I could see it. I could see the blaze again. It was the playmaker in that match. It really was. And you know, because of the graphic we just showed earlier, Falb is a phenomenal blaze good blaze game player. So if they don't take it here, there's a good chance that they take it with the first two. We're going to see what they want to pick on the side of Legacy. Hovering the Trevenant, they've also got the Hoopa, and it looks like they decided to go Blastoise instead. Such a power Pokemon right now. Hoopa <laughs> always getting a ton of play. And here comes the Inteleon from Yeet Fan. Yeet Fan specifically, kind of a sniper specialist, not only on Inteleon, but also Decidueye. So taking that and giving them some true long range secure puts them in a good position. Asenbolt going to lock up the tree. Maybe a little bit more comfortable on this one than the Mammo. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's probably what they were looking for. Look, they're both brown. They were moving around. They were sure. like, yeah, that's it. I guarantee that's it. And then they didn't realize what they locked in. I I am positive that's what happened. Without it, I mean, a lot of brown colored defenders in this game. We've got two on the screen right now. You mentioned Mammoth Swine. I'm sure there's a litany of other ones that I'm not going to say because you know them at home. Crustle, Glaceon stepped up and stepped in. And I like this Glaceon pick. I've been a fan and I've kind of been barking about it all day. I'm glad to see it getting some play finally. We're seeing Trainer right here hover this Mimikyu. This is a Pokemon that has been target banned mm -hmm. from Trainer. Like, people will not let Trainer play Mimikyu. So I'm excited because I want to see what all the fuss is about. If you get this deep in the draft, you have to have at least in your mental a counter to what you can actually do if you are allowing that through because Legacy banned it last game. Yeah. And they're letting it through here, and they got it late. They got this Mimikyu very late. They're going into Urshifu, I suspect, a Dark Bear. Yeah, we have really not seen much of the Rapid Strike style, a.k.a. the Water Bear, mm -hmm. here in competitive play for a while. It was still used, you know, in some of the ACL regions for a bit, but I think everyone is kind of off of this Pokemon for a brawler. Blaziken just seems to have so much more going on with it in general. Not only can it brawl, dive, fight it can also secure set up some insane plays i would love to see it but yes i think we're seeing a wicked uh blow urshifu yeah and it's it does have a kind of a two click ko onto trainer right you can use the unite move pop it up wicked blow quick ko however in the tank of a mimikyu is a pretty solid unite move in and of its own right absolutely i'm wondering if anyone on uh the side of nemesis is going to decide to switch on over to a full heal it doesn't look like it right now obviously you know you could use that to get away from that urshifu unite move to make sure it isn't really this big one hit ko combo but i don't think we're seeing that as they all have eject buttons and x speed well, you know, that's how, that's how you dodge it, I suppose. Just eject on out of here before the, of before, before the Urshifu gets close enough to press its buttons. Yeah, and here we go. Nemesis up one game, looking to send Legacy home right now. Nemesis has been playing so well today until they ran into Team YT, apparently. And now they're down here in our loser's bracket with Legacy, a team that I feel like, as we mentioned before, has been so close in so many matches but have not been able to pull out a win. Yeah, well, this is time to flip the script for them because they need to win here as we're moving through. That's right. Nemesis, your purple team. Legacy, your orange team. If Legacy cannot win this, they are going home, and Nemesis is moving on. They're fighting for their tournament life right now. Let's see what they can do. Moving through, arguing over a little bit of this wild farm as Metallic quickly scrambles to, uh, excuse me, I was going to say scrambles to score because they were on the other side of the map last time. But putting the pressure onto Falb right now, a little skull bash to get out of dodge, but they're putting a ton of damage in on this Torchic and this Chansey. Yeah, just insane amounts of damage at range against two Pokemon that have essentially no ranged options except for one move on that Torchic. So it's really tough to deal with them. They can just continue to A-press you all day long. And that's exactly what they're doing. I mean, Metallic unable to secure other things. However, they did. Looks like they skipped the lane bunnies there, so they're able to get back and get some of that easier experience. As quickly as Asenbull is like, please just let me hit level five. Yeah, here we have Trainer heading to this top path right here. I don't know if they've been seen, but you can kind of guess where this Pokemon might be. We're going to see what kind they play. They are the Shadow Claw Mimikyu as they are jumping into this fight, looking for a big KO right here. And just the resets on that Shadow Claw are so easy to get after you hit one big boosted attack, and they're able to pick up an early KO because of it. I really like the timing there. It's kind of easy to predict that after the Wicked Blow is going to be a proactive and offensive hyperspace hole by the Hoopa so that the Urshifu can literally sit in pocket Wicked Blow and then get out 
out of there if need be. So what target did they prioritize, did LGC prioritize? The Hoopa. Here we go. Wicked Blow looking for a secure right there. And I'm not even sure who got there. I think it might have been the Wicked Blow as we see this Torchic in a lot of trouble. And one of the biggest reasons it's in trouble, still a Torchic. Yeah. And then it evolves to Combuskin, which we all know, yeesh, not great. Finally, it'll get over to uh, Blaziken, but we want that in short order here. Woody Hammers are out. Icicle Spear mode for Wolf, as that is a quick way to dispatch a, uh, a Drizzile. Yeah, it's a quick way to get rid of Drizzile. It's max HP shred, makes it pretty good against a lot of these tanky Pokemon as well, as soon as it gets that at level 10. So it's a powerful move set. We're seeing two different looks here from these two teams when it comes to Glaceon. Without a doubt, still moving through here, poor Metallic is sitting as Combuskin, as they need to get to this Blaziken because that's when they can actually engage with some of the Pokemon on the other side of the map. Yeah, you can see Legacy controlling uh, a, a lot of these fights right here. However, the Mimic you doing extremely well. Fans in a ton of trouble right now, and they are going to go down as soon as they're caught by Wolf. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. It happens, Spraggles. As we're moving through, we are just clawing is LGC. Nice Surf displacement by Fall. Wicked Blow comes through. Tons of damage being reined in. LGC cannot get healed up by that breakfast that's given to them by the Blissey. And now we're just trying to chase him down. Rex gets hit with a Wicked Blow. Looks like their Legacy is just going to pivot off. Yeah. Mazo getting extremely aggressive here in some of these fights, and that's how you're able to take down this Mimikyu. If you really just put the pressure on them, like they're looking to dive you. No, no, no. We're looking to dive you, Mimikyu. As you see Soto in a little bit of trouble right here. The snipe shot not finding its mark to get the KO right there. We have Trainer jumping on in with that Shadow Sneak, able to make a big play. Yeah, Gla Glacial Stage comes out, almost baits the switch, right? So it forces Yeet Fan to just get out of there because that Glaceon could have easily KO'd Yeet, and they just pivot back and decide to take the objective instead. Yeah, I mean, look, they have the Wicked Blow. They have one of the best secure tools inside of Pokemon Unite. So it's not surprising that when they have an opportunity, they're going to turn on an objective right here. It looks like we've got the Unite move onto the Blissey right now as they're continuing this fight. Trainer in some trouble right here, and they go down. I like that. Use your Unite on the Blissey so you can, because that pretty much gives you the Mimikyu for free. Whereas if you go bypass the Blissey, try to get to the Mimikyu, you might get caught out by that Blissey taking over to level eight maybe and having a Unite move at its disposal. Yeah, you might run into a bad situation with that Blissey there. You know, just able to continuously heal the Pokemon and keep them, you know, healthy inside that fight. So it is a great call to take that thing down. Nice big Wicked Blow secure. It feels like they're just setting them up, knocking them down here from Legacy. Great Hydro Typhoon by Fall really forces Metallic out of there as Rex and Metallic are trying to get in the mix. But I mean, quickly dispatched is LGC on the Mimikyu. And those Icicle Spears are just raining in, letting them go. Go. Cold never bothered me anyway, but it certainly bothers you today, Metallic, as they pick up the Bliss Assistance, but the rest of the team is just kind of falling around them. Inteleon goes down. Yeah, Inteleon down right here. We can see they're diving in on this Glaceon, looking for the KO, seeing what they can do right here with these Icicle Spears. Able to take them down with the Blissey. Another KO. Trainer jumping in to make something happen. Trainer goes down. Legacy is just farming Nemesis right now. It's yes. like just wood in a wood chipper. They just keep feeding themselves in. You got to take a pause. You got to realize that it's over. Step back. Look at all the wild farm on their side of the map. Yeah, and here they go, heading down to this bottom path, getting ready for this fight down here at this next objective. Wolf ready to go. We have Yeet Fan just taking this opportunity to get some experience right here. You can see the level disparity, only level 10s on the side here of Nemesis. Things are looking a lot better on the side of Legacy already. Almost taken over to 12 with that Glacier. Metallic kind of sussing out the split push here, knowing that the Rings Unbound can pull everybody through. Go for an engagement there. Quickly X scissored up, popped up. Urshifu Unite put down. Mimikyu jumps in. LGC, Rex, Yeet all coming through. Hydro Typhoon kicks up one. LGC going straight back for it, though. The Surf is out, and they are moving right down to the bottom path because yeah. that is our rings unbound and they're not getting caught today. Incredible stuff, just able to jump out of that fight and into the unknown down here towards this red ice where they're able to set up a huge secure. That's right, I got Frozen 2 in there. I got you, buddy. Moving through, of course, Sato putting tons of pressure on. Rex caught on the backside, and this is going to be another easy KO for the team as more Icicle Spears rain in. And when you see Icicle Spear played like this, it makes you wonder why we haven't been seeing it all darn day. Yeah, it's just so simple. Your positioning is what's extremely important, right? But if you're able to keep that positioning and just keep all of those Spears generated, which is not too hard with this build, you can output insane amounts of damage from relative safety. Now, as 
Arsenal may be wishing they said had some of the Mamo magic as they are getting this goal zone pushed on and they are eviscerated and put down. The tree is felled and so is that goal zone. It's possible that we're looking at the curse of Mamo Swine right here. When you accidentally play Mamo and you win with it, if you pick something else, you may just lose. Yeah, you, you've upset the ancient beast Mamma Swine from the Ice Age. Surf comes through, finally putting down the Urshifu. Glacial Stage is out, but how are they going to use it on top of Rex? Tons of damage being reined in. That allows LGC to engage. Unfortunately, they can't close out the, the KO, and they get snuffed out by another Ice School Spear. Three players down for Nemesis. Take a look at this here from Legacy. I mean, 308 to 52. What a crazy scoreboard we are looking at right here. If there was ever a game in this tournament that Legacy was going to win, and there have been a ton of them that it seemed like Legacy was going to win, this looks to be it right now. I mean, what an intense difference. Nemesis has to make a massive play here at Rayquaza. It has to essentially be uh, close to a full team wipe and then secure Rayquaza with so many of their members up. They are down by almost 250 points. Yeah, this level disparity is scary as well, Spragles, as we have 15 seconds left. It might be enough time for Legacy to take this basement, Reggie, but certainly not enough for Nemesis. How are they going to position? Yeah, we're going to see what Nemesis wants to do right here. They're just looking for an opportunity uh, to fight here in this moment. They're actually moving towards this top goal zone as we see members of Legacy also pushing up right there. Soto in a little bit of trouble having to use its Unite move to actually escape in this moment. That could be a great situation for Nemesis as they look to continue this fight. Now four members pushing down. Huge snipe shot catches the Glaceon. Yeah, forcing the, the reset of two players here. Asimov able to comfortably eat all of the first wave of Icicle Spears. Now they're kind of dancing around, but the pressure is definitely on Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis, the pressure is on. Here we have Asimov missing their setup right there with the wood hammer into the horn leech from the eject button. However, those snipe shots still continuing to land true as they are starting to turn on this Rayquaza. But no, the fight's happening here. Oh, LGC gets a first KO on Hoopa. They're moving through Fall forces out the Hydro Typhoon, but they catch Mazo. Mazo is going to look for an engagement. They use a Unite move right on top of LGC, but they can't quite get the knockout because the coverage is there. Inteleon Unite is out there looking for a snipe shot. Glacial Stage is hit. Two players down for Nemesis, but they're looking to make some magic happen. But Alec is down because of what? The Ice School Spears. Because where? They went in their back as they were running away. And now Legacy's on Rayquaza. They're surrounding this thing. They're taking this thing. And guess what? It's burger time. Now, this is a situation that I cannot imagine Legacy losing. Their first win of the day, and it looks fantastic. They had the, you know, foresight to know, hey, we're going to stay and in front of this Inteleon right here. <laughs> no snipe shot is coming in. The points are continuing to rain in right now, 608 to 52. There's just not enough time. There aren't enough points. Legacy is going to tie this thing up. 1-1. One, one. Nemesis versus Legacy here in our Group D losers. Legacy saying, put this win straight in my veins. We needed it. Now we're going to feed off of it. They are using this time to assert themselves a little bit, press their buttons a little bit longer, and bask in this glory just a hair more. Yeah, I mean, what a great match from them. You talked about wanting to see this Glaceon out in some of these games. We're finally seeing it right now. Legacy's pulling it out, and it was such a factor in this match. You know, just a, a dominant force great into this Blaziken also. You know, a Pokemon that wants to dive in and fight, but Glaceon can make incredible amounts of space for itself. Yeah, I mean, Metallic really was cut down before they could even get into the mix and have any sort of impact. And that's just what Icicle Spear does, specifically against characters like Blaziken. Yeah, it's just a, a, a great answer to some of the stuff that we saw on the side of Nemesis right here. Tying this thing up, both of these teams now one loss away from leaving this tournament, from leaving London having not made it to the top eight and of course not secured their spot to Worlds. If I'm Nemesis, I'm thinking, listen, we've won five straight best of ones. We know what this is about. And that is literally what is sitting in front of them to save their tournament. One more 10 minute game. And if I'm Legacy, I'm thinking we are one more 10 minute game from moving forward and delivering on our potential. 
potential that we know we have. Yeah, and you know, I feel like this is a, a great moment for Legacy. Nemesis has been having a fantastic run here today, but they were dispatched finally by Team YouTube. Now they've taken another loss here against Legacy. This is the first moment that was bright for Legacy throughout this whole tournament. And if they keep this momentum, well, Nemesis is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, this is, we're watching LGC make an early impact with this Mimikyu. Unfortunately, that is short-lived because ever since then, it really felt like it couldn't ever get in there, get consecutive knockouts, and really start chaining something together. They had some really incredible setups uh, right here. You know, just the Glaceon ripping through all of these objectives and then massive secures there from the Urshifu. Really nice one-two punches there from Legacy. It didn't feel like Nemesis really got anything together. It didn't feel like their Inteleon was that impactful. Their Mimikyu felt a little non-existent right there. Just a, a tough game overall for Nemesis. Yeah, especially at this five-minute mark, you can really feel Legacy, like, cinching in the chokehold, just slowly taking everything out from under Nemesis and just being oppressive. And again, almost Legacy. Yeah, Glaceon just doing so much work in these moments. You know, you have Trainer jump in right here, but the damage from an over-leveled Glaceon is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, a KO streak of two we just saw there, and that is just going to be on rinse repeat for the next three minutes and 50 seconds because this Glaceon just showed up, made an impact, showed up, made an impact, showed up, and guess what, Spraggles? Made an impact. And an impact. I, it was, I was said it at the same time as you. Maybe it was slightly before you. I think so. Yeah, and here we have another moment right there. Glaceon just picking up these KOs again. If you're positioned well with this Glaceon, the damage output is absolutely insane. They have a great fight right here. They run around the Blissey in that moment to make sure that none of that damage is body blocked. They pick up that KO. Another double KO there from the Glaceon. You can see the Crustle just standing right in front of where they knew that Italian was, making sure a snipe shot could not get in there. Huge win for Legacy again. They've been so close today, but now it feels like, hey, maybe they've cracked the code a little bit here. Let's take a look at Falb, who's our player of the game. Give us some statistics. Yeah, take a look at this. 247 points scored, 12 assists, 75,000 damage on the Surf Hydro Pump. And we talk about this a lot. You know, you notice who's picking up all of the KOs, but a ton of these moments are set up by the defender, set up by the supporter. And these Blastoise players are incredibly mean. I'm loving seeing this Muscle Band Rapid Fire Scarf just leaning into those basic uh, attacks, boosted attacks. Attacks. One of the coolest things about Blastoise is every time it's hitting that boosted, it's lowering the cooldown of its other two moves. So you're just getting these combos that seem to come out of nowhere from Blastoise, right? And then they're back very, very soon. Really difficult to deal with in some of these big fights. Yeah, specifically, again, with the Glaceon, you, the great get off me tool of Surf, the space that it creates, well, guess what? Icicle Spear doesn't care because once it's honed in, it's going. So the target can be as pushed back as, as you want and it's still solid. And the fact that you can go Icicle Spear knockout, Glacial Stage, Icicle Spear knockout, all while Falb is running interference. And they, I mean, that's how their assist number got so high, because they're a part of every single one of these knockouts. Yeah, you're right. It's just incredible moments. We talked about the positioning uh, you know, of this Glaceon a lot. And what better than being able to push the opponents away from this Glaceon, continuing to let this Pokemon, this massive, you know, powerful attacker, level up and do everything that it needs to do inside this match. Just continue to rain damage on its opponents. And I love that call out, Dupe Snacks, where, you know, as soon as you get the hit from that Icicle Spear, as soon as you attach to that target, it doesn't matter where they are. Let that Blastoise move halfway across the map. No big deal for Glaceon at all. Yeah, it'll even chase him through portals, everything. I mean, <laughs> Icicle Spear is sick. Icicle Spear is quite mean, and we saw it here in this game. You know, a Pokemon that was getting picked constantly, it saw some slight nerfs, uh, and a lot of teams bounced off it, but it feels like just as relevant as ever. Oh, I agree completely. Uh, just the, the sure hit move, the track of it, um, how many just squishy distance targets where that additional damage doesn't even factor in you getting a knockout or not. I mean, it seems just right for the picking, and it is going deep in these drafts. Yeah, it's going very deep. It feels like a, you know, a Pokemon that a lot of teams aren't counter picking. They, you know, they aren't banning out. So we're going to have to see what these two teams want to do. Uh, both teams, when they had the Glaceon, they won their game. So this could be the power Pokemon right now. Also, Mammoth Swine, that won them a game too, and I don't know if they want to try to, 
you know, shake off the Mammal Swine curse or not? Well, I know what I would do. I shake would jack it full of birds. Oh, shake off the curse. Here we go, getting ready for this match right here. These two teams ready to load into their draft. I wonder if we're gonna see some different things out of Nemesis that did feel like a pretty underwhelming match from them. Yeah, um, is this Blazik in the answer for Metallic? That's my question. Um, it looks solid game one, less so in game two. Uh, but really, they've just, uh, just because we haven't been focusing on them, because they spend a lot of time in the top half away from the action that is naturally developing them. You know, I got to say, I felt like the difference was not really the Blaziken. I actually felt like the Blaziken was still doing some pretty decent work. I think we had some underwhelming Inteleon moments. They just weren't able to get those massive KOs. You know, Inteleon gets a nice snipe shot. The team follows it up. We just didn't see too many of those moments. I wonder if we do see Inteleon make its way back into this game. Didn't feel like a huge factor to me really at all. Yeah, uh, Rex has been playing, of course, Blissey twice in a row. Hoopa being very prioritized by Legacy for Lel specifically, who's obviously a great Hoopa player, um, is the support core, the switch up here. Something that has a little bit of like true full heals like a Hoopa to prioritize that a little higher. Now, here we go. We're getting ready for the for this draft here between these two teams. It's all tied up. The tournament is on the line for both Legacy and Nemesis. First ban from Legacy is going to be Zoro. Ro, 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 ro. Stop me, Ororark. I won't, won't, wouldn't dream of it, wouldn't dream of it. Buzzwolf quickly locked in there by Nemesis. Yeah, Buzzwolf, obvi an obvious ban when you do not have first pick. We see Espeon being banned out by Legacy. This Pokemon is just getting so much priority. It, it's being played on so many teams. It's so easy to hit its level four. It's incredibly powerful. It has secure Leafeon as the final ban right here. Again, these evolutions get all uh, banned out constantly as Legacy is getting the first pick. Well, they're prioritizing Krustle very quickly. They're giving Salto their main pick, which leaves so many good options for Nemesis right now. I would love to see a Hoopa, to be honest. Yeah, we're gonna have to see what they wanna bring out. Maybe they wanna take this, we'll see. Oh, Trainer says, no, 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 no. The Glaceon, the Glaceon is the answer. I'm taking that right away. We are not uh, setting that back over to the side of Legacy. Rex taking a Blissey here, I feel like they could have potentially gotten that later because you almost guaranteed that Legacy is going to snatch up Hoopa in these next two picks. Um, so a question there, and maybe leaking a little equity back into the hands of Legacy for a stronger pick that could, because they could have gotten the Blissey later on. Yeah, we'll have to see. Mazo deciding possibly to head on over to the Sylveon. Obviously, Blastoise getting a ton of priority in all these matches. No, instead, they are grabbing that Hoopa. Yep, so quickly on the other side, Fall playing one of their comfort picks. We're going to see where Metallic actually ends up. Yeet fan queuing up this Inteleon. They are a solid Inteleon uh, player, maybe had a bit of an off game, but Metallic going straight back to Blaziken. Yeah, you know, it might be the fact that they are now paired with this Glaceon. They're going to have some bigger moments throughout this match. And again, as far as Metallic is concerned, I really didn't think the Blaziken was the problem there in that last match. Yeah, I think it was just uh, a slow to start. Like, they were stuck as Torchic for potentially a little bit longer than normal, kept from stacking a little bit. But yeah, I agree. I mean, the Glaceon was the problem. It didn't really matter who they brought to the map. There Go! we have it. Meowskarada makes their way onto the main stage along with a Delphox. So Delphox can set up some really interesting moments, you know, depending on which kind of Delphox we are going to see right here. The Fire Spin could really be a problem for Nemesis. That Unite move is huge. Huge, 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 huge on Meowskarada. And at the same time, our final pick for the defender slot is going to be that Umbreon. They're going to be setting traps with Asinable and that mean look. Catching Mazo is a prize right here anytime they go in. And you, you want to talk about some serious follow-up. A snipe shot into a mean look with Metallic to close the door is solid. I mean, Trainer can do the same thing. I like this. I like that pick. Yeah, I think it's really strong if you can set up some of those big moments. We're going to have to see how Legacy plays around it. We're going to have to see how Meowskarada does here on the big stage. I've been wanting to see it all day. Me too. We both picked it and put it on our top four list because we really appreciate how it plays. We think it's incredibly strong, and Mazo is looking to prove us right. One thing for sure, that Unite move is a game changer yes. of a Unite move. Now, it's not always the easiest to position on your opponents. Why, that's why you have the eject button on, you know, on basically every Meowskarada so they can move that Unite move, follow their opponents to see where they're going. The power is huge, and its cooldown is unbelievably low. So you see Meowskarada able to Unite in a ton of fights throughout the game. 
game. In fact, they've got Meowskarata and Del Fox. It's just Unite Move City, and they are the mayors. Two mayors. Two mayors. That's just like you and I are the mayors of our city. Here we go. Here we go. Game number three. It all comes down to this for these two teams. We have Nemesis as your orange team, Legacy as your purple team, both with their tournament life on the line right now. Let's see who can get it done. A lot of players on their favorite Pokemon ready to game here. Yeah, this just feels like, I mean, what an exciting match. A ton of comfort picks, a ton of exciting Pokemon. Blaziken is back as we see Squirtle getting really aggressive, looking for those early stacks in the top half. Metallic quickly going to take advantage of the fact that nobody showed up to that middle wild Pokemon and taken for themselves as Glaceon has already ticked up, and we are going Icy Wind. Yeah, we can see uh, Mazo doing the same thing, running up to this top path. It doesn't have the same kind of evolution, you know, as that uh, Glaceon right there. It's not as powerful. Powerful at four, but they recognized that they needed to get up there to put some pressure back onto the side of Nemesis. Yeah, I mean, we're taking a look at Azenable really needs to take over to level four, but Yeet Fan, great secure tool in that Sobble as they're able to use the water gun as we see it right there. Yeah, and here we go. They're going to try to get this experience, you know, right behind their goal zones right here and get ready for this fight. We can see Yeet Fan almost level five, or we have the level five all ready for Wolf. Yeah, well, that's a great spot to be. They want to make an impact in this final path. Nice rock tomb for the trap on the Drizzle. Yeet Fan tries to get out. Mean Look traps the Crustle back the other way, and that's something that we've seen part and parcel. Whenever an Umbreon is using Mean Look, it always seems to hit the Crustle, not necessarily the target you want. Azimil does trap Wolf this time, though, but Drizzle Yeet Fan is gone. Yeah, well, look at that. Incredible. I mean, Rock Tomb is just such an unbelievable playmaker move right here. We can see Falb trying to get away from a really bad situation. Here comes Trainer to finish off this KO. And it's actually secured there by the Blissey. Lel trying to make it out as well. The eject button not needed. They do pick up the KO, and they're moving towards this top goal. What a one-two punch by these two players getting those KOs. Either way, Fire Blast comes out. Yeet Fan is stuck. They are getting chipped at. Can they get the KO? Just Whoa. a little bit of Fire Blast sorting out the water type. Look at that right there. I mean, this bottom path is going so well for Legacy. They're absolutely dominating down here. Rex finally showing up, going to try and top off Azenable to give them an opportunity to scrap a little bit. South Up puts up the Rock Tomb, and Mazo is trying to clean up the trash. Flower Trick on top of Azenable, but it's not quite enough. Yeah, that Flower Trick, they're going to be looking for a lot of big KOs and resets with that move, especially using it with the combination of their Unite move right there. You see Metallic fighting two off of this goal zone as multiple members of Nemesis are heading up to this top path. We see Legacy as well, the Meowskarata making their way up. A really early, good early game out of Metallic here. This trainer's looking for a target. Go straight on Mazo. Glacial stages immediately. Can they follow up on Mazo? Forcing out the eject button. They do get a courtesy Hoopa here. Now, Fall and Mazo sitting on pads. Snipe shot. Yeet Fan has it online. They're looking for a target, but they haven't quite hit one yet. Icy Wind goes in. Rapid spin right on top of Metallic. Metallic peels back. Rex is in the front line. They're getting chased down a little bit by that duplicate, and they're able to make it out. You can see, I mean, Trainer, obviously, a very fast level 8 able to run up there with the Unite move. Not able to get a ton done because of it, but just what an incredible amount of aggression there from Nemesis. I mean, once again, these Rock Tombs are on point. Yeah, Salto, there's a reason they picked this Pokemon, and those Rock Tombs are setting traps all over the map. Asimov caught in one there, and Bob is trying to spin away. Is that Regieleki hits, and Metallic getting a big 28-point over. Big 28-point over cap. At the same time, they're going to be stacking up that attack weight. Down here in the bottom path, Reg Ice is is going down, able to get the secure there for Legacy. We're, I'm interested to see what Nemesis does here, because they can sit on pad and play it a little slow, or they can straight get after it, because Reg Ice is the buff that Legacy has picked up, the weakest one of the three. Yeah, we're going to have to see what they want to do right here. It looks like this Meowskarata is just going to look for an opportunity to get some experience. Everyone peeling away from this fight. Meowskarata still not level 9. They need to get it pretty fast right here so they can actually use their Unite move. They're pretty under-leveled as a central area Pokemon here on Legacy. Yeah, they've been living in the paths maybe a little too long, and because of that, haven't hit level 9. As you mentioned, Yeet Fan, on the other hand, scrambling away. They are level 9. They're lining up a snipe shot. They find a target, and that, well, it was a duplicate. So that doesn't really materialize to anything. As Fall gets hit by the snipe 
snipe shot and they're spinning out and they might be able to catch a reset here. Charging up the overheat on the portal was a good look by Metallic to try and get anybody that came back in the action. Glacial Stage pops out, they're looking for a target. They're spinning the win here as Azen will use their Unite, but it's two players down on side of Nemesis. Now they're just forced to retreat. Look at that, three players down. Instantly, Spraggles Fire Blast comes through, sorts out the fourth. And can they scrub LGC here for the full ace? The answer might be no, but the points are going in. Yeah, and here we go. We see the Mouse continuing to score right here, not having to push forward to try to pick up another KO right there. They got pretty close, but they just weren't able to get close enough to train. Quickly, Nemesis needs to stick to their side of the map for a moment. Get some levels. They're not bad on levels, but get your farm that's on the map. Take a deep breath and get ready for this next engagement. I can't wait to see these Unite moves, more of them here from this Meowskarada, how they want to use them in this match, what Pokemon they want to target with them. The damage is incredible, really, no matter who it is. We have the Hoopa Unite move, the team moving through. We're going to have to see how this goes. Huge secure right there from the Blaziken. Picking up the Bliss Assistance as well, and now they're looking for targets. Bob is able to KO on the backside. That's two down immediately, despite the Regieleki being taken. Mazo does fall, but I think the positive exchange is definitely in the hands of Legacy. Trapping Heat Fan, and they get buckled. And now we're pivoting to LGC. They know exactly where they are because the uh, Icy wins. They pick up a very false Hydro Typhoon. Doesn't hit anything, but it doesn't matter because they're pushing forward. Now, finally, Nemesis is rolling back another Glacial stage. Those are coming back so quickly, Spring. Yeah, incredible stuff there from Nemesis, but that combination we're seeing from Legacy of the Rock Tomb Fire Spin is so incredibly mean. They're already stuck in a Rock Tomb. Then you've got them spinning right there. Then you've got a Fire Blast or whatever other damage you want to throw on them. Reg Ice right now being taken by Nemesis. It's going to be a pretty easy secure for the Overheat, and it is. Yep, yeah, right into the mix is Fob, though. Metallic chases it down, gets a KO and help with uh, LGC on the Glaceon. And now, just have to babysit this goal zone a little bit, because the score is in the hands of Nemesis, but you can't give up everything right here. Another quick KO, and they're sieging this goal zone. Snipe shot goes wide. Wolf, Wolf just dodging one, quite literally a bullet there, as Asenwell gets engaged on quickly. They are on the brink of getting knocked out, and they're able to peel out. And we can see, trying to run in here, yes, with the big time flower trick, picks up a KO. We have the Meowskarata possibly looking to chase here, but deciding to go back. There's experience on their side of the map. We're only about a minute from Rayquaza right now, so every Everyone is looking to charge up their Unite moves, hit their big power spikes, and we're just going to have to see how these teams want to fight this. Nemesis is up right now, but by under 100 points, they still have a Tier 1 goal zone available, which means Legacy, while they are behind, they have a lot of options for how they want to play the end of this game right here. But one thing is for sure, uh, for sure one of these two teams will not be moving forward in this tournament after the next two and a half minutes. Lel trying to get out of dodge, not going to take their Phantom Force back. Fob going straight on top of Metallic, and there's Trainer LGC for the cover. They're starting to scrap a little, uh, Spraggles. They're feeling the pressure here because we got 30 seconds till rest. Yeah, this is really nice for uh, Nemesis right here. Just a nice objective to secure in this moment. You can see that they do. It's going to put some pressure onto Legacy. Legacy should be able to deal with it, but it's going to give Nemesis the opportunity to position themselves however they want around this Rayquaza, possibly taking some experience, possibly picking up a sneaky KO. You can see Metallic hiding right here. If members of Legacy decide to make a, a you know a, a bad play and move through this tall grass right here, they could be in a lot of trouble. LGC quickly getting all their icicles back as Lel is looking for a way in. Good positioning by Sautau up front. Yeah, Sautau just giving them enough vision to know, hey, you can make your way into the Rayquaza pit right through here. Again, this score uh, score lead is still incredibly close. Falb getting hit a few times here. There is the mean look. They are able to make it home through that hyperspace hole. That puts Rex in the rock tomb. The fire spin is chasing them down quickly. They drop an egg and they make it out. We're taking a look where Mazda's going. They're peeling to score. Spraggles on the back cap. Yeah, here we go. We're, they're looking to see if they can get a score here. They possibly could come back to this fight with Hoopa, right? Salto in some trouble right here. Needing to get reset. Mazo is scoring right now. If he's able to put those points in, no, he is not stopped there by Trainer, as we now have the portal so Mazo can come back through if they want to. Rings are unbound, and that's an X scissor by Salto right into the middle. Asmund was getting so low, they popped their Unite move. LGC goes for the follow up, but the duplicates are there. Mazo's looking for a target, forcing out the Glacial Sage. Bliss assists on top of LGC, but it's Mazo that goes down. Nemesis has an opportunity. 
opportunity here. They're caught in a blender in the middle. That rock container that you're talking about. Metallic still standing somehow. Finally KO'd, but it's two players down on Legacy. They're going to keep pushing Hydro Typhoon to pick up one target. That's LGC. Is Rex going to be able to save them? That's the question. Heat Fan pulls up with their Unite move. They're looking for a target. They line one up. They are eyeing Wolf. Can they get Wolf? They want Wolf. They get Wolf. Lone Wolf is down. And now we're pivoting on top of Valve. The rest of the squad sees it. They're scrambling to score. And they're going to get some points in, baby. Here we go. This is huge for Nemesis right now. 34 seconds left. They are up by a ton right here. It's do or go home here for Legacy as they move in with that Crustal Unite move. Stuck in the mean look. There's just nothing they can do right here. Mazo moving to the center area, looking for something. Blissey on the side of Nemesis going for this back cap. It's going to put them way, way ahead. Mazo looking for something in this top path. Rex not able to score right there, but they didn't need it. Legacy is the team that needed it right here as Nemesis is going to move forward in this tournament. And that is the end for Legacy. What a game, what a showdown, what a fight by Nemesis. Ice in their veins with the ice-type Pokemon. Glaceon locking it down, getting it done. Truly the recipe for success in this matchup. Yeah, between these two teams, that Glaceon was so important. And you could just see a huge sigh of relief on the side of Nemesis. They were so hot coming into this, you know, into these group stages right here. Again, a flawless run through their Swiss rounds. And then they started to run into a lot of trouble. They ran into Team YT. They ran into a real mean legacy right here. But legacy not able to make it happen today. Listen, the job's not done. We heard Asin will say that when we interviewed them over and over and over again. This is not where their journey ends. This is just a continuation. And sitting across from them for their win and in is the team that sent them to losers, Team YT, their NA counterparts. And this is truly a showdown of the region. Yeah, we're going to have to see what happens here between these two teams. I mean, they're both incredible teams. I'm wondering what Team YT was able to pull out to beat them right here. You can see the sportsmanship between these two squads. Obviously, that was, I mean, an absolute war between these two teams. They both played phenomenally. In the end, huge win there for Nemesis after they were able to wipe Legacy off. I mean, what a great game. Back and forth. That third game especially felt very close. The scoreline was a little bit edged in the favor of Nemesis, but they stuck with it and deliver on a big time win. And we're going to take a look at some of the stats from that game right here. Uh, you know, KO wise, things were looking great for Metallic and Trainer. As I said before, I did not think the Blaziken was a problem. I think it was a problem for Legacy. I agree. I agree completely. It's something that uh, I think once I, I finally saw the force through the trees, Sprinkles is right. I don't say that often. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank you so much. You are welcome so much. Oh However, a trainer LGC unsurprisingly leading the lobby in damage here, 91K. But right behind them, nipping at their heels, was Wolf on this Delphox. Very impactful. That combination between Soto and Wolf was incredible. Unfortunately, we did not have a lot of these huge Meow Skirata pop-off moments, and we were wondering, why aren't we seeing more of this Pokemon? And it was not able to get it done in this game. Yeah, and they had a lot of tools to facilitate, for, like, as you mentioned, terrific Meow Skirata Unites. Didn't quite materialize in the way that we expected, certainly that Legacy expected, of course, as their tournament life ends right now. Yeah, incredible matches from Nemesis and Legacy right there. You know, Legacy did not have the best run through this tournament, and it always felt like they were right there. They had so many incredibly close games, but they just weren't able to secure a lot of the wins. Nemesis, on the other hand, possibly back in top form after that win. Well, they need to be because YT, of course, momentum is on their side. They are waiting for them after sending them there. And now it's truly another win or go home situation for both of these teams. Yeah, I mean, as this tournament continues, you're going to see a lot of these teams here in these losers brackets. One loss in these moments and they are leaving this tournament. It's it's huge. It's huge, and there's a lot on the line. That world spot is going to one of these teams that we have remaining, punching their ticket and on easy street until Honolulu. We've got an interview on stage right now, ready to go with Metallic. Let's send it on over to Zoinks. 
All right, thank you so much, you two. That's right, I'm on stage with Metallic after a crazy match up against Legacy, a really formidable opponent. You knew coming here, playing in the open bracket, you were gonna have to play against so many good teams, so much talent, and you've made it all the way here. You had an incredible open bracket run, and now you're looking great in group stage. I mean, how good does it feel to be playing on stage now, Metallic? It feels pretty amazing. I mean, this is my first LAN event. I just turned 16 like a few weeks ago. Finally legal for UCS. And these guys, you know, they added me on their team and I feel like I'm showing up. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You did so well in that last match on the Blaziken against a team, of course, the caliber of Legacy. But if you had to award an MVP on your team for that match, does it go to you or someone else on your squad? See, I would love to say me, but I feel like everyone would hate it. I would have to say Trainer, Trainer LGC. I mean, he's built different, he looks really good. Now, one thing we were just talking right before we got on camera, you actually got some family here watching you play. How cool does it feel to be traveling all the way to a different country and still have family supporting you at the event? It's really exciting. I know my mom, I love my mom. She always supported me through everything. She always hated the late nights I was on all night playing. <laughs> But I mean, I would say it's worth it in the end. All right, awesome. I hope you were in bed at time, but that's all, totally good. Metallic, you have one more match in front of you, a run back against Team YouTube. How's the team feeling about this North America versus North America matchup? I'm very confident. I think we figured out drafting against YouTube. I'm sure we can win it. Well, good luck in your next match. Can't wait to see it. Casters, back to you. Amazing stuff right there from Metallic. I mean, talented, charismatic. Uh, it makes me mad a little bit. I, I gotta be honest, it makes me a little mad that everyone's just a little shinier than us. I would be more upset if I didn't choose Metallic as my player to watch, the only person to delve into the open bracket and identify the key player Metallic. I wonder how many times we're gonna hear that from Every Duke's Every single time, Spraggles, every single time. What's the counter at? 51 times. Birds. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot. And that was an incredible game there, Doob Snacks. And it was really right. cool hearing from Metallic, one of the possibly the youngest player in this entire competition. Yeah, and the faith that the rest of the team has in them, right? I mean, it's so hard, again, to bench a player like Relentless, who had a phenomenal march for personal reasons, by their own choice, couldn't make it this weekend. Metallic steps up, fills the shoes, is helping this team dominate through the open bracket, and now is one game away from hitting stride into this top eight. One thing I loved hearing from this was the confidence that they're ready to take down Team YT. I love that here. Let's take a look at some of these big moments. A lot of them are going to have Glaceon in them because this Pokemon was just a difference maker for both of these teams. But what else is on your screen right now is a Mammoth Swan, and I think that should be the real focus here of game one. The oops didn't mean to pick Mammoth Swan absolute gangster pick. Yeah, huge pick there from the Mammo Swine, and somehow they were able to shake the Mammo Swine curse. You know, they say no team's been able to do it before, but Nemesis was able to make it happen. Absolutely. As and will just, again, playing very solid in this defender role. We got to speak to them earlier. They're just so crisp and clean and keeping this team together. And, of course, moving forward, a decent Unite. They get knocked out by the Floopy Flopper, but it doesn't matter because yeah. it's a Mammoth one. I mean, this was a huge fight here for Legacy. They were able to take down every single member of Nemesis, but as we talked about, they just could not get the secure on Rayquaza. They took the next best thing. They peeled off to both goal zones. They got ahead right here, but Nemesis was able to come back and secure that game one win. Going straight into game two, this was really legacies from bell to bell, it felt like. We had a little spark of life out of LGC's Mimikyu with that quick KO early on, but from there it all felt downhill. They couldn't quite get their traction and couldn't slow down this Icicle Spear Glaceon, and it took over. Yeah, it feels like this was legacies game. Of, of the entire tournament, this was the best they've looked all day. This match was not close. They fought so well throughout it, and it just felt like, you know, exactly how they want to play Pokemon Unite. We saw it here in game number two. I agree, Wolf just a dominating factor there in that game. Hydro Typhoon kicking a couple, kicking up a couple players in that final fight, which allowed, of course, Legacy to win. Yeah, and here we have our final game right here. Once again, the side with the Glaceon is the side that's able to take the big win. Nice Hydro Typhoon right there. I love this combination from Legacy. This Rock Tomb Fire Spin was really mean. 
It was, it was. And unfortunately, the targets that they're looking for there weren't quite caught out. But when they were hitting those right targets, they were removed from the map very effectively. And we're going to see that actually happen right here as Metallic tries to get out, is unable to. But what that did is buy a ton of time for the rest of Nemesis. Yeah, Nemesis had a great moment right there. You know, that Bliss assistance onto Glaceon might have been the saving moment of that game. The Meowskarata Unite move going in there. If Glaceon goes down, it's definitely possible that we see a loss for Nemesis right there. Beautiful support play. It's often these supporters and defenders that set up these huge moments for their carries. Rex had a solid game too. Going Blissey every single time, always there. Chris clean Bliss assistance almost at max range every single time to not only save their teammate, but do a lot of that bowling pin kind of damage on the way there. Yeah, you know, a Bliss assistance is amazing. And when you have a support like that, you know your job. Your job is to make sure that you can save your important player. They did that time and time again. We are going to take a very quick break. We're going to be back with more amazing Pokemon Unite action. Do not go anywhere. I'm serious, guys. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Come on. Pokemon trainers to the first ever Pokemon Sweep Run here at the Pokemon Center pop-up store at the North American International Championships in Columbus, Ohio. I am joined here by two incredible trainers, Trainer Polaris and Trainer Cyrus, as they will be competing for their opportunity to win as many unique items from this Pokemon Center as possible. Trainers, you have 60 seconds each to run through the Pokemon Center and pick out one of whatever item you fancy. It has to fit in the bags that are provided, but feel free to get a little bit creative as what fit actually means. And you have two incredible coaches to help you as well. So Coach Necra and Coach Spragles, please use this time to coach your trainers. Wait, this is actually a Pokemon Center. <laughs> yes, it's actually a Pokemon Center. This is it right here. All right, so remember our plan. We're small, but we're mighty, okay? We need to get in there. We need to get aggressive handshake. Let's do this thing. Boom, boom, boom. Nice, we got this. Right. We got the height advantage, so we gotta get all this stuff on the top shelf, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so it's TCG cards over here. We got our flash over here. We got the big squishmallows in the oh, back. Got oh yeah, I think that's a that's a good plan. We've got the good plan. All right, we have 60 seconds on the clock. Cyrus, Polaris, are you ready? Yes. All right, I love the energy. Let's get started in three, two. One, sweep. All right, let's go, let's do this. All right, it looks like our trainers are hitting up the Pokeballs first. I see a Cherish Ball from Cyrus, very nice. Uh, Polaris going for the Funko Pops, very, very stylish. And now it looks like Cyrus has made a beeline for the plush. Polaris is not that far behind, picking up the Togepi Squishmallow. That's oh no, Coridon just fell on the floor, but Cyrus saved him and gave him a beautiful home. Trainers, the clock is ticking. There is 30 seconds left. We're skipping the keychains. It looks like going straight for the Charmander, Squirtle, and Gengar hat. Oh, we got the Charmander hat and backpack from Cyrus. Now that is a very bold play. Oh, how about the exclusive 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Trainers, that is time. Please take your items up to the front. Trainers, congratulations. Polaris, let's start with you. What you get? Right, what I got get here. Bunch of play match. Deck boxes. Oh. Dump them oh, all out. Let's see them all. Yeah, there we go. 
Oh, and a Cherish Ball, too. That's very special. Got Woo! All right, Cyrus, let's see your haul. Incredible stuff. Look at that, two backpacks. Wow. We've been running this for about three months every other day doing this run, so a lot of great stuff. We kind of knew what we wanted coming in. Oh, I see that. Really big. This was a big one for us. Oh, is that Karaidon? Yeah, let's see it all. Look at all those plush. I also got the I got the Karaidon and the Moraidon. You did, are those your favorites? Yeah, and this is how we were planning to win today. Well, sorry, I don't know if we can still see you, bud, but it's huge. Team Cyrus, you drive a very tough competition with that incredible Altaria plush. But Polaris, your love of the trading card game and Pikachu and Bulbasaur really shines through. Well, guess what? Everybody is going to be a winner today. So why don't you all pick out your favorite item as you can get all of this exciting merchandise and more at the Pokemon Center. Welcome back, everybody. We're down to our final match here at the AOS Cup at EUIC in London. We have had such a day of Pokemon Unite. And like I said, we are down to one final match to decide who is going to make it to day number two. Of just this group. Yes. <laughs> and, who, and just who makes it to day two. Yes. What's up, everybody? I am Zoinks, and this is Wondershep. We'll be joining you for the final match of the broadcast today uh, between Nemesis and you two. We're going to be concluding this group. I know you all just watched Nemesis put on a show. Let's see if they can do it again. Yes, they need to immediately get the repeat. Uh, but honestly, such a cool match for our final match. We are yeah. all the way out here in London. And one of the funniest things that we've seen throughout the entire uh, bracket, no matter where we are, uh -huh. is that we just have a bunch of uh, NA teams kind of just battling out against each other. Yeah, we're going to have North America versus North America, which if you're a North America fan, fantastic, because you have a lot of teams you get to watch, but also a guaranteed North America team in top eight. Uh, I believe GT was knocked out of the tournament by Copy Bob us who moved into the top eight and i believe alter ego also fell out in this group stage so i don't know that for sure we'll, we'll get that confirmed very yeah. very soon uh but yeah at the moment we're gonna be watching these two north american squads face off against one another now remind everybody this was off broadcast but these teams have faced each other before i actually don't know if it happened in the swiss stage at all but in our group stage they were matched up against each other in the first round and youtube were the ones that take down nemesis so nemesis having to make their way all the way through the loser's bracket again to have this rematch for the winning in. Right, which is pretty big. Of course, Nemesis uh, going undefeated in the open bracket. Yep. So, uh, you know, getting all the way up and then fighting technically the eighth seed as from the first seed and then <laughs> losing is really tough. But they do get their chance again. And uh, especially with these teams who are obviously all in the same region, they all know each other as players. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of adaptation when they go for round two. Oh, and we were already looking at more adaptation to look at the future with that interview with Metallic. They said, that you got the download on YouTube? And they said, yeah, we're going to be adjusting our draft that's our path to victory. So we'll have to see if they are able to do it. And you can see here, this is the final matchup of Group D as Fusion was able to dispatch YouTube earlier today. And they're going to be starting their top eight journey in the winner's side. Right, but just like you said, Nemesis uh, just eliminating Legacy. So they are going to be coming off of a lot of momentum. I mean, definitely a lot of fatigue as well as we are so far into today. And they have fought extremely hard to make it here. But I mean, being able to defeat a top team Team like Legacy uh, has got to feel really good, especially in what a close set that was. Oh my word, a nail biter! But so many of these sets today have been just like that. And Wonder Chef, it feels wrong to predict anything else for our final broadcasted match, especially between two squads who have a long history of against each other, not just in this tournament bracket, but brackets past the North America rivalries run deep. Yeah, yeah, with, with you know, slightly different rosters, slightly different names as the roster. Sure. Uh, but this is uh, certainly a lot of players who have played against each other in many tournaments over the past several seasons yeah. of UCS. So, to, like I said, it's really cool that we're here in London and seeing which one of these is going to be taking that spot. 
Yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting because um, we talked about draft being uh, a different thing that we want Nemesis to showcase in this next matchup. We didn't get to see those matches on broadcast, but historically what we've seen from these teams in terms of Pokemon selection has been pretty interesting. We've seen Trainer on the Mimikyu or the Glaceon, but of course we've also seen him on the Scyther. I don't think we've gotten to see that on broadcast quite yet. Uh, but a Pokemon that we see a lot from Team YouTube um, is that Umbreon support, something that Asnable has been taking that quite a bit. But actually, we have an update on Group B. We're going to throw that up on screen so that you can see where we are at currently in our tournament. That is the match where Copy Babas were able to take down GT in a 2-1 set. Right, twice, of course, uh, you know, defeating them in the first round of winners here in the group stage and then defeating them again in the final round. So uh, GT with a, a great storyline fighting all the way through and also defeating Unite Holic, which is a huge win. But Kathy Babas have been really, I think, the biggest surprise for almost everybody yeah. over the course of this tournament. Yeah, some incredible talent. They actually came and said hello to all the casting talent uh, to make sure they wanted to say hey. But all right, here we are. We have five confirmed teams in our top eight currently. Nouns, Esports, and Fusion on the winner's side. Rework, Respawn, and Shin and Rude on the winner's side. Does that mean that Shin and Rude beat uh, Copy Chance? Uh, I think I, yes, have. it does. Oh yeah. my goodness. So Shin and Rude were able to dispatch Kabi Chans to earn their spot in the winner's side. This ABAC team who comes across the world to play in the open. No, not eligible for championship points at all, by the way. <laughs> they are only playing for that final oh. uh, world spot. And there you can see it. Shin and Rude in a close 2 1 fashion able to take out Kabi Chans. No, it's Kabi Chans versus four free in the run back. <laughs> That's that elimination match. The first match of the day is their final match of the day in the exact run back. That is actually incredible. Wild. Uh, there are so many good matches, but that's huge. I mean, uh, I think a lot of, uh, you know, this is definitely not to talk any hate on the Japanese mm -hmm. teams, but I think a lot of people assume that going into the top eight, we were going to have both the Japanese teams still, uh, especially both of them in winners, especially Kabachans wow. in winners. But the fact that at minimum, we're going to have only one team from Japan and it's going to be in the loser's bracket at best is, I think, a very big surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, but that just, again, I mean, I think it's so exciting to me not to, that, to see them lose, of course. I'm a huge fan of the Japanese teams but to see that every single region is just so close and also yeah. the fact that we have two teams from the open bracket in winners and two teams invited in winners uh two teams from the open bracket well three teams from the open bracket right Sh oh no in the winner's, in side. winners that's side. Right, winner's side that's right that's right yeah, yeah. i was gonna say we're gonna be talking regions eu two open teams are the ones that are yes. in top eight currently for free still having an option to be able to make it into the top eight we will be via the loser side but copy babos and nouns esports both hailing from the home region where they are playing right now making it into the top eight is very very exciting for this European region. Yeah, and honestly, both kind of in an upset. Just looking at the mm -hmm. results from both those teams before, but they've eliminated some incredible teams to get where they are. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, we've got such, uh, I mean, just an amazing set of teams just aside from them as well. But we do get a chance to listen to one of our teams and their comms as they're going through a game. So let's check that out. Tá, eu tomei um tiro aqui, tá? Tá, eu tomei um tiro aqui, tá? Ele tá na flechou, ele tá na flechou. Estourei a Brice e Umbro. Tá, é? Umbro tá na merda, Umbro tá na merda. 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 Umbro we nice. have small lead still, small lead, yeah, small lead. Push back, push back, push back, push back, push the pad, 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 push Oh, I love that so much. That is awesome. Seeing the energy on stage from Nemesis is so sick. And we are talking about this next matchup in front of them against YouTube, having a run back. That kind of momentum, that energy they are feeling after dispatching a team like Legacy has got to be through the roof. Yes, although that really needs to continue to push them further because oh it's not yeah. over for them yet. Uh, but yeah, that was, uh, I mean, incredibly uh, close match as well. Uh, but that was, I mean, you have to feel really good about that. Uh -huh. uh, seeing, I mean, again, top team in that region, right, in, uh, in Brazil, 
kind of, at the moment, uh, at least, you know, winning the, one of their first monthly cups, uh, you have to feel really good because you can't get that much experience against these other regions. Yep. So to at least go up against them and say, oh, okay, we can do this. We could technically take down an entire region potentially, at mm -hmm. least. You know, not to say it's going to happen every single time against every single team, but just to have that feeling and you're like, okay, you know, we're not, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I think anybody who's competed in anything really knows that, like, sometimes you're just like, I'm not a fraud. Even if you're, like, doing quite well, you know that. But there's always in the back of everybody's mind. Right. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really hope everybody has taken the correct steps to get that out of your brain, uh, yes. <laughs> however you need to do so. And if winning Pokemon Unite matches and tournament play is the way to do it, well, I'm here to support you from the casting booth. So, uh, <laughs> amazing work to the teams that have been doing so. I love hearing from Nemesis, too, in those moments because, yeah, they're right. You heard a lot of screams that Nemesis was able to hold on to that lead no matter what Legacy could do in those final few seconds. Yeah, the communication there was really good. Uh, I did like it. At some point, somebody was like, I can't, I can't. I I didn't, couldn't tell exactly who that was, but somebody just was not having a great time for a small moment. But then, they, in the end, they could. Whatever it Absolutely. was, they, they could. Uh, the comms are, are really intense for even mm -hmm. this late in the day, but uh, it worked out. It worked out really well. Yeah. Usually, whenever our casters are playing in ranked queue, it's usually me just screaming, I dad. <laughs> and then Spraggles has to swoop in and save me on whatever power pick they're currently <laughs> wielding. Uh, but, it, yeah, I, I do think we all have a little, I believe it was Asnable. Uh, I think we all have a little bit of Asnable in us when we play in ranked or we play in <laughs> tournament play. But I mean, you're calm and everything, right? They're even like, I'm running away. <laughs> like, you know, you got to make sure that your team is informed of the decisions you're making and how you can play around each other. And that's super important for players that are playing at long range and have very pivotal damage moments, right? Yeah. You need your defender and your support communicating when is a good moment to strike, when is a good moment to retreat because they are pushing into us. And of course, uh, Yi Fan and Trainer are going to have to be listening and responding to their team's calls because they usually are on those squishy options. But we got one more group to update you about. It's going to be Group A. Of course, it's Alter Ego and oh. Anti Esports. And Alter Ego and E7 Jonas are currently 1-1 in this elimination match. Wow, going down to the wire there. Alter Ego uh, and Jonas, honestly, both with really amazing showings, but uh, both going down just like barely from what we've seen. I mean, both of them to, uh, to Nouns, who is just I don't even know. They're the, the stars of the show right now. Oh, man. I think we talked about it at the start of the tournament, whenever that was, felt like a few days ago. Uh, but when we <laughs> discussed it was, how good would it be for Nouns Esports to catch fire at this moment? You yeah, know, yeah. this is the tournament that Nouns Esports finally wakes up and reminds everybody the pedigree and what they've been able to accomplish on this very stage. Uh, and exciting to see that, I mean, uh, they took my advice. They they are doing it, which is yeah, no. which is really really great. Uh, but man, what a matchup! I can't wait to see the result of that one because that is going to be just a powerhouse team in the losers bracket of top eight tomorrow. Yeah, either one of those would be a gigantic deal. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly everybody who can make it this far in the bracket, whether they were invited or whether they made it through the open bracket, is a big deal. Uh, but that one in particular, I think I think the ones that are really like big regions that don't get to play against each other, and especially like kind of top rankers in the region, it's really cool to see which one's going to come out on top. Yeah, I actually think they might be very frequent scrim partners oh, as really? well. I know Alter Ego likes to play a lot of those uh, Latam North teams. They play mostly out of Mexico. I know Alter Ego has a few players who are located uh, in the South other regions of North America. So connection issues are actually okay. Time zones work out all right. So I actually know they've played a decent amount, like against Sherlock and, and yeah, that crew. Yeah. So uh, we have seen a decent amount of crossplay. So a rivalry there as well. And I mean, showcased in game already being at one to one. Yeah, that is true. Not as far as some of the other teams. You know, we have Antic, who the closest people yeah. to them is, I don't know, half the world away. And we should talk about Antic Esports too, right? We saw them at the beginning of the day. They had, you know, signs of life, big moments, but unfortunately not going to be making it into the top eight stage. But let's face it, those teams that entered in through the losers, uh, from, or not through the losers, but entered in through the Swiss open bracket mm -hmm. into their group are incredible strong. Yes. Uh, those are two teams I would be terrified to have to go up against. So Antic Esports having the tough look, but fortunately not going to make it. But since they were able to have such a great tournament in February, they still were able to make it into the top 16 and earn some championship points. Yeah, that is already pretty big, and I think they did a great job of representing their region as well. Absolutely. Uh, of course, you know, we I feel like every single break we got to hear Sulu talking, and for some yep. reason it was like all the time, but uh, we love to hear Sulu talking. Great and interview. He did talk a lot about the difficulties of playing from that region, which are very, very true, but uh, the showing that we got to see was very strong, especially their broadcast match that we saw earlier. Despite the fact that they lost, they put in a really, really good show, and it was yep. very close, but, uh, you know, from playing that far away with not as much competition, I 
I think that they are really uh, aiming to show us what they can do if they can make it to Worlds. Yeah. Now let's talk about the match in front of us, Wonder Chef. We have Team YouTube here on your screen going up against Team Nemesis, we already saw, of course, on broadcast. But Team YouTube, Aquilo, So Sad Sam, Fui, Otter, and a new addition in Pikadiff. This squad went three and two through the Swiss Open bracket. Uh, and, you know, had to get some good resistance. They uh, took a loss to Copy Babas mm -hmm. in the first round of the tournament, which actually benefited them quite a bit in the Swiss rounds. Yeah, honestly, I heard a lot of people talk at the start. They were like, wow, why do you lost the Copy Babas? But then we learned the Copy Babas are apparently the most ridiculous team on the face of the planet. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but uh, that was just the start of their reign of terror uh, mm -hmm. today. But aside from that, I mean, YouTube doing quite well, though. On the other side, I mean, I feel like we talked about them quite a bit. We may have just seen them on broadcast <laughs> as well, but Nemesis, uh, great interview as well, by the way, yep. uh, running right over here. And they were going undefeated uh, on the day mm -hmm. up until they managed to fight against Team YouTube. <laughs> I don't know on camera right now, we're just looking at the back of their head, but, but Yeet <laughs> Fan, one of the most prolific attacker players in this region, is going up against definitely the other most prolific attacker player in the region of Otter. And this matchup in particular is going to be the most interesting to me. Fui versus Metallic will be an impactful matchup for this uh, for this game, absolutely. But it feels like an Otter versus 2016 fan or Yeet fan as they go by sometimes feels like the most important 1v1 out of this best of three. Ooh, that could actually be very, very juicy. And uh, I mean, again, uh, for anybody who's familiar, a lot of Team TV, Team TTV kind of broke up, split up amongst the other uh, different teams. We actually still see Otter with the TTV tag on, which is pretty cool. Uh, but, shout out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> shout out to something that no longer exists. But hey. uh, <laughs> looking at the bands, ooh, immediate card of war band. Uh, yeah, a really hard call out to So Sad Sam. And honestly, an unbelievable player on that particular pick. It feels like uh, scaling central area Pokemon have really gone out of style, but So Sad Sam never got that memo and has certainly never stuck to that belief. They really believe in that choice and how strong it's been. But Asnable, no memo swine this time. Gonna grab the Crustle. <laughs> you know, it worked. It worked. Whatever that happened it in that situation, worked. it uh, more than technically worked. It worked. Okay, I'm a big Mammoth Swine fan. I want to see it again. But you know, I'm not gonna say that it's a better choice than Crustle, or really that anything almost is a better choice than Crustle. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Fui is going to lock in the Blastoise. There is obviously always the option of switching this Pokemon later to be a full-on Defender for the squad. But with the way that Pikadiff plays, I don't really think we're gonna see Defender Blastoise. I think Fui is going to be very happy the fact that they have this Blastoise first place again matchup in the early game. Ooh, and the Inteleon getting uh, taken uh, already by 2016 fan, that is a, a pretty, I feel like, vied for Pokemon amongst these two teams. And uh, yeah. I feel like, especially in NA, uh, kind of every team wants Inteleon. Uh, uh -huh. It seems to be a very popular Pokemon for a very good reason. Uh, so getting that pretty early is big. Yeah, we're actually going to leave the attacker, potentially, unless Espeon falls to that role, until the final selection. So that's the one big benefit of second side or second pick is that you get the last pick of the game. Feels like uh, the side of Nemesis are going to be pretty rope picks now at this point. Yeah, we have the Blaziken and the Glaceon. It's worked so far for them. Not now is now not the time to change. Ooh, uh, would we see the... No, we, well, going from one beam to another as they're thinking about it. Uh, the range would be pretty nice. They do not currently have very much to challenge the Inteleon, uh, just because, of course, there's no real dive in this team. I mean, there's a little bit of potential dive, but uh, not so much when you're trying to get around Inteleon range. So having a counter beam, I feel like, is a really strong idea. Yeah, and Otter is just an artist on this Pokemon. It is really hard to describe it any other way. Their individual talent and mechanics are just so highlighted by this Mew selection. Uh, really the first adopter or first master of this Pokemon on its release. And now uh, it is awesome that it is still a pocket pick in their tournament and games. But going into that Inteleon is obviously going to be a very, very challenging threat. The nice thing about having Espeon, Mew, and Blastoise, and potentially even Umbreon, and honestly, let's throw Eldegoss into there as well. Um, <laughs> it is going to be so difficult for Metallic to justify diving into Team YouTube mm -hmm. at any point in time. Psychic Solaire is going to pick you all up and throw you in the air. Mew has that mystical mirage can give invisibility to the team, but more importantly, give Mew themselves invincibility. Uh, we have Hydro Typhoon to do something similar to Psychic Solaire. Umbreon can steal some shields, and that is a great counter to both Crustle and Blissey. Honestly, Team YouTube's comp seems very, very strong. 
right? We can see here Trainer uh, playing the Mimic You quite a bit, which has been a really interesting kind of band choice throughout the day, I think, for a lot of teams. Yeah. Yeah, it is so popular from specific players. And every time that a specific player has it, it feels like if you're on purple side or in that first pick position, you're very comfortable banning that Pokemon. Uh, you do not want to see that one. But here we go. A elimination match, a.k.a. win and get in the top eight between Nemesis and Team YouTube. The last one of the day. Excited to see it. Of course, this is only game number one, but these teams have played against each other. So realistically on the day, this is game, I actually don't know if it's three or four, because I cannot remember exactly what the score was before, but pretend that I knew. I believe it was a 2-0 victory okay. for Team YT. So it'll be game number th <laughs> three between these two rosters. But Metallic seemed very confident on stage about the new techs that they're going to be able to bring to the table. Uh, so said Sam did stick on the Espeon, and since they are that early power spike at level four, there's a very quick clear through central, just one buff, and immediately able to threaten the path at level four. Mm, ooh, a little rock landing on the Mew's head. It's such a funny move. It's like, where rocks come from? But uh, getting a pretty early level, uh, making sure that they're not going to be gate kept at all, and uh, getting that very quick rock tune to be able to uh, kind of control, potentially trying to get some picks. Yeah, we talk about how Krustle is one of the best defenders in class right now, very sought after in draft. But that rock tune, of course, is a great anti escape tool, but it also allows Yeet Fan to line up very, very consistent snipe shots. A move that can be a little feast or famine, but when you have a great lockdown defender and makes the upside of that move so much better. Oh yeah, it uh, allows you to feast uh, for sure. Uh, currently, we already got the evolution to the War Turtle. Uh, we're getting some pretty quick evolutions. It's actually very, very fast. We're seeing a few members uh, still a little bit low on the kind of every side. It's just uh, we've got a few gate kept at three. Of course, you kind of have to, if you're an evolved Pokemon that evolves to level four, you've got to get that little bit of like hard EXP, one could say, to get past that point. We are finally going to see that uh, for both the level threes, kind of at this last moment, the Umbreon, the slowest uh, so far. Yeah, so Team YouTube having a slower start in that bottom side. However, uh, kind of getting over that hump of experience deficit thanks to a nice play by Otter on the Surf on the Mew able to take that KO onto Asgabal. We're seeing a bit of an engagement. Metallic not able to threaten much, only having that level 5. They have access to Blaze Kick, but not the Overheat. Don't have that final evolution quite yet. Asgabal will not have enough HP to escape, and Sam and Otter are going to combine for a knockout, and he fan uh, just not in position to take that KO when they only have access to Bell Stinger. YouTube sends Sensing danger is going to charge towards that Golzo. Ooh, and they managed to just run over that Drizzile, leaving this tier one goal zone extremely low. Uh, they definitely are making the intentional choice not to break it there. They could have got a small over dunk on it and kind of gotten some space for this first basement Reggie, but it looks like they may want a little bit more, uh, whether it be more points or just waiting to give them the extra eggs. Yeah, it feels like when you're running double attacker, you would love to have a late game lead, and the only way to form that is with some big over dunks. Because if chasing Ethan all the way towards that tier number two, instead is going to elect to just mean look and snarl in the crustle as Asnable falls, another defender knocking out another defender. <laughs> uh, which is uh, usually pretty difficult to do, I'm not going to lie, but we do have some pretty aggressive defenders going on right now. This top Regilecki uh, going pretty freely to Nemesis, no big deal, uh, and right now they really truly need those extra points, so it does look like it's actually not even going to be defended by Team YT. They're just going to be doing their own thing. They're like, yeah, sure, whatever. We already have a pretty gigantic lead on you. Go ahead and break our tier one. I do not care. Yeah, Team YouTube very comfortable allowing just a lot of space over to Nemesis. Metallic just going to take full use of it by getting as many stacks as they possibly can in the early game. A little rough for poor Torchic to try to get those numbers up, and it will be a 30-point score from Trainer to break that first tier goal zone. Pretty low overdunk, though, I believe. That was only a 10-point overdunk. I mean, not the worst in the world, but uh, you can see there's still actually behind despite the fact that both of these teams have taken the tier ones and they're behind by about 15 points so you can see pretty clearly what the uh, actual over dunks were not a huge difference so far uh, looking at the levels also not a gigantic difference slight lead overall for team yt but uh, it seems like the game's really slowed down yeah both of these teams playing very very safe you have a glaceon and teleon on one side and mew and espion on the other the name of the game is going to be playing at range and avoiding the burst damage of the opposing squad because it's immense from either direction, especially from YouTube who currently have that Registeel buff for just under 30 seconds. If they wanted to take a big team fight and use up some of these Unite moves, they would be coming at just a little bit extra threat thanks to that damage buff from the Registeel.
Yeah, and we, uh, we like, like you kind of mentioned earlier, um, we don't really have too much dive altogether in this game, right? There's the potential for the, the Blastoise to maybe go in and try to make a big play, kind of a quote-unquote dive play, or uh, the Blaziken, of course, who's going to try to do it at some point. But realistically, this is going to be, I think, a really heavy poke game, and it's going to be a whole lot about the sustain, the positioning, and seeing if anybody can get that first big pick. I think Krustle's going to be gigantic for that, just saying, yeah, uh, I'm going to wall you off. But, I mean, having Umbreon as well, really there's a chance for anybody to kind of just be like, uh-oh, I was in the wrong spot, and now 12 lasers are firing me. Great rocks move by Azalosh. It forces out the Unite move from the Mew, but that's okay. Otter still uses that to his benefit. It's going to knock out the Inteleon. Beginif going to go down next, though. Gets pulled away by Metallic. Really well done. Pull by that blaze again. Nice Unite move response from Fui. It's going to knock a few members up into the sky, and Crustle is going to go down. Metallic and Trainer are trying to work around the top side, but they are slowly running out of resources. Rex, the only support still left around, and they are just going to be able to slowly bring in that healing for the Glacier. On with a very squishy back line, and Emphasis is going to play as far as they can from range and wait for Krustle and Blaziken to come on back. Yeah, Trainer was doing a ton of damage in that fight, but now Yi Fan is pushing forward first. Kind of an unsafe position, getting mean look, but they're just going to kind of go for this flip on the Regia Ice Pop to the Unite from the Krustle. And it's going to be the Espeon, which is doing a great job of getting a lot of secures all day from every player actually using it. That's going to be an opportunity for Nemesis to just continue to push forward, though. They say, well, you took that. We're just going to take your Tier 1 Gold Zone. Uh, they did have to sacrifice a lot to get into a good position to try and get that secure which they did, but then they put them in a vulnerable spot. Yeah, Nemesis walking away with basically everything except the objective in that engagement, right? Because like that big score push they were able to get and some knockouts the other direction feels like a very Nemesis favored team fight in that moment. Credit to the team YouTube, though, a moment ago, they were playing around uh, Yeet Fans and Inteleon fantastic. Mm -hmm. Big bodies blocking that main objective constantly from Inteleon, who wouldn't be able to get that last secure because, of course, that slip shot not going through enemy Pokemon. Yeah, we do have a lot of big Pokemon uh, potentially on the field here. Uh, well, we're gonna get the uh, pretty uncontested Regilecki. That's actually a little bit surprising to me. Uh, it didn't seem like there was a whole lot on board for Team YT to be really focusing on. I mean, they did have a little bit of wild XP, but now uh, they've got to sit here and defend. And we are seeing Trainer do quite a bit of just poke damage, which we've seen in pretty much every fight so far. Uh, they don't always get the true follow-up, but uh, with just the, the comp that we see from Team YT, they're kind of vulnerable to the little uh, little bit of like the, the hit and, uh, and dip. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, we saw a moment ago there, Trainer being pretty aggressive with that push on the Regilecki. They still did have their Snowcloak passive available for the Glaceon. It will not be available any longer, by the way, so any more of these aggressive pushes uh, for the next 30, 20 seconds or so will definitely be at a higher cost if you get KO'd or caught out. Good thing you got Asnable there, an incredible defender player who has always got your back. Yeah, the, uh, the cost might be the ultimate cost at this point. Uh, you are going to be gone for quite a while into the most important part of the game, which is going to be this final stretch. Uh, looking at the levels and positioning going into this final moment, uh, I mean, of course, all Unites are available. Levels are pretty close. Uh, an advantage for Team YT for sure, but nothing that is uh, unwinnable. But they do not have the level lead. They're going to start this fight. Yeah, Pikachu is a great engage. They're able to catch Asnable in that mean look and then try to immediately push away. Way. I do believe that was the Crustle Unite move, and Pikadif has not used theirs yet. Actually waiting for Rex to use that Bliss Assistance and steal away those shields if possible. Glacial Stage is going to be responding with a triple player Hydro Typhoon, followed up by a huge Cotton Cloud crash from Aquilo. Able to take the KO with the Eldegoss, but two of their members have been knocked out in return by Metallic. We're absolutely playing crazy out of their mind 1v1s in the back line. And now it's up to Yeet Fan to be the main damage dealer in the back. They're going to be able to take out the Blastoise, and now it's going to be the Eldegoss. The Goss chase down next up. Oh, the snipe shot landing, but not quite enough. We're still going to stay up. Otter just getting out of there with almost one HP. One more little fun shot onto the Excel door there. And Nemesis, knowing that they've got that point lead from earlier, are going to make a good attempt to defend. They could have jumped on the Rayquaza right there, but they realized they did not need to make that risk, or take that risk, I should say. Uh, make that opportunity for the opponents to make the comeback. They do have the Tier 1 Gold Zone on top, which you can see they're kind of covering, right. but uh, at this point, it looks 
looks like Team YT knows that they need to move in and they need to make this push happen. And this duel between uh, Pika Diff and Rex is still ongoing. Neither has used their Unite move, but finally Umbreon gonna do it to try to chase down uh, that Blaziken. That means the Elder Gods or the Blissey can Unite move as soon as they're out of this mean look, and they are gonna land on the Trainer, giving a huge Blissey Sisson's buff, and Trainer gonna use that to full effect. KO streak up three for them so far, as Team YouTube are falling one by one. Espeon gonna be able to make it back to that gold zone. We do have Aquila with the back half, but Trainer with the Quadra is going to ensure Nemesis starts this game one to zero. And Yeet Fan did so much damage in that yeah. last fight. That was actually disgusting. The snipe shots were just so absolutely key. And Team YT knew that that was an issue, but they just kept trying to chase. And there was such good positioning and such a tough front line to get through that it just didn't seem like they had an answer. Wow. What a final fight. And yes, we'll see here on the scoreboard. It is Nemesis who lock it down. Currently have not found a way to win a single game against Team YouTube in our tournament up until this point. But what a time to learn when everything is on the line. <laughs> this, is, this is the only one that matters, you know? We play some sets earlier, just give you some more experience. Let's you make some cool, fun upsets in the loser's bracket. Now, this is where you for sure need to win, quite obviously, or you are going and I know I talked about it a lot mid-fight in that in that matchup, but the Blissey Unite move versus the Umbreon Unite move felt like that main pendulum point. Pikadiff eventually just having to use their Unite to try to find a way to slow down Metallic on this Blaziken. And it comes up a little shy, doesn't have much effect, and that means Rex gets a very, well, I call it safe. They were stuck in a mean look at the moment, but it has a safer Bliss assistance to chase down and support uh, the Glaceon, which, well, we all saw what a trainer was able to do with that. Yeah, that's the most interesting thing about Umbreon, right? Is that it is a Pokemon that forces basically, uh, well, I should say specific other Pokemon, which we happen to see quite a few of here, to kind of play a game of chicken, right? Where it's like, okay, if you use the Crustle Unite, boom steal some powerful shields. If you use the Bliss Assistance, steal some powerful shields. Uh, but if they don't, then you can sit there and wait and wait and wait, and then it's exactly what happens here, where you get KO'd before you get a chance to use it, and then eventually they ran back, and then it was like, oh, is this the time to use it now? And it can be a little bit awkward, but uh, of course, all of that really kind of depends on how the fight goes around those yeah. particular Unite moves, like who's forced to use it first, and then they really don't want to. <laughs> so the fact that the fight ended up going quite so well for Nemesis, just in a little bit early spot meant that it cascaded more and more and they staggered them staggered the unite usages and this is what happens yeah they looked so fantastic team youtube does take the loss in this game number one but that will give them the option of what side they want to be in terms of draft pick and since they were on that second pick side i have to imagine they are going to be requesting purple side well uh, you know we've seen some people kind of change their uh, minds mid-set before but I do kind of have to expect that as well. Uh, the, I would say the overall most popular. I would love if we could get that stats at some point, maybe after this tournament, because uh, it's been really interesting seeing how teams kind of decide whether they want to go first pick or second pick. But, yeah. uh, I mean, honestly, regardless of first pick or second pick, it just seems like Nemesis has clearly found an answer. Uh, so much of it was, was I just think how they're playing the spacing game. Uh, you did end up being very correct. I feel like the Blaziken kind of didn't get that many good opportunities. It was kind yeah. of in the brawl in the end because it did end up getting to become kind of like a weird skirmish, but uh, it really technically, I think, was a lot more of the range damage. All right, and it's time to reward, award a player of the game in that first one, and I have to imagine it's going to be Trainer LGC on this Glaceon. We're in that Shell Bell, by the way, for that cooldown reduction, and then Icy Shard and Freeze Dry combi or Icy Wind and Freeze Dry combination. Yeah, yeah, pretty uh, pretty interesting to go that, but uh, did so much damage in this game, and uh, now we'll see if they are gonna go for the repeat. Glace uh, Glaceon, a Pokemon, honestly, that we uh, we kind of saw fall off a little bit after the most recent set of nerfs, but uh, we'll see if it kind of comes back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, folks, we have our game all set up and good to go. We're gonna be jumping into the draft phase as soon as we have it available. And there it is. We already got the bands in. Blastoise, Blissey, Buzzwool, and Leafy on. It's gonna be your bands. A Blissey response from Team YouTube. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I do like that quite a bit. I've been a really big fan this entire season, uh, or I should say, well, not this full season, but once we got four uh, bands, half of this season, uh, of seeing a lot more support bands, because, uh, I mean, even when we only had singular bands, uh, being able to kind of get the key supports from these teams has really made them crumble. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you there. 
we actually have a Umbreon steal on the side of Nemesis, taking kind of that comfort support option away from Aquilo. And with the Trevenant being locked in as well, is most likely going to be the defender for the team. But Metallic can play a mean top path Trevenant. Yeah, there's a few different ways that they could go, especially the fact that they haven't really shown their final pick, that nice advantage of having the final pick on the second side. But yeah. uh, we'll see what Team YT ends up doing. Of course, getting that Eldegoss, which we saw was a very impactful Whoa. Pokemon this time, and a Pokemon that hasn't been so impactful over the course of this tournament, Lapras. Very interesting to see it again. We're going to see Lapras versus Trevenant Top Path, most likely, as our brawl. That is going to be extremely interesting. Final selection for Nemesis, and in the past, Rex has leaned towards the Sableye a lot in tournament Ooh. play, and we are going to see it. Sableye locked in by Rex. You can see him on the player cams nodding, excited. He's got that energy. They are ready to play their pocket pick on stage. I think this is so smart. I mean, uh, the moment that you see that they have the Gardevoir, you know that there is the opportunity for the Invade, uh, which honestly, I feel like a lot of teams have seen good opportunities for Invades and said, you know what, we don't really want to risk it. We want to just kind of play our game. We've seen a lot of like full committal kind of center path Pokemon, mm -hmm. but this seems to be an opportunity where they're like, you know what? We know that you're uh, trying to get a little bit of safety. We're not going <laughs> to let it happen. They do have that Espeon though. And of course the coverage from uh, just a few of their Pokemon. I mean, uh, whether it be the Crustle early on or whether it be uh, the Eldegoss, like there can be some nice defense there, but at the very minimum, it's going to make them think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do get to see Sam's Gardevoir this time, like you were just mentioning, but it was banned in that last game, I yeah. believe. So uh, able to see that option on the stage is going to be awesome. Obviously, Sam, a, a master, is going to be able to show their excellence and their superiority on this Pokemon. Right, I mean, that's assuming it does manage to kind of get to the uh, power spikes that it wants to, yep. which honestly, like I said, the early game to me seems very strong for Team YT, so it doesn't seem like uh, it's going to go all that terribly, but who knows, uh, you know? Uh, we get to see Sableye really ruin a lot of people's days. All right, here we go into game number two. Currently Nemesis on uh, their points to win and in into top eight, and Team YouTube with their backs against the wall, down 1-0. Nemesis has already gotten through one segment of the tournament. They're looking to get through two. Uh, now, let's see where everybody ends up going. So, we are going to see a lot of uh, split here for the side of Team YT. Of course, they're going to try to get to that power spike on the evolution, but uh, they've got a little friend joining them. And I like that because you kind of have to back up. Uh, if they chose the other side, they might have been able to delay the Ralph a little bit more. But uh, when you got an SB on there, you're like, no, nah, I'm not going to challenge that. Yeah, exactly. Just a little bit late on that run, too. I mean, it's impossible against these. These evolutions who just get yeah. to that, uh, get to that wild Pokemon and knock it out so quickly. Rex not able to take that KO, but of course can cause interference in a myriad of ways, not just in vain. Yeah, honestly, I feel like we really need to talk about what just happened in the first minute of this game because that was a really, really good, strong read on the side of Team YT, uh, where they really didn't commit the center path to the rock to the Gardevoir, and so by doing that, they made uh, the Sableye waste a lot of time, and it hasn't really been able to get as much of an invasion as you want at all. And currently it's running through, it's just gonna try to be annoying people, but uh, everybody's basically gotten the levels that they want so far on Team YT. They've been able to delay the annoyance, which is really the maximum they can get. Yeah, Akilo and Fui both gonna be scoring on that top side, but bottom side looking very good for Nemesis. That's 27 points in from the Drizzile, and that's four members from Nemesis putting together a push into the bottom half, and it is so successful. Leaving that goal zone on 10, and leaving poor Metallic to just defend that top goal zone alone. Yeah, so again, I really feel like Nemesis is choosing to focus on this Gardevoir as now they're going to continue to follow it. They're like, wherever you are, I'll be there, right? Uh, and they're doing a really oh. good job of that. Uh, looks like, wait, who got that? Oh, no, no, that wasn't Gardevoir. Yeah, yeah, Glaceon attempted to get it. I don't believe the steal was successful, but extremely close. And actually trading into a check button to make sure they get the KO onto the Espeon. Fui chases down Inteleon, has a close uh, freeze moment, just for a moment with that Ice Shard, uh, but not able to earn that KO. Oh, oh, Snapshot just barely missing. Good choice to kind of uh, swing to the side right there. We are going to see just a, a tiny little set of points from Metallic, uh, just while they get the opportunity up on top. So the point lead, very strongly in the the uh, way of Nemesis, but probably about to change. I mean, this is going to be a good set of Pokemon to defend. They are going to wall off these two special attackers, uh, so you can only get so far away, but they just have so much range. They don't even mind right now. They're getting a little bit low, and they're still
also quite a few healthy Pokemon trying to score in this bull zone. Yeah, the problem is you can defend from far away, but you can only block one Pokemon at a time. Single uh, single target fire is not the best essence of defending these gold zones, and Team YouTube is finding a lot of points right now. No point lead quite yet, but having a huge push in the bottom zone where previously they had none is a great feeling. Yeah, and currently uh, they, they are going to be pushing down a little bit further to try and take this Regi Ice, but extremely low on the Glaceon. Finally gets hunted down by Eldegoss. Of course, the hardest carry in the entire game, as usual. But now it looks like Eldegoss might be going down themselves. Kilo just barely escaping, oh. but oh no, gets hit. I don't even know what that was. It might have been like an auto that continued to follow after the eject button. But look at that. That was actually a huge assist from the Regi Ice. I don't know if you saw that. Got x into one of the AoEs from the Regi Ice which kind of uh, took out two Pokemon essentially in the end. One big Unite there from the Guard Board to get the solo target. Uh, did manage to secure the Regice with it as well, though. Yeah, a lot of damage impact from the Guard of War Unite move. It doesn't just have the crowd control component. There is a lot of damage incoming. Uh, so we're going to see that wild Pokemon BKO team. YouTube having a great look there. And you're right, some great little combo plays. Speaking of making sure to use every element available to them, including the Regice. Yeah. Uh, those Regis are very often the scariest Pokemon in the game. Uh, very easy to dodge them if nothing's happening, but they do love to troll you at the uh, most inopportune moment. That's true. If you're scared now, just wait till Reggie Rock. That yes, thing's terrifying. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like we don't have enough, like, rock walls here with just uh, Crustle alone. But they're still Reggie on the stage uh, as we're now starting to uh, rotate top with pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. Except for, once again, Lapras just kind of doing its own thing. It was well, happening during the entire last fight. Well, they honestly have to defend these goal zones against Sableye. That is so, so important. And Rex was able to push towards one. Wish Healing going to keep them up for a moment. Pika did quick, uh, quickly resets that. Umbreon Unite move going to steal so much of that shielding. And Admiral is able to walk away. Turn it to Unite move just for safety when they're trapped in that rock tomb. And now it's going to be all about defending this goal zone that Team YouTube is currently planning on crashing. Oh, oh we don't oh, stop it! No! Oh, that's huge. They're going to lose the tier one. As in the meantime, uh, we got to see Crustle really just kind of walling off, exiting everybody, just creating space, which is, of course, what defenders do a great job of. And this Regilek is going to go for free now. Uh, down towards the tier two goal zone, which is pretty nice. At the very minimum, even if we don't push this in, we are getting the next basement Reggie spawning. They're very staggered between the two objectives, and so they are going to get good positioning on that. But we are going to see a little bit of a back cap as well from uh, the... Uh, yeah, great work from them to keep that score lead for Nemesis. So well done to Rex. Big Unite move. Good try to send Fui back. Great guard of four. Unite move in response. And the Reggie Alecki is going to land. Absolutely takeover moment from So Sad Sam as this guard of four gets to work. And Team YouTube earns an incredible lead. And they're just going to continue on with it. Wow, we barely escaped there on the Espeon Otter. It's like, well, okay, I'm going back. Uh, but that was a gigantic Gardevoir Unite. We see a lot of those Gardevoir Unites completely whiff. It's just how it goes. It's a little bit slow. People can kind of react to it with sometimes with certain things. But that was not one of those moments. That was a beautiful way to push everything in. And so now they've got an over 100-point lead. This Registeel would be really nice for Nemesis. And Team YT, after that big win, they didn't even challenge this. Uh, they're like, okay, you can... Uh, you can get some EXP back, but we're still got a huge lead. Yeah, they're a really Unite move focused squad. Yes, Gardevoir's most recent buffs allow that to come off cooldown quite a bit, but when you have such great scoring tempo, you're going to want to make sure to take that constantly. If you risk losing that team fight, you risk giving up a split push onto that top goal zone and losing that all that point lead that you were able to earn. Now YouTube can play it a little more passively and defensively as the last three and a half minutes of our game play out. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is only going to get tougher and tougher, I think, for uh, Nemesis. I mean, uh, Team YT is such a, uh, like you said, they're like a Unite-based comp with amazing team fight, and already just having Sableye means that you're not really a team fight comp. Right. And I feel like the Sableye, the only way that you're really getting value out of it is if you're kind of ahead the entire game, as far as points at least, but that's not what we've been seeing. Oh, that's so much damage into Aznable with that guard of war, but they're still able to walk away. Uh, Unite move from the Lapras is only going to hit Metallic. They're looking for more targets, but there were three C amount of wish healing they were able to get. Ooh, and they're going to get the KO finally on Umbreon. Uh, big note here, though, that was a really late Unite from the Lapras, so uh, we'll see how fast they can actually build that back. Once again, Pika Diff getting the nice wall uh, against Inteleon. Not going to be able to get too much off of it, but at oh. least making them kind of try to run around. A nice little second KO of the fight for Team YT. The continue to hold on to this lead. Probably going to get a third here. The mean look going to basically protect uh, Yifan. That is going to at least let them escape 
but a two minute and 10 second Regilecki is a great boon to have, especially when you're already up 100 points. Yeah, everything feels like it's coming up Team YouTube right now. A Regilecki going all the way to that home goal zone with that second goal zone push they were able to have earlier. And they're actually going to apply some early damage to the Rayquaza. Rex behind tries to reset, so sad Sam, and they're going to be successful there. Gardevoir will be going back to base. Uh, the Sableye able to land their Unite move, but there's not many other t members of Team Nemesis here to capitalize yet. Yeah, they're still defending in the back against that Regilecki. They do not want that to go in. They know that Team IT will take full advantage of that. They're just trying to build time. Everybody gets out of there, completely makes that Psychic Solaire with. We still do have the Fairy Singularity from the Gardevoir available. If it can hit multiple targets, that could spell the end of the game. But we are going to see the first unit come out from the Inteleon, who just immediately gets targeted out by Heganif, but they're burning Trainer. it down. It's going to be the Glaceon. Trainer secures it in, that, in the face of so many opponents. It's incredible shot from that uh, icy wind. Huge from Trainer LGC. And now the race is on to make it to these goal zones. Responding scores from Team YouTube are going to be raining in, though, as Fui dumps in a Hundo Burger from the Lapras, bringing them just shy of a score lead. This is extremely close. Rex looks like they should pretty freely be able to get this in. That's going to build them up a uh, less than 100 point lead still, though. As we're going to see TYC push all the way in, the Phantom Forest is going to be able to hit a few targets, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. It's going to give them a lot of shields. They're hunting down a trainer. They are going to be able to get that KO. Uh -huh. uh, they're down just one member, but it's down one member for each team. There's 34 seconds left. If they can go in and break this goal zone with a Hundo Burger, that is going to be enough. Yeah, the only benefit for Team YouTube is that there's no one in position